and I'm back biting I'm getting away with lies No matter what it takes I'm always gonna cry The only thing that matters Is you get what you decide But I know for sure Today will come when you first realize What you have done And you finally get your debt repaid And you avenge yourself on the cold play Shut down when the world will stop Without a sound and a moment You will cry for help That we only think about ourselves Oh yeah The first time that I met you I thought it looked so sweet I showed that around for the years Beating a retreat And when I heard you talking With that alluring sound Should I recall the sirens And how that things went down I live on the trenches Looking for a way to escape You always cut me down Like a dreamer's with the grapes But never mind how I tried To leave you behind Falling in your net Oh, I've been so blind But I know for sure The day will come when you first realize What have you done And you finally get your debt repaid And revenge is served On a cold plate And you hear the rope Of the shutdown When the world will stop without a sound And the moment you will cry for help And we only think about ourselves Oh, yeah But I know for sure the day will come when you first realize what you have done and you finally get your debt repaid and revenge is served on a cold plate, oh yeah. On a cold plate. On a cold plate. On a cold plate.
Happy Monday, everyone. We are back for DPC 2023 Southeast Asia Summer Tour. I'm your host, Sophie, and I hope you guys are all sitting tight. We're on week two, so we're almost halfway there through the season. And I've got here, welcoming the day with me, my panelists, Adam and Aurora. How are you guys doing? Feeling good. It's sunny yeah. day. Sunny day. Out here on the beach, hot afternoon in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Yep, it's always eternal sunshine on the set. Isn't that it is lovely? True. I miss the rain. You miss the rain? Miss the rain. Emo yeah. boy. Quite a few heavy rain nights though. Yeah, that other night it was it was it only it was rains when we are offset. That's true. That's very <laughs> they don't true. rain on the set. Never rains. Can we here. get a sad rainy day at the beach? Yeah. But it is a it is a bit rainy for some teams in Southeast Asia. I mean, uh, we're like almost halfway through the season. So to be at the bottom right now is not a good thing. You are not securing your chance to get to the major. But is there any uh, t games that you were pretty hype about last week? Any that you had any of interest in? Nothing. Blacklist ones? I think Blacklist has been the team to like watch out for mm -hmm. this season, right? Like we weren't sure what to expect and then they kind of impressed us in their first series and they play another game and like, oh wow, Blacklist looks like real contenders for top three this season. Yeah, yeah that's I very true. I think on top of that, I think the other teams too, the biggest surprise was probably Execration. Right now oh. they're kind of at the bottom. They look like they've still not found their footing, but something similar kind of happened last tour as well where they started off rough but they ended up going to the major anyway so I'm very curious to see if they can recover this week yeah that's very true also Bleed is doing surprisingly well to everyone they got that new uh, coach change and last week they were I feel like impressing a lot of people I feel like Bleed has they're like showing potential I think they haven't really like impressed me yet I think all their games have been struggles they, they win in the end, you know, don't get me wrong, like credit to them, but mm -hmm. I think they've been struggling. They lose the first series, both games. That's Their true. game trees have been close. They had a very close series against SMG. Mm -hmm. SMG couldn't close out and they won out eventually, you know. I think it's not like a I'm better kind of victory, you know. It's like a, you know, we're more experienced, we hung in there kind of thing. Well, let's take a look at last week's video. We got some highlights for you guys of uh, all the, the fun moments in our games and everything. Yeah, okay. See you They're, later, going nerd. <laughs> They're going through the pit too. What? what? Oh my god, Monstros, this, this is, is a, this a good idea. This is terrible. Monstros is already dead. He can't even get off Doom. It's five seconds. He's gonna go down. Back through the gate, but it's already closed. Better roll in though, lands onto Ollie, use the Ogre Seal to be able to get away. A stun goes on, does manage to land onto the real Phantom Lancer, though the techies will quickly die afterwards. John Well with a big freezing field, but Talon are this is ending. Not great they are not quite SMG. making just yet. The Crystal Maiden 3 2 2. Jesus, look how much they have to use to get him, but they finally do 2600 oh gold. What? what the hell is that, dude? 2600? Kind of slowed down. Nice stun. Oh, oh what a storm. Beautiful storm laid out. That is going to be the end of execration in this fight for sure. Oh, be able to get the two. not the skewer. Back to BKB. Pops first. He pops a man to dodge in the Valner Strike. As a result, he spots Gordon. He gets oh, the, got the, the Bash. The Abyssal Blade getting the hits on to Gordon. They're going to use the RP oh, to make sure God. he does go down. No buyback it's available there. Disaster. Meanwhile, Jackie, the AoE action is Wukong's command. Not stronger than the Freezing Field. Not with the rest of the team here. Execration clean up right next to the Roshan pit. Is that Bob sleeping in the back? He's uh, lounging. <laughs> Just lounging. In the back. Yeah, <laughs> his chair got stolen. Yeah, <laughs> Kimo is my uh, chair now. Yeah. Smoke is gonna run into Bob here. Bob using the tumbler toy to get a short little hop away, and that's pretty crucial. Stun comes uh, out. He turns around, throws out the ultimate. Can he toggle it? enough? Oh my oh god! My god. What the? It's probably his damage now too. Oh, Palos just got the Agitim Scepter. I mean, he can pop it for the dispel. That'll help, but he needs to be able to hit some heroes. Oh, the long jump away with the impetus. Ooh. It followed him all the way through and did Where so much going? damage. Diving under the tier two tower goes the likes of Black Lives Rivalry. Punished here though, Meteor Hammer catches three winter. And that is going to be Boom cleaning up. My one concern with Blacklist going for Deducer, you mentioned Pangolier and the Magnus already being greedy. All your heroes kind of need items to get tempo. Yeah. 
China <laughs> will never win <laughs> not, bro. again. That's right. Without that's right. the champions, the defending champions. Yeah, look, where, players, look where LGD is. They can't even get past the Visa Major. The Visa Major. is in Seattle now. Yesterday, Yang announced that he's not playing Dora this year because he failed to get his visa four times. Oh no. China is finished. You say, what's up? Now you have to fight through all the spark rays. Oh, let's see how fast he does vision. it. It's fast. Holy crap. It's pretty <laughs> Holy fucking fast. Crap. <laughs> God damn. Woo. Ah, but I must bring Echo Cyber Slow. Bonus track, Ih, wow, bocah mantap. anjay mabar, Gila. mantas tal. In your dream, kami sama. Mau dilawan balik, tapi belum ada dong birunya juga. Magi K, Infinity Class. Oh my God. Ame, Southeast Asia, bos. Like, how do you guys stay focused when you're in a winning match? You can easily lose track of yourself if you're winning a little bit too hard. So how do you guys just focus in, in a game like that? For me, I just look at Kuku Venomancer and then I try to be like, focus. <laughs> It's a signature hero, so <laughs> KP, his first flip oh, back end, but the chrono, it's a solo chrono. Where's Cuckoo? Oh, there he is, but they're ready for him on the second one. The four step pull back in by the zip, and that's going to be a dead raven, dead for 90 seconds without buyback, Winter. So they are uh, going to oh, need to try no, and take they did not, top. They did not calculate. <laughs> they did not calculate. There he goes. <laughs> Pardon me, boys. Uh, oh, hold on. They searing changed him. All right, this is so freaking awkward. Okay, and, yeah, and talent's all TP. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, wait, where's Roche going? Where's he going? Roche, Roche! Wait, <laughs> where, wait, what? Where is he going? Where? Talent is going to be so triggered. Talent is going to be so triggered. They're going back. They're going to fight Roche here. Like, what? This is not supposed to happen. Wait. Look, they scanned. They scanned the pit. And he's not going to go back. <laughs> That is, uh, that is unacceptable. Oh my. He has his blink now as well. That's, and he's on oh, to one. The Mega Meepo. Wing, the Mega Meepo. They have tuned the Mega Meepo with 3,000 HP. Oh, Big RP on the four. Sets up Bob for the roll of a lifetime here. The skewer, Sonic Wave. Everything's getting thrown out. But Raven is the last one standing here. Execration are going to be wiped here one by one. I'll pass him that. I want some flying. Oh! Uh -huh. <laughs> Ninja Boogie <laughs> was a, a better one. panelist okay. than a coach. All right. I mean, if you if you look at the performance in Blacklist in the last two tours, do you need any more explanation than that? Ooh. To be fair, you have you have a lineup here, Mike, that has gone to a lot of international lands before. Yet in these two tours, they haven't. Oh shit! <laughs> so what, what's the difference here, Mike? What's the difference? But mm? do you think he was he was a good panelist? It can't get worse than the coaching. <laughs> sorry. What is your love language, Winter? Co gifts? <laughs> Beating. Oh, hell no. Okay, let's get into the drop. What enjoyable highlights. It's always nice to reminisce, you know, over what just happened. I totally forgot half the things that were going on and how the games went. But let's take a look at the division standings. We got Talon in first place, followed by Bleed, Blacklist Rivalry, Mansion Army Geniuses, Boom Esports, Team SMG, Execration, and Zersha. Not looking good for Execration and Zersha. They are both sitting at 0 and 2. While on the other end, we have teams that are 2 and 0. Oh. It's really good to be Bleed right now. I mean, would you say that they've fought some of the more difficult teams, or do you think that a lot of their wins are attributed to maybe some slightly less difficult games? I mean, judging by standings, they've played against the not so great teams, I guess, in mm -hmm. SMG and Execration, if I'm not mistaken. But their SMG series was really close. I think the way the scene's been looking, it looks like Towns at the top, Zersha and Execration are probably at the bottom, and there are, there are two slots are between the five remaining teams. Mm -hmm. Maybe both not as favorite as the other four, but they're kind of in there as well. Yeah, they do got one win, so it's a little copium. It's not that bad. But let's take a look at this week's schedule. What games do we have for this week? Week two of the DPC. On Monday, which is today, we have Blacklist versus Sersha to start us off, followed by Talon versus Bleed. And lastly, we have Boom versus Execration. On Wednesday, we have Mansion Army Geniuses versus Execration, then Talon versus Sersha, and lastly, Bleed versus Boom. And on Friday, to end off our week, we have Execration versus Sersha, SMG versus Blacklist, and Talon versus Versus, <laughs> versus Army Genius. <laughs> yeah, so that's quite a lot of games. Any uh, that you guys are already particularly excited for? Um, for today, I would like to see the Boom versus Execration one, because I feel they're kind of close in terms of where they are right now. Um, but I think Boom has quite a bit of 
hero problem in a sense where they always play the same things and mm-hmm. it's kind of easy to draft against them. I feel like they always kind of lost like 20% of the game because of the draft. But then again, Execration is kind of struggling now. So maybe it's a even series. Mm-hmm. It's ironic that you mentioned that because I feel Execration's problem is they stop picking the same hero. <laughs> oh, They're yeah. like trying to be a bit too open now. So maybe tonight we'll see something that's kind of in the middle for both teams. That's true. Is there any series that you're excited for, Adam? Uh, Talon Bleed. Mm-hmm. I think it's a... I mean, Talon's just the, the test, right, for every team. That's true. I think at this point. Unless they win enough and then Talon start testing themselves, which mm-hmm. we do see happen pretty often. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that is true. It was a, kind of a trend for them to always lose the second game uh, last season. But yeah, I'm, I'm quite excited for the Talon Bleed game too. It's, you know, the two red teams. Two red teams. You're yeah. a red fan. A red fan. Yep. Fan Why? Of... Why red? Because uh, it's... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just always fun to see. Like, you know, last, last the, the first season when it was Fnatic versus SMG, it was like the orange the teams. The orange. I like the blue teams. You like the, the blue teams? The execration look, looks nice. Yeah, all right. Well, let's get our first game going. We have Blacklist versus Sersha. So this, honestly, I think uh, might be a little one-sided. It might be too early to say because Blacklist have been looking great. But let's see if Sersha were able to figure out something over the weekend. That's always fun, isn't it? Seeing if teams can figure it out. I mean, there's just like whole tour or what we expected them to be. is called a so-called learning experience, right? Mm-hmm. And we'll see if they picked up anything from tour one. Uh, at least, sorry, week one, because I feel like their strategic approach to the game did not work. They seemed very all in. They tried to like outpace and play fast against these teams, even mm-hmm. though they weren't very clean in terms of doing so. You know, they did show a bit of strength against AG, you know, they were winning mm-hmm. game, but they couldn't close it out. And I think those are games where you can learn from and grow from. So let's see if they are different today. I think I also hope Sasha would have a much um, stable draft to play because I can see they are trying to do something all together, you know, but then like their draft don't scale and it's also very, very difficult to execute because like you say, it's like an all-in draft, but then in competitive sense, all-in is always very, very risky. And unless you are individually all way more skilled than the other team like it's too difficult to pull this card draft off yeah. mm. so do you think they have to go for something kind of slower paced more farming less fighting or i think playing fast is the right approach for them because i mm-hmm. think against these more experienced teams you don't want to get into this like late right. game battle where people make better um very little micro decisions, they make it better than you and it kind of slows down your tempo. I think playing fast is the right approach, but they also need to scale into the game. They need to figure out ways how to take objectives, how to choke the map. I think they're like on the right path. They just need to work on it even more. Mm-hmm. So what would be like examples of things that they could do in for what you just said? Um, I think the series against AG, the monkey went for a maelstrom. Mm-hmm. But I think going for Desol would have helped them get Roche, get towers, get and then they'll slowly like choke the map off that, right? You get more map control, you build like travels, you have like a catcher. You slowly, slowly and minimize the map of mm-hmm. your opponents. You know, you kind of want to have that approach. Or else in their games, they are winning and then they're farming. Right. And their opponent's farming too. You know, they're not taking away anything. And I think that's really important in Dota. It's like when you're strong, you want to take away as much as possible. Mm, that's true. Let's talk about Blacklist for a bit. They've improved a lot more this tour compared to last. Do you guys think that the weekend has made them even stronger? Or what, what are some little minute mistakes that you think they need to fix? I feel it's still a little bit... Um, I don't want to criticize the draft, but still I feel like they are somewhat still staying in the comfort zone. Aside from KP though, because I feel KP has always been the aura item enjoyer, but then for the last few series that we've seen him play, he didn't really spam all the aura items. He was kind of just playing, oh, I play this hero, I can carry you all. But then it seems like for the rest of the team, they kind of don't really know what to do, don't know how to adapt to that because you, when, when you play with, uh, when off lane with all the aura items, you kind of just group together and then do your things, right? But then when KP isn't doing that, you kind of need to just spread out a little bit more, be a little bit more patient and then take fights that you surely uh, win. But it seems like that list is a little bit confused on that and then I can see moments where they're not sure what to do and then they are kind of giving off the feeling where opponents can kind of just capitalize on their mistakes and then and as well as like their hesitation so for me that's 
a very obvious mistake. Uh, not a mistake, but more of like weakness mm -hmm. for a tier one team. Right. Yeah. I mean, Blacklist have only lost so far to Talon, so I guess we do give them the benefit of the doubt a bit. Pretty good team to lose to, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, being the strongest team in C. And their other games, they were able to manage to take it 2-0. Their game against Execration was 2-0. Their game against Boom was 2-0. So, I mean, it's not so bad. I think, like, in a... At least from a bird's eye view, I think they're still a new roster. Yeah. Like, Kip is a new addition. Sure, he's a great addition. Obviously, they've been doing really well with him, but we can't forget this team has been together for, what, probably three weeks now? Mm -hmm. Minus the... Uh, plus the swap from Kuku to Post 5, so there will definitely be things that look a bit worse sometimes, especially when they are losing. Mm -hmm. I think it's easy to look good when you're winning. You know, these players have played Dota for so long. They kind of just uh, are good at the game, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I saw his comment on Reddit today, it actually made so much sense. He said, like, Dota is actually a game where you learn backwards. Like, you go play a lobby, you know, you farm till 6 slot, and then you know how to play from 6 slot. And then you need to learn how to play from 5 slot, and 4 slot, and 3 slot, oh. and 2 slot. And eventually you play, like, on smaller and smaller timings and spikes. And it actually hit me so hard, because that's so true. That's how you learn Dota, you know, that's it gets true. more... Minor, minute and minute and minute. It gets smaller. The decisions you make, and I think it's the same when it comes to teams. You know, you start off these teams like look at Bleed. You know, their late game is really good, and you know it gets. You work on things. You work on things, and it's always a snowball. Yeah, that's so true. Actually, I never thought of it that way. Like you just have to put so much detail and care into like everything you do, and I never thought about learning it backwards. That's actually really interesting. Yeah, it was very interesting, actually. It's, yeah. it's so true, but I never realized it. Yeah, it kind of makes you think. Like Honestly, you really... I was subconsciously using that kind of concept to beat myself up in the head. Because I feel like, oh my god, why am I always trying to relearn a game? It's like, I learned this before, but then it seems like it's not, you know, working. And then I have to erase that and then try and understand the game again. But then as time goes on, I feel like I'm doing the same thing I've always done. So. Why is it so difficult? Like every single patch, I feel like I have to just relearn the game. So it might be what you said. Yeah, I mean, it's just a backwards learning. Actually, Dota takes so much time. I don't like, who do you think is the pro with the least amount of time on Dota? The captains. That's a tough question. <laughs> the captains? No way. <laughs> I mean, they have to watch a lot, so they can't really play. Yeah, but you're on Dota, right? Yeah. What you meant. Yeah, like, like hours. Jeez, amount. No clue, man. No clue. I'm scared that might become a roast. <laughs> no clue. I mean, I don't know who it is. But uh -huh. I mean, some people are just talented. Yeah, that's Like, true. when I played with DJ, like, no flame, he's just not a pubber. He plays oh, scrims, like, uh -huh. he'd be down to play a lot of scrims a day, but he didn't really play pubs, you know? Oh. And the man's just so good at the game. Yeah. Like, can you really criticize him for not playing pubs? He's Dota Jesus. Dota <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Free DJ. <laughs> free DJ. He's free. But I think free DJ's right home. Now. He's free free yeah, right he's now. Free. They look good. They, they look do. good. I hope they continue to look good. Yeah. Actually, you know uh, another piece of Dota advice that I was uh, told by the legendary KP himself. He said, if you want to get good at Brewmaster, you just play demo for four hours and just play with the Brewlings. Yeah, it's not wrong. Yeah, I never thought about doing that. I feel like there's a lot of things in Dota. Like we talk about this backwards concept, right? Like uh -huh. when I. Someone told me before, I think Fala told me, it's like Viper is one of the hardest heroes to play. Viper? Yeah. Do you agree? I agree. Yeah. You think so? I, I feel like it's... Oh, okay, okay. I feel like people who think Viper is hard are like 90, 10% of Dota players. And I, was I like, think... Viper is so brain dead, it's so hard. Yeah, that's what people say is that it's yeah, brain dead, but, but it's, it's not. It's brain dead for like 8 minutes of the game. Yeah. From like 8 to 30 minutes to be relevant in the game, it's actually so difficult mm -hmm. to play, you know? And I think it's like... It's just very unique opinions, but they're very true, right? They're mm -hmm. very like, these things are something you learn from like playing a lot and like, you know, how do you mm -hmm. scale? How can this stupid Hurricane Pike Viper against Brewmaster <laughs> play? You know, how do you get BKB? Mm -hmm. like, you see a difference in these players before. Like, when I play with Farah, his Viper, he would have like top net worth, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, holy shit, this guy's insane. Like, it's not normal, you know, to have something like that on Viper. This was before the stupid poison on the ground, by the way. Oh, the, what's it called? Co <laughs> Nether Nether Co oh, yeah, another toxin. Well, let's get our draft going. Finally, we have it for game one of Blacklist versus Sertia. We got Batrider, ooh, Spirit Breaker, and Doom. Spirit Breaker is the best hero in Dota right now. Yeah, I agree. Elaborate. Pub-wise. Just got mega buffed. I, feel like I don't know why they do that, honestly. I mean, okay. 
like we talk about Viper just now, right? They're making him a little bit more brain dead, but still not as brain dead as in like, oh, I just press one button and then I own the game, right? But it's like for SB, they have always had this issue of wave clearing. But now you just buy the right items and then press everything together, press your W charge, you get the entire wave for but, free. But it was like this like three patches ago, right? But Where is you it? needed like more expensive items, I would say. Yeah, the nulls. Yeah, the <laughs> items that, that won't even make sense, you know, in the team fights. But now you can just kind of buy Boots of Bearing, his boots, and then press your W, you, you get your wave. I think having BKB Pierce and just map travel has felt really nice this patch. Mm -hmm. Spirit is also not the weakest of laners. He, I mean, the hero just happened to get Mega, no, mega buff this patch. If you scroll through the change logs, you know, everyone's like one sentence, one sentence, and then boom, you read Spirit Breaker, which is like the <laughs> whole page of buffs. Broke my spirit reading that. You know what I didn't like though? I didn't like his shard change. The planet. The planner rocket or something. What yeah, planner mean, rocket. Though? Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. Because the, the old. Uh, the old shard was shard... kind of strong. Yeah, though, not really felt. useful. Yeah, a little bit too strong, that's I true. feel. Yeah. I, I think it was. The it was break. more niche, yeah. It had break. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I guess this suits his concept a bit more. No, oh, we'll see. Definitely seen a lot more European Spirit Breakers. I think they're like the more of the region to kind of experiment with these things. Black I want to see like cool. Spirit Breaker lifestyle, you know. A classic. Spirit Bomb. Yeah. Rocket Bomb. Yeah. It's funny, they ban uh, Venno. <laughs> All right, so for Zersha here, we have the Ember, which is a pretty nice response against the Bat and the Spirit Breaker, just because you are not too bad against Bat Rider in lane, and it's also hard to chain charge uh, Ember Spirit. That's usually the heroes you want to pick against Spirit Breaker. Yep. Heroes that don't really get threatened for showing on the map, either that or heroes that push waves off map, so you don't get charged. <gasps> you know what I realize is so nice now? You won't get bashed by Roshan <laughs> when you're going across the map. That's funny because there was a game, I think, on Friday. Uh -huh. I think it was in the Noun series where, you know, we saw in the highlights where Roche kind of just went through a portal twice. Yeah. yeah. So the Roche in their series, it was a scrim. It just walked not through the portal, but it traversed the map through the mid lane, through the river <laughs> to get to the other side. What? <laughs> yeah, the man just had some... Lick days, bro. Yeah, just wanted some exercise. <laughs> That sounds like a, why did the chicken cross, yeah, cross so the road? Yeah, so Roche has some unique mechanics right now, you know, you never know what's actually going to happen. He's got a mind of his own. What do you guys think of the bands? Ench, TV, Sky? I like the Sky band. I think it's just a comfort pick for Zersha. They're also just taking out heroes that are, I would say, good against the Bad Rider right now. The Veno in lane is really nice. It's a Zersha favorite too. Call band, just an Ember combo. Meanwhile, for Zersha, just kind of protecting their Doom lane. I didn't really understand the Ench ban, but maybe just feeling like the Spirit Breaker Ench would apply too much pressure on the map early. Mm -hmm. It'd be quite difficult for the Ember to play too, because when you play Ember and you can't kill either of the supports, and then you still have to face the pressure from Bad Rider, right? It kind of sucks. Can you not kill Ench Spirit Breaker? I think it depends on your lane, right? Like if you're doing well, you probably don't really care. Yeah, you can, but you feel kind of it's too difficult because like this edge is just gonna purge your shield, right? So then you kind of don't really know how to go from there. You'll need your supports to kind of help you finish the kill. Yeah, that's fair. It's a good pick for Zersha here. Looks like a great Oracle game, Spirit Breaker and Bad Rider, mm -hmm. but it has been removed by Zersha, unfortunately, didn't catch that. I wonder if they'll go for something a bit more YOLO, like a Shadow Demon here, for example. Okay. I think having a purge is just really value. I learned that more uncommon pick, but something that Bombi plays is the Dark Willow. Mm -hmm. Just more roots, you know, it's really good at Spirit Breaker because you can't charge into the the garden. Rambo. <laughs> so we should pick up Marana. I feel like I haven't seen the Marana-Ember combo in so long. Yeah, that's true. The hero kind of has died off, but I'm not sure why actually. I feel like she's still a pretty strong hero, you know, Moonlight's still nice and... You call it. Just a Shadow Demon. I mean, it makes more sense with the Mirana picked up too. I think having a Purge or having a Yule Buyer against what Blacklist have is just really nice right now. Mm -hmm. So SD Mirana kind of are both of those. It's a Cuckoo Rubik. I feel like that's a staple hero now. 
I remember like three years ago when I was playing Force 5, this was in Galaxy Racer with like Ghost and Alacrity, KYX. I would be the only person in the whole everywhere playing Rubik 5. And I would be like, <laughs> Rubik's not a 5. You started the trend. Toxic. I don't know. Maybe I was just bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Blacklist take Dusa. It's interesting that they take Medusal when you know, like facing heroes from social, you kind of just want something like a slug or something that can just be mobile, you know, because you are gonna get screwed over by this SD and Ember. And on top of that, as Doom as well, you really can't use your spells, so. Why don't you say that Dusa doesn't care about like this Ember harass, if anything? They also like, it's just another kind of approach, I guess. It's like, I see. I'm the strong wall, you know, yeah. it's like me. Slightly. I think it's also a comfort pick as well as just a very centerpiece kind of hero, which mm -hmm. Blacklist did need in their draft, you know, this Dusa SF kind of thing. Hero that doesn't yeah. mind too much getting doomed. Because their heroes right now, they want to sit behind throw spell, they want to lasso someone into some maybe team fight mm -hmm. spell, and Medusa fits that perfectly with Stone Gaze. It's also nice against Doom, because if you don't Doom the Dusa, you press stone gaze and disengage. It works like yep. similar to the Naga song, yep. which is pretty cool too. Blacklist ban AM, kind of a no-brainer. Underwood Zersha has left against this Medusa right now. Monkey's removed. There's no TB, no anti-mage. It's time for the Nyx Assassin. Ooh. <laughs> Rana carry then? If it's the Nyx Assassin last week. No, I think you core. No, I think you can't mm. play support Nyx against Dusa. He like doesn't interact well enough. What happened to Drow? Where'd Drow? you go? I think it's really hard against Spirit Breaker or Bad Rider. Oh, Especially yeah, with Zersha's really. heroes. Like just from the laning phase, they'll kind of get punished. It's hard to like position on the map. It's not an easy pick for Zersha. They need something that scales really well here. I, I guess Slark is pretty nice. Nice against the bat, you know, you know when you get charged. You're a kiting hero against the Dusa. Slark actually used to be an old school counter to Medusa, the pre Giga OP Dusa that we have now. You're a natural diffusal buyer. If you want that, you can kite fights in and out. Take long fights, get stronger. Yeah, you get stats. Wonder if Young God plays the hero though. Don't feel like I've not seen him play it. Let's see. What do you think Blacklist's last hero gonna be? I feel like Carl will get the luxury to be the hero to be very mobile unless this barrier is his. But I think they'll just adapt because it's such a pick right now, right? So they can still put the barrier against the Ember, but I think they're just gonna see what Sasha is gonna take. Probably right, right thing. Oh, there's a Slark. Yeah, I guess it's Slark. I mean, there's a lot of heroes they can go for, right? There's a lot of like yeah. magic heroes right now. There's this uh, Lash that Carl would like to play. There's the Quap that he likes to play. Mm -hmm. Just kind of fits their draft. They can also go for something a bit more uh, normal but heavy. Uh, Dragon Knight, for example, against this Ember. It fits their draft a lot more, but it scales well and it's just something that is a bit less to deal with the Slark. So I think it's going to come down to where they feel this Slark is a problem or not. Mm -hmm. I think their draft plays fine against Slug right now. They don't really need to punish him in the lane. I feel like the Batarai is going to farm anyway. Uh -huh. Slug Mirana is not the strongest of lane. In fact, I think Spirit Breaker will win the lane for him. Right. Could this bat be a flex or is it... Oh! Uh. Alright, it's the KP Visage. So they just want to ball up early with this Dusa and Visage. Okay. More Aura. They have the Visage Birds against this Mirana combo. So something to deal with the arrow, which Zersha do seem pretty reliant on. They have to disrupt into arrow, chain into arrow. There's not many stuns. And it's great in lane against Slark, like you just spam him. Yeah. I will say though, like this early Crimson that can come out from Repeato, because he has a pretty free lane, mm -hmm. can be pretty detrimental, and it might just enable his Slark enough for Zusha to take the game. So whose draft do you guys like better then? Mm. I, I think with the Visage say... pick, I, I'll go for Zusha. I want to say Zosha, but then I saw the Wizard pick. I'm quite interested to see how it plays out, so I'm gonna go for Blacklist. Mm. Yeah, I feel like the only person they really have to be like a meat shield is the 
spirit breaker. This age does become a mid shield at some point, you know, but Slark's good at removing Gravekeeper's Cloak, your lane. It's going to come down to the lane a lot. Yeah. I think Blacklist definitely has better lanes, but I think this Doom and Ember can do really well to the point where they can just have a very early spike compared to Blacklist lineup. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get this show on the road. I'm going to send you guys over to Cap and SVG for our first game of Week 2. Thank you, Soph. That's right. We're here to kick off the second week, and it is the third time Sersha is going to be playing here in the Southeast Asian DPC, and it's the third time that Avery, you and I are going to be casting them. So what are our thoughts so far? What is your first impression of Zersha off of week one? And do you have any ideas about what you would like to see them improve upon? Like, what, what would you want to see them come in into week two and be doing better? I mean, I don't think their impression was as good as... Uh... Army Geniuses when they came up out of Div 2, right? I think they were hitting far above expectations, whereas Zersha are probably hitting within the expectation, which is they haven't been rolled. I mean, they haven't looked entirely like, oh, some trash Div 2 team that doesn't even deserve to be here. But I do think they have a ways to go before they're competing with the top dogs as Division 1, and particularly a long way to go if they're trying to get to a major, which, I mean, there's only one left. They're probably not going to go to it, but then it's just learning as much as you can from this season to go into next year, right? Or TI calls, sure. whatever happens. I mean, in terms of what this team can improve on, I think sometimes the the game just feels very clunky to me in terms of That's like what is the overall that. cohesive game plan, who are you playing through, and where are people playing on the map. I feel like a lot of times this team ends up in games where they have very low kill totals. Like it's like some thirty to five games, some twenty four to six games, something like this, right? And I think it's not always indicative of, oh, you should just be killing people more, but I think for this team, it's more of like, they just don't make enough play action happen between combining their supports with the right cores to gain some momentum and that snowball on the map. Begins. So that's what I would like to see more from this team. And I feel like draft-wise, they've already set themselves up to be a little bit better in that regard, um, because I think their previous support duos have had very little synergy. Uh, Dazzle Grimstroke, Skywrath Mage Venno, uh, Rubik Clinks, Dazzle Skywrath. Like, th these are not duos that have natural synergy together. You've got Shadow Demon and Rana in this game. That is probably one of the duos with the most synergy in all of Dota. Hopefully. Uh, Hopefully. I mean, <laughs> it helps that your supports can work well together or balance each other out. I also think it's pretty important that your supports work well with your cores. Like, I think that shift happened the a year or two ago, and since then, if, if your supports can't help your core snowball the map, then you end up just playing like five different heroes doing five different things, and nothing happens. And when nothing happens for long enough, the enemy does something, and usually you get punished. So I like the fact that Marana and SD can combine here. Uh, if you can get some dual action going on one of the sidelines, get a couple cheap kills, that's great. But I also want to see the Marana interact with the Ember off some chains in the mid game. I, I want to see the Shadow Demon perhaps set some early aggressiveness up for Rapido on this Doom, these types of small interactions, or just get a crap ton of stacks up. That's that's another route you can go with the Shattered Demon in the Alpha. But just the better efficiency and some cleaner momentum. That's what I would want to see from him. And if you're Blacklist, let's uh, let's see how Bosku continues to do on, on his role swap, right? Big change for him. He has been considered one of the most vocal captains in this region for a while. Traditionally, you are on that five roll, so this puts, or it removes a lot of pressure from him in terms of being a shot caller and the gameplay. Yes. So I, I expect if he, he can actually play the hero pool, it might work out well for him as KP is KP, low. he had magic wand charges. Is that going to be enough? Oh, the final error comes in, and Tihi managed to snatch the first blood away. So already Cuckoo may be thinking, you know, I wouldn't have died if I was in this situation. <laughs> think you said that on the comps. <laughs> <laughs> doing up that there, would bro. be extremely toxic. That would, yeah, that would be. <laughs> I've heard more toxic things in game, but I don't think they're in a position where they have to be toxic as they're two and one. So no. Doing better this season than some of their previous ones for sure. Yeah. Yeah, they actually uh, have a, uh, a good hope of being able to go to a major finally. I mean, you were talking about what you want to see from Zersha. I'll tell you what I want to see from this Blacklist lineup. Uh, to okay. me, it's very obvious. I want to see Raven hit enemy heroes before the, like, 50-minute really? okay. mark. Yeah. Because 
And I think it, it comes down to KP to be the, the tempo creator because I think Carl's a very versatile player, but I don't think Carl will drive the tempo himself. So I'm looking to KP on this team to be, especially in a game like this with an aura by our visage, to call his course into the game and like control the game flow and make sure Raven and Carl get involved at the right place in the right place at the right time. Because I feel like Blacklist, when we were going back to season two especially, this team was like the ultimate AFK team. I yeah. feel like they did nothing yeah, they for like 50 minutes and either won or lost the game off that and more often than not you just lose those games so I, I really want to see Raven in particular like join some of these engagements or have a heavier presence in the game especially the 25 to 30 minute mark which is where I usually feel like even some of these hard carries are like pressed to get involved right so sure. that's what I want to see out of this Blacklist team in order for them to... Can, uh, not to be definitely. too inflammatory, but do you feel Radiant like that was Raven's that. fault, him not being in, in, involved enough? Or do you think his team was just... Because they were a very AFK team, right? They were a very farming team. Yes. Uh, like, you know, if your team is farming, what's your carry going to do, you know? I mean, there's some truth on that. It could be a team MO thing, chains into the air, or we'll land. Just very nice. Out. Charge comes through, but disruption very well timed by Bomb. Oh, he's actually going to be on the other side of the cliff, surrounded by his own illusions. Oh. I believe he is just dead. Beautiful <laughs> setup from Zersha. And this is kind of what was maybe missing in that first week. A nice synergistic rotation between both supports. Yep. They clash nicely with uh, JG's uh, slight chains combo. Very good. This is the type of support interaction that I think will help the team a lot. It just gets everybody involved and you start getting some good game flow going. And I think Blacklist, if they're kind of a slow team like we were talking about, then this is a team that'll give you those openings because they're not going to do any crazy aggressive moves on you, right? Yeah, yeah. Nice early The momentum. one thing I always, uh, I did kind of feel like is that Rapido didn't, um, didn't always get the most farm out Radiant's of his lane. Uh, so, attack. you know, if your support's away anyway make plays happen rupito is gonna die maybe i'm just thinking of his pango game but that was uh that was a rough one i mean i feel like they played a sack a lot of times but yeah. if you're gonna play to sack your off laner then that really puts even more emphasis on you better be getting something else somewhere on the map like it's either a crap ton of stacks or you're winning mid in my opinion it's one of those two yeah there's not really anything else you're doing in dota in the first five minutes that is in as impactful as giving your off laner a good game Especially on these offlaners that can just straight up carry like Doom. Yeah, Doom's kind of like an interesting choice in that regard. If they are going to be rotating heavily and leaving Rubido solo lane, I feel like this is a fine situation for it, right? Yeah, he died to the Rubik Medusa, but I don't feel like this duo is going to kill Doom over and over again. You know, they got a one off. Nice light chains. Once again, landing Carl getting low. The charge is going to be able to come in to break things up a little bit. It's a big rune forward, to get. Trying to go for the DD, and he gets it onto JG. Turns around, activates that DD, starts putting in the work up against him, who so only has level one charge. So he is <laughs> definitely dying. Bumpy actually stealing away the last hit. I, I don't know if he thought the charge was coming up sooner than it was, or if he really, really just wanted that last hit. But now, another slight change and another Ew. arrow. Bosku will now be dying. Ew. All right, Jeez. Zersha looking hot now. Yeah, this is like way different than a lot of their previous games, right? They're just crashing with the supports, getting some numbers advantage, getting rune advantage. This is how you build some tempo in a game with these dual roamers. Now you're looking for that seven minute rune. The dream, you can stag it. Yeah, KP is here protecting it though. And with that lead charges, looks like a Marana's gonna die. And so they not only get the wisdom room and they get a little bonus here as well. There is actually a hard camp stack. It is being stolen away by Carl. Warpine Raiders down in mass. My god, the slaughter. Stolen from Rapido's eyes. He got burned up. Nice little theft by Carl. Who's out of lane for a long time. Arrow. Ooh, that yeah. almost hit Carl. And then a charge come close to. Nonetheless, this is a really good early game for JG. Perhaps the best we've seen for him this entire season. He's in prime position to just carry the map right now with early over corrosion. Phase boots coming out soon. This is where Ember Spear shines. Also a hero that 
I was looking at stats earlier. Ember has kind of been one of the biggest losers of DPC so far in this tour across all the. Oh region. really? Yeah, he's like one of he's one of those heroes with like the thirty or so games with like a thirty five percent win rate. Like it's pretty it's pretty rough. So this these types of kills where you're getting big core kills straight into the power rooms is the way where I think this hero wins games because he does not really win them when he falls behind in the early game. I think the hero just loses so much purpose. Why do you think uh, he is a losing hero right now? Because he, it, or, or do you think teams are just overrating him so they're picking him too early? Because he does feel very good in the meta right now, I think, anyways. Yeah, maybe. I mean, this was another game where he got first phase, right? Like, when you first yep, phase this yep. hero, I don't think a lot of teams are willing to play him safe lane or it's just not good enough with the XP split. And then this hero has a lot of really bad matchups that just put him so far behind. Birds are up on a blind. for taking uh, the hard cam stack. Blacklist bringing both their mid and top to sandwich in on one spot. They're going to give Carl the recovery uh, CS here on Bumby. Yeah, he needs it. It's nice, but he, he is still decently far behind on this mid bat. Stolen in his face. He's got to leave. He really holding on to it. Does leap down to low ground. Actually gets himself stuck in the trees. But now, like Tim's, is going to come looking for him. So, oh, he cut his friend out. What a nice guy. Very nice. Now, my old teams would have left me in there to rot. I'll tell you that much. The newer generation of players not as spiteful. Or maybe uh, the captain is just fostering a better work environment. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh. Uh, that's potentially true as well. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't put it past him here. <laughs> Nonetheless, JG may be feeling himself and willing to help out his teammates because of how well his game is going. That's true. They've rotated so much for him and uh, already had the remnant out, so that charge is going to be quite ineffective. Talking about heroes that are uh, looking good or looking bad right now, Spirit Breaker has been very, very hot on the uh, Dota 2 Pro tracker. Seems to have some really good win rate and pumps right now. It makes sense. Uh, bigger map just seems like these highly mobile heroes are more valuable, but what do you think has changed? Why is this hero all of a sudden being successful? More so than even last patch. I mean, you got like 10 buffs. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, his charge is, his charge is better. It does more damage. His ults much low, much better uptime in terms of cooldown, and the uh, move speed slightly higher. So his and his point, status though, just is better. He can't chain stun people as well, but nobody can. The thing is, Spearbreaker was never about chain stunning people. Spearbreaker is about getting as many spells off as you can in a fight and being tanky as hell. And the serial mm. does that very well form as another arrow will land another slight chains that carl almost falls to they don't want to overcommit here it looks like jg starts chasing after him charge on the other side though he's going to be able to catch bomb b bomb b not dead yet disruption does save him but kp is going to drop the birds on them both they have detection okay finally dropped it catches one rapido still another century out there so he's going to be walking through it for a while arrow comes through but it's maybe enough to save him all oh, the moonlight shadow is going to be wearing out Ooh, now he off the wand he gets in biz for a little bit but now the moonlight shadow is truly worn out and he falls that was phylactery rush for kp here so not going the orville just going the aggressive damage build paying off in that type of fight as carl makes it out as well straight into some ancient stack farming the last slight chains did not connect and tim's is just wreaking havoc this is what this hero is designed to do, early phase boots. Like, he's tanky as hell, right, with the armor, Radiant's plus how much HP yeah. this hero attack. gets. He does a lot of damage. This ult's already up in 20, so this is, for me, like, the big change to this hero. He's doing more damage, and he's doing it at a better rate, and he can join everything because his mana cost is lower. This hero just feels amazing in the early fights and on the map. Raven farming away, working towards a uh, first line of Manta. We've got Vanguard back to Hand of Midas and then Crimson Guard for Rapido. So definitely want a Crimson Guard in this game, I would, uh, against a Medusa. And actually a, uh, a Visage. Who did go phylactery. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, this helps cut through some of the early ores. It helps some in the early fights. This item is, 
it's pretty annoying with the grade Radiant chill, like double so type shenanigans. Fall. It yeah, is a bit the greedy, though. Get more damage done. Like I would argue, when you're playing with a Bat Rider Medusa lineup, it depends how much utility Carl's willing to go. But in theory, you shouldn't lack the damage, right? You just need the auras. Yeah. So I, I don't know. This does feel a little greedy. I, I don't know if Flactory is necessary on Visage in this type of game. Like, you have Rubik's Spear Breaker, too. Also, two supports who are, are kind of just there to deal damage. Like, I don't know if these supports are going to... Like, Spear Breaker rarely buys Dyer's utility. It's pretty much only Drum, if anything. And Rubik can, but Bosku is not going to do it because it's Bosku. So it's got to come from somewhere. Well, if you have, uh, I guess, long, drawn-out laning phases, which Blacklist used to do because they were so farmy, right? They just really liked to sit in their lanes for a really long time. These uh, phylactery builds are really good at being able to kick out enemy cores because just the constant harassment, the value for every mana point, every spell that you cast is so amped up in that regard. I mean, yeah, I guess that's true. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of items that also can like kick a Slark out, you know. I don't know if Slark is the spookiest hero <laughs> to try and kick out a lane. <laughs> the fact that Young God has got to sit up here for this long probably feels damn good. I mean, he's level 10. He's the same level as Raven, who's been absolutely free farming with a kill and doing like some extra stacks and stuff. I I don't know. I view this as a Medusa draft. You gotta play through Medusa and just itemize for her timings to be as strong as possible. Ooh. Maybe a bit more damage than JG anticipated. As an armor rune to uh, a shield rune to be able to work with. So, Let's see whether or not he puts that into play. Rapido has. Has he used a Doom yet? Nope. If oh, you don't yeah. use it, you lose it. That's what they say. Oh, hopefully, they're not going to lose this game off of. Uh, no dooms. I mean, to be fair, he's matched up against the Dusa in lane most of the time. That is not a great hero to do. Oh, it feels not amazing with how tanky that hero is. Hey, I don't think he. I don't. I don't blame how he's playing. I think this is actually how you want your doom to play this game. I'll take Just that. AFK Plus your uh, percentage based touchable. damage of Infernal Blade does nothing to do so. Yep. Hero is not great. She has. She has 450 HP. <laughs> it's a tough matchup. I mean, your best bet is just to get really fast auras and like prevent her winning those early fights. And then you just scale, like kill her team. The Doom can be very annoying for the Deuce in terms of his tankiness, just not being able to deal damage while he's killing the rest of your, your cores. I, you know, that, I feel like that's what Rupee is pretty much looking for here. And he has like two other pretty good scaling damage cores in the Slark and the, and the Ember, who can both skirt around the Deuce in the fights. So if you kill another core and then you kite the fight out and go back in, I feel like you're sure are pretty happy with that type of engagement, especially with Murano to back it up. Sure. Chop it away at towers. They're going to take the mid tower. Blacklist not opting to try and defend it. We'll just take the top half of the map over. Yeah, early solar crest for TD off all those early kills. Very nice item with Slark, and this is your 15 to 20 nighttime period, where that night vision, pretty damn nice here. If we're trying to take some fight, I, I would be looking for something, especially with Murata ult up. Your Doom is pretty strong. He's going to have Crimson finished off the courier here. Crazy good timing. You can find the five on five. I don't think Blacklist can win it into this item right now, if you can get the jump. If you have your choice of objectives, where do you want to like, where do you want to take this fight with that nice new Crimson Guard you have? I mean, the most valuable part of the map right now for Blacklist is the double ancient area between Triangle and, and that left side. That fight can be hard depending on how deep you get in the Triangle, like before the vision breaks. But I think with Murano ult, it is doable. Like with Murano plus Sark vision, that fight is actually one I would not be afraid to take. You just run the Sark in first with that ult. I mean, they can't really just go on it, right? And then you're either just going to find Dusa and you can take the fight pretty easily, you're going to find somebody else, or you just control the area and or you get out. There's not too many bad outcomes here for Zersha in that type of engagement. I feel like it's actually not a bad game to try and force that early. They're just going to settle for the tier two. 
I mean, right now, their their trade-off, it seems to be pretty good because Ember Spirit keeps on being able to go top and slow down whatever push is happening there, and they're actually putting real pressure on the Tier 2 on the other side of the map. Charge is going to come through. Tim's completing that charge. Didn't what? expect that. His team is going to come in and try and rescue him out here, but Tim still dies. Young God going to reset off his ultimate. While Carl waiting on the side here, looking for an opportunity, but he just has the Octarine Core, so not an easy way to make his way into the team fight to start. I mean, this is not a game Tim's can casually poke charge in. He's playing versus double long-term purge. Like, Shadow Demon and Doom both destroy this hero, so... You have to respect it, especially Shadow Demon. I think Shadow Demon was one of the old school. He was one of the biggest counters that developed versus the Core Spear Breaker in that TI patch, if you remember. Now they're just going to get the wall. Oh, he did on not KP. expect the rotation behind the tier two. That was nasty, but it looks like it may not work out. It's the lasso pullback here. Rapido going to purge himself, trying to get rid of these sticky napalm stacks. He's got another one, but a yeah, lot of damage coming his way. Gets up to the high ground, put a charge. Hits him finally. Tim's able to beat him down. They do get the trade off. The Spirit Breaker gets blown up in return, but decent pickup for Blacklist Rivalry. Surprise, KP just walked that off. Yes, he's pretty damn tanky with this Solar Crest. Universal Hero, extra Bracer. He's 1800 HP. Is a visage. And Raven joining that. Pretty important so they don't lose more map control here. Zersha just going to run straight back bottom. Instantly find Carl off that ward. I think he's getting caught. Disruption is there in time. Wow, what a valuable observer. Really paid off. They had the sentry for too. You just didn't see it. Oh, that's crazy. I love this ward. Any of these wards that see like behind the tier two kind of area, because it also spots two different uh, camps that are, I think, very often farmed right now by carries. Carries just love to be able to sit in this area. Yeah, they're nice. I agree. They're also hard to deward, I think. It's not <laughs> convenient for like fives to run to these areas and deward them. Sure. Though my, my, my thought is, what, what is easy to deward now? I feel like every deward is hard. It is tough. like they, we had we know there's vision somewhere around here, but there's so much map it could be on that it's hard to find. I mean, I, if I get a D ward in a game, I feel like I won, you know. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like holy crap, I did my job. All right, now if we lose, it's on everybody else. The, what the hell are you guys doing? I killed like two ops. Yeah, the days of uh, high, high numbers on the uh, Dyer's middle tower is under attack. On the the ward destroyed stat, that's definitely gone. But a shadowed past of a better world for fives. What can you do? I don't know. The world for fives is feeling a whole lot better after the wisdom rune change. I'll say that. Oh, there's actually double wisdom runes here for Zersha. He didn't get their 14 minute ones, so. They actually lit that one, percolate a little bit, and he can get both of them for 840 experience Dyer's each. Damn. Under They're both almost level 12. That is a lot of XP. The price and these things are broken as hell, but you have to be able to get them. The downside is if you lose them, I actually think if you lose 7 and 14 minute Wisdom Rune, your chance to win any game goes down by like 30%. It's not even an exaggeration. <laughs> I think it's like impossible to play. Yeah, I mean, your support, unless you're just like killing all the time, your supports are probably not even level six at that point. Yes, and the enemies always are. So they get such a yeah. large window where they have ults and they're going around and just part of everything, killing cores with ults. And you're sitting there level five, like, uh, what about you guys? Here's that Ronald in the triangle. Oh no, what was that initiation? Just got the huh. manta off. I mean, he popped the manta before they they even showed themselves, though. I think he was just trying to push in the lane with it. It's awkward. That's that move I'm saying, though. Like, even if you make this move and it doesn't work out like that, you don't lose anything. It's not a dangerous move for how their lineup functions. So I still sure. like that play. I mean, it's unfortunate that Raven was right on the high ground and he popped this manta. And like, maybe you can play that better. But even with what happened. That's a move that can just win you the game. And the downside is, all right, you go back to farming for like another minute, you know? What did Blacklist yeah. get out of that? Almost nothing. They just get their lane shoved in. 
So I still like that Zersha went for this play. I think it, I think it is a good play based on how their lineup works. And they have Blink Aetherlands on Bombi. Like he's really far into the Shadow Demon. He can aggressively get disruptions on Adusa, help his cores out. Crimson Pipe. Tanky you. You know, was maybe baiting a little bit, but he bait too hard, though. Already down to half health. The Crimson Guard doing a lot of work and protecting him against this damage with the charge through the side. Tim's hits two. Oh, do so. And finishes off one while the Shadow Demon quickly dies. Still working on Raven, though. Nana Shield finally down. Young God committing for the kill. It's not enough. He's not going to get it. He dies. Blacklist rivalry. Play that fight apparently to perfection. I don't know how nobody really died in that. I thought Zersha had some good momentum going, but that fight. Not theirs for the taking, it seems. JG's gonna be run down underneath the tier two. The only survivor is gonna be Captain T. Uh, it was a sick charge by Tim's. Really separated yeah. that engagement. And you just still don't, don't get a Doom off. I mean, that's what it comes down to, it feels like. I think if you get Doom on anybody, maybe that fight looks a little different, but I don't know. Just can't get it off. I mean, he's baiting, doing a decent job, very tanky. But no damage coming out from your highest up with core. Pretty hard to win these. Okay, engagements. but to make this clear, who who should he be dooming in these fights? Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I don't know anybody. <laughs> Just throw it on anybody. I mean, I think I mean, bad... I mean, obviously he doesn't think that because he's he's been very hesitant to use it in the first place. I think it's it's a hard doom game. Like these targets are not really great doom targets. I think yeah. I would take the bat, maybe the spear breaker. I feel like the Spirit Breaker has been as annoying as he is and he's pretty high network. I feel like those are the most effective targets to do here. The Visage isn't terrible. Is there anything wrong with Dooming the Dusa? Not necessarily, no. If you get her before Stone Gaze, I think it's fine. If you can man up with the Slark. If she gets Stone Gaze off, it's pretty bad. Because I was That's... just thinking the combination of Doom plus the, the guaranteed slowdown of Demonic Purge. I mean, I, I feel like those two abilities on any carry is probably going to get that kill. Yeah, I feel like that, it's pretty solid. You can also just keep scaling here. I, I don't think Zerso scale is that bad in this game because the Shadow Demon can get cleanse, he can get Ags. Then you're looking at ways to deal with the Bat Rider through the cleanses, and triple purge is a lot of damage, right? Uh, they still break or no? Don't think they do. Oh, it does break, yes. Yeah. So you get the yeah, triple break as well, which is really yeah. nice here. And then you can also just get a crap ton of Doom, doom items and a crap ton of Slark items, and I don't, I don't think you're feeling too bad about scaling versus single cord Medusa here. I really think the Blacklist damage falls hard off. It falls off very hard. In which case, Blacklist, maybe they're the ones who need to get a little speed going after winning a successful team fight. It's time to take an objective. They're going to go for Roshan. Yes, and this is why and I think Raven has to be very involved in this game. Like, you have to play around Medusa's timings in this game, because I don't think you win it six on six slots late. I mean, if they win this fight, they're going to have Roshan and a Butterfly and Medusa, and that's, that's potential game-ending territory, but Zersha are here to defend. Remember, Adult was just too early. They can't use it to engage now. It's yeah. Pretty awkward. are going to have to find another angle. This is in front of an observer. Invisible oh, charge. Got him. Got him on the lasso. Still those saves. Maybe Crimson Guard. And he gets a jump away, but he jumped back in. Oh no, the Remnant. He didn't want to jump away too far. Now he's another slight. Gives a little distance, but he's running out of Remnant. Oh, he does die, but he does have a Remnant out if he wants to fly back. And he's going to do just that to join it's in a fight. It's a must-win fight. Medusa. Ah, low, very, very low. Disruption, and he is going to be caught now. Blacklist. Arrow lands. That was an okay fight for them, but the buyback makes things so much worse as they're going to be able to run down all of these heroes now. How did that Ember survive through that initiation? I mean, Rapido blinked in and Crimson piped him. And I think he purged him too. So he purged yeah. off like all the stacks, so much damage. Plus those two orders. And on top of that, he's got, a, he's got a Sanj, so status resistance. Yeah, he really didn't last that long. Just nice play by Rubido, makes up for some of those earlier fights, gets the Doom on the Dusa. It is after the Stone Gaze. It's like a little unfortunate, but that's still the type of fight they won. And then you get that later disruption into Arrow. That's just a freebie. This is where I'm saying the damage outside of Raven. This lineup does not do that great of damage in, in the five on five. And they don't have auras to help them sustain their supports through the fight. There is no pipe, there is no Crimson. 
There, there's nothing. It's all individual itemization here. You have a Pavis four staff on Bosku, which is the prize is mine. okay, but not great versus double purge lineup, right? Yeah. And then KP went this Phylactery Solar Crest build. Again, very single target focused. It's nice to play behind the Medusa, but then you're all in on the Medusa. And I do still think Zersh have decent answers to it. He's also just going Lincolns. I just disagree with this Lincoln's Phylactery. I, I just don't think it fits the game plan here. Like, Radiance I think this was, I mean, I get attack. that there's purges for Auras too, but then they're only purging the one guy instead of, like Phylactery Lincoln's here is so much gold on KP for very little offensive potential and very little helping his Medusa potential. I guess if you block what? a Doom or a Disruption, it's value. But that, I don't know how reliable that is with Ronald and Slark who can probably initiate these fights. What auras were the right auras in your mind? Because I'm not sure if it's a Crimson Guard game. I could see a Greaves, maybe. I think Boots of Bearing was a must have on somebody in this game. I think it would have sped oh, the tempo sure. up, amped the early damage. It helps the birds, it helps the Medusa. Uh, Dyer's I mean, I went to Ben against Pipe attack. or Crimson. Maybe not both, but I think one of them would have been fine. I guess you can't really build anything with Vlad's unless you're anymore, which is pretty sad. Otherwise, I think Vlad's is solid. I mean, Solar Crest is fine. I think it's just the Phylactery I have beef with. I think AC is pretty good in this game. You can eventually get to it. You can also sure. just go Damage Visage if you feel like the Bat is going to play more of this, like, stunner, run around, tanky role. You get like an Ags at some point and just try and help carry. I wouldn't the mind of that either, because I do feel like core Batrider can be very low damage, especially when the enemy has like, Purge and Cleanse and the stuff that's going to come out, plus a Slark. It's very hard for Carl to deal significant damage in these fights. There's too much of his yeah. stacks just getting removed. So I actually went the minded KP just playing for himself in terms of damage, but this is like uh, too many defensive items for my taste. Well, we'll see whether or not that Lincolns changes the tide in some way. As Zersha right now up 7k net worth, clearly holding a pretty decent control of the map. And thanks in part to the fact that they're obviously winning. They have a Slark and that Slark also has a gem. So they're beginning to take away a lot of the vision from Blacklist. And Blacklist is having to play more and more group dump as time goes on. They just flew in an entire Ags for Bombi. He's an absolute monster right now. Th three demonic purges. Or oh, you only get they, two. They, they got to get a. Uh... Oh, that's sad. Oh, they changed it. You know? Yeah, I thought it was still three. No, it's only two oh. now. I mean, it's still. He only needs one with the break, to be honest. But two will definitely get the job done. They definitely need the uh, tormentor. Both of them should be spawning here in the next couple of minutes. Get Bomb B, the Demonic Cleanse double charge as well. Do you have BKB on Tim's? I mean, Tim's is the wild card here for me. If he can get good charges, good ult, he has Planar Pocket as well. Planar Pocket can be huge here. Like, you can redirect some very clutch spell onto you, right? Yeah, redirect Another Doom onto you. you. Gotta find the jump on the Shadow Demon, the best goddamn target they could find. They need to have a Dawn's to be able to save him. The Slark actually bailed him out with the Shard. They do have the Doom out onto KP at the same time. Spearbreaker, Tim's going to TP out and charge back into this fight. JG trying to chase after him with the Shield Rune, going for the Vintage and the first Doom. Finally, the Doom is successful. The Stolen Doom turned back around on a Rapido, but that's okay. The team seemingly already have won the fight and just cleaning up some of the scraps. Carl, he'll die into the Slight. Everybody else from the side of Blacklist had to retreat. I mean, that is a great find by Carl. That is literally the one player in the game. Zersha should not like get jumped this Shattered Demon because he is the team fight, he's the save, he's the turnaround. So now he finds it and that's just a tough fight into the Aegis. Doom is pretty good here on KP as you're losing from the fight. Shoutouts to uh, Young Gun for picking up the shard in the first place. I actually didn't notice when he got that. Was, that was huge. Just remove that initiation entirely. That's another problem Blacklist are gonna have to deal with. And another thing that's making Bats game just hell here. Can't do anything, it feels like. Like, who do you go on, right? Yeah.
Radiance top tower. And Rapidio's still attack. walking around with Purge. So it's not like he went for some other spell here on the Doom. He can still remove some of your bad sacks or save somebody as well. <laughs> this is definitely one of the most impossible bat rider games I've seen in a while. Oh yeah, it, it's impossible. I mean, it's a first phase bat. It got countered. This is where you got to have a game plan in terms of who's going to pick up the slack or like what the overall itemization is, right? That was, so, that was my biggest issue in this game for Blacklist. Now they're just going to have to fight through it. I mean, Raven's still farmed. He is the most farmed hero in the game. He is a Medusa. Does hit pretty hard. You just have no vision either. Yeah. That is another issue. Marana Old plus Gem on Slark is destroying your map right now. And there is an easy Doom on the Doom. Purge and Doom all and the arrow on top of that one. The Dusa is super dead. Without the Dusa, as you said, that's most of their damage. Double damage for JG going to work as well. They're going to hit the back line. The Rubik's going to die. Bosku, the second to fall on this team fight. Don't want to dive in too deep, though. They'll respect the tier three tower and head back to deal with the tier two. Uh, this game, it got out from Blacklist control very fast. Uh, I think this really came down to some of the early game from Zersha. This set up a lot of momentum for JG in this game and just gave them so much time to bring their scale online. Like their supports, they got rich really fast. I mean, we have a damn defusal on team just to add some insult to injury. And like defusal on five Marana, sure, why not? I wonder if he's going to go the upgraded version. It's like it went Heaven's Halberd for now. I mean, Heaven's Halberd. When you have a single core lineup, Dusa especially, range carries. Really, really hate Heaven's Halberd. Yeah, Tormentor just for the record, is up on the dire side, but not. There the is no way he should have gone defuse on five run. <laughs> 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 I'd, I'd just like to state that. And if they go back and watch this, there is no reason to ever go with defusal on five rod in this game because you do not have any issue dealing damage and this item will never deal that much damage in a fight even if you leap in and get like six right clicks off on a dusa and you burn like 200 mana you're telling me that's better than a lotus or a lincoln's or a glimmer cape or any of these things to throw in your slark there's no way <laughs> it's unjustifiable but it looks cool i'll give that it, it does, it does get cool. some style points <laughs> I wish he'd gone the 15 uh, leap attack speed talent with it. You already got the defusal. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to commit, you're, you got to commit, you know? <laughs> uh, Blacklist, I guess we're hoping to sneak a very early Roshan. Uh, they're going to be sorely disappointed and probably waiting for a long time if they commit to it because it's a late, late Roshan. We still have another full two minutes to go. So it's not spawning anytime soon. They are up here for no reason. And eventually, Sersha will think about this Roshan and they'll run the Slark Gem in during nighttime. This is very difficult to go on, very difficult to counteract. Might just well, need to try that war, and last That'll one. definitely give you a little bit of heads up. They're around here. Young Gon should know it too, and he's just going to go for it. Jeez. Pounces in, pounces out, gets the vision. Blacklist, not breaking up. Not breaking up their formation. Hold on the high ground. I mean, they're trying to bait this Lincoln's pop on a Raven. That is maybe like the one thing that can win them a fight here. Well, oh, he's top. just going to keep pushing. <laughs> he's like, all right, you guys uh, let me know when you need me. I'm going to keep hitting this, uh, this mid lane. Okay, now he's going to jump over. Young Gun getting closer to a fight. Another ward, D warded. Oh, just arrow lands beautifully, sets it up. The Lincolns, they break through it, try and get off the Doom. The Telekinesis stops them for now. They have the beautiful Slark Shard. The Depth Shroud helping them out quite a bit. Raven's been burned through most of his mana already. And my game crashed, so it looks like Young God hit. Yep. I'm not the only one who crashed, it seems. <laughs> that just crashed a lot of us. <laughs> I don't know what crashed us, but something did us dirty there. Hmm. <sighs> Good thing I, I already had the, the V-Mix up on the side, but then I look over and everybody disconnected already. I'm surprised the Observer didn't crash. 
wonder what, uh, yeah, what? I, I didn't feel like there was anything special going on in that fight. Also, who's winning this fight, Avery? Um, I'd have to look at uh, trying to reboot my Dota. I mean, I'm fairly certain the, uh, the Medusa is like got very little mana left and it's probably going to die. Let's see. Uh, loading back in. Might have been like some right. slark dark pack thing. Yeah, I would have to imagine. All right, Dusa actually didn't lose as much mana as I thought she did. I don't know if she got a bumper somewhere or what, but she still has 1,200 to work with. So still like 4,000 HP, effective HP to go on. It looks like Young God, okay, he did manage to get on both the Purge and his ultimate. They used the Doom on a KP instead. Well, his charge is for sick. him. It's hard to be able to go. Oh, he managed to finish him up. Both the supports dying as a result. And Young God, well, it looks like the Ember Spirit's going to be able to chase after him. No problem. They're going to leave Raven for last, it looks like, as even the Bat Rider coming into the mix, trying to catch Bombi, but with the Deuce of gone, so goes the damage. And Young God will clean up Carl as well. And that is effectively the game right there you just wiped blacklist and did you even lose a hero for it nope i mean you lost some computer processing power but <laughs> outside of that nothing of value i mean this lasso comes in after the fight is done i think you had to just go for some crazy lasso it's, it's not easy it's probably impossible top it's just way too late and an arrow to the knee ends raven's career here just tank that <laughs> <laughs> yeah is that it you're kicking him after this? No, I wasn't implying that. <laughs> Just saying, this man has been getting arrowed. See, he on point. Yeah, it really is. And Zersha on point. I mean, they, as you said, they were competitive, but didn't look compelling to me. But this Zersha that's showing up in week two, uh, really doing in some, uh, putting in some good work. I mean, even if they, they, uh, you know, let's say they win this game, then they, they lose the next two or something like that. Like, I would, I'm still way more interested in watching this team now after this game. Yeah, they look pretty solid. They had a very clear game plan this time around. Very good answers to the Medusa draft that back Black was proposed. Very good mm -hmm. answers to the Bat as well in terms of mitigating the damage. And I don't think Black was realized how hard these fights were going to get once you get to like that 30 minute mark. They, in retrospect, had to play a much faster game. Maybe faster than I thought too, but that's tough. I think Tim's Tim's played the fights amazingly. Like the charges in the fights are the only thing making these fights even look close. But they didn't really get any pickoff meta meta on the map, right? Like there wasn't much in terms of the breaker and the bat combining for any kills. And again, I think yeah, because the bat couldn't have a game in the first place. Yes. So how is he gonna pick anybody off? That's the issue with core bat in this patch, though. I personally just think this hero lacks the damage, especially if his lane is rough, which his lane was very rough with the roaming. So it was good identifying his game plan. Like they just snowballed the ember, shut down the bat, and then how the hell are you gonna win any of these mid game fights or get your supports involved in the game? Too much tempo loss. Seems stealing some ancients. Bold move. Oh, well, he's got to find farms somewhere because he's got, he needs his Aghanim Scepter so that way he can just be uh, cutting waves nonstop and push this game to 60 minutes and well, then all of true. a sudden. I mean, you are going to go Divine here on Raven. That is a large Without damage that increase. It's a whole lot of flowers. And God wasting no time in eating them immediately. Oh, they found him. Disruption only lasts so long. The Purge, BKB, charge oh, away. He's, char he's so charged. slow. He's charging. The Purge is going to run out eventually. <laughs> he's charging. He's the Doom on him. <laughs> All right, they got him. I guess it's only a sick and downtime Doom here. Yeah. With the Octarine Spell Prism. Man, isn't this hero enjoyable at this point in the game? Yeah. I'm not playing Doom right now. Uh, I feel like that hero is too too uh, mindless. Oh, uh, you, you know, you, you, just, you just farm and farm own. and farm, and all of a sudden you, uh, yeah, because you you get to this point. And part of what you're implying is is that Doom, you could just kind of throw it out there, right? No, I didn't say that. I feel you're like that. that that well, you definitely implied it, but that's I mean, fine. It's okay, I'll take Captain. it. 
We know that you only play high skill heroes like Omni Knight and Clockwork Goblin. Very I, I am trying out Omni because I think Omni Knight, Knight is broken. Oh, he got the last. He has Aegis though. He does have Aegis and he does have both of his ults. He's got that one right there with the Shadow Dance. He's going to jump over the side. Still has Death Shroud to work with as well if he wants to pop it. Ooh, save the disruption. Has a chance here. Gets off the Death Shroud, sits around there, bounces no down way. to the low ground where he kills Tim. How the hell does he get out of there? Smooth moves and a save from Bombi. I guess you just always blink in, cleanse him or disrupt him and reset. And what do you do after that? That stone gaze down. Do it for Lasso here. They do have Lasso and they spotted the Shadow Demon again. Carl finding the right kind of initiation. That the Shadow Demon is already dead. And they turn to the Dawn. Monic cleanse back around with Ruby save, but the Medusa God. just gets run down. There's too much damage. Even when we get the right initiation, it's not enough. Got melted, man. Defuse of Marana makes me eat my words. <laughs> How much damage do you do in that fight? 1400, absolutely nothing. Charge, gonna come through. Try and find something Beautiful. off the five buybacks here for Blacklist Cap. I mean, you got there's he's still working with an Aegis. I kind of feel like they could win this fight, but there's no point in taking it. Might as well just reset. Why fight five buybacks? You already won the fight. Well, it's, you've absolutely ruined their economy. Now they're up 35,000 net worth. Even just eat a quick cheese here to stay out on the map. Young God is trying to kill a Tormentor. Yeah, so he's not too good at that. Need that Diffusal Murata in there for the, for the big deeps. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. All right, him and Rapido are going to do it. That is also not enough. They're really not respecting the Stormmancer very much. I mean, also they, they, don't they have need five it. shards. <laughs> yeah, they're just doing it for the bonus gold. It? I mean, they you do get bonus, bonus gold. gold. Mm -hmm. but what the? They're all like six slotted. Mm -hmm. No. I'm pretty sure they lost gold doing that. Yeah, by grouping up in one yeah. small part of the map. Yeah. I think if Probably. they each one camp and a wave, they earned more than the time they spent doing that. But either way, good objective focus, you know. That's discipline. They'll get rewarded you know what, with it. They're so selfless. Damage. They're just thinking, well, I have a shard, but I'm sure somebody else on my team needs one. They probably just didn't realize. What if when you have five shards, it takes one away from the enemy? Radiance Courier has been <laughs> There's an idea. Just delete a shard. Like, that's a nice shard you have, Cuckoo. Dyer's top Later. <laughs> Do you get to that. pick which one, like the neutral item? Yeah. You get to pick, you all, like, a vote bar comes up and you, you all get a vote. vote. Yeah. You all vote for <laughs> Boss Coo. His shard gets deleted and he can't buy another one. It's just <laughs> permanently blacked out forever. <laughs> all right. And then it auto penta tips him, whoever you select. There's a good system. <laughs> Maybe the next compendium. Wow. Val can have I didn't that. I think Dota could get more toxic, <laughs> but Avery has found a way. Thank I you. I mean, I think we should lean into it, honestly. Why, why is Dota so afraid to embrace the toxicity? Like, you have this stupid League of Legends game that's all, oh, we're player friendly. <laughs> Nobody cares, right? Just lean into the toxicity. Be the heel of the MOBA universe. It's time. Embrace the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, a wrong tournament, Avery. Wrong tournament. <laughs> A man can dream. Well, Tim's is almost done with his Aghanim Scepter. He's real close. Where's the Divine Beast? Yeah, Stone Gaze. Okay, reset. Well, I think they had uh, they lost it with the buying back, you know. Wait, he bought? Did it die on Courier? It died on Courier. Oh, no. How much longer till his courier's back Two up? Minutes. They're gonna need it. They got the initiation onto the Doom of all heroes, which is pretty decent if they can actually keep him here. The damage is so damn slow, though. Raven's having a hard time putting it out there. They finally dropped the Doom, trying to get out. All right. 
Oh, they got the Slark. Slark, young god. Oh, he did barely gets off the depth shout. He lives. They charge on through again, trying to finish him off. He's still not dead. Another round of Dukes. It's not going to be good enough. The Visage can't quite kill him. KP going to be chased down. JG finishes him off, and Remnant starts sliding away with the disruption onto Raven, too. Limiting the damage, turning the Medusa's illusions back around on him. They wore out a lot here from Zersha. Raven's still alive, but he's not doing any damage, to be honest. He needed that Divine. Maybe you can win that fight if you have Divine, but without it throwing pebbles at a train man still another minute air. until it's up his courier that is yeah well a minute is megas here yeah well let's be honest they were already kind of settling in to play up against megas so that's true that's where this team hits their stride 30 seconds for the courier Can they keep this up? Hold out long enough for the Divine Raper to come and deploy. 15 Raven. seconds. A little bit of pressure there. Throw the Doom out onto Tim's. Quickly kill him. Oh, the they get a force stamp into the fountain. Young God's going to chase yeah, after him. Yeah, he's safe nowhere. Him Raven will die before he can get his Divine Rapier. Now that is just sad. That is sad, man. Divine Rapier will never see the light of day, and it respawns. Once he's I mean, dead. he ends the game with a Divine Rapier, which is rare That's true. to say you That's could true. pull that off. In a losing game, when he was dead, he ended He ended the game with Divine Rapier. Yeah, that's probably... <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's, that's a, a rare one. That's a rare circumstance. I guess you sure. can hold his hat high on that one, but that was just a... Mm. I guess it feels too slow for me. Like I don't, I don't think you can play this game this slow from Blacklist. I think you have to be able to run around and build some momentum between the Visage Bat and Spear Breaker here. Otherwise, you're just getting massively outscaled. The Shadow Demon pick was absolutely disgusting in this game, right? Deals with the Spear Breaker in the fights. Tim's yeah. cannot go in and poke. You get purged, you're, you're done. You get Disruption from Medusa later, helps you scale. You're getting multiple charges on Cleanse to deal with the Bat Rider and some of these like random slows in the engagement. Just a really nice pick, and Blacklist did not have the tempo to punish the Shadow Demon. So I go to Bombi for MVP, even though JG was 15, 2, and 18. I mean, who really gave that Ember 15 kills, you know? The supports. I, yeah, I would definitely say that trio of Ember Spirit, Shadow Demon, and Marana pulled some heavy, heavy lifting in the first 20 minutes of the game yep. and held through the entirety of it. A great game one for Zersha. Let's see if they can keep it up going into game two. I mean, Avery said it perfectly. Blacklist were just playing too slow. And it seems like Zersha figured something out over the weekend. What do you guys think? Uh, I really don't like the Medusa pick from there on. I just feel like when I see Barada and Spirit Breaker, I want heroes that can go along together or just, you know, kill them from a distance. But Medusa makes me feel like he's pulling the team to play around him rather than trying to enable his team because they picked the Barada and Spirit Breaker so early, right? They are bound to get countered. And if you don't somewhat have um, the resources to help them with their heroes, then you're kind of like setting yourself up for failure, I feel. I think this Visage was just fucking useless. <laughs> like not KP, I think he played it as perfectly as he could. He had this like rotation where he protected the stacks top and he had this TP bottom, like he was doing as much as he could on the hero. Maybe his item build could have been a bit different, but I don't think it would have changed the game very much. I think they did something a lot more impactful from their last pick. Mm -hmm. So it will kind of round things off. That's the whole point of having second pick, right? Like the last pick and the 18, so... You know, this Medusa is playing against, like she said, this Shadow Demon Purge, this Doom. Zersha's fights were literally... Look at Bombi, he did not want to save his ember. He's like, go die, I don't care. And he's like, guys, I got the Medusa, I got the Medusa! And then there's just an arrow that comes in, there's a Doom, and Raven's just dead. Yeah, I mean, they, like, Zersha just had saves, Blacklist did not, and they didn't have anyone to soak damage either. They lacked a lot of things, it yeah, felt like, yeah. like... Oh, when I look at the draft, I didn't feel that way, because I feel like the Visage could have been something that they played around, but they just didn't seem to do it. They took uh -huh. top power, but what about after that, you know? And I think a lot of credit to Zersha for punishing this Bat Rider. Like, they enabled their Ember a lot, and I think that's the reason why Blacklist had a hard time moving around the map as well. Yeah, this Doom is so hard to kill too. 
He's just. Yeah, I mean, just crimson against Dusa Visage. You yeah. Know, when you're ahead too. They have this Death Shroud later on. I feel like the SD was the only hero he could lasso. But even when he lassoed SD, they couldn't kill him. Yeah. But the Slug came to save him, and then you know, fights are just so complicated. Everything like, just lose to one SD. Yeah, but your draft shouldn't be that way because it's yeah. a 15 SD, you know, like you see, you yeah. pick this Dusa, you pick this Visage into it. And I think they probably imagined their draft going differently, but the product of what happened was they couldn't help their mid, they couldn't enable their Visage very much, and it was just rough. Yeah, Zersha also playing... Because you said like they had to play fast, you know, they don't, they don't really have a choice against these Tier 1... Uh, SCA teams, and they they did that. I mean, I think, honestly, I think they could have played maybe a little faster. I saw when they got the Doom had the Crimson in the pipe. He kind of died like twice yeah, in a row and yeah, wasn't able I to get the you. Doom off. But, I mean, besides that, they were able to recover pretty well. Yeah, I feel like there was... It, there was now a point in this game where I felt like they were going to lose. Yeah. Like, this Zusa got never sure, but you have Doom, Shadow Demon, Slark. You know, you're, you're all scaling very well, and I think that's the story of what this tour has been. It's like, yeah. I said in his interview too, you know, we lost same ones, like, oh, we didn't scale as good as them. And then people are scaling, you know, but it's how you get there. They won their lanes. They lost all three lanes, actually, CS-wise. Mm -hmm. But just off rotations and kills, it felt like Blacklist couldn't keep up with their movement on the map. Mm -hmm. Here's a match. MVP with Bombi on the Shadow Demon, saving everyone. You saw it yourself. He was just saving people, left, right, and center. And yeah, he made really good use of his spells. I think his best play was still saving the game by ignoring the Ember. <laughs> like, mm. he was like, oh, I don't give a shit, you can die. I, mean, I think in a lot of the fights, like even when he didn't disrupt the Dusa, the fights were... There was this fight bottom where he got lasso into a tier 3 we saw, and then after they killed the SD, the Dusa was like running away with 10% HP. Like, the, the SD was not in that fight. Mm -hmm. It was just the nature of their heroes, they... Bear Rider is very different compared to like this Storm Spirit, this Void Spirit, mm -hmm. where he pokes and goes killed by himself. You know, Bear you want to pull into your team? He wasn't having that great a game as well. It doesn't help that he's playing against like Giga Purges, you know, Slark, SD. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tims was having a rough as hell game that too. Was, you know, yeah. I just, it's all the back of his Shadow Demon. Like, I don't want to flame the draft too much. Uh -huh. I think Blacklist is definitely a good team. And I feel like the series, they'll probably come back in this series too. But mm -hmm. they need to give themselves room to breathe. Yeah, they need to figure out something for sure. But that was just game one of this series. We'll see if Blacklist can take it back in the next after a short break.
Welcome back everyone to the DPC. We just witnessed a crushing defeat by Sersha. Blacklist not able to take game one. Let's see, I've got my panel here to discuss how they can take it back. What do you guys think Blacklist need to do? Need to do something in the game. <laughs> wow, thanks Adam. That was so Did helpful. It? Nothing. They're, they're so reactive. Like, where's uh -huh. the Blacklist we saw last week? That's true. Blacklist was making moves. I feel like... This is what I mean, right? Like, they're a new roster and uh -huh. th these things can tend to happen, you know? And I think now's the real test. Like, they, they've lost this, a game, finally. Mm -hmm. They were 4-0 before this. Like, how do you have this discussion as a team? Like, uh, what went wrong, guys? Okay, what did we fix going into game two? Like, it was... Do we just AFK? Like, why are we this? Why is this happening again? Blackfists are four and two. They lost against Talon. Oh, that's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's, we Ooh, can excuse that game. Break them? <laughs> I mean, oh, everyone yeah. loses to Talon, so they're not counted. Yeah, that's true. So we can excuse that one. <laughs> yeah, but losing to Zersha, well, that that kind of hurts. That's yeah. I mean, this game is definitely a loss that you don't want to take because, I mean, if they lose one more series, that will put them at two two, which means they just basically need to lose one more. And you really don't want to be losing. I mean, Search is a good team, but like you don't want to be losing to the team that came up from Division Two, you know. I think it's more like Zersha is probably the least expected to win against any team. Yeah. And losing against them would hurt a lot. But not to take anything away from Zersha, they played really mm -hmm. well. True. I think they had a really well-rounded, solid draft. They had good scaling, they had good lanes, and they played to their strengths. And it's what I want to see from them more. I feel like they tend to put themselves in a hole, but they didn't this time. Like, mm -hmm. if this game went 50 minutes, I think they would have still took the game. And I think that was what was hard about their drafts before this. And I think maybe for Blacklist, they can still let Raven do their thing. I mean, do his thing. He can still be on the Medusa, on like someone that farms alone for a long time, but let the rest do their thing instead as well. Because I feel when you have uh, KP and Carl on heroes that can just go ham around the map, Raven gets the space he needs and then like he's just coming in to close the game. You can play that way as well mm -hmm. to like adapt to Raven play style, so to say. Yeah, they all just got to do their thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, they need, that's definitely true. They need to do something. They need to be proactive over being reactive. It, that's, it really didn't look like they were able to achieve much last game. And while Zersha looked like a team, like they were communicating, they were being proactive, they were using MLS, smokes, they were just, they kept on doing things. Yeah, it also felt like because of the early game that Carl had, they didn't really have a solution to this Doom. Mm -hmm. I think the... Crimson timing kind of stopped their aggression, you know, in a way. Yep. Every time Zersha hit a timing, Blackwrist felt like they needed more. <laughs> they needed more, they needed more. And it just kept snowballing and snowballing and eventually led up to a point where there was actually his last fight that the Observer caught. I think Kevin SVG missed it. They smoked and they were running at the Dusa because the Tormentor just died. Mm -hmm. And the Slug dove and just before the, then what do you call it, the, the entrance to the base, he killed the Relic on their career. Oh, and that's yeah, the why they relic. didn't have Rapier on Raven for like the three minutes of that base right. defense. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get our draft going of game two coming up right now. The bans, Techies Doom and Monkey Alchemist. What do you guys think? The Doom ban is... Fair. I think it's very, very... It's a very crucial hero in this series. Mm -hmm. I think specifically for Zersha, because mm -hmm. I think Blacklist's play style is very for Protect 1 most of the time. Yeah. Or they might try to change things up later on maybe, but they do definitely play a slower game and Doom out these kind of heroes, they tend to favor these slower games where nothing's happening on the map. Right. I think maybe they are also just afraid that Blacklist will just take the Doom. Ooh. Being a more experienced team, they may be able to abuse the Doom a little bit better than Sasha, I would say. We got Bounty and Bat. What do you think of this opening? Do we like it? I would rather Bounty and Tinker. If you are going to pick oh, the Bounty. Oh, that's disgusting. I mean, like if you're going to have a support, I mean, basically I will assume this Bounty is a support, just to offer you vision, then your cores have to really be abusing that. I mean, Bear Rider don't really need that vision from Bounty Hunter, you know. Sure, it would help. It's a bonus, but I still feel like you should have some heroes that needed the vision badly to do their thing on. Like Tinker, or I would say even Faceless Void would be good. Mm -hmm. Ancient TV? Yeah, Blacklist going back to their roots. I think this team over the past three tours have always shown that 
when in doubt, pick Raven TV. That's <laughs> so what it yep. feels like the Dusa didn't really work out. Honestly, with all this hype we had about Dusa last week, I feel like the hero's been losing more than winning a lot more. I think teams have been getting oh, better at dealing it. with it. Yeah, yeah the pe people are getting better. It's also hard to play around her timing sometimes. That's true. I feel like TV is so much more straightforward, you know, they pop meta, hit tower. But with Dusa, you kind of want to slow siege, but when I mean, you pick this Dusa so early in the draft, like we saw us he just got doomed, you know, like slow <laughs> siege goodbye, we're fighting now. It's true. This bounty against Enchi is pretty interesting. I feel like it's one of the better heroes in the game, but the lanes kind of. Weird, because you're good at getting on top of the Ench and you have a stun now with Blood Grenade, so you do threaten the Ench in a way, but you also have high armor, so you're one of the bear heroes, but if Ench has like a good sentry placement and with Impetus, you kind of do nothing in the lane. Mm. You're always under threat, this slow plus Impetus with meta now on top of it, it's just... Painful. Might be a hard lane to play into. Yeah. I always, I'm so sad because Dark Steer is always banned whenever there's a TV. It's like a... Just yeah, it's a staple. I mean, they have the bounty as well, and this Surge Bad Rider looks really strong too, so I kind of understand it. Yeah. But I love that hero. I think it's really hard to play this Dark Seer against Ench though, because yeah. Ench takes the illusion, so the oh, wall actually true, works right. against you. And in lane, you know, the purge is just... You just kind of bully Dark Seer. Oh, true. Your Pango. Is this a JG Pango? I hope it's a JG Pango because I feel <laughs> like the Rupido Pango has not really been something that has shown any success. So if it's a JG Pango, then that would be a Rupido um, Bad Rider. Right. I think so. I hope so. Not really <laughs> sure what they're going for here. I feel Rupido suits more on heroes that can be the secondary carry, you know. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I mean, I think that's why he feels like the Pango is that as well. Like, I kind of get it, but it's just not the same, you know, like compared yeah. to the impact of like some Doom or what else does he play? Timber Saw, Dawnbreaker, they just look much better. Form, pretty good pick here. Good against Bad, good against Pango. Nice against Bounty as well. Curious to see what kind of support pairing they want. They need some damage right now. Go for Disruptor instead. So that's a Bad Rider answer. Right, Glimpse, mm -hmm. you know, you break Lasso, you're good lane, you have permanent mana. Heroes can't really run away from you, so not too bad. Oh, well, there's your Willow. There's my Willow. Do I like it? Not really. <laughs> I feel like Zersha has so much single target, but no real damage right now. That's true. Maybe things will come together more with their last pick, but right now their draft looks very... I want to say puppy, but I think it's more like skirmishy, you know? Uh -huh. They want like a lot of these chaotic fights a lot. Whereas Blacklist have this lineup that's more, we fight meta, do this, you know. Mm -hmm. No, it does look really pubby, for sure. It's battle time. <laughs> All right, Maybe what it's do their need? approach against the TB, you know, or right. Blacklist in general to just keep fighting. You know, they have this bounty pick early, you have track goal, you kind of want to snowball again. I mean, I think it's kind of annoying to play Storm into Velo, I guess. I mean, it is, but you're also not going to care, I think. Yeah. Like it's, you're, gonna it's, you're just going to deal with it, right? Yep. Yeah. And they have the tools to drag the game. The shutter is great. We also kind of nice against TB later in the game. Bombi's a, again, a very specialist player. He's played this matchup many times, so... Maybe we'll see something cool. Something cool, like something uh, cool, like, the, like the Shanks, <laughs> the Shanks Mjolnir. Willow with the Crystallis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember when Willow first came out, he just solo killed TV. <laughs> Everyone would like, always complain. Level 20 Willow, like, woohoo. Woo <laughs> yeah, well, it's fun. But what do you think they could pick as their last picks for both teams? I honestly think Lifestealer isn't bad here for Sosha, because I, I know it's TB, but like, it, it's not the old TB versus Lifestealer, you know? When you press Rage, he can't Sunder. And then it's a great hero against like the Shopter, uh, Eng. I would say even Storm, because Storm now they don't really buy Orchid, so they don't really threaten Life Stealer the same anymore. But yeah, like you have Pango, you have Bounty Hunter, you have Brighter. As a Life I think it's not that bad. It's the last pick here against Bradley's he uh, heroes. I like Ursa and Anti Mage right now for Zersha. I think Ursa is good against the heroes and it also takes Roche away. They don't really have a way to take Roche right now. It's true. A lot of fighting but nothing to actually transition the game for them. 
kind of depends on what blacklist pick here. Oh, they need an off lane. They need team fight. The purges have been removed. No legion. We'll probably see a tide here. Magnus, Magnus. Okay, that's fair. We haven't seen tide in forever. Yeah, here was kind of. That was dead. one game. It was. A, it is yeah. a good pick here, though. I like it a lot against the. Zersha heroes. I also feel like Blacklist last season loved their Tide Disruptor. Mm -hmm. Templar. Uh, so oh, I'm impressed. Kind of similar to what I said, just Rosh Hero yeah, Temple, but hero. I think the difference is that Ursa scales well against TB and it's easy to play against RP. But else in this game, I feel like it's so hard to beat TA. It's really difficult. They have to snowball really hard and I think high ground might be a problem. Rupido and JG are going to have to be super farmed. It can be different if this TA goes for, you know, like, Aghanim and sharp play so that this Storm can't do his thing. I mean, if you want to do that, why don't you just pick a different character? Exactly. I, I, like I don't like the They want to play anyway. fast, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what their lineup shouts to me. It's like, we're going to scale on this bad Pango. TB is never going to be an issue. And I think there is a world where they can execute it. They have decent lanes, they have this bounty hunter. But I think Blacklist has a more well-rounded, stable draft. Yes. So I'm going to go 1-1 one, on one this. It's warm colors versus cool colors. They're like all orange and pink and stuff, and the other team's all blue. We're at the blue beach, where the sand meets the sea. That's true. So uh, let's see how this game's going to go. I'm going to throw you guys off to our casters for game two. Thank you, Self. That is a great point. Avery, in your uh, multitude of years playing Dota as a captain of a, you know, a TI team, as a coach of a TI team, uh, which draft do you like more? Do you like the colors, uh, the warm colors or the, the cool colors? Uh, neither. I would have drafted all green heroes as green is the ultimate color choice that trumps all. That was a trick question, Cap. A good attempt, but you will not fool me today, you absolute fool. That's wait, all you've they, made of wait, yourself. Okay, so green is number one, but like, yes, are the red, course. orange, between red, oranges, and blues, are they equally bad? Is that what you're saying? Or they, surely there's got to be a worse one, right? Um, blue. I think blue is okay. the next in the hierarchy. Okay. If we include the purple in there as well. If we do not include the purple, then this is not even a real discussion. So I'm assuming we're including the purple, in which case, yes, blue does trump red. What what traits do uh, the, the blue lineups, uh, do, do, you, do you prefer? Why do you prefer blue? Scaling and team fight tends to be better than the red. The red tends to have okay. more single target burst and pickoff, but in this kind of meta where you can't find anybody, I, I don't feel like it counts for that much, so... I'll give it to the blue here. Battle. Also, I just Damn. hate Batrider. I don't know if I made that clear, but... <laughs> yeah, I, you did make it, I think, very clear. I mean, it's an offlane Batrider. Do you even worse that? Even oh. worse. <laughs> Actually, maybe it's I not mean, I thought it was better because it also means that we have a mid-pango, and I, I like that over offlane pango. Yeah, that. I mean, I don't like either of these heroes in the offlane, so I guess you had to put one there. But yeah. I mean, what does my preference matter? I'm retired. Who cares? Carl going to contest the rune. KP. Ooh, they just take it in front of him. Three runes here. Desertia. Easy start. Blacklist. Getting a little skittish. Maybe that game one loss. Slowing them down a little bit. Now they're afraid of Zersha. They came into it being like, oh, we're Goliath. We're going to take these guys down. Send them back to lower division. But now, now they realize Zersha is a threat. Wait, did, is that, did they say that? Yeah, they absolutely did. Yeah, I had a phone call with Cuckoo after. Uh, after oh, you had, you had a phone call with Cuckoo, huh? That's that's <laughs> funny because I had a phone call with Cuckoo. And he <laughs> yeah. said, that "You're terrible." <laughs> anyway, that was my phone call. Much more productive than your <laughs> phone call. <laughs> what? Well, how does that conversation <laughs> even go? Hey, Cuckoo. I don't know. What do you think of our casting? I'm gonna be honest. Terrible. I was sure that joke was supposed to go somewhere, but I was, I couldn't figure it out. So I just remember okay. calling you bad, which is always appealing that's, to my That's your just standard, your go-to. Yeah, that's like the deep, that's the default. All right, top lane we got Enchantress Terrorblade versus Batrider Dark Willow. Last game the the Batrider was very heavily addressed. Do you feel like uh, the Batrider game is better or worse than uh, definitely game better? One? That was about as bad of a back game you're ever going to find. This game, he's playing versus zero purges and 
I mean, the only real good core I'd say is Storm. I think Storm owns Bat, but outside of that, in theory, has good matchups. So they'll just even get more done. I don't know, like, I feel like if you're playing this off like Bat, you should just play for utility and frontline as opposed to the damage. Oh, the flame break into the flowers. That is that beautiful. Is, that is level two first right there. Just push wow. the wave and got it and punish Raven instantly for being way too far up solo on this lane. This is a pretty nasty lane in terms of damage. Punishing Bosku for going for the, the pull at the same time, so. Yeah, this is not a pull you can do until you have the, the level two at least. Even then, I'm not really sure how you play this lane. You don't really have the damage to out-trade the bat in the early waves, and then the level two kill threat is insanely high. Well, Blacklist is already going to feel pretty bad because this was their counter pick. Uh, like their um, the fourth pick overall, right? That was they picked up uh, oh. Bat Rider plus what was their opener? Bat Rider or Bounty Hunter, right? Yes. So and first then they responded with Terror Blade. Yeah. Highest net worth in the game right now, first blood and some runes. If we're looking at this compared to last game, maybe this bad can scale up better and have a lot more momentum. And I think this is where the hero can shine is the early early game with blood grenades plus the slow off um, flame break is very strong. It's the reason we were seeing it play to support. I think you have to abuse that and get to a point where your, your damage from your spells is just outpacing the utility teams are going to build. Because eventually yeah. the utility kind of destroys this hero. There's not much you can do versus like pipes and lotuses and all this. But if you can outpace it, then there's not much Blacklist have in terms of dealing with them on the map. Like, Terrorblade hates this hero. Mag doesn't do anything to it. Disruptor and Shard, not great. You basically have Glimpse and Storm. That's it. So it's a very fast start for Rapido. We'll see how much you can make of it. <laughs> As they all reconnect. I'm finally back in, hopefully soon. JG and Carl, about. the uh, Pango Storm Spirit matchup. That one's got to be much better for Carl than... Uh, I mean, Carl just had... We, we already tackled the whole Bat Rider. It was a bad Bat Rider game. So this time, Carl, I feel like he's got actually a pretty good game on his hands. I mean, eh, this guy should be pretty free, not only just in lane, but also in the game, it looks like to me. Not a lot of direct stuns for dealing with him. Oh, nice dodge around the brambles. That was very pretty. It does mean he's going to have to give up on uh, the water runes the first round, GG. You nice very deny. easily get ahead of Carl. It's going to help this mid lane matchup a lot, which was basically getting two for one by Carl in the CS. So that's a big swing. Also a product of how well this top lane was going, that you had early ring of health for Rapido off the first blood and runes. It means you can leave him alone up here and he's not getting punished too hard. Some nice early support player in game two, just like game one for Xertia as they continue to try and snowball mid. Hound Hunter rotating through the twin gates to try and sneak in a kill here. He's got a blood grenade. He's got level two, so it's going to be a big Janata hit. They, the kill on a Terra Blade is a lot easier for the Banner Rider. I'm not sure the Bounty Hunter is going to be doing much more than just stunning. We'll see. I mean, Raven does not want to go this far. Neutrals. Lane equilibrium is just terrible right now for Blacklist safe lane, so he's going to have to jungle it up. Will end up being the correct call, as he would have 100% died there. But still, you can't get this lane back because both camps got blocked. Rapido's going to keep it here. He had an extra creep on top of it. What is Raven supposed to do right now? Uh, sit there and ping his five and complain. That's oh. my experience of what you do right now. The old N.A. carry tactic, I see. Yeah. A true classic. Rapido's not even letting it go into the tower. As you said, he's just going to freeze the lane out here. Right in front of his own tower, making the lane extremely hard to play for Raven and Bosco. He has not gotten CS in a minute. He's just going to meta. Look, they're doing the a Carl. Yeah, he may have gotten a water rune, but he is going to be ganked double stunned by T. He put the blood grenade to use here, and Carl does fall. So, effectively, Zersha hard winning now. Well, maybe not hard winning. They do get a kill on mid. It is still Carl very far ahead in CS, but really good rotations by the supports. Good setup so far. I mean, they're winning the two lanes that are going to give them a lot of tempo in this game between the Pango and the Bat. The TA, like, who cares about TA? You always catch up on Ancients. That said, Young God's not even having that bad of a lane down here. 
still getting something. And I mean, Tihi can always re-rotate, create some space for him. He's already got boots on the TA as well. So it can be hard to gank him here. That said, if you're blacklist, you see all this action mid. I mean, you better be smacking this Templar Assassin when you have the time to do it. Get the glimpse back. Skewer back as well. Do they have any detection to be able to spot him? Uh oh, I don't oh. think they do. Tim's oh, okay. he's walking into the sentry. They're going to be able to get him with the cleave. They do manage to get a trade off though, as uh, support does end up dying on the other side. Tim's falls. I mean, Young God's really happy with that man. Now he's getting kills, extra CS. Tim's off the map. They got the XP first. Like this is probably the lane that Zersha's devoted the least resources to, and it's still getting kills for them. Very decent early game here, despite the, the CS going well for Blacklist, the kills are not. And especially for Raven, man, he's level three. He got absolutely destroyed in the last two minutes here in terms of him being able to walk up the waves compared to his counterpart in the Templar Assassin. This is a very concerning pressure point for Blacklist. I mean, Terrorblade can jungle, but not from level two and three, it's pretty damn slow. JG using the Squash Buckle aggressively here, right as the supports rotate in. Oh, there's no real danger of dying here. He can always use the Rolling Thunder if he feels like he's in trouble. At least the rune's denied from the Centaur. Blacklist getting something going, but you can see these pressure points adding up right now. There is nobody top. It's literally an empty lane top for Rapido. He's having the time of his life, so Zersha can just send the supports wherever they want right now. And I'm, I'm sending them somewhere. I'm thinking to send them to Wisdom Runes. As they're up in 30 seconds. Gotta be thinking about that here. If he, do you get that steal? Oh my, these Blacklist supports are going to be in a world of pain. I think they're going to. The way T is setting up right now, and also he has a stun, the Disruptor doesn't. He should be guaranteed. He should be guaranteed. Here. Yeah. Oh, this is... They scanned it. They know. Oh, they're bringing the storm? I... He, Oh, yeah, dust, too. dust. And he's got Vortex. He saw him. So he's going to back out. They will get the Wisdom Rune on the side of Blacklist. And they are going to find Tihi eventually here. And should be able to get the <laughs> kill as he's backed up against the Defender Gate. Can't really go anywhere from there. It's a good play. That, that is like a necessary move, in my opinion. Downside is Carl picks it up. So, I mean, it's really not a downside because he could use the extra XP too, but. It will deprive Cuckoo of some of that XP as early last time. Lasso oh, pull back into the flames with the disruptors here. Making the fight even harder. In fact, the supports together may be able to put their firepower to work to get the kill and repeat, but they don't. The Enchantress not Vanguard able to do enough damage fast enough. This hero is very tanky at this part of the game with double circle at Vanguard on Universal. That's a tough fight. You got a feel for Cuckoo. His game is going to be rough. It's going to be tough. He's going to have to buy detection, too. Radiant structures All three cores. Yeah, that's actually up. a good point. No, nothing feels worse than being behind in a game and having to buy detection for an invis hero. I mean, he effectively got his wisdom rune stolen, and he's going to have his gold stolen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Bosco might be having that phone call with himself later. <laughs> Bosku might want to reinstate himself as the offlaner after this painful experience. Because he just might be dying to the Dark Will. The heal goes off, but it's not going to be able to get enough in there. And Bombi, he might die, but Tim's certainly going to be traded out for it as TE commits to that one. Carl has a bit of mana to work with, so no problem with dying here, but still a one for two exchange and uh, a fight that TE gets a lot of experience out of. So that bounty hunter is creeping up to level five. Uh, level six is going to be looking real daunting when you're behind like this already. Yeah, and we should mention JG got mid tower off that double damage. So, okay, that's just gone, <laughs> which is pretty brutal here. It's going to open up aggressive observers in these jungles where you can find the Terrorblade, who is still level five. As Raven is perhaps having one of the slowest starts I've seen in a long time, just unable to lane top based on what happened with that single death and then the equilibrium. That is why equilibrium is important. Ramble, Rolling Thunder is coming in. They've got him. Oh no, Carl. He rotated up here, I think, because he maybe felt like he was the only person who could stand up here. But 
Not even he, apparently. Not quick enough reactions, not respecting Rapido's Batrider, just go for the lasso. This Batrider Dark Wolf is a nice combination. Because Dark Wolf is one of the highest damage supports in the game, pretty much, so. It just gives Batrider so much extra to play off of in these early kill attempts. It's and again, they're getting these kills pre-level six. And once Bombi has yep. the, the actual damage spell, which is Bendlam. Uh, it's going to be nice for sure. Oh, he steals away the haste rune. Boss coup. Okay, they actually purged it out, so no haste rune. Let's see if the swashbuckle can land. Nah, he's already healed enough. I feel for these blacklist supports right now. Dyer's they are going to have a very tough task ahead of them. I mean, you just probably have to go and play behind your mag and storm and get some Radiant numbers fights going scary. to get the, the ults here. There's no other way you're going to get it on this map with Bounty running around, with Batrider pushing Dyer's waves. It's going to be TA traps. Dyer's top tower has fallen. The solution, it seems, is try and play on the other side of the map, but... TA with the traps already out kind of seems like a brick wall they'd be running into. They desperately need level six on Tim's. Feels like the only way to guarantee kills right now. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Ancient stacking is another way you can find it. But then you have to have someone come and clear it, which honestly isn't the fastest is right attack. now either. Another issue with losing your mid, your middle tower this early in games is it's another point where your supports can't find the XP because the lane ends up being out in this no man's land where it's like Tim's is sitting by his tier two right now. You just can't go anywhere. This is such an awkward map for Blacklist. They just need like one big core kill to open up something and then they can start gaining momentum. But Zersha are giving them nothing. T he actually mm -hmm. showing himself here. I think he's hoping to be able to slow them down taking this ancient so his pango can get here. Maybe they can seal it away. They actually get the glimpse back. No static storm still though. And Carl not really close enough to take advantage of this and they can't even get the bounty hunter. He TP'd away before Blacklist could make the jump. I mean, that's what we call some good old fashioned space right there. Five heroes to the triangle with some sentries and some dust and for nothing. Tim still doesn't have ult. He got a lot of experience out of that. Yeah, he soaked it for sure. It's just, you're losing so much time right now that Zershar farming the hell out of the map, man. We're up to a 6K gold lead, and we even haven't even really had a fight. Octarine done for Rapido. This is one of the fastest bad Octarines I've seen in a while. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. All right, well, six is here. Well, not for everybody. Bosk is missing his, but honestly, who cares? It's the static well, storm that matters. Blacklist are going to try and make a move off of that, but Zersha, they have level six on both of their supports as well, so they can respond. I mean, Bosk, you probably cares. Yeah, but do you think anybody else cares? Lane. No. Lane. I care. Oh, they need the glimpse. Dyer's bottom well, you should tell them that on your next phone call with him. I will. When we, when we chat tonight on the, the speed dial, I'll let them know. Terrorize just to make sure they get this kill. Pretty sure they had it anyway, but why not? A big kill to get. KP, who was one of the few players on Blacklist Rivalry, who was getting some sort of farm. In fact, he has the top net worth of his team, and he gets... Picked off by four Radiant's heroes. Middle tower is under attack. And they're setting up for another wisdom rune. So that rotation actually was really well timed. It's kind of cool. perfect. They even leave a TA trap here to help Tihi try and commit for this. It's going to be close. Radiant are scanning. Oh, Tim's. Oh, ah, Tim clicks him just in time, Tim's. He's going to have to content himself with a kill rather than a wisdom rune. Is he actually dead here? All right, another dust. They all have dust. Still, you spend two dust. 
that's 160 for like a 500 kill and you lost the wisdom rune yeah the experience was i mean the experience for tim specifically was like 100 compared to the yeah was it 500 level 8 560 he lost well worth Deso up for Young God as he stacks of his own here. Level 13 on the TA who has been untouched. Out leveling everybody in this game by a huge margin, especially Raven who had to jungle from level three and does not have a cleave effect. This is just a brutal amount of experience difference Zershi have created off the wisdom runes, off the, the laning, the leveling, the stacking. Everything going their way right now. 8K gold advantage at 15. That is a lot, and this blink on KP is going to have to pay off. It's going to have to pay off big, and right now, as they smoke, try and find a good RP. You need core kills here. You need RP in a static storm. You do not need this bounty hunter. No. I mean, they'll they'll take the pick off, but when it comes to the RP, they need something much bigger. Zersha? They actually are thinking about still going for the fight. They're going to quickly nab Bosku, pull him into... Uh, Young God's big meld strike. Plus two on the Deso. Well, there's your five-man blink RP smoke. I mean, you still have RP. It's just that is the bounty hunter. This hero is annoying as hell. Really hard to make moves in this hero. Yeah. So Blacklist are going to be stalled out for now, and they're going to have to... Are we trying to find that They're going to go in early Roche. They've got double minus armor. Yeah, They've why got, not? Uh, Pango, TA. That's really good. It's not going to be insanely fast here, but it's going to be good enough. Especially when Blacklist are just five million around the map because they're still looking for that fight that just does not exist anywhere right now. Stupendous. King the Batrider. Tim's sitting around. He really wants to go on this guy. He's like, please, guys, this Batrider. He's worth so much. He's got an Octarine. We gotta shut him down, but they're gonna learn the bad news now. Team was doing Roshan during that period. So, 7,000 net worth lead down for Zersha, and here comes the pressure. Now, you're gonna have to deal with uh, an Aegis TA who's probably gonna be able to pick up a Blink Dagger next. Gotta be careful of any of these team fights, otherwise, track kills are gonna make this go from 7k to 17k net worth lead. Oh, they thought to be that drastic. One good RP could Dyer's change a lot in this game. Is under attack. We'll see if that happens. Radiant KP. Stagged here by the Brambles. It's pretty tanky, though. Require Rapido to be able to catch him with Lasso, and he's not ready to go for that. He's just trying to push towards his BKP. Glax are splitting the map now. They're starting to get some pressure with the TV illusions. Carl's been pushing out mid. Does have a shield rune here, too. Decent time to take a fight, honestly. The shield rune is pretty strong. And by that, I mean it is actually worth 666 in shield value. Could that be a sign cap? Could it be an omen? Do you think that's a good omen or a bad omen? I don't know, but it's an omen. I think you'll take any omen at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I mean, the current trajectory Radiant's without Divine top Intervention top is looking top. like Blacklist loses this game, so they'll probably take anything at this point. Maybe Carl's made a pact. A pact with the Dota demons. Gotcha. Yeah, he made Radiant's a pact with Terrorblade. Is under attack. That's true. We also have the best buddies, Terrorblade and Chantress, back on the same team. <laughs> the best buddies. Oh god, I forgot about that one. I mean, that's hey, true. Hey, what do you think about? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's true. I believe it. it is I believe true. it. Sure, it is, buddy. <laughs> uh, what do you think about this uh, harpoon build for uh, Magnus? Everyone's going now. It's all the rage. In fact, we're seeing some carry Magnuses, not just offlane Magnuses, go this build. I think it's really good when you get it fast and you're ahead. I think it just guarantees free kills on the map. The damage because he's a universal hero is pretty bonkers so it scales really well you get mana region out of it you get right click it's like everything you want on the hero i know it makes perfect sense on this hero on the offlane mag i'm slightly less convinced but i still think it's fine it's just another game where like don't you want auras here to buff up your terror blade so you can carry the game
Like, this is a much it's better it. award. If you, if you knew you were 9k net worth behind, that's that's a point where it's like, can we win team fights at all anymore? Maybe we just have to play off of great skewer pickoffs, you know? Whoa, what I miss? I mean, I, uh, I don't know if I buy that. I think you, I think you can. I don't think AK is that bad. If the, if you stall this game out with a rat, you don't get caught. Thirty minute mark, you're only down AK with terribly mag. You can easily win fights. You land some big RPs in a static storm. There's not going to be any like mass BKBs here. From Zersha. Well, there will be two, but I think you can get a fight before that. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, these items are none of them are easy when you're behind like this. There are no easy choices. I love this. Sersha, another smoke rotation Dyer's during a very important timing, right? They did the 14 minute smoke down here. Now they're doing the 20 minute smoke. Nobody's doing the Tormentor. They could stick around on some heroes, make sure they get the uh, 21 minute wisdom runes. Yeah, and they're setting up top. This is a really nice map movement. They should get rewarded. Pop KP, pull them in. What about the Bedlam? Here it comes, off the stun. There's the reward. Very nice kill. Big pickoff. What's the return for Blacklist? Just finding nothing. Getting out, visioned on the map with the traps, the bounty hunter, plus the deep wards. Zerf just see everything. They're just picking them apart. Shield rune for JG. He's very tanky right now. Bosku coming forward to try and help Carl, but Carl didn't need the help. And the silver angle in with the shield rune. Charges forward, gets one pick off. Young God gets really aggressive with the final 30 seconds of his Aegis. I guess he uh, wants to see if Blacklist are willing to fight them. They, of course, are not. They just back away. Wisdom rune once again going to Zersha. You ever hear of the pinball wizard? <laughs> <laughs> I have. Play that I, silver I, I, ball, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shard to the willow. Not a bad one to Rolling get. Going all the way down from Soho down to Brighton. That's true. I mean, I don't know who we're talking about, but I'll take it. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. You think Dora players? Ah, never mind, I'm not. Radiant's <laughs> middle tower is under attack. We'll leave that reference at that before I end everybody's career here. JG will get another rune. Arcane is looking for that Ags. All three of Zerg is a nice one. Just scaling here. See, he setting up here. Even just a small stun. They do have a scan, and yeah, Carl's out of there in a hot second. Does not want to risk getting picked off. They're just playing the playing the rap, kind of like what you're talking about. Play for late. You just need to maintain the farm. Cannot get out farm during this period, or at least if you are, make it as as little as possible. Keep scaling on the Terrorblade with illusions. Keep farming the sides of the map with Storm and Mag. If you get that one RP fight, you come back in this game very easily. Just have to set yourself up for it. Ag's finished. Aghanim Scepter, Blink Dagger, and Medallion. Big items all coming in for Zersha all at the same time. Yeah, this is a nice Ag timing. Bobby's like, you know what? This game's going to go late. I'm going to go for an Aghanim Scepter, too. And yeah, why not? Just shred that TB through his armor. He's rich enough to oh, do yeah, it. That's a good point. He's got the Philly. Got the free shard. What else is there to buy? I think Aether Lens would be decent too, especially since he already has Yules. Like Aether Lens Yules versus Mag is always nice. Oh, he, he pushing forward. So much vision. I always notice they always have some aggressive sentries that he knows he's able to play under, and he gets all this vision, sets it up. Static Storm does go out, but they've already caught three heroes essentially. KP might be able to get away with the skewer, has to go for the TP out. Oh, dies too quickly. Yule Scepter is going to be able to catch him. So that will be three caught and three killed for Zersha as they up the net worth lead now to 13k. That was just a beautiful jump. They hit all three at the exact same time. 
Uh, that's like such a chaotic way to start a fight if you're Blacklist. Three of you are getting jumped by three different heroes at three different spots. Uh, how do you even take that fight mentally? Bosku did buy a gem out and gave it to Carl. This is another big factor. You need to clear through some of this vision. Just set up defensive ops with sentries so you can take those engagements when the bounty runs into you. Because if you just let him sit there like that and see everything, you're going to have a rough time. Very rough time. So this gem is ultra important right now. He cannot die with it, and you have to get some return on the map in terms of control. You'll see the bounty there and whip himself out which will produce a smoke for Blacklist as they now know Zersh are split. This is a long way to smoke, though. Tracked up Carl plays defensively. His team smoking to him and now smoking over to mid lane where they see Young God. He does have a BKB, though, so they have to be very certain about their initiation. It's tricky. Especially since you don't have this Scotty on Raid. Like, he is close. He's 200 gold off. Very big item for the TA Terribly matchup. Which generally is a very favorable matchup for Terribly. That's why I think there's still some comeback potential here. If you can get a good RP on the TA, skewer or into you, just let the Terribly go to work. Yeah, maybe she BKBs, but then she can still just die. Especially if you chain a Storm Pull. That would be what I were trying to do. And that Scotty is finished. Well, this is like the big time for Blacklist to strike back in this game if they're going to strike back. Because otherwise you're probably just giving up next Roshan and then I think that fight looks very difficult. Oh, that Roshan is spawning very soon, but at the same time, Carl really wants his BKB. He'll collect it from the wave that is pushing in top. So Scotty and BKB, you're right. This is a huge timing for them. And it's also before Zersha get their next item. Because this Ags on Dark Willow is not far away. And if JG gets a basher on Pango, then suddenly his control and damage skyrockets and just becomes way too annoying, I think. You also have double damage on Young God right now. What a rune to pick up for this interval. You might just win the game by the fact that you can do Roche so much faster. I don't think Blacklist are close to contesting this right now. They just glimpsed the Batrider back, so I think that Blacklist are just going to take a trade off here, tier two, in exchange for Roshan. Which, from the way you're talking, sounds like you don't approve. Uh, this is such a hard Rosh to contest. Because it's stuck up here, like behind traps and bounty hunter, you have to run through, but. This is, in theory, like a game-ending Aegis. If they, if they can get the fight out of it into the high ground, this is the timing Zersha want to hit right now. Well, so maybe that's... Uh, I mean, if, I, if I'm Blacklist and I'm trying to keep morale up, I'm, I'm saying, well, that's KP's best timing. We want them to go high ground because we're going to be able to blink Harpoon, skewer them back. We're going to play Storm Spirit off of Fountain, that's true. dipping back and forth, glimpsing them. As well. You get the skewer, you get a glimpse after. That guy's stuck in there, your base for forever. That's a big question. Can you drag this TA into you? Bombi with the Yules, maybe why I would have preferred their Aetherlands here. You can reliably stop that. See if KB you can find it. Get some good information. Drops a ward, gets the initiation onto the Magnus. They try and stop it. The BKB goes out. The Rolling Thunder on through KP. He'll Let's die. He does have a buyback. He's got to pop it. Unless Zersh are not confident enough without that BKB. That's a good glimpse. They got the glimpse afterwards. Young God, four staff. It's down to the low ground. The buyback goes out. They have to get out of here. The stun actually hitting Raven as well here. Oh no, they really need to be able to kill Young God and anchor this team fight around an area, but they won't. Zersha got everybody out. You can't let them get away like that. There needed to be a Vortex or a faster mag buy or something. Zersha just got a free Magnus buy for... They can just go again. Yeah. And meta here, you only have 10... And some meta. Uh, that next high ground fight, you don't have meta, that is even worse. And KP just got caught off guard, man. Uh, there's no way around it. Rapido just walks up the side and messes with you. That is the play that should happen. If you're thinking about this battle on the side of the, of the map are these aggressive obs that he can jump you with blink. The only time Xerxes is CKP is when he's RPing them or skewering them.
16,000 net worth lead, 15 to five. Zersha with a heavy, heavy lead and are in a position, as Avery was saying, to be able to end the game potentially off of this Aegis. Still another two and a half minutes for it too. And a push that is slowly coming their way. Blacklist trying to play out on the map right now, trying to play the sides, getting whatever farm they can. I mean, if they could get to Agatum Stormsmith, uh, Stormsphere, now that's a game changer for sure, especially these high ground pushes, but. He's a ways away. Yeah. Very far away. You're gonna have to win a fight without it. it just means good skewers, good RP smoke this time so that KP cannot get jumped first. This is definitely gonna help. Just gotta anchor that fight really deep here. Meta up in 35. Preemptive Brambles. Trying to make it as hard as possible to get this kind of initiation. They're just trying to stall for meta. 20 seconds left. Radiant are scanning. 130 on the Aegis. Meta is effectively up. Five seconds left. This initiation could come at any time. The smoke is ran out, though. The illusions will be able to push them back for now. But Zersha, minute and a half left on the Aegis. You have to imagine they're going to get more and more aggressive as that timer starts dwindling down. Or maybe I'm wrong entirely. Maybe they're just going to reset. Not confident enough to force the high ground without the Aegis here. Worried about this TA just getting pushed in really deep. But you can't blame him. That fight does look kind of hard unless you land this clutch Yules on the mag jump. And you're still scaling. Bash, you're done for the Pango. Age is still up for a minute. Blacklist out of the base. Now you can take this fight. This is a way easier fight. Yeah, now is the time to strike, perhaps. They don't have their disables, though, nearby. Both the Pango and the Batrider last in position, so... I'll just content with, I guess, continuing to farm more and more. It does make the high ground, the high ground's only going to get harder over time, but maybe you can convince Blacklist to take a team fight outside of that base. I see him on this trap. And the vision been so obnoxious for Blacklist to deal with. Just can't find the fights on their terms at all. Oh no, the trap! It hit him! Oh, he he got silenced. silenced! KP! He didn't realize he was got silenced like that, and his initiation is completely ruined. The static storm goes out. Young Gun has already popped the BKB, finishes up Tim's. Now Raven turns going attention to over work. Ages and five. This did a lot of damage out from Raven. This is a bit problematic. They don't have the detection though. He just ran out. Now they have it. They see him now, oh, and they get him. He the timing. managed to finish him off. They ignored him for the entire Aegis timer. TP out from Carl. Is he going to be able to get away? No. Finally, the damage is put out. Raven even though still holding strong now that the Templar Assassin is dead. He feels good about taking the rest of this fight. Got to be careful that Dark Shadow Realms under. Nice timing, JG, though. That damage. Means, and he'll go to work. <laughs> what a hit there with the swashbuckles. Damn, that turnaround. You don't have TA, but it does not matter when your Dark Roll can output another 2,000 damage at the end of that, bringing her up to 3,300 for the fight. And of course, JG coming back in with them swashbuckles. Nasty stuff on the clump. I mean, decent team fight from Raven, considering ah, KP got about. nothing done, right? Like, that is yeah. worst case scenario. He jumps, gets silenced, no RP, no skewer, no empower for the second half of that. You just left on an island there. If you're Raven, you have to do it the hard way. You, you still get that big TA kill, Dyer's perfectly timed the Aegis out. Top. Very heads up play. We'll keep this game going if in a limp state. Have we seen a single RP in this game? I don't think we have. I've seen him stop spamming it. Does that count? No. It doesn't. Well, then I don't think we have. I think it speaks to how difficult it's been for KP to enter the fights. First the bounty and the TA track vision. It's, uh, yeah, I, I feel for him. You have very little wards on the map, too, because you just can't get out. And there's a gem as well. Bosco's gem on Tihi now. Even worse for you. You know, they're doing this Tormentor, but... It's an Enchantress and a Disruptor. Yeah, it's <laughs> not great. <laughs> they're short options. It's a 50-50 shitpile.
<laughs> you don't want either one of those. <laughs> it's, this is not a good little friends game and it's not even a game where Bosco can probably get two creeps to enchant anyway. I guess you can always enchant lane creeps. The thing is, he doesn't really want to be pushing lanes out and taking farm, because I don't think his items matter at all. Whereas his core is really good. This is like a negative impact shard, actually. That said, Tim's is close to Axe. So you're looking for some comeback potential in this game. That's a big comeback Agonim spell. Scepter closing in on Carl and Tim's. The combo is there. He actually sells Ooh, out by Yeah. We're very close to some big AoE pulls into it. Ag Static Storm, which is... That's nasty stuff. There is no save for it on Xertia's side. I mean, you have a Pavisa Solar and this Agon this Aghanim Shark Shadow Walk now for a Teehee. Could also be an interesting factor here. Now this... I feel like this is maybe the final test for Xertia. The more experienced team coming at you with a big team fight potential, you don't know it. Are they going to be able to keep their guard up enough and stay spread enough that they don't get wiped out by this combo? Bombi, he's going to be the one maybe spotted here. Actually smokes himself to try and get away. Dust goes out. He's got Shadow Realm and TP out, but his team is coming in on the other side to go for the Bounty Hunter, it looks like. Trying to get that initiation. It's Hairwise from the just gone. Beautiful hit with the Rolling Thunder on through at the same time. Raven starts leaning the damage on a Young God while they have the, the uh, control up on KP. RP missing. Oh, he was Lazo trying to go for a Desperation Skewer RP. Now it's five heroes on top of Raven, and there's nothing he can do about it. That is a total team life and Zersha will complete their ascendance into a solid Division One status now. I mean, this is a team that was coming from the lower division. Didn't look like they could play with the big dogs, but now in their third series, no doubt in anybody's mind, I would say, that they're able to play. I mean, Blacklist may be asking, why did this team come alive versus us right now? Because they're looking really hot in this 2-0. Just Seriously. really good decision-making all around. Like, that team fight, Insta pop the disruptor ags for what son, and then you're just instantly on the mag on the back with the bat. It's just absolutely correct hero prioritization here, made easy from the vision and the bounty hunter bait. This gossamer cape, Pavis Vanguard Solar Crest bounty is not the hero that they wanted to find, especially with the 15 talent, even less damage taken in that shadow walk. This is an extremely tanky hero to go on in a single target situation. Probably the tankiest. So, everything going right for Zersha there, especially the smoke breaking on the Willow that they can't even find. Vision has absolutely destroyed Blacklist and put him in the dark. Put him in the black. <laughs> and the dark is exactly where Bombi wants to be. He's gonna pick up the Refresher Shard, but he's got a Moon Shard. Avery, he's got the Agative Scepter. Now he's pumping out the damage on top of it. They catch the Magnus KP, boy. He's just had a rough one. He was trying to get a Shadow Blade just so he can have a chance at a better initiation. His game has been utterly ruined. First, it was Carl in game one, and game two, it seems like it's KP. A Zersha really did the best job at being able to shut down one player in particular on the enemy team. And they picked who they wanted and they made his life hell and it has worked for them. Still this high ground defense with Storm Ags coming out in 100 gold, but I mean, we have given Blacklist a lot of hopium in this game and none of it has come to fruition. This is fully in Zersha's control. Double lasso up for Rapido with that refresher as well. I mean, you can just go in and not care anymore. Because you have Bobby to back you up with the damage from the Bedlam and the Moon Shard, like you were saying. He's got a Refresher Shard of his own. Double Shadow Realm for this fight with the Axe. Double Bedlam, double Terrorize. I mean, double the Moon Shard. Well, Blacklist, they could not get any of these team fights to work outside of their base. This is their last chance. A lasso starting off on the Terror Blade into the Terror. Oh no, the RP, it does land on a Young God, but at the same time, the Rolling Thunder just to roll the Terror Blade. They didn't need their carry to win this team fight. JG combined with Rubido 
and Bombi did more than enough damage to kill that Terror Blade. Who cares if Young God is controlled up by the RP? Well, Asso's too damn good. It just starts every engagement off the vision, and I don't know how Blacklist can play that game if Storm doesn't incredibly snowball, because those fights just seem impossible. You're super dependent on an RP, and you just never see anything. And even that last fight, they do a decent job of Delta splitting. Team very happy with their Bat Riders performance in that game. Very happy to get a win here. They don't get As they rolled. should be. That's a good damn, that's a damn good feeling. Let me tell you something. You're an up and coming mm -hmm. team going up against some some favored rivals. You bring them down 2 0. These are big names, right? You gotta put yep. this blacklist team in perspective. Maybe they're not the best team in this division right now, but they're big names. These guys have been around the block. That is a huge boost to confidence for this lineup that I was very impressed to see how they played today compared to the other two series. Like uh, yeah. I think they had way better decision making, better drafts, better itemization. And maybe oh. you, uh, me you know, that we went into this series talking about basically the storyline of whether or not Zersha will be able to stay in the upper division, but they've only lost two series with a performance like this. Maybe they performed an entire 180 and can still play for a major slot. For that, though, of course, we turn to our panels. There's still plenty of series to go for today. Huge win by Zersha this series as they take it 2-0 against Blacklist. Guys, I mean, no one expected this, I feel. Did you guys? Nope. Yeah, not at all, right? It's I a huge, like, boost to their confidence for sure. I mean, through the drafts, I can see that Blacklist didn't really, you know, uh, I would say do the right thing because I saw the disruptor. I, I was hoping something that could buying the draft together and offer some sort of stability while they drag the game for this TV. But then the Magnus came out, I was like, uh, okay, maybe it can be an Aura buyer Magnus and then, you know, kind of secure something early on, <laughs> not just letting the TA have his game. But then he didn't buy any Aura item this game. There was a Vanguard, but like, it wasn't upgraded to a Crimson that could be a big help. And yeah, even the Lotus would be really good, you know, because it's like just one lasso and then I mean I know there's a pangle but like your costs are gonna be KP through it right so yeah I'm not sure why KP didn't go for the aura item this time but yeah it just feel really difficult to play. I think their draft as a whole just couldn't come together as if I had the superior early game in both games. I think in the first game Blackers did well in lane short but rotation wise there's nothing really happening for them. This game it felt even harder you know Rupido was I think he ended the game with like zero deaths on his bad rider. They had this storm against this Pango bad rider, but they didn't really have supports to kill anyone with. Mm -hmm. Like this end storm ganking around doesn't look very good. Sure, you get a kill with static storm once in a while, but how do you like connect the draft and match the tempo of Zosha? I think they failed to address what happened in the first game, which was that Zosha just outpaced them. And Blacklist being a slower team, I think. I talked about is like every fight they lose they're like they need there's another item they need to wait for another one another one another one and eventually just snowball this game even more with this bounty hunter track coming out i feel like Zersha just preparation on point mm -hmm. actually you know what i noticed uh even with the first game that Zersha like to really help out the mid lane like during the laning phase they come to the, like both supports come to the mid not just the floor and they shut down carl both games yeah, I feel that's on Blacklist though, like they didn't adapt, you know, like yep. what happened in game one happened in game two, sorry to say. Yeah. I think they changed the draft, you know, there's different five heroes, but the reality is it's way. very hard to play these Magnus and Storm heroes from behind. And mm -hmm. Zersha, they had a very snowballish draft, they just could deal with TV, they had this bad rider Pango, you know, and they was just it just felt really good to be in their shoes, I think, throughout the whole series. Yeah. Here's our match MVP. We have Tihi on Bounty Hunter. Always a fun name to say. Tihi. It's Jaja now. <laughs> yeah, Jaja, haha. But uh, 2 4 22. That's a lot of assists. And I mean, he was he was doing a good job breaking, tanking the ganks. That one time at the top lane when he had a. Was it Pavis and. Pavis. Yeah, whatever else he Tola, had. I think, yeah. They found him first. That's yeah, it's just hard to unfortunate. play. They have a lineup that, you know, you kind of want to take fights around objectives, you know, where this TB can pop meta, which is why I suggested a Tide instead of the Magnus. I feel like the difference was that this Barret could constantly lasso the Magnus. I mean, obviously, there are other things in the game that affect this too. You know, the state of the game was very unfavorable for Blankers, but I feel like they needed this 
powerhouse that can stand in front to, to tank the lasso, you know. If you lasso a Storm or TB, boom, Ravage. That's kind of how the tight battle right matchup goes. But it just didn't feel that way for, I don't know, the whole series. Yeah. I mean, like, picking Magnus against Barada is already very, very difficult, I would say. And then on top of that, there's already a bounty on that. They showed these two heroes early on. So it's not even about, you know, like, oh, I, I can drag the game for my team or whatever. It's just playing against these two heroes. It's just almost impossible for Magnus because you, you want someone to go in first and you already don't have that. Yeah, sure, Storm can go in, but then he doesn't threaten anyone, you know, like there's, there's not a burst damage coming from Storm's team, there's nothing. And then this Magnus can't just sit around waiting for something to happen while his team just get annihilated. So yeah, I really think Magnus is just not the pick. Mm, do you guys think that uh, a lot of the faulties that Blacklist are having are due to their draft? Or I think Zersha just abused them because they kind of play Carl on tempo heroes and mm -hmm. Zersha really focused their pressure on mid, mm -hmm. I think in both games and Carl okay. never got off to a start. I think Raven, a lot of us has been complaining about how he's not very active as a carry. And I think KP just plays, or he did play a slower hero in this series. Mm -hmm. I think the Visage game, he, I, th I think he played really well in the Visage game for the first 10-15 minutes. I think he made every rotation he could but it just felt like the hero was not a good pick. In this game, I think the Magnus could have worked. I think he played okay, but they, were just, they just got further and further behind with every team fight loss. Like we see so many fights, he's trying to get this skewer RP and he kind of had to because the position of the game is that he can't just RP one hero and play the game, you know? That's where you want to be as Magnus, but it, it's just hard. Mm -hmm. So what do you think makes Zersha look stronger than they did the previous week? Like, what is it that you think they improved on? They have a, they're on the same page about what they mm -hmm. want to do. Mm -hmm. I think that was a big complaint we had before. Mm -hmm. I think right now maybe they're not doing everything right, but they've definitely got better at knowing what's happening. I think in the first game when they kept going mid, Rupido was like very chill. Young God was very chill as well in the safe lane. Like they know that they're playing for this mid gang, you know, nothing's gonna happen, we're fine. And then I think in the mid game, they're playing on timings together. And on top of that, they are closing the map out there. <laughs> Bombi scaling. They're not this all in, you know, we lost this fight and we lose the game anymore. You know, they're scaling into the game and they look very confident, actually. Yeah, I think they're still, like, they're able to get away with, I would say, these more niche drafts because Sersha's drafts definitely look very different to everyone else's, I would say. But they managed to pull it off. I feel they are the type of team. Okay, I, I take Bombi as an example, right? Bombi mm -hmm. has, like, maybe five or six heroes he's really good at. Mm -hmm. So I think players like that usually are the centerpiece of the draft. You put them in the middle because you pick around these six. So when you pick these heroes, like how do you branch off, you know? I think Rupido is the same just because of like the offense in the meta right now. Right. And then you have JG who likes this like Ember 8 pick, for example. He likes his tiny, his Primal Beast, his Ember. Mm -hmm. And I think the drafts become much easier and easier to formulate like a actual full five-man lineup based on those, you know? I think they've done a really good job of that as well. Yeah, it's a little C special. You are saying how when we saw the draft, we were like, oh, it looks kind of puffy, but in just the right ways. Yeah, yeah. they had good scaling. They, they played a Bounty Hunter draft. I think that's yeah. fair to say. That's kind of what Bounty Hunter wants, you know? I feel like what I saw from Zosia is like, it's a gunfight. They may have picked a shotgun, but it's still a gun. But for Blacklist, they all just took sticks to a gunfight. That, that's what I feel, you know? Like, hello, guys. You can't just try and run to the person and stab him while he's just, oh, you're running at me, bang. That's, it. That, that's how I saw the game, you uh -huh. know, for, for, for both games. Right. Yeah. Well, let's get our interview with Young God going. This is our first interview with Sersha. Congratulations on your win, Young God. How do you feel? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel good about the win. Feeling good? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was wondering what is it that you guys changed over the weekend because you guys look like a totally, completely different team now. I think, uh, sh shout out to Sari, big thanks to him. Like, uh, disip he disciplined us like so much. Like, he, when we watch the replays, he see us what, what our bad habits like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we need to. Uh, make up for it. So you guys just cleaned up a lot on the bad habits. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's okay. really good. Before I ask you guys how you guys got here, I want to ask how you got here. Because you were playing on Myth Avenue before this. Like, how did this roster shuffle between you and Karma happen for his team? 
I don't know if I can say about that, but yeah, the just the management just contacted me, and I said yes. All right, well, you guys are in a doing well right now. Congratulations on your victory. Mm, other than Surrey, what else do you guys think have like helped you push forward? I think in week one you guys looked very different. Today you guys looked like the like you said disciplined. I think you guys had like a very good strategy coming into the series as well. What what more do you do over the weekend that kind of just pushed you to where you are today? Uh, for me, like just I just keep on grinding and watch your plays. And I think I'm so comp comp compatible also on the team. Ah. Like four of them. That's why it's much easier to play and it's much easier to talk to them. Yeah, I'm happy also. Okay, um, how about the TA pick in the game too? Sorry, like I'm... I don't see a lot of TA picks uh, recently, but I feel even more so when you saw the TB pick from Blacklist and then you still feel like, hey guys, we can pick TA here and you know, feel good. Like, why why do you guys stick the TA there? Uh, I like it when I play with Magnus and because I can keep pushing the lane and the, they cannot really do a play on me. And I think it's really good because I don't... It's... I think the TB is not my job. Ah. I think the TB is like for Batrider and for Pango. I trust mm -hmm. them to handle him. Then I go for the rest. Fair, yeah. fair. I think that's our strategy here. Sounds good. Sounds good. I have a question. Are you guys boot camping in Thailand or the Philippines? Uh, for now, I'm only in the Philippines. Oh, okay. Because there's just a Thai org, right? Yeah, yeah it is. It is. Oh, okay. It's very interesting. Yeah. That they chose to do Philippines instead. Mm. All right, you guys have obviously taken out. I think Blacklist were at least in our minds one of the favorites to get top three based on last week's performances. You guys coming around with this victory, like, what are you gonna do next for the next your next matches? Like, are you going? Are you, do you guys have a new approach? Do you guys have a new strategy for each team, or are you guys just like focusing on yourselves right now? I think we focus on ourselves. Uh, uh, we just. Listen to Seri again. <laughs> what we, what his plan is, yeah. And we gonna find how it works. All right. Well, thank you so much, Young God, for this interview, and congratulations again on your first win this series. Take care. Thank you, thank you, guys. Bye bye. All right. Well, I do hope that is the rise of Sersha. I hope they get more wins from here on out because they seem like a very capable team after their performance today. I love when he say, huh, TB's not my job, it's the Bear Riders and Pangos job. That's how you know they are playing the game as a team. Like, he knows that, okay, you pick me TA here, which is significantly weaker against TB. But like, I know I have a team, I don't have to take care about the TB. We have a, maybe a Storm problem, an Enchantress problem, I don't care, so I'm just gonna deal with that. TB is not my problem. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just like the way he thinks about me, you know. Yeah. It shows some real understanding of team play, which is kind of nice and probably a bit of attribution to their success today. You know, they look very much a unit, if anything, I would say. They look like one of the better teams in the division, in this series, at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it makes me happy whenever I get to see a C team play pretty fast. Because I feel like we're so used to just seeing these long, drawn-out games where nothing really happens, but they were able to take it 2-0 and a fast one at that. That's true. I feel like the C teams play too fast. They're like the car that goes ahead of you. It cuts cuts you on the racetrack and then you see them in the wall in front. Oh, that's, no. that's C teams for you. They go off the road. But yeah, let's go for a quick break before we get into next series. Bleed versus Tom. We'll be right back.
thing that matters is you get what you decide. But I know for sure the day will come when you first realize what you have done and you finally get your debt repaid and you've then just served on a cold plate. And you hear the roll of the shirt down when the world will stop without a sound and a moment you will cry for help that we only think about our stuff, oh yeah.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, sons and daughters of your parents. Welcome back to another episode of Defense of the Hot Take, where if you're wondering where Soph is, it's because I was so good at the game that they couldn't find a place for me, and now I'm sitting in this host chair. <laughs> but more importantly, let me introduce you to our contestants. We have the guy who lost to me, John X Fire, and the guy who every word that comes out of his mouth is basically a hot take. Winter Chan Lin. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello, sir. I'm ready to burn everything down. You're ready? <laughs> I can't win. Uh, he was born ready. I, I don't think anyone can beat Winter. No, He's just too good at goal. this. Why are you pressuring me so much? I'm just here to have fun. You know, Richie said I'm, I'm, I'm allowed to just come in, chill, you know. Yeah, just have be a good, yourself. <laughs> have a yeah, good old time. Yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we can't beat you. All right. So to good. explain the rules of this game, basically you'll be given one hot take. You can choose to go with it or you can skip. But if you skip the first one, you have to do the second. And your job is not to beat each other, but your job is to convince me that you're not talking Damn, shit. Damn, unfair! <laughs> you're, you're the, cha you're the champion. That's why I'm here. Yeah. That's why I'm the judge. That's how it works. So if I win, I'll be the next judge. Yeah, you'll be host. <laughs> yeah, host yeah. Winter, let's go. <laughs> winter. I want to see that. All right, are you ready? Nah, let's go. Don't waste time. All right, so the this. way we decide who starts is by who lost their last Dota game, or who lost most recently. When was your last loss, Winter? A couple of days ago. I won my last game on Saturday. What about you, John? My last loss was still the same <laughs> game. Same game? Yeah. So Thursday, 12 a.m.? All right, you know what? Winter's the new guy on the block. Mm -hmm. You start, Winter. Right. We're going to start with you. Let's see what you get. You what won. the hell? Pass? Go. LC is really high skill. Pass? Pass? All right. Yeah. What do you have? Support Faithless <laughs> Void is okay. legit. Let's see you defend this one. Okay, when the enemy first picks Bat Rider, you can do it. If that's Bat Rider. No, no, you, no. you have to convince me, Winter. Convince, convince me. I have to convince you? Sell yeah, me you the support pen. Void is legit because of uh, time dilation and because when you buy South, Slashes where you chrono and you heal every single teammate, you buy Mech, it's Aura meta. You buy Mech on Faces Void, you pop your Mech, you heal everybody, and you hit everybody one time, you all chat Slashes way. <laughs> That's a classic. That's a classic. All right, all right. All right, I'll take that. I'll take that. It's a classic. You can't go wrong with that one. All right, it's your turn, John. All right. Do you feel threatened? Is Winter convincing? He's not given like <laughs> DPC takes, so it's actually not as not scary. So, I feel like not that was scary. a struggle for him. Right, right. Like if it was something about oh this player, oh you know, yeah. it's like there's where yeah, heroes friends. are a little bit more hard, you know, because they are not personal. Yeah, yeah but it's not players personal. can yeah. be personal. Yeah, yeah, that's where Winter. I want to see so. Winter get something like Gabby is the best carry. You, <laughs> I think that be my guess. Uh, all right, Maybe all right. Round. What we got for you, John? All right, let's see. C is the best region in Dota. Mm. That's not a hot take. That's not really hot. I, it, it feels like that's just her job right now. <laughs> next, next. That's just what we're doing. Talent isn't the best. C is just first. Okay, that's a hot take. That's a hot take. Let me digest this. <laughs> Talon isn't the best team here. C is just bad right now, right? Like, you look at Talon's land performances. Their performance in Lima may be a little bit of a fluke. You know, it's uh, it looked convincing enough, but that path to a third place was Pretty simplified, you know, in Berlin, they crash out, in Dream League, they crash out. I don't think C is that strong right now. I mean, we're our best players going after China. China not doing too hot as well. Like, I think I think we're on a downturn. C is just bad. What can you do? I feel like that was a... This is pretty sad. Very honest. <laughs> yeah, it's just sad. <laughs> All right. 1-0, <laughs> John. I'm sorry. Oh, easy. Your, your chrono self was <laughs> not very convincing. Have you tried? I, 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 I blame production. They, they are biased. With production? Yeah, sorry, they are biased we'll, with the questions. We'll get you... All right, all right. We'll get me the real right, questions, get this, man. Let me call this round. 1-0. All right. Who... All right, Winter, you get to choose who starts, you know, for right. non-bias. I'll start, I'll start. Just give, start? Me the, right. give me the good question. He wants something spicy. Come on. <laughs> I want the old. So no, I'm not bad. allowed to pass now? You, you are, can you can, but you, you have can to do pass. the second one yeah. if you pass. Okay, pass. Fucking hate techies. <laughs> I think immortal better than getting a partner. Is your wife watching Winter? <laughs> what is this? Uh, is home in trouble? <laughs> you can tell we forced you to do it. <laughs> to be honest, uh, getting 5k rank is uh, 
it's what Immortal is like right now. The cutoff is. I think it's five six or five point six. Okay, yeah. five, so getting five point six k. Yeah, getting five point six k MMR. It's like the top one percent, what less than one percent of uh, the Dota players' population, and getting a partner. Everybody can get a partner. Most people can get a partner. You know, you get married like me. You know, it's easy, 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 easy. Okay, so if one percent of the Dota community can get immortal. How many percent of the Dota community can get a partner? <laughs> Is it more than one percent? Uh, yeah, probably. It's easier to get a partner. All you have to do is just uh, be responsible. Hey, wait, wait, wait! You're supposed to defend the take. You're supposed to convince me that getting immortal is more. Yeah, more I'm, I'm telling you, it's easier to get a partner. Like getting a partner means what? Getting in a relationship, getting married, right? So, so, am I getting it correct? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, it's easier. Like, how many people can get immortal rank? You go out on the street, anybody can. Oh, this guy, oh, he's happily married. Oh, this guy, he has, a, he has, a, he has a girlfriend. He, he, what do you call it? He, he scored way above his, uh, his average. He's, he's got a girl that's higher than, than him. But how often do you look on the street and you find an immortal Dora player? How? How? You look at production, none of them are immortal. <laughs> Sheesh! <laughs> Damn. I mean, we, we are the only immortal players here. So, that's how rare we are. It's true. It's All right, acceptable. All right, your turn, John. Put him in the bin. <sighs> I'm gonna get the hot takes that Winter probably wants, honestly. Let's see. Let's see. KP can't carry four Ooh. Filipinos. You know, mm, very topical. Do it. All right, John. But for for the sake of content, I would recommend you skip this. <laughs> let's let's skip this. Let's see what's let's see what the second option is. This, hey, this is, is this a bias is very <laughs> <This> <laughs> KP is a bias can't post. carry 4.5 Filipinos. <laughs> KP, I, I just needed that to show yeah. on screen too. <laughs> KP can't carry 4.5 Filipinos. You know why it's 4.5? Cuz Mike is half. You know, he's he's not fully Filipino. KP, he's a quarter, I guess, but all the time he spent there, so it's around that number. We saw what happened to Blacklist up against Sertia. You know, at first we were believing like, oh, Four Filipinos plus KP up against Execration, they beat them. This time around against Xerxia from Div 2, look really shaky up against Boom. All of a sudden, all the issues come back. What, what, what are the issues? <laughs> KP, he can't do all the heavy lifting. You know, he's, he's, a, strong, he's a strong man, but it's just he, not he enough. He did last week. He did last week. This week, not enough. You know, the weight grows. Filipinos are just really happy. <laughs> We're just really happy. <laughs> Too much weight. You are really <laughs> happy, John. <laughs> <laughs> Just want you to know that Zersha has four Filipinos as well. <laughs> True. <laughs> Could have been the other way around, but I'm going to have to give this round to you. All right, Winter, you, we thought you would be better at this. <laughs> Not going to lie. Damn it. <laughs> Eat your sambal. All right, we have no more papadum today, so this is called Karopo Bawang, which directly translates to onion crackers. It's better, but it's also unhealthier. Yeah. Just for you. Into <laughs> what am I supposed to? Yeah, supposed yeah, yeah. to get the sambal onto the go. crackers. Feed him, John. Yeah. There you go. Oh my god, it's so spicy. Now pour it in. Get Come on, man. That's some barely sambal, anything. It's a yeah, punishment. Just, yeah, yeah. What? Get the your lips get the to be red after this. Yeah, there it's you red go. Red as this bell. Acceptable. <laughs> Damn, he's angry. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? You want some drink? I have some drink over here. <laughs> no, no, no. It's okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, Was it right. spicy? No, 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 no. It's not spicy. Are your takes spicier? No, 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 no. Apparently not according to you guys. <laughs> I have to do better. Oh, winter went from spicy to salty real quick. But that's all we have for today. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Hot Take. Have a good day.
Welcome back, everyone, to the DPC 2023 Summit. <laughs> what are you laughing about, John? <laughs> Oh, surprise. <laughs> we were, this was a, a surprise right here, but uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, as you see, I am not Adam. I'm back to hosting here. My name is Sophie. It's nice to be with you all once again. And over here, my panel, I have the one, the only defending champion, Adam. Although, technically, uh, John is our new... John's the champion right yeah, he's now. He's our semi-champion. He is. How, did you just... Did you just... I yeah, yeah, we yeah, take yeah, yeah. All right. Boomer gang. Boomer well, gang. <laughs> Anyways, that was, uh, you guys just saw hot takes if you were here, but if you just got here now, we are on our second series of our second week of the DPC. We got Talon, we got Bleed. It's gonna be a very hype match. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's, there's a few hot takes for this one, right? Like the highest tier mid matchup. <laughs> uh, winter would have gone, loved that, honestly. That should have gone to Winter. But this is this is exciting. I feel like this is where we finally see how far Bleed has gone. They've looked better this tour. I think their test against Talon, it's, it's where we see just how far those improvements go. You know, this is, I mean, there were so many hot takes related to see his region, but you know, arguably some of their earlier opponents, maybe not the strongest in form right now. So Talon is the one team that looks consistent in this tour so far after the first week. And this is again, where we see how far Bleed has pushed themselves. You ever play RPG games, John? Mm -hmm. You know, in every RPG game to test yourself, you like reach a certain boss and you see how fast you kill it. Talon's yeah. the boss. Talon's the, the test dummy for every team because you can't kill Talon, <laughs> we need to see how much damage you do. <laughs> and so it's Bleed's turn this time to see if they can take down Talon, yeah. but it's, it's a hard task. It's a hard it's task a very hard for task. any yeah. C team, it looks like, so far. It's definitely a hard task, but I mean, I think if Bleed are the team to do it, that would be very impressive. They've taken each series they've played, they've won so far, they're currently 2-0, but they've taken each series to a three games, the full three games every time. That's true. I mean, I think they look pretty good when they are playing heroes that they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of been the problem. And it's also part of their approach, I guess, which is why it's harder for Corden to perform in a lot of the games. I know we give him a lot of flag, but I think when he does play his heroes, they look really good and he plays really well. That's yeah. true, yeah. Yeah, they just need to play around their strengths, right? Like, we see Ice getting heroes he loves on the offlane. We see Corden playing some more of his heroes that he's really known for. Void Spirit, Ember, maybe the Pango every now and again. So, as long as they play around that and shift their win condition to Jackie, that's another thing we saw coming out from Bleed. Just emphasizing, giving Jackie all the space in the world to farm up and become that massive core that delivers. He still has stellar performances, uh, even after coming into Bleed, you know? Like, that Jackie of Boom is still shining here to, as well. Yeah, I think the main reason I brought it up was because I said in his interview, he asked him like what his approach was strategy-wise, how did he develop his team, and he's like, we're just playing Dota. Yeah. First game, they outscaled us. Second game, we want to outscale them. We're just playing Dota. And I think that's quite a hard task for Corden with his experience compared to the other players. Like, I understand how like Ice, DJ, Jackie, Dubu, you know, they can kind of adapt to stuff like this because there's competitive experience, right, if anything, and Corden's kind of low on that. And I feel like that's something that they have to fix within their team. They have to help him there and kind of guide him towards how to adapt to these things as well. But other than that, I think they look really solid as a team. Yeah, Yeah, I think if Bleed are actually able to take the second series, I think they might, could possibly win the series because they're very good at adapting to their opponent. Like, they're very good at adjusting. I feel like we've seen them do that very well in the past series that they played. Yeah, they identify the problem and yes. they change very fast. I think exactly. that's, that's right to give credit to them. That's why they're always series first game lost, two game comeback. But I think mounting a two game comeback against Talon is hard. Mm -hmm. I like to see them come out gun swinging, do some research. Instead of playing Talon and losing to them to learn, like look at replays and, you know, come out with their own plan. Yeah, just uh, tr try to adapt. I think the one thing with the Talon matchup for me, for Bleed, the interesting one is, of course, Mikato versus Corden. I think that one is going to be a big test for Corden. I think another one that's always fun to look at is like Jabs versus Ice Ice Ice, because, you know, when, when Ice 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 was on Fnatic, Jabs was playing on his 4-5. Right? Yeah, they were lane partners yeah, too. Yeah, they were lane partners, <laughs> so it feels like these two know each other very well, which means, you know, either side kind of knows what the other one wants out of the lane, and that just gives you extra information into the matchup. So it's always kind of fun to see that. And I think for Town, again, like they've looked really strong, but I feel like there's always room to improve, for sure. We also have the battle of the Thai carries, right? Yes. Even though Jackie is not really Thai, I feel mm -hmm. like Jackie for the past two years have always been the choice over 23, until maybe T1 where 23 kind of got more well-known and is kind of, I guess, quote-unquote, rank one carry right now. 
So I think that's something really interesting about this matchup, and both teams kind of focus playing around their carry a lot as well. It's a pretty hot take, I'd say. Is it a hot take? I think it's the truth. Yeah, I, I don't think yeah, it's yeah. too hot of a take. Someone, like, some would say it's straight up facts. Straight yeah. up facts? No, no printer. Oh my. <laughs> Get me uh, out of this boomer paddle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, but do you, I mean, being realistic, do you think Talon are able to take a 2 0 again? They've also have been undefeated this season. 2 1. 2 1, you think? 2 1. Yeah, I'd give Bleed maybe a game. I don't know. I feel like this is one of the matchups where Talon might take it easy. It's a fresh week, you know, sometimes they do funky stuff. We didn't see that much in Tour 2, but mm -hmm. you never know when that spirit rises up to Jabs, whether or not they've been playing more CS. To be fair, they haven't. I feel they like Jabs has been yet. really good. I, I say that because I feel like before, when these niche picks come out, like he's the only one having fun. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I feel like Jabs gives his team like the Kappa heroes now and he's playing Underlord, you know, he's yeah. like, you got, oh, it's your true. turn now. <laughs> you can have this season, which I respect a lot. I think it's like a lot of balance in the yeah. team, you know, you can kind of see what, like he, we talked about the Wind Ranger Q played, I think he's like, oh, he likes to play a hero. But like, okay, yeah. cool. Sure, Jabs is a, what do you call it? The sacrificial lamb. Yeah, he, he put himself there. He's the drafter. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Man. <laughs> I just, I hope we see uh, a really good fight. I think this could possibly be the most even fight that Talon might get. I don't know, maybe we're also overhyping Bleed a, quite a bit, but they're also, I don't know, they've done really well. But the thing is, okay, Bleed's played against Execration, they played against SMG, and those two teams aren't doing very well. Mm -hmm. So, like, eh, it's kind of hard to gauge how yeah. Bleed will actually do. I think on top of that also, it's hard to judge the teams this week, like mm -hmm. how they're going to be. You know, Bleed might be two times the team they were before. Like Zersha. Like Zersha, right? Yeah. And I think Blacklist is kind of the reverse. They look a bit throwback to Tour 1. Mm -hmm. I think we've seen, like, potential in SMG, potential in Bleed, and it's where they, over these past few days, have been able to bring out even more. Yeah, it's just, again, this is the litmus test for Bleed. This is where we figure out where they really stand, uh, whether or not SMG and Execration were weak. You know, just like that hot take, Talon's not the strongest, but sees just weak. This is kind of the test, the actual test for Bleed in, in their own little What's hot take. What's your actual feeling about that, John? Do you think uh, is, is a great true? Asian? I don't think it's that, fully I, true. I came up with that, and I was telling you, you, you like, do you feel I, like it's true? Yeah, I feel like it's true. Talon's like, everyone's, Talon's just a test. Uh -huh. Talon's the test dummy for everyone. But would <laughs> you say that uh, You would that say Talon's is... not strong, but yeah. he's just... No, I think, Talon, he... I think Talon is strong, mm -hmm. but... Oh, wait, okay, that I was me. Yeah. I think this season, C is not strong. I think Tour 1, Tour 2, mm -hmm. SA was pretty good, but yeah. Talon was better. I think now Talon is still better, but the rest are not as good as before. Why is that? I don't know. They just fell off? I don't know. For real? Not gonna lie? Maybe like mental things, adjusting uh, to patch. No patch. SCA has always been the kind of team that takes a while. Takes a while, yeah, to get onto stuff. I think EU is always fastest. You know, you have a lot of people with. Oh, oh, oh my God! What, what was that? Shots fired. <laughs> That's a shots fired. There you go. Oh wait, <laughs> I'm right. I didn't know about this guy. That's new. I mean, SCA has always been more of the copiers, right? I think we've always been a bit behind, but I think we do well, you know? Like, we copy well, you know? Take mm. pride in that. You can't just see someone dribble a basketball and suddenly you can dribble a ball, you know? But in SEA, we can. True, true. I think it's also kind of proven with our major performances. Like, outside of Talon, I've been hoping for Execration, SMG, Geek Slate mm -hmm. to do good. It's just not true enough. And we've had multiple lands where multiple C teams have gone. It's, it's rough. SEA needs Mushi back. He is back, though. In back Boom. on a good team. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> More <laughs> cards. <laughs> you're going to hit the uh, cannon on sorry. us. It's because of winter, man. It's winter. I need winter. <laughs> winter would just double down. Uh, he wouldn't make this any better. John's too nice. <laughs> yeah, he doubled down. Uh, uh, this is like the most wacko we've ever been, I swear. <laughs> this is not normal. This I agree. Is, this is a little Delulu. Yeah, I feel like the teams that do well, they have like very... a lot of discipline. I think like Zersha mentioned it too, you know, like they did better today because their coach instilled discipline in them. Yeah. I feel like in SEA, there tends to be a trend where a lot of people don't want to go outside of their box. They want to do what's comfortable for them. And I think in doing that, you lose a lot of good habits and a lot of discipline where, you know, Dota's not a game that if you're stronger at five minutes, you're like, let's go end the game now. You know? mm -hmm. It's always a step-by-step -step process. It's slow and it's sometimes you can make wrong decisions too. Yeah. All right, well, let's get our draft going. We got it up for Series 2, Game oh, thank 1. Thank God. <laughs> what, the band? Uh, no, no, no. Thank God I don't have to 
talk anymore. <laughs> Let's focus oh. on Dota. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we got an actual substance here now. Our bands. Thoughts. Nothing too surprising. This is pretty bog standard now. Maybe the Magnus sneaking up a bit in this DPC tour, but it's had a lot of play. And Doom sloughed in the pool. Bleed will opt for that off lane pick first. So that should be our ice here early on, which is maybe not what we're used to seeing from Bleed, but it's a Doom. It's going to be banned or picked if you don't pick it up here. So prioritize it, I guess. So something we've seen a bit rise in popularity is the Batrider early, yep. I think, last series and some series last week, especially against the Magnus. This time it's against the Doom. I wonder if we'll see Bat from Talon here. It's a big Mikoro hero as well. Yeah. I mean, I enjoy the Bat. I've seen it in the, across a lot of regions. I've seen a lot of players not even go Sticky Napalm. You just kind of go your magic damage and run down. Talon will just open up with a Pugna, which it's not off the par. Uh, not par. It's par for the course. Just heal right say. against it's, Doom, which is kind of nice. Yeah, it's, it's what all you loves to play as well. It enables maybe a bit of a battery coming out for a Mikoto if they feel like mm -hmm. Something like Storm, if they're really that confident on Talon, but still open enough. Yeah, I feel like Pugna is kind of just a staple for Talon at this point. It is. Like, Ollie is crushing on that hero all the time. I agree. I mean, I can commiserate with him. It is fun to play Pugna. Yeah. Like, outside of the tactical uses of it as a five player, it's pretty fun to play Pugna. You have mm -hmm. high move speed, you have a good taunt, and it's always fun <laughs> to channel your ult. I, it's can you give enjoyable. us a sample of the it's taunt? A nice hero. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Hey, go for the Alk. This is a buff the big boy strategy, I guess. Mm -hmm. Just another hero that doesn't really care too much about getting doomed. I would say totally doesn't care, but not too bad, you know, not too bad. I am curious about how the lane goes. I feel like we've seen Dooms win that lane matchup with a really aggressive four, but you don't have the techies. So maybe some of that Doom bite is taken away by not having to worry about that. But yeah, we, we've seen a few Dooms kind of work that lane well, as long as your four can kind of follow through. I think at the end of the day, as long as Elk is able to farm, and Pugna is a pretty strong support in the sense that you can just chase the post 4 around, because the Doom's not going to chase the Elk. Mm. The post 4 is going to bully the Elk, and Pugna can kind of deal with that. So I was going to talk about this earlier, but this early Elk opens TB, yep. which is why I think the Pugna or Phoenix could have been really good. I guess it's easier to open with Pugna, right, just because Talon. And also against the Doom, I think heroes that Talon has liked to play has been the Phoenix and the IO specifically, which are still really nice against this TB Doom yeah. right now. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they somehow pick some like X Phoenix or something like that later on down the lines. Yeah, it's open enough for Talon. Like, it's it's like you said, right? You're picking Terrorblade into into the Pugna, even though you're not laning against it down the line without an early dispel, without an early BKB. Decrep and you waste a lot of time in your meta. There's magic damage on hand to kind of deal with you as well. So, I mean, I get why Bleed pick it, right? The core, yeah. the core up against Alka is pretty good as long as you have, at minimum, farm parity. On the terribly, you kind of feel good. You hit your Scotty timing. You can run down. I I am a bit curious that they didn't go for like that pause four to harass out, right? Like you're you're not looking at something instead to double down on your doom lane instead of going for your core pickups. We have seen a lot of teams open up with your three cores first, but I don't know if the priority on Terrible is worthwhile here for Bleed in comparison to just getting something with your Doom Lane. I think they were kind of influenced by the SMG series mm -hmm. where they ended up first picking Terrible. I think on top of that, it's just nice against Elk mm -hmm. all the time. You know, TB against Elk is just a throwback matchup. I think also Jackie, TB, you know, like, yeah. why would you not pick TB if you have Jackie on your team? I think it makes a lot of sense. And by no means is this TB Doom like weak, you know, as an yep. opening. Mm -hmm. Really strong scaling. It's not like there are very weak lanes. They can fight you, they can itemize differently. So I do like Bleed's draft so far. Fairly normal to open up with a 3 and 1. I think the first pick core into the 8 pick core is pretty normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's becoming a little bit more standardized now. I am curious what our mid matchups will be because. I believe they've taken out the Bat Rider, which we've seen Makoto play, and also Jabs kind of enjoy. They take out the Darkseer, which works in that terribly terribly lane really well. And Talner wants to ban out the Storm themselves, probably just because I, I guess you don't have as much with a Pugna 5 to kind of hold down a Storm. So maybe opening it up a little bit more for Corden. Like, there's still a lot of options. I feel like Storm is the best like Pugna combination on hand if you really wanted to emphasize that in Talon, though. I think for Talon, they're kind of picturing the fights. Like right now, they have this Elk that's going to frontline no matter what. He has to play this way, and they have the supports in the backline to kind of cover. And as long as Bleed's heroes can never touch the backline of Talon, this Elk can never go down. Which is why we see heroes like the Storm Band, for example. I think something like a Void Spirit might come out as well, Pango. Those kind of heroes that just create a lot of chaos. Actually, we'll be very surprised if they don't bang Pango. 
against Elk and Pugna, I think Pango is like very solid here. What can Jabs play? They're like banning every offlane yeah. hero. Can play Hoodwink. Oh, true! <laughs> Actually, it's really hard to play Hoodwink nowadays. I think it's because the tree lines are like, the lanes are much wider. Yeah. So it, that is true. It's it really hard. Good. Like, it doesn't feel good. Save the trees. Mm -hmm. Save the trees. So, but they banned, look, they're saving the trees. They banned Timur and Bedrider. <laughs> Yeah, that is a good point. Like, what does what does? I mean, I feel yeah, like Jab's hero pull is huge. It doesn't it is matter. Big. Yeah, it is he needed big. to play this Pogna or Elk. He'll play it. You know, that is true. I, I feel like there's a those. world where he plays Elk here. There's definitely a world. That brings me back to old SMG, but that could work. Like, it can be aggressive, I guess. Playing into meta of TB in lane kind of sucks, but outside of that, you can kind of try to run down. Although high armor, your Elk harassment is gonna feel as good. See if the emphasis pays off because that does leave a lot of Mikado heroes open. I don't know what they're gonna pick here. I, I have Grimstroke in my head for some reason, just because they didn't ban the Pango and it's against Terrorblade, paired with Elk as well. I know it's something very different for the talent mm. to pick up, but I just feel like there's no way they they either have to pick Pango here or they have to pick against Pango here. I was gonna say the Wind Ranger is an option, but I was thinking of it for jabs for some reason, and then I figured that doesn't sound good in lane, but it is something talent could do. Wind Ranger overall does feel like a Pretty fun hero. That should be Q's hero, but there is flux with jabs, I guess. They're a very kidey team fight right now. Like just a lot of small cheap mm. spells run around. I wonder if Bleed can punish this in any way. I still think Pango looks amazing here. Uh Core Wind Ranger obviously good against Pango. Once you get BKB, you just focus fire against roll. It's kinda nice. But in the early mid-game, Pango kinda owns you. It's also a big cordon hero, so it's the draft. What else is there? Void Spirit too? Yeah. Still in the pool, the hold of Talon again. It's also not the best up against a lot of these slippery heroes. I think Bleed has a lot of leeway seeing that Wind Ranger. They go with a Void Spirit. Again, it's just hard to pin down, very meta. Matches up against a lot of mid lanes pretty damn well. I am wondering if Talon maybe consider, I don't know, mid Wind Ranger versus Void Spirit. That doesn't sound too bad to me if Mikado wants to play that. I think you want to like Lesh Pango kind of hero for Mikado here. Mm. Just kind of try to wonder what Bleed can pick to secure the TB lane. Silencer. Okay, that's a classic from Bleed. They don't have a lot of damage right now. They have to be very careful with what they pick because the Silencer and Doom early game, they don't offer too much damage. Meta yeah. as well against Pugna, Decrep, against Windrun. So Corrin's going to have one of those slow games if he's not enabled too early. Yeah, it's going to be. That can be really scary against an Elk lineup. It's going to be a bit challenging. I think Talon. Hmm. I, again, it's still fairly open. Like, the Wind Ranger is just... They're just PL here, right? Tell them. It's pretty open for the PL. They Blood go Bloodseeker Seeker instead. Okay. So, there's a little bit of a way to try to lock in some of the heroes. The core to core matchup. It's all right. Um, off lane Bloodseeker, I'm assuming here from Talon. Or off lane Alchemist. I actually think it's uh, Mikoto Elk or Jeb's Elk. I think Jackie's playing the Bloodseeker, but I guess it's kind of open, mean right? Three? Yeah. No, no, like mid elk or post tree elk, yeah. Yeah. Mm. No, you said Jackie's playing Bloodseeker. You mean oh, yeah, three. sorry. Okay. So when you said you mean tree, I thought like post tree. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. my brain farted. In there. <laughs> We're all having brain farts. You know, you right close now. like that, so stop flexing yeah, on me. That's a brag. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this does open up the lanes quite a fair bit. Uh, I, I don't know how I feel about a Mikado elk. I think it still works, but. I just feel like he's unkillable. He is. Yeah, he's gonna free farm okay. against this Void Spirit, and then you know you just have this monster of a hero. That is true. I just feel like your start of fights here for Talon is mildly awkward. You don't have anything that wants to jump in first necessarily. Maybe Alk after Alk jump in, right? like, BKB. Yeah. Armlet Dagger. Yeah. I think it's the normal build. Can kind of see it. I I'm not sure how experimental they want to get. Because I feel like this Bloodseeker Alk is not really a combo. No. Like, you don't want to buy eggs for your Bloodseeker, you know? Hmm, that is true. If you run it as an aura buyer, you're playing against TB, you're like a stun bot, you know, Solar Crest. It's it's okay, it's not great, it's all right. Hmm, I still feel like Town could flex, even though it's like really awkward, you could still somewhat flex. Your last pick, maybe go... I don't know, like, it's, it's open enough that, again, you could run core Wind Ranger, but... It doesn't feel great. Like I've, I've been rambling on about that here for some reason, but it, I don't I know. Like I feel Talon's like Talon's just, gonna just pick not like some Zeus here. Yeah. Zeus slash. 
With the Bloodseeker, I think it makes yeah. a lot more sense, right? They go, TV. they go left field. I don't know if Mikoro plays Tinker. You're playing into Silencer, but it's a pretty good Tinker game. Mm, I like the recall. Zeus and Lesh the most. I prefer those two. I think the Zeus is probably preferable overall up against a Terrorblade, but I'm trying to think. Did Mikado play a lot of Tinker and Old Boom? No. I honestly don't remember. I think Mikado has thing. played Tinker, though. He has played, but he I don't know played, if he played the new Tinker. Much. The new Tinker? I don't think so. I'm sure he has, but I just don't know if they'll pick it like mm. in a competitive game. You know? I'm convinced that Mikado can pick anything. Yeah, he probably can. Probably, I'm sure yeah. all the players on Talon can play. All they can probably play carry, too, you know. I think I've played with Mikado where he played what is the weirdest hero we played in the pub together with Durimo Cell? Well, that? we get it. You're close with them, bro. No, he played some like I. I did he play mid techies? Might have. Oh, could get me That's out. Always this fun. Goddamn talent panel, guys. <laughs> <laughs> get me out. All right, what's bleed one? They need damage, or some way to deal with this Bloodseeker. Some Oracle looks kind of nice. Then can be passive. DJ's a sick Oracle player. Mm -hmm. I think that that could be a strong way of just running it. The would be a bit niche. The lane doesn't sound too bad. I think Oracle Doom can work. They, they go with the disruptor there. instead, so get some more team fight in, AoE control, a way of pinning down something like say the Bloodseeker Wind Ranger who want to run about. So you have a way of just kind of locking them in. I don't know if this is the the damage you're really looking for though, Adam. It doesn't feel like it's still enough. I feel like this just says we're gonna fight mid late game. Yeah. You know, some lockdown, some chief spells. You know, when we throw Doom we want a hero to die. Mm -hmm. After that, we'll kill your tower if there's no one, it's fine. Yeah. They but do have some really scary spells, though. I mean, they have GS. I feel like this is a godly Doom. decryptify game. It Other is. Than oh, yeah. The purge creep possibly coming out from Doom. Yeah. But I guess Silencer is also an answer to saves. Like, can't decrypt if you're a global silence. Mm -hmm. you know? So, there is a way to make it work on bleed. I've on never Tan, seen though. I feel like the Zeus yeah. got so much better now. They have, like, yeah. close to no catch. Still in there. It's kind of hard to buy pipe. Big Mikoto hero too. Yeah, they've run Zeus a couple Supports times. Supports look so easy to bully. You know, rough power shot, yeah. stable concoction. Pretty easy to run down. It does give them, again, that, that combination with Bloodseeker, which, to be fair, I never see anyone Blood Rage Zeus or their Lesh, but it, the possibility always makes me happy. I think it's more like once you use rough Bloodseeker, it's just you on steroids, you blinks in. Okay, so they go for the mid elk. Is, is it a mid elk? I, a, I would think so, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh Elk, okay. Mid-Elk, which, again, the matchup against Void Spirit's probably not too bad. I I do like what the Beastmaster provides in this matchup, though. Like, even more control, some good push, a really strong, stable lane, at the very least, up against the Terrorblade. I, I, I like what Talon's come out with. I think this Beastmaster and Wind Ranger lane can be deceptively strong, especially once you get a stat item in Q just to hold the lane. So it feels pretty good to right-click trade. I think for Bleed, it's like what you guys said, Adam, right? Like, they're aiming for a mid to late game timing, just looking for pickoffs into a tower early on, but I think Talon's pacing is going to force something faster than that here. Yeah, Talon's draft screams, <laughs> no late game for you, oh, yeah. you know, with this beast especially. They have so, so much pace. This Helm on Beastmaster looks kind of unstoppable. Only a Doom can really kill a Helm creep. The aura is coming out from both Mikoto and Jeb Slater. Mm -hmm. It just looks like they have so much earlier earlier timings in the game compared to Blade's lineup. Yeah, I think um, Town Strap looks pretty promising. They have quite a bit of sustain as well. Like Ollie just being a battery for everyone. Three, you just have to last hit the regen. And Jazz probably going to build like all those war items. So yeah. it's going to be hard to kill them. But for Blade, I, they have some really spooky spells. Yeah, I mean, they do. Like but team fights. I feel like they'll now get to the point where if you lose the first 10 minutes of the game, when you press your spells at 11 minutes, no one dies anymore. Yeah. That's true. That's Dota right now, I yeah. feel. It's just really snowball -y, and I feel like even with that emphasis, even if they do manage to like get an equal start against Helm, their, their cooldowns are a lot longer. Doom early on, Static Storm early on, Global Silence throughout the game, Metamorphosis throughout the game. Your uptime to take that aggression is much lower in comparison to Talon. I think the game's going to come down to a lot on how Corrin's game's going to go, but I feel like that recipe has not worked for Bleed so far. So it's been one zero Talon. One zero Talon. All right, well, let's get this show on the road. I'm hyped to see how this game turns out. I'm going to send you guys over to, I believe, we have Richie and Winter. Yes, hello. Thank you, Sophie. We are here over on the Caster's Island. You know, we have our own personal island over here where the, the cannonballs can't quite reach us. Uh, but but even behind the camera, Winter, I'm not safe from your burns. You know, I'm actually an immortal now in the production room, okay? I'll have you know. 
I'll have you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna overtake your MMR soon enough, Winter. Just just you wait and see. Just you wait and see. But tell me a little bit about this match here, Winter. It was uh, Talon, of course, coming back from the Berlin Major. Still our only C representatives in that playoff stage now uh, for two majors running uh, compared to Bleed Esports, who have had a little bit of uh, more success than they have uh, in the previous two tours combined already, it seems. Do you think this Bleed roster can really take on what is right now the Titans that Talon are in C? I mean, they definitely have a lot of potential in the team, you know, and this season they've shown like a, a lot of new ideas in so terms of like how they are drafting. Blood. I had a lot of criticism for them in the past two tours, uh, especially on uh, their opening picks and their bands and everything. But right now I feel like that problem has improved a lot, uh, if not gone away. But it's more about like how they're going to align the whole team, you know, like people always uh, mention about like Corden being the weakest thing and he can only, especially, you know, when I'm on the panel, I would say that they need to stick to like those couple of heroes, you know, the Ember, the Pango, the Puck, like even Void Spirit's a bit on, on the edge, you know, like putting him on Void Spirit the last time didn't work out as well. Uh, on the edge of what? I mean, I, I get what you're getting at, but perhaps some people who don't always watch you flame on the panel, they, they may not. What, what do you mean? What do these particular heroes, your, your Pangos, your Pucks do that Void Spirits and say like a TA mid does instead? Uh, those heroes are a lot more team-based. Uh, I feel like Corden's more comfortable that way. Like Void Spirit has been changed right now when he's, he's uh, moved to a universal hero. He does a lot of damage, so you kind of have to play for yourself uh, a lot more because you can carry the game. To simplify things, like he should not be put on a hero that can have a lot more responsibilities in terms of carrying the game. He should be put on a hero where he allows the other people to carry the game. And he's just making space or otherwise contributing yeah. to, to the win condition. Yep, correct. Uh, and this game, I feel like, uh, even though he's on Void Spirit, but the situation in the lane itself, I feel like it's pretty good. He's laning against uh, Alchemist. So generally against Alchemist, it's pretty hard to lose your lane that way. And it gives uh, Void Spirit a pretty comfortable start. Because uh, if you're comfortable as Elk, you, you're not going to be doing as much uh, with the runes compared to Void Spirit, you know? Right. Um, if right. you get a haste rune, sure, you, know, you can haste around and no. you know, throw your stun and gank a side lane, but you won't be as scary as a Void Spirit. Yeah, very true. So we do take a little bit of a look around now, some of the other lanes. You and I were both surprised that Bleed didn't jump for the... It's uh, criminal not to pick Oracle. Yeah, we were looking at that Oracle, what would have been third pick for them when they decided to instead of Bleed pick up... It wasn't Doom, was it? They picked their third Void. for then, the Void Spirit, Void that's right. Answer. Yeah, we, we were expecting to see in the second phase a Dispel out from them. Because uh, already showing, I believe, was the Windrunner and the Pugna, if I'm not mistaken, right? So two very powerful dispels, and that ultimate as well, uh, being put to a lot of good use. I I'm actually playing the, the hero a bit. I, I think it's, uh, it's a strong laner now. Okay. DJ. Uh, he's going to be in a bit of trouble and will fall for first blood there. 23 picks it up with the right click, a little bit of that thirst movement speed, but to good use there. Yeah, that's the problem with having Thunderstrike at level 1. You don't really have any way to, uh, to save yourself. If you have Glimpse, you can still you know, That's have a, a chance point. to run away. But because he chose to go for Thunderstrike, so he doesn't have that you know, in his arsenal. I wonder why he decided to go for Thunderstrike. That, that is kind of a curious... Because you, you generally don't see that a whole mm -hmm. lot. At least, a, you know, early first point. I mean, from my experience, I feel like uh, the only times where I want to skill Thunderstrike if I'm not going to be able to out-trade the other support. You know, say a good example would be you are... Uh, Disruptor, you're fighting yeah. against a Lich. And a you, Lich, a Rubik, yeah, you, maybe. You, you can't, can't really trade with Glimpse because yeah. he's just not running away, so you have to get uh, Thunderstrike. I got you there. That makes sense to me. Uh, he's really getting bullied a lot here, you know. Uh, that extra blood grenade uh, on, on the course, you know, really putting a lot of pressure on, on the weak supports like Disruptor. He needs to be more careful in terms of how he's positioning in the, in the lane. Yeah, that's why, sorry to cut you off, you and I were both looking for that Dispel top lane. The damage though, is it going to be good enough from Dubu? The last Glaive of Wisdom will see him 2 in wiser now as he collects the last hit onto Q. They do end up using the Metamorphosis for that, but uh, that's what you want in this lane. A little bit more control uh, and a bit of an easier time now uh, for Jackie to continue CSing. Yeah, very, very good time to get a kill there. And now it's three minutes, so you get to pick up uh, the free Lotuses. All these little things, you know, add up uh, in the lane. Actually, they, they are not really thinking about getting the Lotus. They didn't get the Lotus. Yeah, they didn't get it. Yeah. They, I guess they just forgot. And bot lane, 23 is going to get glimpsed. Yeah, but it might have actually ended up contemning poor DJ here. Oh, he gets uh, the, the heal. He gets the a heal. little bit of heal. It's not enough, though. As Ice 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 from range will get the kill with the chain lightning. Ali running for his little life here. Uh, Ice is not going to be able to kill him with the damage he's got, though. 
Yeah, very very lucky to have uh, that chain lightning creep. Uh, very very powerful in the early game. And disrupt the pace surprise again. You know, this hero is not a hero that you want to be dying so much. Oh, he's trying to. Is he trying to get a glimpse onto 23? 23 just TP back in the lane, but no, he's gonna glimpse the partner. Yeah, and he's gonna collect the kill there. 23 once again looking for another kill. Blood, blood grenade down. Disruptor with wand charges will survive another last hit. Wow. It's just simply a too good of a lane sage right now, it seems like, for 23. That's his third kill here. So he bought another Blood Grenade just for that. All right. Is it, does, it, does that pay off? It, it does. Yeah, yeah. Disruptor, Disruptor just TP yeah. back to the lane and dies, you know. Like, uh, I was uh, True. Going, going back to my point, you know, Disruptor is not a hero where you, you want to get uh, such a bad start on, you know. Like, he's a hero that you really need to snowball from the start, get a decent lane goal, get your levels up, because he's very reliant on his glimpse levels, you know, to be efficient in the game. And right now, it's setting him so far back, you know, like DJ is only, like he's barely getting to level 3 at almost 5 minutes. It's pretty, pretty bad for a hero like uh, Disruptor. Yeah, you definitely need to get your levels, uh, your, your skill points that you reach on this hero are just too big. Uh, especially when you do go for this glimpse build, you know, uh, getting that increased range 400 per level, it, it's just huge, right? Yeah, and imagine if you are in this kind of situation, you're having a bad lane and you don't get the Wisdom Rune. Oh That's my. what I was about to say, yeah. Oh my god, you just so, want to leave the game. <laughs> we'll keep our eyes out for that as we are approaching that 7-minute marker. For now, though, of course, I think uh, eyes and, and some attention is going to be focused towards the mid lane uh, where the first power rune is about to spawn. As you were talking about earlier, as, as we like to keep track, you know, right now all the runes we were available to roll, uh, but Makoto very unlikely to gank on those as it's a nice kill collected there in the top lane with Ollie making a snap rotation. Yeah, I mean this is like a bit of like a uh, effect can, on can it. they try bottom though? I don't really know. They've got some damage. Another blood grenade thrown down. 23 is pretty fast, but not fast oh, enough. Too, he will go down. Too much damage with the Scorch out there. Okay, but now they're going to try top lane onto Jackie. Does not have the Sunder. He's only level 4 here, Winter. And surrounded by three heroes, he goes down easily. DJ does TP on back to the tower. He might fall next if it weren't for Corden, who's going to jump on in. Q is going to consume the Lotus and the Wand Charges. Live a bit longer, long enough at least to get off another power shot. Doesn't really do too much, but helps out in the kill as Corden collects the second one now onto Jabs. So Corden rotates early, gets the double kill. Does leave Makoto to pick up the power room, but it's only the invis. Uh, he's going to be able to at least use it to throw the unstable concoction Dubu's way, who was just TPing mid to try and get a bit of experience. Instead, he will fall victim here to the right clicks of Makoto. Yeah, not the biggest rune, but still, like, Alchemist is able to refill his bottle, get, uh, get the mana back, and still get the, get the kill onto the Silencer. So that's very really nice uh, for Mikoto. I'm really curious to see what kind of build the Alk is going to go. Is he going to go for, like, some shell bait ganking build, or is he just going to just straight up build Raiden still? Yeah, I mean, I don't really see a, a great Ags target for anyone, right? If it was like a Windrunner core and it was an Alk offlane, I, I could very well see that. Uh, but but not really in this kind of a match. He, he definitely seems to be the core here. It's seven minute rune time, by the way, which is why DJ is kind of pathing the way he is. Uh, Ollie as well, already in position to Radiant's stack and to capture his attack. own wisdom rune. There it is. So uh, both position four is actually collecting the runes. Yeah, and you see Corden also trying to move around. I, I definitely feel like uh, as a mid laner, you have to also pay attention to all these wisdom rune timings. You know, sometimes your supports are gonna need you to to secure the help secure the rune, or even maybe need you to go and snatch the other supports rune. Right. Yeah. Well, for now it was a bit of a treacherous hike for what? him to make. Instead, he's gonna he's gonna TP bottom. Okay, they Dyer's need to try and catch 23 here with a glimpse. It's glimpse level two. They don't have vision. That's not their Connecting watcher. Field? Oh. No. But careful now, Q and 23, they see him oh, in the Watcher, very, they see him costly. underneath the ward. That's very costly. Radiant's Big TP top. in, and I think it's I see another top. hero rotating up on him. Indeed it is, it's Makoto. He's not going to show just yet. There is a rupture as well onto Ice Ice Ice, as now they're going to counter-initiate here. Stun is going to connect onto two, a good glimpse at least sees Makoto out of this fight. But 23 Savage has the damage with the right click. That's Ice 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 dead. Oh, but DJ. Oh no. Not again. I think Dooku's dead as well here. Seems like he is going to be second to fall. No, they will not go diving the tower. I mean, this is what I'm talking about, like, uh, Corden, you know, like, he, he really likes to oh, no. rotate a lot. And he's not going to get a rune either, which would have helped him rotate. That's the second rune, DD. So we've seen Invis and now DD. Haste rune, I would say, for a Void is his next real big one. Maybe Arcane, you could argue. Yeah, I mean, as, as a Void Spirit, this really, really hurts you, you know. He lost, like, what, two whole creep waves yeah. uh, by rotating bot. And as Void Spirit, it hurts you a lot more when compared to uh, Ember or Park and bot lane. Another glimpse, but... Yeah. Pushing out lots of spells in return. Good damage here onto Q. He's fairly tanky here with the double crowns, though. 
Oh yeah. Stats. Lots Almost. of stats. Yeah. One thousand HP in the early game. Huh. Not bad at all. So nine minutes. Lotus are gonna spawn right now. Are they gonna look for a doom though? There's no glimpse for ten more seconds, and, and well, there won't be a rupture for that much longer. In trouble now is gonna be the Bloodseeker. Corden mm -hmm. is gonna rotate on through, but misses on that eighth remnant. Not gonna matter much. DJ collects the kill there with the Thunder Bolts, Thunder Strike Hardness. Now Jackie is gonna come his way down bottom lane. Went through the gate, I believe, with the meta active. He's gonna be able to pick up the kill onto Ollie. Over in the Roche pit is where Bleeder making their last stand, but Q he's firing in these uh these arrows from behind. That leaves Ice 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 in a bit of a pickle here. Can't leave, can't hide. No safety for him. He will fall after picking up the kill onto 23 Savage. It's a core and a support for a core and a support. Is that more favorable for, for Bleed or Talon, do you think, there? Uh, they got the Doom. The other side got the oh. Bloodseeker. I think it's fairly even. Mm -hmm. Top lane. They're going back to the Twin oh, Gate. Oh no, the DD's active as well here for Makoto. It's trivial. It's so easy oh, no, there. Nothing dead can do. He's just here with his two inch, trying to make a little bit of a difference here. But against four heroes, he will fall. Okay, I would say after that, you know, <laughs> a bit more advantageous for Talon. They, they continue making the plays. It's, it's so weird how connected these two corners of the map are, you know, with the Twin Gates and, and, and how hard it is uh, for you to kind of change that feeling where, okay, my team's going bottom, I'm going to TP top and have enjoy some relative safety when that's not really the case anymore, is it? Yeah, I mean, going back to what the panel mentioned, I think it was John, he's talking about like how the games have been really snowballing right now. If you lose like early game, and it's really hard for you to try to soak up any farm, like some farm here and there, XP. Because of the Twin Gate, you know, you get ganked so easily, so it's really, really difficult to come back when you are behind from the laning phase, you know. That's why you see a lot of teams, they are trying to pick a lot more aggressive supports, you know, like mm. Enchantress. You, you want to be strong in the early game so that you don't get to that position where you're forced to play passive. And you were talking about what this build on Makoto Alk is going to be. He's decided to go into the Armlet Winter. Hmm. Uh, so that's, now, that's okay. not being fetched to him now. Why, why do you enjoy that item over, say, the Radiance? I think it needs to be active. They have a draft where they need to play at a uh, very, very fast pace with the partner, with the Beastmaster, the Bloodseeker. And I feel like buying Radiance will slow everything down and going for Armlet maybe into... I think Shadowblade could be a good option next year. Like, just be very aggressive, go for kills. And Cordon's ruptured. Oh, no, Cordon's going to be in trouble. He can't Astral Step without taking a ton of damage, but he's at least managed to avoid a lot of damage potentially here. Makoto falling fast. Is he going to be able to now get a oh, massive yes, heal off of the Armlet as well as the Chemical Rage? Doom is going to be dropped onto the Alchemist. They've lost 23 Savage though. Dubu and DJ managed to actually tag team and kill off the carry. Global Silence as well is going to allow DJ and Dubu to make a little bit of an escape now, but really all eyes oh, are on Makoto as they catch him with the glimpse. Another bit of damage out from the Infernal Blade. They will have the kill in exchange for Dubu. I still wants to fight, as does Corden. Makes the jump in. Easy kill there with the second Astral Step. That is bleed. Ending that fight with a nice little bit of a, an exclamation point for them. Yeah, Talon, Talon definitely beat off uh, more than they can chew. You know, like 23 Savage, like posturing so aggressive on top of the high ground in the mid tier one. And his team is like nowhere near yet. Like, he definitely needed to wait for a couple more seconds before he, he should go so far up, you know. And 23 and, died to support. It was just supports. They did commit the kinetic, sorry, static storm as well as global. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's well Games. worth it. Maybe the Aether Remnant, very nice. Another kill onto Q. There's going to be the Roar, though, and an easy kill onto Dubu. He's been having a bit of a rough game here on the Silencer. That's his fifth death. Corden as well. Oh, Might be in for trouble. There is Rupture. No spells for Corden. Trying to TP away and nice. actually manages to get out in time with even a little bit of that physical resonant pulse shield still alive. So nicely times TP. That's a big ulti there committed. A, a handful even, too. Yeah. They, had, they don't have Doom right now, so any, any even trades or... Uh, time they can buy before their big spells come uh, come back off cooldown is going to be very very crucial for bleed. Uh, they have to try to split the map more. They don't have meta. They don't have doom, so they need they need to wait for those spells to come back off cooldown, and especially the global as well. So right now they have to try to shuffle out lanes, uh, get some good vision down, and try to play it slow. And whereas if you are talent, you have to keep the ball rolling. You have to be aggressive all the time. Maybe you can wait for your next uh, primal roll to come back off cooldown. Right, and then. You still have to try to take the initiative on the map. I had to guess, Winter. They're going to wait for this Blink Dagger on Makoto. He's a oh, thousand blink. gold into that now. Okay, Blink is also a very Jabs good... Is, by the way, Jabs, look at this stack. My goodness. It's a mega stack here for Jabs. And uh, that'll see him well on his way towards oh, his next big item, no. which I assume he's going to make move on, which is going to be that uh, Helm of the Overlord. Are you a fan of that here? Do you, do you think uh, it's going to be a good item for, for Talon this game? Have an Ancient Creep to just 
Go yeah, it's, scout. It's, it's definitely good, you know. I mean, even though you're against the, the Doom, you know, when he gets uh, when, when he gets his talent, you can just kill your creep. Uh-oh. Uh, that's, a, that's a kill on the Q. He did manage to get up the wind run. Now Ice 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 can Doom him, which does dispel. Um, or, yeah, or he's not. He's not going to do anything. Makoto, uh, as well, is going to not do anything as he stunned himself. But oh, he's, Ice, he's dead. Yeah, he's going to eat the roar. Lots of magic damage, and Makoto's just nearby to collect a bit of XP. Oh, Bleed is going to get double Wizard Room, I think. Oh, yeah, they Hodden's did. picking up the first one. Do you feel like uh, if a team gets two of the Wizard Room runes, he shouldn't, the team shouldn't get Radiant's double buff? He should just deny the, the XP from the enemy team. I agree, but you should still get the solo experience from the Wisdom Room. So what I mean by that is, in this case, right, DJ picked up his rune, mm -hmm. you know, that's fine. But when Corden picks up the Radiant rune, I think Corden should just get XP and no one else should get XP. Uh, that's still pretty big, you know. But, I agree. Yeah. Well, defend your defend your side of the map. It's it's right there, you know. It's so close, Winter. Radiant's you can have wards up. I, I don't I mean, really see a lot of people award in this area because a, a handful of good wards, really just one good ward in the early game. Here. Yeah, you have it, a point, you know. You have to try to prioritize a yeah. thing like some vision down to prevent. Like, Winter, they, they had four heroes down bottom to kill Ice Ice Ice. That, that's such a debate. You know what this guy does, Winter Chan Lipin. Thank you. Thank well, you for using my name. I, I feel a, a huge amount of respect coming yeah. out from you. You're properly addressed now. <laughs> Dubu. Uh, stopped. Yeah, okay. He maybe thought more heroes were coming, but he's going to be able to uh, capture the Lotus. Yeah, so before this, I was talking about like, even when you're playing in like Doom, you should still get a uh, Helm, of, Helm of the Overlord. I feel like the the creep, like him being able to eat your creep, shouldn't deter you from getting the item still, you know, like the item is still extremely good on Beastmaster. Oh, and Monday. if you have a lineup that needs to really snowball and push very hard, I, I feel like that getting the Helm is still good for you. And DJ, they're trying to set up something here with the raw. I guess one more second off cooldown. Yep. Ooh, nice little tumblers toy. DJ gets the glimpse as well. Jab still catches him with the roar, however, and Ollie is going to commence the life drain. Quick little kill there actually goes to Jabs, and Makoto's gonna stun himself again. That's uh, maybe three self stuns this game, unfortunately for Makoto. Hasn't found a whole lot of them, but that that is the blink dagger reveal, I believe, Winter. Yep. Uh, so it's it's a fairly significant self stun there in the sense that now bleed uh, know the they've, they've identified the itemization here for Makoto. It's definitely going to be a faster elk, much more aggressive. Yeah, and the uh, blood seeker is going for BKB. Now, right now in a bit he's going to have it, so they're going to be able to play extremely aggressive on the map uh, with this BKB. Wind Ranger is going for a bling, but they don't really need the bling. Okay, he changed his mind. He's also going for an another BKB. Okay. I thought it might have been Diffusal, perhaps, with the way yeah, that, that, going. that is also a pretty decent idea, because I feel like the Wind Ranger in this game, he, she has to be a damage dealer, a DPS dealer, so right. Diffusal would, would be nice. Smoke on smoke action, but Bleed, I don't really like the way that this one's playing. Now, in the middle of the river, without any vision on the other side of the map, it is really dangerous, especially when you take a, a peek Radiant at those two Oscar. Talon Wards that they have uh, across the river. Do put Bleed in a very precarious position there, so they're going to go ahead and maneuver around the map a little bit more, see what they can find down bottom. It's a whole lot of nothing. Death Global, though. That's why they feel really, really strong right now. But uh, they still have to get the right initiation, you know, with Corden. If they don't get the right initiation, it might be bad for them, you know. Uh, Alchemist is pretty tanky with the armlet on in the previous fight. You saw him. He turned armlet on and he got Doom and he was still tanking through it. Yep. Who's who's the right target though, right? Who's the right target for Corden? Partner? Okay. I, I think partner would be the num my number one target. I mean, sure, you have global, you know, you can argue. You, you go on anyone and then you global, so you don't really have to worry about the save from the partner. But still, ideally, you take out the partner right so away. Are they going to try and Roche? Can they get this done? They got the minus armor from the max acid spray. Yeah, and Beastmaster, man. It's Beastmaster. Mm, he's got, yeah, he's got the big creep as well. So it's going to be there to tank. It, it's slow. The bleed, bleed. It's not that slow. You know something's up? It's not that slow, I suppose, right? When you consider, what, it's a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 second TP to your outpost. Fight. If who do you give this Aegis on? I would give it, I guess, 23. He's got PKB. Yeah. Yeah. Came in there to last it as well. So come on, guys. It's not that hard. Just click on him. Uh, they see Dubu underneath the ward, by the way. The carry life, you know, Richie. You don't even have to do the hard work of killing the Roshi coming. Dodo, not going to stun himself this time. Finds the stun onto Dubu, but is immediately doomed now. He's not carrying he's Aegis. That's on 23, it. and he is tanking through it very easily. Isis Isis TP is cancelled, so he's going to go down to the right clicks of 23 as oh, well. Oh, very, very, very smart there by Mikoto. He's taking off the armlet so that he doesn't take the damage from it during Doom. Wait, what? I didn't know you could drop the Yeah, I didn't muted. know that too. Well, that doesn't seem right. You're muted. Yeah, you shouldn't be allowed to drop the. I mean, he dropped the item into his backpack. 
I feel like you shouldn't be allowed to. I feel like you shouldn't be allowed to do that either. That's like, you know, the same thing uh, dragging an Aeon disc into your inventory, you know? Feels very abusable. I, I know, didn't know you can do that. Okay. I, I know for a fact that when you're muted, you cannot assemble or disassemble items. So, like, the little trick that you tend to see against, like, Faceless Voids on the first Aeon disc proc, you know, where you, you lock it from combining, and mm -hmm. then when you're in Chrono, you unlock it. That does not work if you're muted. So Daya's Hexed and obviously attack. Doomed um, are not going to allow you to activate that. Is there anything else that mutes right now in the game? Disruptor. Disruptor ah, very good point. Disruptor Ags. That's a big one we might end up seeing at this game. Uh, it is in the quick buy for DJ, but after a blink dagger, so, so it'll be some time. Yeah, I mean, Bleed wants to play a very slow game right now, so they, they want a game to slow down, farm, get to their item timings. I think the Void Spirit Nullifier is going to be huge against yeah. the Pagna, especially, and the Wind Ranger in this spell. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the BKB from Q is definitely going to put a bit of a dent in that, but uh, yeah, certainly it'll, it'll at least uh, make the kill possible, right? I, mean, I feel like the case. game is still not fast enough for Talon. They, they have this 5k lead, but because of the lineup, it might expire really soon, so they're going to try to force the high ground with 3 minutes remaining. It's scary. On the Aegis. It's first Aegis as well. You, you tend not to see this. Sometimes you don't even see it until third ages these days. Lots of damage there into 23. He's going to hold on oh, to the BKB. Glimpse isn't going to force him to use it either. Lots of magic damage, but there's the life drain to keep him sustained. Bleed are just tanking damage right now against this Nether Ward. I think they should try to finish steal the Tormentor. Can they do it? That's a risky play. I mean, maybe with the Beastmaster creep you can get it done. That's always a little scary though, isn't it? I've just seen games turn around way too quickly around that yeah. thing, underestimating the amount of damage it does. What is Fleet waiting on the item timing so far? I think a blink on this Ice 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 Doom would be big. He's got his Octarine core. Yeah, the blink. He's coming along. I, I just the initiation right now, it's, it's just all on Cordon. So it just feels a bit difficult. You see Talon considering whether or not they should go for the Torment or decide against it. I mean, they're going for it right now, I guess. Yeah, what? Well, in they go. I guess with the creep nearby. Who's gonna get the who has the most valuable shot right now? It'll go oh, to Pugna. Pugna. That's not bad. Yeah, you clear illusions, right? Yeah, you clear the terabit illusions. That's pretty great. Can target Netherward causing life drain to refract to all enemy heroes for and seven they're times. TPing back to Dia Tormenta to finish. Oh, and they've captured both wisdom runes as well. Bleed are maneuvering on over. It's just DJ and Ice Ice Ice, and they immediately don't like what they see here. Assuming that a couple of heroes have TP'd on back, so they are going to lose out on a, a good amount. And this is pretty good with first ages, right? Securing objectives around the map, even if it's not high ground, um, Talon's still at least making a, a lot for themselves here by capturing two wisdom rooms and, and, and well, basically denying the enemy tor tormentor. Yeah. So they can still go back for theirs, but but you're still concerned it's not fast enough. Do you think this no, doom is going to be a not, problem? It's the, not this enough. TB is going to be a problem. It's what what item on TB are you scared of? Is it the Scotty? Scuddy, BKB, like if the game drags on till like minute 30, he finishes his Scuddy, then he gets BKB. I feel like that's a, a lot of problems are going to arise in the team fights right now. I mean, you have an Elk, you know? So having this 5k lead is a, a little bit deceptive, you know? It's not a small lead by any means. Right. But if you look at the entire game, like on, on Dire, like Terrible is happy farming, Doom is still scaling. Yeah, I mean... Vo Voice Spirit is not poor at all. So I feel like Bleed is not in a terrible spot at all, despite this 5k deficit. They're even going to try to They're going to smoke into the Sages. I mean, they see Makoto farming top. Makoto, by the way, is just about to even farm with all the rest of his cores. He was uh, barely trailing the pack well, of 40 three. seconds before Aegis expires. Just it's trying to close. time it. There's going to be a rupture. What did they rupture? I double, heard... double. Okay, they ruptured Doom, and he just TP'd away, but the glimpse, there's a Doom as well now. They've jumped onto Ollie, and they've knocked him down. Pugna is down for the count. There's going to be the Nullifier now onto Q. Doesn't that BKB yet? Saved by the rope, but there's the Scotty projectiles already. Jackie with two kills so far in this fight. I mean, look at that. Look at how strong they are, despite being behind in terms of net worth. On they want more, Winter. DJ has got glimpse again if they can just get the vision, but no, I'm not going to go that far. I mean, this is huge uh, for Bleed uh, managing to get the two kills on the supports. It's going to help them get a, even more time to scale into the late game, more time to farm, more time for the items to, to come back, uh, come up. And I feel like, uh, I, I'm not sure about the Rapture on the Bloodseeker uh, onto the Silencer there, you know. I think that might not be the best move uh, for Talon. He needs to try to fight together with his team. And they cannot afford one more step up like this, you know. Their lineup is going to expire very quickly. Ow. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe see as 
That may come into play here as they're going to look to jump 23, whose Aegis did just expire. There's going to be the initiation. They want to take down Q first. He's the easier kill. There's going to be a rupture onto Ice. Waste no time immediately, Winter. He's out of here. The oldest counter in the book to Bloodseeker. A piece of paper which allows you to teleport home. Makoto waiting. Didn't throw the stun. And it's going to end up stunning himself there. Corden, a bit faster on the, on, the, on the footwork there. Managing to get out in time. Yeah, on the Radiant's other hand, they managed to get uh, Dubu on the sideline, so it's one for one, one support for one support. Not the greatest uh, for talent, but you know, you didn't lose any cause, so you take it still. But the pace of the game is still not ideal for talent. They have to try to. Whoa, Static Storm onto two, they're in onto 23. He does not have a BKB. Ollie's trying to keep him sustained, and the heal is too much. They didn't keep anything to try and stun Ollie. Makoto, he kept something to stun himself. It's another chemical rage. Corden's trying to TP out, but he finds himself roared. And another life drain from Ollie is going to get it the job done. What? I can't believe how that played out. Yeah, uh, they definitely Radiant's did not expect that as well. You know, the Panga just like... Uh, just out heal all the damage. Uh, they have to just uh, be, be chill. You, know? you, you, you don't have to make all those risky plays trying to go for those like solo pickoffs without proper vision. They didn't really have any observer wards around, so they couldn't have known how many heroes were in the area. They just tried to go for a pickoff. I feel like in a game where you're in control, I would consider bleed in control right now, even though they are five, uh, 4k behind. Are they still in control after that death? Are still pretty much uh, in control, I think, but ideally you don't lose your core. If you only lost uh, the disruptor there, I think maybe it's acceptable, but because you lose your core, you know, so then it's really bad for your team. Do you see how fast Ice 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 is, by the way? He's got bots, he's got Scorched Earth, and he's also consumed the Kabold Foreman, so he's got the Speed Aura. Yeah, and he has the, the cape, yes. another extra 20 speed. He is speed. so, he is zooming around the map. But the numbers are not right. No, they're never right. <laughs> and, it's, and it's night time, so you get an extra you get, 30. You get an extra, what, 15% move speed, isn't it? Or is it, is it flat now? Plus 30, I think, around. It's it's so fast. He is... He looks like he's more than 428. You know? He's a hundred percent. He's probably closer to 550, if I had to guess. I think he's I think he's pretty close to maxing out here. That's a huge... It's so much move speed here on him. <laughs> he's so fast. Yeah. <laughs> insane in the team fights if you don't i think if you don't raw him okay you you might have to raw him or rupture him i guess yeah not. you definitely have to rupture him i think uh, it's two really phenomenal targets though isn't it Corey, yeah. as well as i say size if he uses his ruptures on, again on the support i think they'll lose the fight he needs to save it for the yeah. doom or the void spirit yeah. then you need to use the raw for the terror blade agreed and and that'll be a bit easier now reaching the the terror blade with the blink dagger delivered on jabs the siege is continuing. I suspect they're going to push here for the tier two tower. Roche not up for a further two minutes. Both teams uh, don't know that though. We are inside now this Roche window where it could possibly have spawned. So bleed. Here comes again. Bleed. They're going to take the initiative. Another smoke. Do they have an observer? Just DJ has blink and observer. So this is going to be very crucial for Disruptor. He's right in the line of fire for this. Now, 23 is coming to this fight as well with a Basher Winter. Radiant's that might make a difference against anyone trying to TP attack. out. That is unless he's doomed. Ice, his smoke is broken. He's going to make the jump in. Does find the doom. Aether Remnant's going to miss. And now the counter initiation from Makoto. He's not going to stun himself. Oh, he's... He, okay, BKB. He didn't technically stun himself there. But they're on to the back lines there. Corden, hunting for the supports. Pogna's dead. And so is 23. There's the roar. It does catch one. But in trouble is going to be Q. Kind of getting kited around. Makoto looking to throw another stun here. Does manage to blink out, but it's going to only stun himself again in the corner. What is, what is going on in this game? And now Jabs, he's just dead. He cancelled his TP. Killed. He could have gone, he could have got out, but he cancelled his TP. Oh no, he's oh he almost ran into the Aether Remnant. I think that oh no, he's he's going to TP. He's going to TP. I, mean, I, I feel like Bleed is in full control of this game right now. Roshan is going to spawn in another 40 seconds. Like Talon just ran out of steam, you know. They they had a really good start, but after that they weren't able to capitalize or build a. a uh, on it, you know, they had the first Aegis, they were pushing like, the bot Radiant's tier 3, uh, like what, 5 minutes, 6 minutes ago. But after that, they haven't been really able to build on anything. Yeah, yes. I, I mean, I was I was shocked there, but it was a good decision to actually drop the Doom onto the uh, Bloodseeker. Because with him dead, there was just no control. It feels like Rupture is the only tool that Talon have in these fights to, to stop Bleed from kind of just running them down. If Talon does not get a good initiation, I, I feel like they're just going to lose the fight. Like, uh, the fight starts, no matter who the Doom goes on, there's a global up, the guy's dead. Yeah, they made it look easy there. Uh, and Makoto is having a really hard time in these fights as well, following up with uh, the stuns. Uh, got himself twice in that fight, Winter. And, and on the first time, had to BKB just to avoid stunning himself. It's, um... 
not the reason they're losing these smoke, fights, smoke. but they're gonna they're gonna difficult. have to find something here. You know, if Talon does not find anything quickly, they're gonna they're gonna lose this game. Roche is up, and he's about to TP bottom here as soon as he respawns. Or sorry, he's respawned. But he's gonna go bottom in 90 seconds. Talon attempting to hold the high ground here. Makoto thinking about another stun. This time, will he find a target? DJ, no! He hasn't found another one, but Dubu caught and killed here slowly by the rest of the team as he will be taken down. Does not have buyback, doesn't have global either. The Roar is going to be able to find now the Disruptor. He's going to actually be doomed for that by Ice 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 and happy enough to get on out as Makoto at least throws the stun onto the Illusions. Falling rather quickly, though. Does need to back off and sustain a bit more on that Chemical Rage, but Bleed sticking around Winter. They're still looking to fight or at least make it a bit more difficult for Talon to go in for Roche. Talon can still fight, you know. They have a very good observer lot on the Twin Gate, uh, so that's going to help them decide whether they can take any fight around that area. And they just need to wait for 20 seconds until the Elk has Chemical Rage back up again, and then they can decide if they want to take the fight. But right now, they are still waiting for the cooldown. Still waiting. But, I mean, they've waited so long here on Talon that now Bleed, they're going to have Global Silence up. Wait, they have BKB. Do they have BKB up on the Ranger? And, and Roche is going to go bottom in 20 seconds. 25. Well, he should go bottom. You ask Talon, that, that's a 50-50 thing right there. But... <laughs> I mean, okay, so what are they? Okay, they are going to go down bottom, uh, and they will be bleed to the punch here, but only half the heroes have left through the oh, gate, and Ice Ice Ice, oh. oh, he's into the pit. He goes into the Roche pit. Now oh, they Q. people TPing away. Q is going to be left oh, behind by no. the Glyphs and killed. Is it going to happen another time to Talon here? Two seconds, he should be heading down bottom now, and there he goes. But do they go through the Twin Gate? That's the question, they're, or do they no, TP? No, they're TPing, they're TPing to the tier, to the tier 3. Yeah, winter. smart choice. Very, very smart choice. So, Roche is going to end up down bottom. I believe he's he's there, right? He's not going back? Where is, where is Roche? Okay, he's home. Roche is home. Dying. Good. <laughs> you never know. It's, it's, it's worthwhile to double check. Winter. Which home? <laughs> very true. He's in his summer home, I suppose. I've heard it being referred to. What would you call his dire home, though? Not exactly Radiance a winter home, is it? Is I mean, attack. it does look a little bit like your house over there with all the brimstone and fire. Relax, bro. I have a nice home. <laughs> that you do. <laughs> so they're not going to smoke. They're just going to run in towards a uh, water area. They're going to send an illusion in to scout things out. So they're going to see that Talon's not doing both yet. And Dubu's just ch being chilling in the top lane as well, by the way. He is just chilling there. Maybe uh, just... Doesn't want to be caught here in case they need the global science. Dubu, he's in! He's immediately to global right in the face of Jabs. Killed off this time, but Bakota, the sun's going to be able to catch three. Dubu buys back, doesn't have global. Needs to run back into this fight. Corden, he's in, looking immediately for the kill onto Ollie. Did not connect, however, on that second astral step, so the mark damage wasn't there to oh, blow him up. But look, Bakoto just dies, static storm, and Jackie lays into him. Easy kill there for Bleed, as now they look to force Talon away so that this is, they can secure Roche. Makoto's only dead for 40 seconds, though, and, and Bleed, I mean, they're bleeding time here onto their Metamorphosis. That's going to be another easy kill here onto Q, so that makes it a 5 versus 3 at the very least. I mean, that's going to be Roche. I don't see how Talon can contest this anymore. Well, seems to be the case. I think we still have quite a bit left as well on the Metamorphosis. Oh, it's ending, but it should be fine. I mean, they've got Butterfly, Scotty. This thing should get down relatively soon. I mean, the team fights look way too difficult. I mean, they got the jump on the Silencer. They kill him right away, but uh, the Gleams lands on the Elk. He just gets uh, pummeled down by the Terabyte with the Metamorphosis. I mean, they have no team items, right? So they don't have any Crimson Guard. They don't have anything, any armor items. Yeah, just the Vlad's aura. Yeah, Corden did a really good job there, right? Jumped right onto the supports and made it such that Makoto was basically free in the fight. He, he kind of forced a lot of the attention on over to himself as if he was an axe, M much like a, an off-lane style, right? Mm. Just running at the supports, forcing attention, and enabling his own cores and his own allies to use their skills. I mean, it was literally just a, a static field, a kinetic field and a static storm there with the damage from Jackie. Easy enough. It's really easy to do that when you have Global attack. behind you. Yep. You, you, you just run in and that's always a... Uh, Kind of like a reset or get out of jail button, you know, when he clicks the R. So you, you don't really feel like you're in any danger of dying. It was scary for Dubu as well. He, he, he took the gate and then activated the ultimate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit too risky. I yeah, wouldn't no, recommend it. Was I, would not, I would not recommend that. But. <laughs> Makoto, I mean, he died right after, but Makoto was very quick to blink up on that high ground. At the very least, though, it did force Makoto to BKB because I believe he was cooking up that unstable concoction. Uh, but up go Bleed now, and Winter, you were talking about this fall-off point for Talon. It, it, we may have hit that, but how much do Bleed need to get out of this Aegis? Is it crucial for them that, you know, they get 
Megas out of this, or, or are they still chilling? Do they continue to scale through this game quite easily? Take minimal risk. They have right. the better scaling, they have Doom, they have Terrorblade, and like even support, you know, Disruptor, Silencer, late game. Yeah. But those are scary. Void Spirit is also something not to be trifled with, you know, late game, he does a lot of damage, he's very tanky. Like, even right now, he's he's pretty tanky in the team fights. He has the Nullifiers, Lincolns, Echo Saber. He didn't really get the Harpoon. Uh, would love to see a Harpoon so you can, you, know, you can deal with the, the partner no, better. No Desso either, right? I'm just curious. You see, you, sometimes you see Dessos as well on the Void Yeah, spirits. this game he wants to get uh, Lincolns uh, to deal with the Raw and the Chakra Shot, yeah, I guess. That's a good point. That's a good point. Like sometimes you will see uh, Void Spirits get Manta if they are dealing with like Boots right. or Silence. Yep. Radiance middle tower has fallen. This is going to be a, quite a fast push. Of course, Talent, they've got pretty decent high ground, right? They've got the uh, power shot. They have um, the blood right. Uh, and uh, the big one, of course, Pugna with another blast and the ward to be able to, and that to, to clear the illusions. Uh, so the push is going to have to be a pretty uh, determined one from Bleed, right? They're not going to get him with this slow siege. Nope. Uh, Talent are going to be able to hold through that. I mean, they're just going to have to farm the map and slowly wait for Picos. You know, I don't think you need to be too worried about the Aegis timing out. I think you just play the map, secure even more late game items, and just wait for Ice and uh, DJ on the Disruptor Doom to get pickoffs on the map. Oh, interesting. You see what Doom's eating there? He's, he's eating the uh, the little, I forgot what they're called, the Ogre Frost Mage, is it? The Ancient Frost Mage? Uh -huh. uh, it, it's the, the new camp, the newest Ancients that they added. Cooldown Reduction. Yeah, but the small one. This is really Imba, actually. Uh, I always like taking this creep in general on the push. He doesn't have any actives, which is why no one really likes to take him. Um, but his cooldown reduction is pretty crazy, as you can see. Yeah, it's it's real good. I, I like that Ice is experimenting a little bit with the smaller creeps. Because the smaller creeps have abilities too, except for the, the granite golem. He doesn't have anything. Well, okay, 23 is going to go in for a fight. Finds the Rupture onto DJ. Immediately doomed after DJ bleeding out, but I believe he uses a Lotus. And now they've managed to kite out 23. He's just dead through the BKB, doomed up and killed. It's that easy. Yeah, I remember what I said. If you use Rupture on the support, you're never winning that fight. I mean, that one looks like a bit of a lost cause as well for Talon. 23 basically just caught. With his pants down, you know, in the jungle, in the woods, and bleed move on in, take him down. I mean, I feel like this is probably GG, you know, I don't see how they can defend the high zone. Uh, Jackie's coming up his meta, he's gonna hit the tower. He's gonna clear the illusions though, right? Certainly. But yeah, but it's still a lot of damage. Yeah, it looks uh, a bit unstoppable there. They're in, they're, I think they're trying to find Ollie, but haven't really found anything there. Oh, sorry, there was Q there. Q just got deleted by Cord and Ice. He's gonna walk up, he just casually finds Magoto, forces the BKB as well as the Chemical Rage. All right, this TB is Dude. way too huge, man. He's, he's big. How do you even get up to him? How do you, I don't even know if we've seen Makoto hit Jackie once this game. That's why Terrible is an alchemist counter. You're high armor, you outrange him, you outscale him, you out uh, damage, damage him, you out everything the elk. That's why Elk has a very, very sharp timing to end the game before Terrible comes to this stage. It, it seems like a pretty good TB draft though, right? Because I, I think we've seen oh, a lot jabs. of TB games. You are doomed, boy. Uh-oh. Jabs, he is doomed, and he's going to be killed off. There he goes. We didn't catch it. It was, you know, animal abuse, basically, how quickly it went, which is why the Observer didn't want to show it. He just got doomed, static stormed, and killed off that easy. Nothing he could do. He has buyback. And he's probably going to be forced to use it here. I think Aegis or not, you're feeling pretty comfortable in this kind of a game as Bleed, especially as Jackie's just picked up now uh, the Daedalus. I think I said Daedalus. I meant Aegis or not. Sorry, my, my Greek weaponry is uh, a bit confused sometimes. Okay, Aegis times out. There's Daedalus, and now BKB back into the inventory. I mean, he's he's so big, Winter. What do you, how do you even... How? The next game. Try next game. Try next game. <laughs> Ban it. And for Bleed, I mean, they, they continue to impress, even taking down what has previously been the top team in C. Maybe it's too early to call it here, Winter, but they may be turning a new, a new stone here for, for Bleed. Is there going to be Makoto? Nope. Stuns himself yet again, unfortunately. Now finds himself doomed up, muted, and just killed. Scott Buyback will be forced to use it. 23 trying to fight through this one, even with the Basher, just can't get through the damage that Jackie has with the armor. Jabs, glimpsed back before he can get the roar off. Yeah. And that's two buybacks, Winter, as they say in C, for what? For nothing. For, for what, Winter? For free. Buyback for free. Uh, I mean, Blade is just going to get out for free right now. They're going to reset, do the most sensible thing. Wait for your cooldowns, wait for your BKBs, and don't rush. They have nothing to worry about, like, late game. Their lineup is just going to outscale Talon's lineup. 
Yeah, and, and for Talon, I mean, you know, you, they, they do the quote-unquote correct things there, right? They wait for ages to time out and then look for initiation, but it just feels impossible. Like, this, this, this TB, he's so big. He's so big. You know, the, the, the Basher acts as a form of accuracy, right? If you proc Bash, you are guaranteed to hit, but it's a 25% every 2.3 seconds. That That's just not enough. That's why you need the MKB into these I mean, come on. items. Let's be real. 38 minutes in the game. Terrible has 33k net worth, and Bloodseeker has 20k net worth. That's not even a fight, man. That's so unfair. <laughs> oh, I mean, you know, maybe you find a roar or something, right? And then you get a long duration unstable concoction. And then you right-click the, what, and then you, 50 you, armor you hero? You have to right-click him a thousand <laughs> times. <laughs> okay, yes. Oh, you know what they need? Blood mist. Yeah. That would help. That would help. He's got the shard. I mean, this shard isn't bad. You don't have to click him 50,000 times. You have to click him about 50 times. Good luck. 50 <laughs> times. 50 times. Uh, it's going to be difficult here. He also has Mjolnir, which is the same thing, by the way, as Basher, where if you proc the hit, you're going to connect the attack. So it, it, he's not, like, completely destroyed by the casual evasion. I but mean, you, you know what? You were talking about the aura, the cooldown reduction aura. Oh, yeah. And with the tablet having the spell preserve. Oh, he yeah. So, he has so much cooldown reduction on, wow. the, on the conjure image. Yeah, you're right. It's actually the most... Uh, I think it's... It might be the best neutral creep for a lineup that has terrible in the late game when you're pushing. I mean, the other one I would consider is the Granite Gorum aura, so everybody's tanky. The, the HP? Yeah. People really like the um, the Ancient uh, Thunderhide, which is the one with the drums uh, and the slam, which got buffed more, I believe, in 733. How much uh, damage does that do? It does like 300. 300. It's, it's a lot of damage, for sure. Let me see, I found one on the map. Uh, the slam is, yeah, it's uh, uh, 250, 250, pardon me. Yeah, but a pretty big radius, and the slow is, is, is quite impressive as well. Uh, but but inside the same camp, the little rumble hides, they also buffed the uh, war drums aura, so they actually yeah. give attack you uh, uh, attack speed as well as an accuracy. So, for example, if Bleed were up against a hero, actually, they are against a hero that has 100% evasion. If, if she was such a big problem, Ice 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 could choose to simply consume an Ancient Rumble Hide, and then his team would have 50% accuracy on their attacks. It's not bad. Yeah. I mean, especially if you're playing against a Wind Ranger carry. Yeah, of course. I think it's legit. It's a, it's a very, you know, real consideration, especially when when you're up against like a casual butterfly or something like that. Like it's it's not the crazy casual the butterfly. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> nobody gets a casual butterfly. You get the butterfly because you can afford it. I, I, but you know what I mean? <laughs> the, the casual 35% evasion compared to the competitive 100% evasion. I, I wish you can buy a casual butterfly on my POS4 hero, POS5 hero. You know, uh, what POS4 or POS5s are you playing? Playing that one butterflies winter. Maybe maybe that's why you're losing so much MMR. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm digging my own hole here. <laughs> well, guys, don't worry. I rush first item Ag Scepter on Dark Willow. We win the game. And then I buy butterfly. And then right? you buy butterfly. <laughs> Talon, uh, they're smoking out of the base now, going for the move of last resort, the Pisa LA. I don't know if they're gonna even make it to the Roche, but in time though, Winter. I mean he's going down so quickly. Got himself an Ag's Blessing here as well. DJ in position, ready to break some smokes. Over on the side of Talon as well, things are going to be looking very difficult. No vision in this area. They're doing the best with the Hawks as DJ's the one to break the smoke. He's got the Trickster's Cloak. Ice is Ice is in. Finds a Doom on a Makoto. I think he refreshed and doomed nothing. He broke a Lincoln, so he's going to die for that, actually. Dead for 90 seconds. Global Science is a big reset here at the very least, and that's, a, I think, a Glavenir from the side, which at least kind of resets this fight. But 23 glimpsed back into his death. Can do nothing about that. A one-for-one one trade. Corden picks up the kill easily there onto 23 Savage. That was a glimpse, wasn't it? Yeah. Just glimpsed on back. The vision too good for Bleed. That's going to be an easy acceptor here. You can barely see, by the way, where Bleed had the ward down for their vision in that fight because uh, they've got the sentry right on top. Yeah, there's a sentry and an observer on that point. Uh, so that's that was the fight winning ward there, basically, Winter. You know, this, in this kind of an increased map, I'm okay. finding that a lot of these really weird runes, yeah, or sorry, wards that aren't necessarily on top of cliffs and give flying vision, Here's tend to be really strong. It's actually very annoying, you can just do this, you know, it's hard to devote it even if you yeah. have a sentry there. You need a gem, basically. It's, it's one of those. And there was a, a, a Glapenir as well for Q, just didn't really end up making that big of a difference. Ice, I think, uh, eager to pop a Lincoln Sphere. <laughs> Of course, he did not pick up the kill, but uh, things are going to get pretty difficult from here. 
for the side of Talon as uh, no buyback on 23 of 44 net net uh, K net worth lead Jackie. Yeah, unfortunately they have to use the real hero to hit the buildings because partner is just too annoying to the, the illusions. Yep. You see how much fun this hero has when he gets off those long duration life drains as well. He starts like fun. Yeah, this, look at him. This hero is straight up imba. I mean, you know, that doesn't mean he can't have a bit of fun when he's life draining a, a hero. How can you have fun playing such a broken hero? Koto, unstable concoction, forked up. We'll see if he can find the jump. BKB's activated as there's a jump back on in. The Doom interrupted there by the Roar. If they can take down Ice and Ice through the BKB, it'd be pretty big. Down he goes. Global Silence as well, not really doing enough. He has buyback on trouble. Q is on the low ground though, and is in a bit of trouble here. Hit now by oh, the Nullifier. No evasion for him. Jackie with a kill. Ice can buy back and has the BOTs. Makoto running out of time here on the Unstable Concoction. He's got about a quarter duration of it left, and there's going to be the Fortify out now. Ollie being chased down, kept alive. This Corden unable to connect there on the spells to nuke him down. But things getting really scary here now for Talon. Bleed just need the right initiation here. Oh, and look at how quickly these buildings go down. Yeah, and Demon Zeal. Demon Zeal active, good Lotus, reflects the stun, but it actually it's a good glimpse that ends up actually saving the life there potentially of Makoto. Oh, the big Sunder and Jabs pulled back in, kept alive here momentarily. Life Drain is going to be able to clear the illusions. That does keep Jabs alive. Q's going to buy back now as he looks to try and punish, maybe getting a bit too deep, but Makoto does not have Chemical Rage, and there's going to be the Terra Wave in time. The 10-second Metamorphosis, is that enough to cut through Makoto? He activates the Chemical Rage, silences Jackie, looking to pick up these kills. Another Roar is going to hold him down as Makoto is going to be forced to turn back and fight into the kinetic field and the static storm by the glimpse of DJ. He's dead for 110 seconds now, as is 23. Corden about to go fountain diving, but that's it. Talon, they throw in the towel. The GG is called, and it's going to be 1-0 bleed after game one. Yeah, what a immaculate game you have by bleed. You know, understanding their timings. They're not really rushing. They're really calm, you know, even though the early game was uh, kind of not the best for them. Uh, Talon, they were putting some insane amount of pressure during the laning phase, but uh, after that, the Bloodseeker, he, he, he made a couple of mistakes, you know, especially the middle one when, when they were pushing the mid tier one, and he died, and they I think they lost like two heroes or, or so, and I feel like that's the point where I feel like the game started to turn around for Bleed. As for Talon, they just needed to keep the ball rolling, and they couldn't, and you know, the only thing I could uh, say is maybe the Beastmaster uh, could go for like an aura item, aura build. You go for like Crimson, uh, Freeze, and you play around each other and you're stronger in the team fights. But apart from that, I don't see where else uh, Talon can really improve on, you know, on uh, either itemization on their movements. You know, I feel like they, they really have a very sharp timing. They didn't hit it and they just lost. Would you say that that speaks a little bit more to the kind of meta change that we've had here? Where, you know, if you're gonna, because it's a bigger map, naturally you need more time to get to your objectives, making your window that much smaller. Do you think these kinds of drafts that go on to, on timings, do you think they're just harder to execute on? Yeah, I, I think that could uh, that could also be very well one of the reasons why you see a lot of teams, they tend to prioritize more of a late game-ish you know, type of draft. You know, you play slower, you chill. As long as you don't lose your lanes too hard, you'll be able to get to your timings. All right, well, uh, it was Bleed that hit their timings here consistently very well once again on the TB of Jackie. Uh, we'll see how Talon look to bounce back as they're down 1-0. We're going to let the panel speak a bit more at length and see what else they could change. Bleed managed to take down the Titans of Southeast Asia. Quite an upset for a lot of people, but uh, I kind of saw it coming, to be honest. I thought the draft of Bleed just was more superior to that of Talon. What do you guys think? I think they had to play a little bit faster in Talon. Like giving Mikado something like Alk, he had to really kick up the pace, but you know, it was all down to this armlet timing with Blink, right? Just keep playing aggressive. I feel like at some point they just kind of went back to farming. They gave a lot of room out to bleed, to bounce back in. And you're playing against Terrorblade plus Doom. Like these heroes love it when you take a slower game. Corden also popped off pretty well here at him, right? Like he had a pretty good performance coming out overall. Mm -hmm. I feel like Talon had a lineup where they had to do things a bit differently, but mm -hmm. they played the game in a way that they usually play the game, you know, which was carry farm, you know, we have space on the map, we're gonna scale better, which can be true, but I think we just had much simpler heroes to scale with and execute with. I do agree, I think this is the best I've seen Corrin play since Tor 2. Mm -hmm. I think he had a really good game, he itemized really well too. He was not too poor, you know, I think they look really solid, Bleed. Yeah, Corrin was really proactive this game for sure, and you could tell, like you could feel his impact on the map. Yeah, he, he just made work happen across. Like the connection with Corden and the others as well. Like, 
playing with the Disruptor Glimpse, lining up these kills. Uh, it was just pretty coordinated from Bleed. And again, using the holds of Talon's draft, like Talon didn't have a great way of locking in the Void Spirit outside of maybe just a roar. It was really hard for Mikato to jump in with his stun there as well, with the Unstable. So he's just kind of kited around in a lot of these fights. And Bleach just played to their strengths. Like their draft was built for this kind of gameplay. It looked like Talon was getting decent lanes coming out, but again, they couldn't keep that momentum up. And you're dealing with a late game terribly plus Doom. Like, sure, you know, Ice does some classic Ice 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 things, jumps in, yeah. tries to cast Doom, dies. Doesn't even matter at that point <laughs> in the game. He just knows that his team can just end the game without him. Yeah. in this case. Jackie was the unmovable mountain this game. Just wherever he goes, you know, you kind of die. Yeah, I mean, it's just really hard this game. Like, how are you supposed to close the distance between you and Terrorblade? I, I don't see how, and that's precisely why he was our match MVP. He was just doing such a great job, dealt, dished out a lot of damage, just unstoppable. I feel like Blade didn't... Or something I would have liked to see Talon do better is to target Corden a bit more. Mm -hmm. Like, in this game, I feel like the Nullifier was a huge impact item because the way Talon wants to take fights against the TB is through the Decryptify. And I feel like Corden, even before Nullifier, he was after all his ass all the time. <laughs> and Talon really didn't protect him very well. Yeah. I think that's what the fights came down to. And then one or two, three fights later, he had Nullifier and suddenly it's so easy for Jackie with his Glimpse back. There's Doom, there's Nullifier, there's Kinetic Field. Jackie just had a field day. Yeah, it's very true. Jackie. Just free farm, basically. But let's see if Talon are able to take it back from game two. We're going to go for a quick break before we head into that one. So see you then. The day will come when you first realize what you have done and you finally get 
Your depth repeat and revenge Just served on a cold plate Oh yeah On a cold plate On a cold plate On a cold plate Welcome back, everyone, to a very intense series. Both teams have not yet dropped a series in the DPC, so we shall see who remains undefeated. We have Bleed, who just won the first match of the series. Tom have not yet won a match, so uh, we'll see if they can take it back. Welcome back, everyone, to the DPC 2023 Southeast Asia Summer Tour. I'm your host, Sophie, and I have my panel here with me. Let's talk a bit about last game. What do Tom need to do? What do they need to fix to take it back? Mm, I feel like just take something with more natural activity for Mikado down mid. The Alchemist was a interesting idea and he did play it pretty well. I think his lane matchup was all right, all things considered. But at some moment, it just didn't feel comfy for Mikado to jump in. It, there was some reluctance. He just defaulted back to farming and you need a solid playmaker to come in. Like I, I almost always feel like that's usually Mikado on a jumpy hero. Mm -hmm. I feel like the way their draft went, I would have preferred if they went for like some Zeus kind of mm. pick because I feel yeah. like they naturally wanted to play to scale, but they also moved away this Alchemist from the Elk TB matchup to pick Bloodseeker into Terrorblade, mm -hmm. which is also not a great matchup. There's also a Doom, you know, we saw 23 kind of have a really difficult time having impact and I feel like he needed another core on the table that was not really, that kind of could deal with TB, yeah. you know? It's similar to the game where it was like, oh, I have bad Pango to deal with TB, I don't need to deal with it. I feel like they had nothing to deal with the terribly in this game. They just tried to outpace and that's not easy, you know? Two feet tall is just yeah. not easy. Especially when Jackie's just free farming. Mm -hmm. yeah. How can you stop him? Uh, I mean, we played really well. I think it was quite a 50-50 game in terms of movement, but we saw when Town was ahead by like 5k, 6k, 7k, the game was still in Bleed's favor, so they needed to do much more. And I think that's on them because they put themselves in that position through the draft. Mm -hmm. Bleed are kind of looking like the team to beat now. Yeah, Is they it are. too soon to say? Or? Uh, I think it's fair. I think up against a team like Talon, they, it looked very, not clean maybe, but convincing from Bleed in that game one. Uh, their drafting has looked solid. They look very comfy in their roles. So I think, you know, this might be the wake-up call for Talon. Like, they could get too old here. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be too surprised either, but I feel like if any team can bounce back, it's probably Talon, you yeah. know? They look like they... They always have this excuse where we tell them that they're like experimenting, right? We mm -hmm. always say they can be experimenting. Like, I think until today, no matter how good Q is at Win Ranger, I still think it's a shit hero on support. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's not a hot take, it's not a good support hero, yeah, sorry I mean, to say. It's you know, rough support, yeah. At what point do you like try really hard? Because I think to them, they also take DPC, not maybe not like thousand percent, you know, like it's still chill. They're still gonna go to a major and they need to focus on the longer term things, you know, TI, prep for TI, no burnout, stuff like yep. that. And they also don't have opportunity to practice and learn. And I think that's how they look at DPC. So I don't know if I'll put talent below Bleed just because of how Bleed's performing, but I also think that they can't take it easy if they want to win every game. Mm -hmm, that's true. Hear me out. I think if they put Corden on a Corden hero, Bleed can go all the way. They played Voice Prayer last week and it didn't look this good. I feel like yeah, he looked, no, he looked really way better. good today. He looked really good. Yeah. yeah. Sharper. Yeah, for sure. He was making strides. But let's see what they do pick for him as we get a draft going for game two of series two. Hmm. All right, uh, they start off with the techies that's been left in banned. It's Bleed that has to ban out the Doom and Underlord with the Terrorblade being respected by Talon. Bleed still get to go into the Void Spirit, so that's some good news there if Corden can maintain that performance. I do like that Talon do go for techies. I feel like that's a much better Q here to bring out here. A lot more aggression in the lane. You don't have your Doom combination, but Techies overall has felt like a really impactful support, and that should apply the pressure to Jackie's lane, like prevent that massive buildup he got early on there. Yeah, it's just a strong laner. I think it's always okay to open with Techies nowadays. I like the Doom ban a lot from Bleed. I think Doom has been 
one of ICE's best heroes, and I think just the way the games have been going in SEA, the, the team with Doom just always feels yeah. so favorite. Yeah. You know, nothing's happening. Doom's like, damn. He can buy auras, he can buy Octarian, he can get his stupid time warp creep <laughs> yeah. for his Midas. God damn it, ICE. Does it affect himself? Because I was watching Shopfire Rebellion, and the aura worked on his allies, but he didn't have the aura oh, active on himself. That's, that might so be So I think I, that's what one thing that made me wonder about Doom players. Like Saberlight in that game, only said, I want to buy Arcane Blink, muted himself, and kept pinging the gold, and he had that aura. But I'm like, your Midas isn't lower cooldown. Your Devour's not lower Ooh, cooldown. It might not work, actually. It's a bit weird. I'm not sure if that's on purpose either. Because the wording is, lowers your allies' cooldown. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Maybe, maybe it's intentional. You know, maybe it's maybe. just... Uh, sacrifice yourself for the team kind of thing. Perhaps. That's perhaps. really cool with the TB. It actually looked low-key yeah, kind of OP, but I guess the timing you get in the game is kind of late. All right, so Talon choose to go for a Dusa here. Mm. Unkillable hero against Void Spirit Silencer. How yeah. do you feel about the Dusa lately? I feel like it's I feel like overrated. Yeah, I downtrend. feel like it's, it's weird. Like it's, it's like the PL where it's like, Quite frankly, I don't understand its timings. I don't understand when it's strong, when it's not, because it's still this hyper durable hero. But in a lot of matchups, it feels like it lacks a lot of damage. It feels like it takes a long time to hit that point where its output is great. Mm -hmm. Its strength is really just sustaining these fights. But it's weird. Like, even though it survives sometimes, I think if the enemy team just ignores the Dusa in the right timing, when the Dusa is not quite the 1v5 hero, you still win out. I think Bleed, again, if they draft this faster tempo, I don't know if the deuce is going to be an issue because, again, its timings are a little bit awkward. It's it's not the most stable win condition. I think the Alchemist feels a lot better in that sense. Mm. I also feel like people have started to think of Dusa as this solo hard carry. Mm -hmm. I think those Dusa in previous patches has been drafted with auras, yeah. with buffs with his Vengeful Spirit, his Beast Aura, his Solar Crest. I think that's what enables this Dusa to become a monster at 20 minutes when people don't have damage to kill her. I feel like it's like you said, like you can't ignore the Dusa. That's when Dusa is really strong. But in the past few games we've seen, this Dusa has been tickling people with yeah. Manta Skadi. <laughs> yeah, you know? true. Yeah. It just seems like it like doesn't do any damage in the middle of fights. Against the Crimson Guard we saw earlier, yeah. it, just, it looks so bad. Uh, to be fair, I suppose you're a natural counter and say Underlord plus his Crimson Guard's kind of gone. You still have a few carriers there, which you wouldn't mind for Bleed too much. I'm sure Ice can kind of figure something out. But at least the one major concern, I think Underlord's just a really good foil in terms of mitigating that output. There is some funky stuff that Bleed can do to counteract a Medusa. I feel like if there's anyone in SEA to bust out the offlane Nyx Assassin, it would probably be Ice. It would be Ice. I uh, Offlane Nyx is... Nyx in general is an answer to Dedusa is... It's funky. weird, right? It's, it's weird, because yeah. it's really good early, and then at some point she has like 2.5k mana, so you burn 1.2, but then you have another 1.2k to burn down. It's, it's like, sorry, a refresher orb comes in. Ah, that's that's the next level thinking, <laughs> Adam. Refresh Nyx. I, that, yeah, you know what? I, I'm, I'm a go for that, if you can somehow do it. I mean, Ice is the kind of player who'd try that. Right, so most of the... Experimentally. All right, so we, he goes for Magnus instead. I guess this just says Bleed wants to outscale again. So something interesting about Bleed is they prioritize DJ so much. Mm. I feel like in all their drafts, DJ is pretty much last pick. Yeah, I think it felt like that was the tendency for Fnatic for a while until it shifted to a Jab's last pick on mm -hmm. that lineup and that roster. So I'm not too surprised. I think they just expect a lot from DJ's pick. Like, his Disruptor did have a lot of impact last game, even as a last pick. I'm curious what Talon will want to do, because, like, Bleed with Magnus, plus Silencer, plus Void Spirit, there's a lot of team fight here. Mm. There's well, a lot of scaling as well. Yeah. Let's say you want an RP answer right now, some... some Ravage, some... counter team fight, you mm. know, but it's also not easy to pick against, a. Uh, Blank, you know, Bleed can 18, obviously. You go for a Mikoto hero instead, Pango. Nice yeah. team fight disrupt. I don't think it's... I guess it's probably the best pick they can go for. It's a good scaling hero, Mikoto hero. Yeah, it's more tempo coming out as well. Uh, mid lane matchups, not too shabby against the Void Spirit, so you can kind of hold your own. I am... I'm still keen on seeing how they kind of want to enable do so if that's even something on mind, right? Like you mentioned, we don't tend to see anything really tie in with the Dusa. They just put it on its own island and expect it to carry the game. But 
it, it doesn't feel great when you don't have anything to work off of for the Medusa. You don't have too many auras left from the offlane, like Beastmaster's gone. They'll go for the Disruptor for Talon, so you do have a lot of play coming out from your supports. Like, I, Techie's Disruptor does feel like a decent enough combo. Your lanes should be pretty solid. You've got some ways of punishing the Magnus as well when it does come out, so you've got some ways to counterfight here in Talon's end. I really like Monkey King here for Bleed. I feel like it's a S tier Wukong game. Talon has a lineup that just want to fight you there, you know, and Wukong's kind of the king of that. We also have Empowered. Monkey King against Techie's lane is really nice as well. Yeah. You uh, skewer people back into the ring. That is Step true. Into the ring. That is true. <laughs> into the Aether Remnant. Yeah, yeah that's keep true. Them there. They got good combos. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that for Jackie at all. I think. Another approach they can go for is PL Naga. The Naga is the play. I so, saw this is a bleed special, right? The song against the Stone Gaze thing we see yeah. first week. Yeah, I I don't mind this. I think this is where again you see the Dusa have problems. It doesn't feel like it's gonna be able to clear through Naga once Naga gets her stat items up. You're gonna have a way better time here for Jackie. You do have some AoE clear. I mean, you have Fangalier, I suppose. It's not the best until items start to come in, but you have some solutions. I'm just looking at this opener from Bleed. I feel like they've got the same tempo. They've got the same... They've managed to force the same issues onto Talon. Like the core to core for Savage is not ideal. I think your one change for Talon this game is really just more activity from Mikoto. I don't know if that's going to be enough though. It, it doesn't quite feel enough. I'm trying to figure out what the Jabs hero here is going to be. Something that deals with the Naga, scales into the game. I was going to... Yeah, they banned the Timber Saw. Timber Would've was been a good a... one. Would have been a straightforward one. What else is left in the pool? I see Legion, but I don't know if it's too far fetched. It's also kind of hard to play against Global Silence. Yeah. The lane's really strong, though. Mm. You need. Uh, you need. It feels like you need so much more damage in AoE. You need a way to make your team play faster. Yeah. Whether it's through auras or through buffing the Dusa. Because this Dusa with an early Manta MJ this game can definitely just outright. For sure. I'll fight the Naga. It's all about that timing. So they banned the Karl. I was, I was wondering if they could go Karl since they have Karl Dusa, Karl Pango, and it is a big jab zero. What's Jabs' options now? I mean, the LC that Adam mentioned is still there, but... I just don't feel like it's a great enough, good enough pick. Yeah, doesn't cover all the issues. There's no Beastmaster. I don't like a I don't like a tide, but I'm not sure what else is viable. A tide's van too. Uh, something strange, maybe, maybe a centaur. Try to force a retreat, but song kind of cuts you off, so it's mm. also kind of useless. Mm. It's time for the offlane hoodwing. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. It's uh, not an easy pick for Talon. Yeah, what, I mean, what left do they have? Doesn't feel like you have Off much. Let's bust out the Dazzle, buy Shard, Hex every Illusion. Axe, uh, Pulse Champ. Axe is actually... Axe is so hard to play though against yeah. the heroes. Yeah, it's not the simplest. Well, we'll find out in about 10 seconds. What I feel like they need pick? to be like all in and pick some like Vengeful Spirit and like just buff Dusa. Well, I'll take over the yeah. all right. So just the illusion clear. I, I guess in lane it's not too bad, right? Like you can always purge off what the silencer is trying to do. Mm -hmm. So you can still have consistent play up against Jackie. I do want to see Talon take activity. They take the Elder Titan on Ooh. bleed. So you have a really good way of softening up a lot of the heroes on Talon's end. You have some really strong combinations coming out. The team fight from bleed is scary. Yeah, like yeah, RP is. into the Earth Splitter. Do you guys Song know about setup. the ET do so Mike, with the new mana shield change? What it's because now if you do damage to Dusa, you don't touch her HP yeah. anymore, right? So oh, yeah, you yeah, never so wake up from right. Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you actually you can just get from all the time yeah. because you're not taking damage to HP. You can just try to melt her mana. That is a clever solution from lead. I didn't think we'd see it in a pro game, but huh. there it is. They just need to stomp 23 and twack away yeah, I feel multiple like it's times. It's a hard Legion game. It's, it's difficult. It was their best pick. I get why they picked it. I feel like Jabs can make it work, but I think it's hard. But you look at Bleed as well, they prioritize mainly just the offlane bands from Jabs. 
Like they made sure Talon wouldn't have a good solution from the offlane to tie this draft together. And it's gonna make it tough. Like I can see Jabs working the lane, but beyond that, like lining up for these duels with all the counter fight that lead has, it's not gonna be simple. I, f I don't know, like you have to find that silencer. If you don't find that, Gold sounds rude. Two zero bleed. Maybe yeah, potentially. potentially. Honestly, I'm I feel feeling like, the tool. Yeah, like bleed. I can totally see they have a vision. You know, like they have so much setup. Like they just look like they know what they want to do now. Their drafts are so much better compared to last season. I agree. Yeah. It's very clear. Yeah. It's very them too. They've you know, got it's not setup. like they're forcing people to play heroes that they're not comfortable on. They just look. I don't know, looks good. Yeah. yeah. It does. I mean, personally, I'm I'm really hoping Talon can take it back. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I guess. I guess. No bias. <laughs> no bias. Okay, well, let's get game two going. I'm going to send you guys over to our casters. Thank you, Sofin panel. And yeah, Winter, I mean, off the bat, what do you think? You know, is, is Talon, do they have a chance in this game or are they core done? Uh, they are not core done. They're going to have like a very sharp timing. Uh, so it's a bit similar to the previous game. I think if they can hit those timings, uh, I can see the LC uh, steamrolling through through the game. If you get a good start on the hero, a good lane, and you have Disruptor, you know, if you get the enemy on the run, you have Glimpse, you can own them. Okay. So you think you think there's a chance? Because obviously our, our, our panel, uh, can, filled with two talent, panel. talent content creators, are hoping to, to see <laughs> them in uh, for a win here. But for Bleed, I mean, this would be huge. This would be them going undefeated, taking down uh, three teams. I think people did not have them uh, going up against. How big of a change do you, do you really think um, Mr. Misery was for them? Or, or do you think the team just really managed to click during the offseason? I mean, because no, this is... He definitely did a lot of work, but first we're going to see a fight. Level one fight, very poggers. How many? Elder Titan. Yeah, careful. He's, he's going to get at least three. Okay, he's got four. That's a lot Five. of damage. Uh, no, he's got four. He needs to get Q. I don't know if he got him, but uh, that's a lot of... I mean, plus 85 is, you know, it seems underwhelming, but it's a ton early on. Both teams of the ward as well on the cliff. As Dubu is going to be the only one to tank that snake here, but no, from range. No catch, they have no catch. Yeah, Talon skirmish better, and they'll be able to get the ward and block the camp in the same stroke. Yep, and they have a D ward, the own ward, as the enemy already knows, so you don't want to give them free gold. Yep. So we'll see if uh, Bleed sends somebody out towards the top. I think they should send someone right away to get the top runes. I believe they have. It seems like already making a, a for a race there is Ice Ice Ice. Seems like he'll be able to get the river rune. And likely will go two for two, but Bleed, are they getting a bit greedy here, hoping for three? Jabs with a bit of right clicks, they've committed the Blood Grenade here, as well with the Sticky Bomb. DJ lower and worse for wear, but will ultimately be okay. And it's Dubu who's going to be beat back underneath his tier one tower. Seven stacks, though, of the Glaives of Wisdom. He did take that uh, level one point there. Yeah, that's, that spell actually makes silence such a beast on the lane. So right now, I believe DJ's going to just stroll back up to the top lane through the Twin Gate. So don't really need to waste any gold on getting TPs uh, after. So I see that, uh, by the way, top lane. Oh, and you've got this nice little ET trick where the, the Titan's going to try and chase you home. We'll see if he hits anything on the way back. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, so far, he hasn't, he hasn't really hit a whole lot, uh, especially because camps haven't spawned. So it's just kind of a baller move. Here it comes. Yeah, now he has a ton of damage. Not really. No, not really. <laughs> he didn't really hit anything as I was outlining. Camps don't spawn until the one minute mark. That's kind of a that's kind of a neat trick though, honestly. It does make it a bit obvious where you are on the map. I was thinking if you could leave your Elder Titan spirit and then take the twin gate, and then he comes across the map, mm -hmm. and then you show up into the lane with a ton of damage on the other side of the map. That'd be kind of cool. It's a bit I mean, like a SP charge where you see it coming though. Yeah, I mean, regardless, you know, the Elder Titan definitely has a lot of value in this game. Like, the panel already mentioned that you can use it to counteract the Medusa because she can't wake up, so she takes the full duration of, of the Storm. And on the other hand, you can stack a lot for your Magnus later. You're, right. actu you're extremely good at uh, useful at stacking early game for your cause. So, uh, I feel like uh, not many supports nowadays get, you know, overall last pick, you know. Yeah, that's true. This is, this is a hero where I feel like if you pick him in the right game, even if it's the overall last pick, it's going to have a huge impact. I do think that gives a bit of value, additional value, I should say, to this Jabs pick, right? The panel was already mentioning how good his lane is versus the Naga Siren. Uh, that's not going to be too big of a surprise. But having pressed the attack to uh, mm -hmm. dispel the 23 Savage Medusa so that she wakes up in the middle of the fight with a bit of attack speed as well, 
you know, that, that that's a pretty good counter. Oh, play. yeah, you're right, you're right. It's going to be huge in a team fight, you know, because yeah. the Medusa is going to be heavily countered by the Echo Storm, so the, the LC has to really pay attention to it towards waking the Dusa up in the fight. For now, they've set up onto 23 with a skewer following the Echo Storm, quickly taking that at level 2. Uh, but looks like Ollie will be able to keep them at bay with the Thunder Strikes. So look at DJ, though. I mean, that's a hero with uh, no strength, but of course, it looks impressive. Ollie, Echo Stomps, created a bit of space. First Blood, it was a Jabate. It was actually down bottom. DJ makes it out alive. Q as well, making it out of alive after blasting off in, but does manage to give Jabs the kill. And that's a very, very good sign for Talon, you know. Like I mentioned, when you have LC, you need to make sure this hero gets a good start. She's a very snowbally hero. You need to make sure that you give her the best uh, best start you can get on the hero. And you have to keep the ball rolling, you know. Again, they have this uh, lineup where it's... I guess with Medusa, you're not exactly fully uh, on, a, on a timer, you know. Like, Dusa is very, very strong later. But you're against uh, Elder Titan, you're against Magnus, you're against Naga, Void Spirit. All those heroes are also very, really scary in the Ultra League game. That's right. DJ denies himself essentially there to a tower. Uh, it comes back to line with full mana and HP. Down bottom, you can see them continuing to get aggressive here, basically as much as they can, and they are going to intercept the pull here. So no XP goes wasted on the side of Talon in this offlane. It's a big move. Morden, two games in a row now on his Void Spirit. How would you rate his performance last game? A lot better than the previous one. <laughs> okay, fair enough. How do you, uh, what do you expect to see him do this time around? Does he have as clear of a target as last game Ollie was and, and Q was uh, on the, uh, what, was, what was it, the Pugma? Pugma. Yeah. Pugma was the big one. I think in the team fights, you, you kind of still have to do the same thing as Void Spirit. You need to take out all the back line support heroes. Uh, there's no partner in this game, but there's a Disruptor, there's a Techies. Those are really, really annoying team fight heroes. So it's definitely his job to deal with those heroes in the team Radiant's fights. Ideally, if you can uh, get a, a very, very good initiation, you burst them with your double Astro, and it's going to give your team like a very, very good uh, start to the fight. Uh, seems realistic here. Makoto as well on a rare Pangolier game where you're not like immediately counterpicked by the Bloodseeker or the Grimstroke or the Batrider, right? They were all already taken out. I mean, you like mentioning Grimstroke, yeah, but sorry to say that's not a hero right now. <laughs> He's he does he doesn't feel all that good. Um, but you can still I don't know if you've seen the Reddit post we were talking about it, but you can juggle the Phantoms if you or you know if the target dies. We'll see another attempt to top lane. By the way. As they skewer 23 back underneath the tower into the arms of DJ, who's got a lot of bonus damage here. Out of mana here is 23 Savage, leaves him extremely vulnerable. Ice does not have cooldowns, but does have 15 wand charges. They have Mango on Ollie, he needs yeah. to go and feed it to the Dusa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, for now he's going to be okay. The Mango is consumed anyway. Snake is out, a little bit more mana, barely made any back, and they're immediately oh, back no. now onto 23 Savage in some trouble. Not oh, much no. Ollie could do there, but watch as the Deuces just simply ran down. That's not even Vanguard yet on ice. Radiance I mean, this Elder Titan and Magnus Lane is really running over this Deuce. They're going to get a glimpse off. Yeah. Blast off. Like Blast off is good into the Sticky Bomb for the kill. Yeah, and meanwhile, Naga's already starting to jungle. Already doesn't really need to deal with the LC in the lane. Doesn't want to deal with the LC in the lane, and Japs is rushing a Blade Mill. So when you have a really, really good start on this hero, I think it's a pretty good uh, selection to rush uh, Blade Mill to ensure that you are going to be able to get all those solo pickoffs later. Mid lane, two heroes stalking Makoto, looking to annoy him. Only Thunder and Astral Steps both available. Yep, six, power runes. six runes. It's a regen for Corden. Mm. It's not a bad one. I know it's not our most exciting one, but uh, it's at least a good stats for him. Not to fight a bit more. DJ still has the Astral Spirit out. He's going to at least scare away 23 yeah, Savage, but against two ranged heroes, he's going to find it rather difficult here to, to you know close the gap and get some damage on. But my goodness, did you see the damage he's trucking with right now? With the power? As well as that bonus damage out from the Astral Spirit? He's a, he's a scary lad, Winter. Yeah, level 2 and power. Uh, it's a lot of damage. Uh, they need to be very careful when the Elder Titan has a lot of stacks on the Spirit, you know. Maybe you have to save your glimpse for that, you know? Not sure Radiant what they can do here in this lane. Medusa is still fairly weak. Consider Protecting her pretty well, though, with the two supports. And, you know, it's not like Jabs needs the help anyway, right? Level 3, overwhelming odds. Seven minute runes, however. They see heroes trying to steal the wizard rune, but DJ is already in position, so we'll see what they can do for the punish. Ice is already whiffed on the skewer here, so 
Uh, Talon don't have that to fear. It'll be one for one, but they're continuing to fight a bit more as Corden is sent back to the yeah, tier two. No, no point in this limit, so you can't really dodge the games. Mm. Right now. Okay, so they got the they managed to defend the, the wisdom rune. So this is like what I said in the previous game right now. It's good to see, you know, the cause trying to rotate around and try to help your team secure the runes, you know. I think it's way too important for for the game, you know. You need to make sure your support or whoever it is, the one's rune gets the rune. Definitely. I was also uh, a, oh, a, a solo duel down bottom. Is wow, this with winnable? The blade mail, it's blade mail? It, it was close, Winter. That was a test run. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, he knows he's not going to die, so why not? Just... Toto rotating down bottom. Jackie going to try and get up the stairs here. Uh, Makoto keeps chase, though. Very nicely timed bounce. Trying to prevent Jackie from getting off the Song of the Siren. They actually whiffed there on the Swashbuckle. There is no Song part, and that was just the mirror image. And Jackie's actually going to be killed off by the glimpse damage of all things. Yeah, still a very, very big pickoff there for Talon. Uh, it's got, they killed the carry. They're going to be able to maybe chip down the tower a little bit here. Pango had to use roll, but it's not a very big deal here. Huh? And now the Vanguard's up for top, you know, so Isis Ice has pretty much nothing to fear against the Dusa. In fact, now it seems like a couple of bleed heroes are thinking oh, about smoke. Indeed, they do smoke. Okay. Uh, I don't believe they were caught underneath the ward, but it was pretty close. Either way, it should be pretty abundantly clear oh, here at the 23 that there's something coming his way. Uh, it might not help, though. corden has got the DD rune. they have already removing the mana as well from 23 very effectively. Yes, the Lotus. Uh, does have the Lotus. RP. Was oh, he didn't, he didn't use it. Oh, did he use it? Okay, he used it, but he, just died. He used it and died anyway, Winter. Good avoid there by Corden. Does not get hit by the blast off, so he continues fighting here. Excellent usage there. Oh, my God. Ice Ice has actually RP'd the techies. And Q, he might... No, I mean, I think he's still dead, but he's going to get off a couple more spells, and Corden's going to die. Q's actually making it out alive. No, he's going to go down to the last war tick. What in the world? Why did Ice 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 RP the techies? I mean, you have to ask him after the game if he wins. <laughs> I mean, it was definitely not ideal. I, I, I was, but, I mean, they... Shocked? I was shocked. DJ as well. He's going to fight to the death on this one. It'll be his own. Just needed a few more right clicks down to the pango. Would have had him dead to rights. I mean, those braces, man, saving lives. Jabs. Oh, well, maybe they were looking for a glimpse into a duel, but uh, Dube is a bit too far out of range now already. Okay. Um, I don't know if that was all completely necessary out from Bleed there. That was a nice bit of aggression out from them, but it seemed like otherwise that lane was going just fine. Dusa was pretty far behind in that. She, she's still lowest on the CS, uh, and her net worth as well is going to be equal to boot. Ice seemed like he was well on his road to recovery with a Vanguard. They don't easily kill him in this lane. And the rotation kind of just seemed to bring unwanted attention to Ice. I don't know. I think it's definitely weird there. But right now, as of uh, the state of the game, uh, Naga is still fairly fun. I mean, he's the hero that uh, you're pretty much going to be focusing a lot of attention on in towards the, the mid-late game. The game is going to be played around her. And you have this like uh, setup with the RP, the Elder Titan, Ultimate, the Earthsplitter, the Global. Those are the yeah. tools that are going to allow you to win the team fight. But right now, good point. the Naga has to be Farming, 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 farming until you decide uh, you're strong enough to join the team fight. So I guess usually when you get Manta, that's probably the time when you start to join the team fight. Q is going to use the blast off. I don't Off believe. Gym. Yeah, I don't believe he has this kill. Maybe with Makoto nearby and Ollie. All right, the three of them together will have the damage to take how, down. How Jack. did they actually find him? <laughs> wow, that's uh, that's a very very deep position to that catch is. the Naga off. No observer was. They just guessed he was kind of farming that. And now they're going to try and connect onto the mid lane. I think Jabs would be very eager to get in there for a duel. It doesn't seem uh, like it'll be possible. They are maybe trying to keep Dubu alive. No, I think they're going to kill him. Yep. Okay, strong early game here from Talon. A good showing. Yeah, could have waited for the LC to duel to get the damage there, but it's okay. He's going okay. to gonna get his blink. He needs his blink. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. 23 Savage, he's gonna finish his Yasha up soon. It's not, uh, he's not the richest to side 11 minutes, but the LC is rich, the Pangos rich, so they're gonna have to make some space for Medusa later on. Yeah, and for now, Bleed are still gonna be focusing quite a bit of their attention over into this top lane. Oh, top lane. The Dusa's TPing top, they wanna defend his tower. Yeah, they're gonna give it a go. She has no stone gaze, she has to be careful. Ice was low pretty quickly there off just the, the, the wow. bounce, and Corbin has an active arcane rune. Talon now, uh, they're going to try their luck smoking up top lane. This time, they've got the Blink Dagger up on Jabs. Let's see if that is uh, going to make a little bit of a difference here. Uh, they're going to run into DJ, I guess. 
It seems like it. There's going to be the duel, the blink reveal as well. He's going to deal a little bit more damage back to himself with the blade melt. Doesn't end up going down, but uh, in the duel, mind you, uh, but is still killed all the same here by Jabs. Uh, Dubu, Q is going to get a blast off on Dubu. Yeah, and they've got as well Makoto nearby. Really great rotations from Bleed. It just never seems like... Sorry, make that from Talon, pardon me. It just doesn't seem like Bleed is ever ready yeah. to fight. Look at what 23 is doing. He's like playing so aggressive, farming in a very aggressive position. So he he's farming around his team. He can join his team and he's even taking the enemy's ancients, you know. Pretty inter interesting stuff here from 23. Yeah, and see the effect it has on the ice as well. He's a little bit scared given what's just happened. I mean, mere yeah. meters away from him. And look, look at the map. They're, they're always playing so near each other. But if you look at the uh, bleed, uh, Jackie's playing on the bottom. Yeah, they're going to try and close in on the ice now. Ah, uh, they've got him skewered now into the static storm. No duel for seven more seconds. We'll see. Oh, well, okay. He's actually just going to RP. Look for the kill. Makoto is in immediately in 23 as well with the. Stone gaze, wow. Okay, you commit an ulti, we'll, we'll commit a couple right back at you, good sir. Just the just the two, but... Yeah, can they get this tower? If they can get this tower, they might be able to pressure the Wisdom Rune timing Radiance in one minute, too. Oh, attack. yeah. This is going to be crucial for, for Talon. I think Bleed as well. Ought to be looking for a fight soon enough. They just hit Echo Saber. There's going to be the all-crucial uh, Global Silence with the haste. Offsets that greatly. Dubu as well. Still caught by the Glimpse as soon as the Global is up. Jabs immediately. Oh, finally in, in damage. Play. And that's 10 damage for him. Corden as well is going to be able to find his first mark as the Earth Splitter does a little bit here to stun them up. Corden somehow barely stunned by that one. His Ice is going to find his skewer now. Jabs up onto the cliff. He's stuck up there. As long as Ice can deal a little bit more damage his way, they're going to keep that Blink Dagger muted. Corden as well, no, unable to get the Aether Remnant up in time. Okay. Jab safely off the cliff, and 23 is just going to TB away. Yep, time to pick up the Wisdom Runes, you know. That it is. Did Bleed get theirs? Oh, they, they will, yes, because Ice is in position. Very good. Yeah, they didn't manage to get the tower. They decided to go behind enemy lines, try to take a fight. They're going to go again. They've already got this. I mean, they don't tower. have roll. They have a shield rune. They, they don't. They've got a shield rune and they've got the fusel, though. So, so that does feel fairly significant here for Makoto. Duel, can I duel in three seconds. They're waiting for it. Oh, they see the Naga. Oh, this could be a juicy catch. Jabs. Oh, glimpse, have steady, steady the glimpse storm. into the static storm. Plenty of damage as well, courtesy now of that Diffuser Blade and even the shield crash out from Makoto. It's going to be now 20 damage here for Jabs on his Legion Commander. And Bleed are going to smoke? All right, little classic SCA smoke. You just <laughs> killed our carry, now we're going to fight you. And they're not going to find anything here. They're smoking for bounty ruins, I guess. Okay, I mean, if Dubu is going to look to get an aggressive ward up as well, that, that would make a Maybe great Maybe they felt like 23 was farming the top area. It's really subverted their expectations here. They will be able to maybe catch Makoto here. The shield rune saving him a lot of damage and the stun oh, as well, courtesy Q. of Q. He's going to be able to save the life of his mid laner. He even managed to get the kinetic field as well to make sure he's not even be able to be uh, picked up in response. This is uh, a great start from Talon Esports. They are playing a phenomenal game. Still no bleed. Uh, they've got a couple items coming their way now. There's going to be Echo Saber number two. I mean, Ice is going to hit a huge timing here on this Harpoon, isn't he? Yeah, and that item is going to give this hero a lot of power in terms of like catching, picking off targets, team fight damage, gives you a lot of stats. Limbs. Oh, yeah, he's got uh, now the uh, Dissemilate. He should be okay. Keep giving chase. We'll land a little stun here. Forces an astral step. Makoto Glimpse is on cooldown. Oh, still on cooldown. Yeah, and they have used it too early. And uh, won't be able to connect there on the kill. But 23 and Makoto, you know, just constantly sweeping across the map, looking to get involved in these kind of scrappy fights. I mean, you look at how different the two carries are playing. If you are paying attention to the minimap, 23 is always very near his team. Jackie is always constantly very far away, you know. And that's why you see he got picked off a couple of times. And it shows you, like, the different ideologies between the carries. Oh, oh, oh. But what's the follow-up, Winter? Blue kind of spooked into committing. Maybe it was kind of defensive global, I guess. Yeah, they didn't uh, maybe think Corden would be able to get the Disseminate in time. Disseminate, pardon me. Disseminate is Shadow Demon's new second ability. Uh, that's definitely a tongue twister. Disseminate, disseminate. I mean, imagine having ability dropping all those skills on one hero. Disseminate. It sounds like a, sounds like a, a what's his name? Uh, what's that rapper? How can I forget his name? The Mom Spaghetti rapper, Winter. Surely you know who that is. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> I can't remember. I remember his face, but not his name. What the heck? 
He raps this way. He likes using these kinds of words. Q, though, uh, he is going to be absolutely killed off, basically for free. What the heck is his name? Let me help you. I, I actually, I cannot. Okay, now you got it. You got it. I'll keep you updated on the game. Yeah, put Eminem. There it is. My goodness, how can I forget? Anyway, the joke's long gone now, but so is uh, perhaps the farm rate of the Naga Siren. What can they do to keep her reeled in here, Winter? Because Jackie is starting to get pretty comfortable here, a comfortable amount of farm. I mean, late game booster is, okay. I guess, kind of okay against the Naga. I mean, the team fights, you just need to just need to be around your team, your, the heroes that can deal with the illusions. Uh, Naga's going to have a defuser, so that's going to be a little annoying for you. But overall, I feel like the Dusa should be able to stand her ground and fight the, the Naga. Naga's all about like doing all those cheap damage or use your song to set up an RP and win yourself a team fight. But apart from that, I feel like the Dusa should not be too afraid of the Naga. Yeah, I mean, she's not been afraid whatsoever, right? Once again, farming in the enemy triangle. Jab has hit the scan, was looking for the blink, got it cancelled by DJ. But very eager oh, to look for another skewer. duel. He's going to skewer him back. RP committed as the stone gaze. Nice echo stop, at least onto two with a glimpse. He's going to find Ice Ice Ice. Not a whole lot of follow-up damage but the outcome is the duel now. And they are cutting oh, nice through song. until the Song of the Siren saves the life of Ice Ice Ice. Doesn't have a lot of skills quite left. Skewer away in one second. And it's a big Earth Splitter as well. They're on to 23. And they blow him up. Dubu with the kill there. Wow. The counter initiation from Bleed. They get it just right. They get jabs as well as the core do stuff. That team fight was all of this world, man. Complete. Gordon looking for more. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Jackie just rips apart the two supports. Amazing, man. Just amazing stuff here from Bleed. Where is this Bleed last two seasons? Well, you know what happened <laughs> prior to that fight? It was a beautiful D ward as well. I mean, it's a fairly obvious cliff ward. You know, it's a really common spot to check. But Bleed do their due diligence there. They get the D ward just north of our camera where Gordon is, is uh, farming on that cliff. It got taken down right before the start of that fight. And all of a sudden, Talon were kind of stuck in that area without the same kind of vision that they were previously used to. It's a luxury, you know, having those cliff wards in fights. Yeah, it shows uh, a lot of value in you know, the team fight uh, with the global silence. That's why they are prioritizing this hero. It's just so difficult to to take a fight that you want against the global. You know, you always have to be very right. careful about the initiations because the opponent can easily just click R button and turn everything around. Yeah, and, and you know, credit as well for Bleed able to turn that around. They've got really strong team fight. I mean, that was the first kind of instance of the team fight we've seen. A global silence into Song of the Siren, a uh, song used to set up for potentially an RP. Mm. Uh, in this case, the Earth Splitter as well, yeah. Dubu. Oh, was that already the harpoon that I saw? It was. And it's just to get Dubu out in time. Nice job there, Ice Ice Ice. That was a pretty slick save. Corden, you might need saving here if they can sniff him out. Sees the Rolling Thunder coming thanks to the ward. Is still scouted. Double Astral step away. Makoto chasing him down and just hits him in time, Winter. Oh no, Gordon. Oh, that could have been the difference of even just returning to face to cast the TP scroll. Makoto uh, and Jabs can be rewarded there with an additional bit of damage. Wow, that was. That was close. Yep, a little bit unfortunate there for Gordon. Uh, yeah, I feel like uh, he's going to feel it. But not the biggest loss, you know. Naga's still farming, everybody is still scaling really well. Ice is going into a Crimson Guard, so that's going to really yep. uh, limit the Medusa's output uh, in, in terms of the, the team fight. Such a big item for him to pick but, up here. Like, is nobody getting like a, a Lotus? I think they need some something to dispel the global, you know, maybe get a Grease on, on the Techies. Uh, he's going for Glimmer next, but nobody's getting Lotus. I think you need to get a Lotus for uh, for the for the legion or the the pango, you know, in case they get caught and they don't have a way to. I guess the pango is getting his own manta. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, the the manta is going to be good enough for a while. And you uh, see, you see all the universal heroes getting manta as this spell right now because it gives you a lot of damage still since you're universal. All right. Plenty of good stats as well, and the illusion is to push even more. Bleed don't have like the most phenomenal illusion clear. Uh, Talon with a bit better between the overwhelming odds and a lot of the AOE damage. I mean, you can have. always get a Dagon. You could. <laughs> you could get a Dagon. Have you built the new Dagon yet? Nope. No, you're not, you're not a Nyx enjoyer? Nope. 
built a new Dagon. It's 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 very situational, but it's it's pretty good. Yeah, I I kind of like it better than the previous one, to be honest. That can't be right. First time this Deuce has built a defusal this tour, really? I'm pretty sure I've seen somebody do it. Yeah, me too. That's why. Either way, 23. He's got the item online now. It's a very uh, cost-efficient item in terms of damage, you know, right now. That's why you see a lot of uh, carries Whoa. getting the item. Corden just barely off the mark there on that 8th round. What could have been here, a fight to be for Bleed. Instead, it's going to turn into one where Talon are going to redirect their smoke. But the DD rune ultimately into the bottle here for Corden. They're still looking for the engagement, and there's going to be the opening they're looking for. They get Q out of the high ground. Global Silence as well to follow through is going to force Makoto to take the scenic route, but he's still into the fight. The RP is going to be able to catch the Dusa. She still has Stone Gaze ready to use, but she's put, put to sleep, and she's out of the fight for a while. The support's taken down by Corden, who's stuck inside the kinetic field, and that's a very aggressive duel. It's not going to be good enough for the victory. In fact, Jab's pushed even further away from the Dusa, who's let loose the ultimate, but has not managed to achieve anything to show for it. Put to bed waking up, call that a rude awakening. And that is Talon losing four on what felt like a really forced fight for them. Winter. Yeah, that was a terrible blunder there by Jabs. I, I, I think he might have like misjudged his range on his dagger. He daggered in and he couldn't get it in range to duel. So he, he daggered in, he popped his BKB. He was running around for three seconds before he... I think he was trying to get a duel on the Naga, but he realized he couldn't get in range, and then he turned, he dueled like the Magnus. That was a, a really desperate duel right at the end. But it was already... So bad, you know, the whole the whole scenario for his team. So they just couldn't really do much uh, you know, off that duel. No, I mean, they couldn't. The, the Talon once again getting out team fight by Bleed. And you can see the difference that that Echo Stomp really made in that fight as well, Winter. That, that was a long sleep duration to not have Deusa pop the ulti. That, and she was also out of position, right? The way that Jabs kind of forced the fight meant that no one was really turning to face the Deusa. Corden as well, I would say, going two for two so far on his Void Spirits, Winter, managing to get on top of the enemy supports and just honestly take them out of the fight from the get-go. They just haven't had, we haven't really felt the impact uh, of this tech is very much this game in fights, have we? Yeah, that's why I thought it was uh, quite uh, normal for the techies to want to go for the Grease, so you have a dispel against the global, you know, because the fight starts, dual pops to global, and then what can you do on kill? Like, you don't have a... No, not a, a whole lot was the answer. <laughs> you don't have a cleanse for the global, you know, that's why it's rather strange that the supports are not getting Lotus or Grease right now. I mean, I can understand the Disruptor not having enough gold to buy those items, but the techies... I feel like the, the grief is pretty necessary at this point. He needs to go in for Flimmer. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe he feels like there's a lot of magic damage or he feels like he needs to save the carry. You see that shield as well. Yeah, it's, it's quite curious. But it's more about like getting off your spells at the right time. You know, if the LC goes in, gets a duel, you have to be able to follow up. And if the global that comes out and he stops it, he fully stops the whole initiation. I think right. you're just losing All the right. team fight. It's a big item as well, Crimson Guard. Definitely not the first time we've seen Magnus buy a Crimson. Uh, it's a phenomenal item. Uh, pardon me, still no Blink Dagger for Ice Ice Ice, but it's not really his Dyer's core job to be initiation. I mean, he, he has the eye of the Vizier. Uh oh, so extra what's going on? Range. Dusa in trouble. 23, they've committed the Global Silence now, and there's going to be the Echo oh, Stop the completely burned oh. up the mana. Just no chance, Winter. That was a full five-man gank onto the Dusa. Global, Stomp, nothing. I mean, it's so scary, right? You get the Stomp off, you have a Diffuser hero, and you just destroy the Medusa in that few seconds. Yeah. I mean, talk about what a hero as well, right? The illusions, uh, all mana burning as well. Bleed, they're, they're hunting for more. Oh, goodness, I really like this side of Bleed. Look at this. They sense blood in the water. They're like a shark. Elder Titan is a bigger counter to Dusa than Nyx. <laughs> really? This game's convinced you? Yeah. Wow. I mean, look at what the, what the Wilderstar can do in the team fights. You know, if you don't have a, a dispel from Dyer's your support, like your LC, Wait. if LC cannot dispel you, she's, she's dueling somebody in the team fights, then you're. You... Did Naga just do the Tormentor by herself? Is that what really? I saw? Really? Pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure she just did Talon's Tormentor. I think uh, ET has Shard now. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, indeed. I think Talon are going to try and take Bleed's Tormentor in return. It yeah, like I, I wouldn't say this is the most useful Shard. No. <laughs> Low is the cooldown. I guess that's kind of the nice part of it. Just off the mark, barely. Another scary moment there for Talon. Would have taken a couple of moments to reinforce that. Given that it had TP into the towers. It's uh, it's not bad. It's a pretty good escape because... um. It's, it's like the Monkey King shard. Oh, Harpoon. Oh, no. 
Oh, 23. This time he does get off the ultimate. Oh, he's going to be careful by the RP and the stomp, so they've kind of stacked their lockdown a bit. This time the duel, it's going to be onto corner, but he's far too tanky, and the Nagas Iron Song's going to reset this entire fight. That static storm down, maybe Ice 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 as well, but no, the Song in range to be able to save him. They're back onto 23 Savage as well, blowing through his pool of metal reserves. Gets off a Mystic Snake. It's a big one, trying to outfight this one. 20, or sorry, Ice 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 is fighting 1v4, will be taken down eventually, but now Bleed, they look to clean up the rest of this fight. Global Science is going to stop any sort of thought of counter initiation here, but do Bleed have the damage now? Can they get onto the high ground? Jackie, at least free to hit the buildings. It's a one for one trade. Both heroes now with buyback. Crucially, though, Bleed retain the ages here on the Naga Siren. Big song there to reset the fight. Yeah, Jackie has been like doing a wonderful job in team fights, making sure that duel doesn't really do much, you know, resetting, ensuring your teammates survive, and just excellent usage of uh, the song in the team fights. Glimpse. Always difficult to stop pushing high ground versus the uh, disruptor, but Jack, the Naga has no mana, that's why they can't really push. Age is still for another minute, though. So we'll see what else Bleed look to do here as they continue to move around the map. Do lose well now with shards. The next Tormentors do become much more lucrative here in terms of what you're actually going to pick up. I mean, DJ's going to pick up an axe, and that's going to be big in the team fight. You run in, you, get, no. you stand next to the Dusa, and then you take away all the armor. <laughs> Debuff immune, 50% damage resist. Dyna's yeah, if you can get the natural so order, it needs to be on the hero, right? Because yeah. uh, ET, the hero. I mean, because you guys, the you're, you're getting the I'll pseudo scan. BKB. So yeah. You can yeah. run in. Yeah, that, that might do. That might do. I think for now, so long as he's been landing these Echo Stomps, you know. Yeah. I mean, what, RP for what? Just land the Stomp. It's the even echo, longer. The Echo Stomp feels more impactful than the Aura. Yeah, it really does. I mean, it, I, I start to see it. Especially against a hero that, that generally is, is not the most mobile. You know, this Dusa, she, she doesn't really go for the Blink Daggers, uh, Four Staffs, all that junk you, you don't really see on her, right? In fact, yeah. that, that tends to be her strength. Oh, go ahead and Black Hole me or Chrono me. I'll just tank the damn thing and then pop my ulti on the way out. ET, who normally requires quite a bit of setup and does struggle to land that Echo Stomp onto heroes that are very mobile, has no such problems here versus the Dusa. It's, it's looked easy for him, in fact. Yeah, I think from now on, if you... You want to drop too, so I feel like you have to pick a safe, like a abandon, like somebody to dispel stuff. You know, keep her healthy in the fights, keep her, keep her what? Oracle abandon. Wouldn't you say that's what jabs can do this game? Though? Yeah, but the thing is, like, she ha she has to initiate on the LC to do Got it. to start the fight, and then. You can't just sit behind, or maybe he has to change the approach. You have to sit behind the Dusa, let Pango, Techies, and Disruptor do their thing, and your only job is to dispel the Dusa. Okay, well, now Jabs can dispel himself. Potentially that could have been an issue before, right? He can go ahead and uh, BKB that off, and then be able to still kind of initiate. Yeah, I think I think that that has to be his priority in the team fights here. I, I feel like the LC can no longer focus on trying to get the right jump on the duel. Instead, you have to try to just focus on dispelling your Dusa with and pop your BKB when Global's use. Okay. We'll see how that works out. I mean, that, that sounds realistic, but I mean, a 2 0 here for Bleed. You know, they are one of the uh, unbeaten teams so far. But considering I mean, this that has they were all, which are, they were almost relegated last this tour. Has been Didn't by, they play a tiebreaker? Yeah, a relegation? but this has been by far the best Dota they've played so far, you know? And, I, I feel like uh, if they're going to win this game, this series 2-0, they totally deserve to win. All right. Well, does does this butterfly on 23 Savage, just, does that give you, you know, a little bit more hope now for this talent roster as they continue to try yeah, to defend high ground? Yeah, for sure. It's going to help a lot against the uh, Illusions. But again, you know, I feel like uh, the team fight executions, how are you taking the team fights? That's going to matter a lot more than all these items right now. Mm. Uh, we saw how Bleed, they were able to use the song to reset the duel, oh, uh, the RPs. They're hunting winter. They force Jabs to use the BKP. Ice has RP to cancel a potential TP away. Trying to pull himself in uh, for the kill here. And Jabs, well, unfortunately, uh, stuck on the cliff. They're just going to let Corden and Jackie deal with him. Wow. Jackie cut right through him like a knife through butter. That was, that was fast. Yeah, going back to my point where I feel like uh, the team fight's going to be all about like organizing and planning ahead, you know, how are you going to go in, like who's supposed to do what in the team fights, you know. I feel like if talent, they don't realize that they, they just have to sit back with this uh, LC and make sure that the Dusa is uh, dispelled uh, from the sleep, I don't think that they can win the team fights by just jumping in and dueling. 
anyone. This seems difficult, if not pretty much impossible. I mean, we've only seen, what, a handful of dual wins. I believe three. Not that last one having that 10 talent. We yeah. haven't seen a level 2 dual victory. I mean, they have the Grease on the, the techies right now, so Q can cleanse okay. away the global and try to counter-initiate with the blast off. Could be something for him. Could be a move. I yeah. wonder if we'll ever see one of those gems stolen sometime, by the way. You, did you see, I think Bleed have a gem in the Roche pit, just to scout as soon as he respawns. It'll be two minutes. Just look at the timer, guys. It's really easy for us. Okay, they are going to pull Isis Ice back into a static storm, but he's so tanky. Crimson Guard active. He's not easy to go take down as much as they throw at him. It seems like eventually they will have enough. And that's a global silence committed there. Not much gained out from the side of Bleed. Makoto was looking for another potential stun. That's his first roll with Egg Scepter as well. He wasn't necessarily needed there in that last little engagement. Not sure how Ice ended up on the high ground. I assume it was a glimpse, but I'm not sure why he was up there on the first place. Yeah, didn't get to catch what he was doing as well. But uh, a kill is a kill for Talon right now. They're going to take anything they get. Absolutely. And they're going to have to try to awesome. keep doing that with the Glimpse, try to get as many pickoffs as they can. Gordon does find Makoto. Jabs nearby. There's going to be a lot of magic immunity for DJ. We'll see if he actually makes the jump in onto this. They've caught both supports. Gordon is going to go in on that as well, but 23 is behind to try and keep them alive. Jabs pops to BKB, hoping to probably find a duel onto Gordon. It's going to be left with his hands empty there as Gordon had the haste so he's back into the safety of his teams. Look at how fast this Astral Titan Spirit is as well. I think he's uh, using drums to make give himself even more attack or move speed here. This is uh, a scary, scary ET this game, man. Plus 300 damage there. <laughs> For now, and though... If you get an armor item, and then you can actually just destroy everybody. I think if you can get an AC, AC on the hero right now. That'd be big. Get the initiations correct. He's got his Echo Stomp, right? So he can uh, basically choose to go in on any yeah. of his uh, Astral Spirits. Or sorry, uh, any of his Echo Stomps on the Astral Spirit. Uh, it's pretty nice because it also combines the Astral Spirit uh, instantly. So you just right away have that damage, which can sometimes be an issue you have on this hero. Yeah, so you don't have to buy Blink anymore on this hero. Right. So this is similar to the Monkey King shot. Yeah, exactly. That's, uh, I like to compare it to that one. Plus, you can get a cleave as well if Isis Ice is around to buff him up. They're actually, uh, they're letting DJ get the farm here as well. Jackie's just kind of watching him. There's Roche, though. Has respawned. I mean, Talon, they have to try to... They have to go out, you know, and contest. You know, I, I don't think they can just... Let, let this one go. Yeah, let me get this. It's, it's too much, you know. I feel like if they just give it away and they don't do anything, the next couple of teamfights are going to be way too difficult for them. Well, it's going to be difficult as well. 23 Radiant's is rushing top towards top this Mjolnir. A build you tend to see against like PLs and, and Naga Sirens TBs, right? To, to just clear these illusions. Uh, but does usually require the use of that 25 talent. She's just a mere level 20 here, Winter. Roche has respawned as well. The talent, they're going to smoke up, but they're just going to be far too late to contest this. I mean, Russia is going to move to another home. Oh, good point. There he goes. Or, or will he? Uh, Talon is waiting on top. Okay, they're going to try and pull him back. You can't attack Roche outside of the pit with physical attacks. All right, Roche, are you going to stay top this time? He will, for now. I mean, look at where 23 is. He's very far behind his team. Yes. It is not looking good for Talon. They need to do so here. There's a ward up, so Bleed, they've seen this coming. Bleed are going to choose to fight before finishing off the Roche, not leaving anything to risk. Makoto pulled in, skewered with the Harpoon into the RP. They're going to try and take him down. Jabs was there, did get off the, the moment of courage. Sorry, they pressed the attack, but wasn't good enough. They've caught a Q as well with the Global Silence and the stun. Out comes the duel. Do they really have enough? No, they don't. Jabs is going to lose the duel. Plus 28 damage now for Gordon. It's a huge Earth Splitter. Have they slept the Dusa? No saves in for her. Q's going to be able to get off a blast up, but they just can't keep her covered for long enough. She gets off a snake. It's going to be able to cut through DJ. Gordon out of mana. Disarmed as well. I can't believe it. Oh, Dusa's dead. Keep her alive. The Dusa's dead, though. But Jabs on the buyback, cleaning up. And Talon, they're going to take down four. They, they, they forced Jackie to buy back even, Winter. I mean, that was like, what, four buybacks, or three buybacks? Uh, what the heck? Okay, Bleed, they, they really want this. They don't want to give this one up. Mikoto, 
He's in. DJ as well, looking to really force out some damage here. Jackie back into this fight. 420 damage oh, on the other side. Look fighter. at that. Q melted. And they've taken down Ollie just as quickly. Makoto trying to get out of this one. We'll see if he uses the auto cast to try and catch him. Oh, this Astral Spirit so fast, Winter. No, he's going to choose to go back and look for Roche. What in the world? That Naga Siren died so fast. I mean, voice three out of everyone did the most damage in the team fights. Uh, Cotton was able to do like 7k damage. Techies as well doing the damage. I mean, you could see how important that, 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 uh, that, uh, I can't even speak because that was a 10 death fight, by the way. Even more. Holy moly. So only about two heroes right now have buyback, uh, the Magnus and Techies. That was, in, that was insanity around the Roche pit winter. Yeah. I mean, Bleed came out on top. Is that worth it? I mean, is it though? Everyone bought back on Bleed except for Ice. I mean, they got the Aegis and Cheese. Deuce is about to have buyback. What, are you scared? What, like, what are you more scared of? Are you scared of this particular push from Bleed or are you scared of this Dusa getting that 25 talent with Mjolnir and getting online? Yeah, probably the 25 Dusa. So that's, that's why you think Bleed make the call to, to fight and die over the Roche. I mean, I feel like you should always uh, try to end the game as soon as possible when you are in a... In very, very good position in the game, you know. I don't think playing it slow is a, it's a good thing, you know. Even though sometimes you may scale, but the longer the game goes, it's just going to inherently get harder, you know, sometimes. See that? Well, well, we'll see here. 23 has not saved for buyback, by the way. Uh, he, he's actually, I believe, Winter. BKB? I, I could be mistaken, but he has foregone buyback uh, in favor of the Mithril Hammer. Just the Mithril Hammer. I mean, it's towards BKB, obviously, but... If you think about it, if he has to buy back, he, they are probably going to lose in the long run anyway. I mean, that's true, but I assume Bleed are about to push up for high ground, right? I, I, I don't suspect Talon to take any fights outside of the base, but you're right. He needs to be in the kind of right position in any case. Yeah, but I don't like like the Legion trying to start the fights anymore. I, I seriously feel like he should just sit behind the Dusa and just babysit the Dusa until they jump him and you already dispel the Dusa. And then after that, you can just do whatever you want. Hmm. But before that happens, he has to really prioritize 23 in the team fights. Have you seen this uh, Vindicator's Axe as well for jabs? For how much he's been globaled? Dyer's Provides uh, a attack. lot of damage. Like 30 damage? Yeah. Oh yeah. Bit of attack speed as well, ain't bad either. It's a very interesting item for him to choose. He does get stunned in silence a lot. 20 armor is nothing to sneeze at either. That'll, uh, that'll save you from a lot of damage here. Bleed, don't look super confident pushing up to this high ground just yet, though. What are they waiting for? What, what are they looking? Is there an item the timing that they're about to hit here, Winter? Maybe this uh, Lincoln's, perhaps, on Corden? Because they're not uh, too eager to end the game, as, as you propose. Mm, I'm not too sure, though. Like I don't feel like any item right now is going to give them uh, a significant advantage, but I feel like it's more about if the Magnus can get a pick off. Like, if I see somebody, you get a good harpoon, a good skill off, then you, then you push, you know. But before that happens, I think Lee is really happy trying to just soak up the map. He's going in right now on ice. That he is. He's managed to actually kidnap the Dusa using the his RP. Team? The team's just not here. DJ's in, but only DJ. And 23 is forced to BKB, so that's a 9 second BKB right, song. Used. Uh, this might be bad for them, you know. This could be big. We'll see if they can actually manage to get on top of 23. He's not going to be able to get up the stone gaze either. Slept up. Oh, he's oh, losing all of his mana. Winter, he doesn't have buyback. He's just dead. A minute and a half. Makoto trying his best to counter initiate here, but they just need more follow up damage. They need the Dusa in this fight. Jackie out of mana as it's Ice 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 who's dueled underneath tier 4 towers. Another huge echo stop. Jabs is still going to be able to win the duel, oh, but he's dying too quickly here. He's going to be the fourth to go. A buyback now out from Q as DJ is going to be able to slap jabs with a briefcase back to the fountain. But I mean, Bleed take a decisive lead in this game. Perhaps the decisive lead in this match, Winter. They're focusing on it to your force. Is this one over? I mean, uh, this is pretty much over. Dusa doesn't have buyback. LC doesn't have buyback. I mean, that fight, you see what Ice did. He actually skewered. He couldn't. He didn't have RP, so he couldn't really stun the LC. So he skewered the LC away so the LC couldn't di uh, dispel the Dusa when she was slapped by Echo Storm. Uh, big moves. Big moves out from Ice, Ice, Ice. Good thing we've got your keen eyes to, to catch that one, Winter. Jackie, he just doesn't care. Jabs as well, he's pretty big. He had an MKB before that fight. Lots of damage now, so they're just looking to try and slow this push by any means possible. Winter, this is Megas if uh, nothing is able to stop Jackie. And dare I say, Winter, nothing is able to stop Jackie. Oh, and <laughs> TJ's not chilling either here. He goes in off the Echo Stomp shard, but that'll be Megas. 
I mean, are you sure Jackie is even the carry? I feel like DJ is the carry. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> 23 back alive again. They might actually seconds. be able to, to kill this uh, Jackie Naga Siren. They're just, I think, going to focus him on his first life. He is going to come back with Song Makoto. He is stuck in a, in a pit. Oh, uh, that's just not what they need right now. Does manage to get the Blink Dagger out in time. Put the damage now on a Jackie. Trapped inside. Cannot get the Song off. He's got a pistol blade. Using it on the 23, but he's stunned up by the Stone Gaze and killed Winter. That's a tieback for the Naga Siren. Will it make a difference as Corden is trying to make his way out of the base now? He's holling on to a gem of True Sight. Has no spells. Not enough mana either for the Dissimilate and caught by the blast off of Q. A second dieback now for the side of Bleed. All right, can but they is it enough? Can they actually push the waves out? And they have to try to all, I think, all in mid. Right now? Uh, on, on this death timer for the Naga? Yeah, they have to try. If they don't do this, Naga and Void Spirit response, I think the game Very is just well. pretty much over. They're building a travels on Japs, okay? This is this is going to be important. If they can get like a, a Vlad's as well, that would also be nice. It will help them with pushing and help some of in the team fights. I think somebody should get a Vlad's. Yeah, my deuce is not struggling not at all to clear these megas. It's Dusa. Q as she well. Does, she doesn't care about mega creeps. It's ready to uh, get the uh, the mines set up. That's not a good stomp, unfortunately, because tower does not attack slept units. Um, it's not bad, but now they will have creeps when they push high ground, which is... Oh, no, they won't. He's going to clear them. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Oh, this is so annoying. They, back door's broken on the high ground for a bit longer. There's going to be another Fortify and another one. But 40 seconds left until this Naga Siren's alive, Winter. All these Echo Stomps are going to be so annoying in the meantime as well. Cooldown so quick with the shot. Yep. It's pretty fantastic. Talon, they're going to go on in. Crimson Guard out from Ice to try and defend the tower a bit longer. Can Will make throw? a big difference. Look at that, man. This is just precious seconds burned away, Winter. Can they just throw? I feel they're like they should just throw. They will try. That's the last fortify that Bleed now have. They've caught the Techies and the Dusa here. Jabs at the ready. There's a, 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 a Desolator on its way. No, but Talon, they're going to choose to just go for the mid lane of Barracks. That's it, Winter. They don't feel like they can end it. And they might not be able to get out either. Harpoon. Oh, the Harpoon not in time. Careful for the, the Techies, Axe. Here comes the Nan, guys. He's going to Q Song? No. No. Nope. Uh, everyone out in time so far. Ollie is uh, currently being chased down by the creeps. I think they know. Trying to TP out. Will they catch him? No, not quite. But that's fine. Bleed didn't necessarily need to land the killing blow in that retreat. They've got Megas. Oh, I mean, I mean, they didn't get the, the killing blow, but Talon is really on the ropes already. Like one, one more misstep, they're just gonna right, lose right. the game. Well, yeah, Bleed didn't need to get the killing you know, blow right there. It was Talon who were a little bit more pressed uh, in the moment. Hmm. Managed to find the mid melee barracks, but I mean... I guess they're stuck in the base right now. There's a way. They're stuck in the base. Roche is going to respawn as soon as in 30 seconds here, Winter. Uh, they'll likely have to fight for that up top where Talon uh, do have a small advantage. Hyper stone on DJ. <laughs> no way. I know hyper stone. I mean, uh, more shard. Not bad. <laughs> uh, he was going for AC earlier. I guess he's changed it up. I mean, sure, he's got the damage. And uh, he can get on top of these enemy heroes. No problem whatsoever. Jab's hiding away in the trees. Trying to be doing the same. Hoping to try and buy out for an item here. We'll see if he makes it back into the base safely because Bleed are smoked up. Ice is going to see him. The skewer on out of range into the RP. Dispel. Oh, there's the dispel. And it's a big one. 23. Oh no, the global didn't get up the stone gate. 23 Savage. He's just going to go down yes, with bye a double buyback instantly. Japs has lost the duel to DJ. He's too big, Winter. Plus 510 damage. You cannot duel the man. Holy moly. I mean, he has Empower and the Spirits, and he has the, what, 50% magic immunity. Holy moly. That was that was a violent death for Jabs. Uh, how much damage did he do? Uh, Elder Titan did 3,000 damage in that couple he, of seconds. Elder Titan did 1,353 right-quick damage in five auto attacks. That, uh, that That's final damage as well. That's not before reductions. That's after reductions. That's criminal. That is genuinely criminal. Especially because Jabs would have been silenced in that duel, and with the Vindicator's Axe, he would have had 20 armor. <laughs> so he had like 40 armor, and he still took that much damage. That's that's the just raw numbers that Bleed are bringing to these fights. And now, I mean, you just look at the resources available at their disposal. The Megas running down yeah. creeps. They've got the the luxury of just waiting for this next Roche. All five buybacks as well. You've just forced 23's buybacks for the ability for him to farm another camp. You know, it's just... It's so tough right now for Talon. If they make their way back into this game, I mean... 
I, I just I don't see how they do it, honestly, Winter. Yeah, it's going to take more than a miracle right now. Uh, they're going to uh, just play it cool, bleed. Textbook, they're going to wait for Roche, I guess. They're going to oh, check nice. if Roche is going to spawn. Stop. There he is. In our little picture. So picture. get what? Refresher shot? Yep. Yeah, and he's on this side. He's got refresher. Is that a big deal for anyone? I guess, right? Global. RP, double skewer. Double global, double RP. I like double RP, double skewer better. Just get the Dusa as far away from the fight as you can. Honestly, you could probably just end the game as well. Uh, just running her down, just skewering her away from the fountain. But I mean, for Talon, I mean, it's... If you want to do it in a fancy way, you, you give the shot. You yeah. give the refresher shot to Naga. Naga walks in, songs five heroes, and uh, your teammates just kill the throne. Are you seeing this uh, minefield that Q set up, by the way? He's got a nice... <laughs> he's got a nice matrix going. Does this give you flashbacks of old techies in games like this? Don't even ask me, man. You ever play that game, Winter, where you have to, like, you, you go one line at a time to connect the... No? Okay. That's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, the only game I remember, like, when I'm playing against Techies are games where it goes... I think I played a couple of, like, 80 minutes games and nobody, nobody's doing anything because of Techies. Surely this game, I mean, it just can't go that long, right? Even with I, uh, that was, I mean, that was with the old Techies. Yeah. Not the current Techies. I, I just... It'll be so hard here. 23 is close to 25, as is Makoto. Makoto's actually even closer. Might have it off of this creep weight, but it's so dangerous for him to even go farm that camp. There it goes. He's got 25. Is that really that big of a deal, though? The Rolling Thunder cooldown? Eh. Uh, not really, yeah. Buybacks are going to matter a lot more, right? Buybacks now. are going to matter. He's the only one with buyback on his team. Q is about to have it as well, but everyone else is on cooldown for five more minutes. This talent will smoke behind the tower. Oh, 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 wow. DJ just in as his ice, ice, ice. The duel's on to DJ. That time it looks like Jab's going to win it, but they're going to lose the Dusa at this rate because Jackie is just laying into her. The global silence on the refresh right, is yeah. too good. That has to be it, Winter. Ice is in again. This time he's going to be able to snag Jab's and just into the melee they go. Not one that they're too comfortable in either. Q doing the best he can as the roll through from Makoto. It's just basically the swan song here for Talon. The wrong kind of bird, I believe, for them. Makoto caught by the sleep and just killed off Corden. Give him the rampage. Oh, the techies mines. Oh, the techies mines, Winter. But he's got no damage resist or magic resist. Nearly taken down there. Throne exposed. Fortify is out. Talon doing what they can. But they recognize that this game is far too gone. Corden will get his rampage. And Bleed will get a 2-0 versus Talon Esports. What a game I played, man. This this team is totally different beast right now. Like Misery has added so much belief in the team, you know. He added a lot of like uh, strategies with the team that they didn't have before. Right now they seem to know what they have to pick uh, for Corden. They're finding a right balance between picking Corden's hero and trying to make the whole draft uh, very very well all rounded for their other cores and uh, not not every team prioritizes picking their support last, you know, and for Bleed it definitely works with DJ. Yeah, I mean that looks Really, really good for them there. I mean, DJ had a phenomenal game. And I think this does let, lend a lot of credence. I think there was some theory crafting on that Reddit post, you know, that ET is one of the better counters. You know, don't go for any of these other. Was it Nyx Assassin? Everyone was saying uh, Axe as well with the dunk. I think ET, there might be something here, right? Yeah, you have to pick like a dispel with Medusa. I think going forward, teams are going to realize that this is actually a legit problem. If you're going to pick Medusa, you have to make sure you cover that base. You have to have an Oracle, a Baden, someone to save, you know, a dispel. And uh, that time around, Javs just simply wasn't going to be enough, even with the AoE Dispel Talents. But it's Bleed who continue their flawless streak here throughout the DPC Summer Tour here for the SEA region as Talon will take an early loss for them. Here to break it down a little bit more for what that means and the ramifications, let's go on over to the panel to talk a bit more about this series. What a well-deserved win by Bleed. I mean, they were able to take it 2-0 against Talon. I don't think a lot of people were expecting that. And today was just full of upsets. I've never seen Talon look that defeated in so long. Yeah, it looked pretty abysmal. Like yeah. you, you saw how the faces on them and the post game, uh, Savage didn't look too pleased. Ollie looked pretty defeated. That was a rough one. And props to Bleed. Again, they play a fantastic game. We see Corden popping off. DJ and Ice, I think, for the highlights here. Like Ice just making all these plays on the Magnus. They understood the timing. Now Talon, we're still playing really early on. We're finding some good opportunities. They were getting to chase down, but the game just drags on too long. Like this Deuce pick, it. It's, it's a, like you guys said, it's a bit of a bait. It just doesn't feel like it's enough. It tickles the Naga. It, it's counteracted by the ET. It's not an easy game. It's not an easy pick anymore. I think there was a 
way to make it work. Like, I think this early like Manta Mjolnir and LC play behind you, you know, for example. So I think the idea I had when I suggested his Legion is that he's going to dominate his lane and then he's going to transition into his hero that helps the Medusa play the game. Because the Medusa is going to suffer this game, mm. you know, against the Naga matchup. It's not good. Play fast, itemize fast, two items, three items, like let's go high ground kind of game, you know. But Talon didn't really go for that and they did almost make a comeback in this game, but it just felt like the... Uh, I think with the LC pick especially, he just kind of fell off. Yeah. It yeah. fell really flat towards the end and I think Picking this Legion meant you're playing this buff to do so fast game, which they didn't really go for. Yeah, I mean, he, was, he wasn't even able to get that many duels off, really. And no. he lost quite a bit of those duels, too. Yep. So it wasn't a shining game for Jabs. But again, the side of Bleed just played to their strength so well. Uh, the playmaking that we're seeing out of Corden and Ice, uh, the positioning of DJ to get all of these stomps off, to make all the fights for Talon really awkward the counterpoint and just going ET into the Dusa, having that sleep last such a long time. Like, Bleed is working as a very fine-tuned unit. And I had my doubts coming in here, you know? Like, I had my doubts with the opponents they faced where it's like, all right, you know, they get their wins there. Are they really that much improved? Because they made both their opponents look really weak. Now they do the same thing to Talon. Talon just, they don't look like the same team in this series. They look... They look pretty bad. Like this, this is <laughs> straight up. This is pretty terrible. Yeah, I mean, I, I said it a while ago. Bleed's drafts just look next level. They just know what they're doing. They have the vision. Yeah, and they, they knew what to do against Town, right? Like they ban out all of Jab's hero until the end, where he's only left with that LC, which yeah. it still works in this draft, but it just felt so hard to pull off, and it certainly it didn't manage to line up in the end. It definitely felt more prepared in this series than Town. I think Town's more of the go with the flow. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think Blade used to be like that too, but they have a system as much as they... Like the way they play, you know, it's very clear. Like look at Corden today, he looks like... He looked like one of the best mids in SA. <laughs> That's no, true, no yeah. Camp, you know? That's We've true. been flaming this guy for like the past one, two months. Yeah. <laughs> today is the Corden that we saw in Tour 1. He's or Corden Ramsey I think again. Even, even better, you know? Yeah. It's the Lamb Cook Corden he's owning. Lamb and I think it's <laughs> it's just because they simplify what they want to do in the game. Like, he's very clear about his movements, and I feel like their team looks very natural right now. Yeah. They do look really natural. They look clean. And like you said, you know, Talon, this team, they're kind of like the benchmark. They're the limit tester. Yep. You see how well you can do against Talon? It kind of fares they how well you do. The DPS yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they, they broke him. And they that, did that's it. big. That This lines up for Bleed to potentially have a smoother road, maybe go on to Bali. They're looking like the front runners right now as we enter week two. Talon, it's not the end of that road yet, but th this does mean that one loss, you have to play cleanly throughout the tour. And for Bleed, a spectacular performance again from DJ. Like it's he a had a fantastic call. time. Yeah, yeah, it is it's a wake, wake up call. call. DJ, our match MVP. DJ has been playing phenomenally this whole season. Yeah. He honestly deserves a match he's MVP free. like most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's finally free. free. He's free to be himself now. His team has freed him from this prison that he may be placed on himself. <laughs> Maybe the team's placed onto him. And now he's just doing what he wants. He's that shining pause for that we all know and remember from all the years he spent on Fnatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they look really good as a whole. I'm actually super surprised and super excited, actually. I feel like it got kind of stale, you know. Yeah. Talon's been on top for a long time. They're a really good team, don't get me wrong. They're probably still on top, but mm -hmm. combination is nice. Yeah. And I feel like this Bleed roster, what we expected from their roster change with getting DJ and Ice, this is what we expected yeah. and they gave it to us, this you know, so That's true. I'm content. We finally got it. We got the finally hype that we wanted. It. But what do you think this loss means for Talon? Do you think it's, uh, it's time to, you know, go back to the textbooks and revamp things? I, I think it, yeah, it's somewhat that. I think it also looked like I don't know, it felt like the draft was just a little bit unfocused. Um, I think they've always been doing this last pick for jabs for a while. And for a while it hasn't been punished, but we're seeing it, what happens when you do just focus in on jabs, get your conditions early, set up for that condition on Jackie, and then just limit the options for Talon. I think Talon has to find a way to adjust because this is something we've seen from a lot of offlane jabs teams where he is always last and he's calling the shots in the draft. I think. That leaves holes that a team like Bleed has managed to use really well here. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on the team you're playing against. Mm -hmm. like, I think Bleed did a really good job picking Ice early, like this Magnus, this Doom. I'm sure Jabs could replicate the, a similar impact in the game if you first pick his yeah. Magnus or Doom too, you know? So I think it's very based on who you play against, like your approach to the game strategy, which 
Credit to Bleed, I think they definitely out strategize today. Actually, you know what's really interesting is that Bleed has won against all the major attendees. Yeah. <laughs> they beat Talon, they beat Execration, they beat SMG. I mean, well, I guess SMG and Execration are, are doing as well. But like still, that's a huge feat. That's, that's something a, to be proud yes, of. It is. And it, again, it sets up for maybe an entirely new roster going to Bali. Like maybe Talon stays in. I wouldn't be surprised if we have a huge shuffle in our top three now. Mm -hmm. well, we do have an interview with Corden from Bleed. Hello, congr cor con Corden. I was say congratulations, Corden, on your win. Um, I want to ask: Did you guys expect to be dominating the DPC this much? Uh, kind of. We are winning most of our scrims, and I feel like we are pretty strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, how do I read your name, Junyao? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Sure, all right. Not convincing. <laughs> mm, no, you guys, it is, it is, yeah. it is. Okay. Are right, you guys 2-0, the favorites of DPC? The team behind you, don't look like you're jumping in joy. Job's not done. Watching replays. <laughs> nah, I mean, we're all obviously feeling pretty good for winning Talon. Yeah. They're just watching the... The VODs, I think, they're not watching replays. I see. Right, I got a personal question for you. I feel like coming into the season, you know, we saw you play this Tinker and stuff, you looked a bit more uncomfortable. But I think today, the, the performance from you today was actually insane. What changed over the weekend? Uh, I guess just... The scrims that we had in between the break was really valuable. Like. We learned a lot of stuff on how we want to play around the map, and yeah, we just applied it today. Right. I'm curious here, Corden. What for you? What's the difference with the bleed from tour two to tour three? Because I feel like every team member has a different perspective on what changed. For you personally, what changed that bleed's just looking fantastic? You guys beat three major attending teams pretty cleanly in your first two weeks. What happened? Is it just misery? Is there something else? Um. Yeah, I think Misery is a really good coach and really important to get us here. And all of us just improved individually, I guess. But I guess Misery is like the biggest factor for me. Mm -hmm. Right, and going forward in the tour, um, what are you guys looking forward to now? Like you've gotten pretty much your biggest opponents out of the way. Is there anyone else that you guys are prepping extra hard for? A anyone else on your radar that you'd want to play against? <sighs> Hmm, maybe Boom might be might be a, a bit of a challenge, but yeah. Can I ask why Boom? I don't know, I just feel like they're <laughs> out of the remaining teams, they're like probably one of the strongest. Yep. Alright, fair enough. That's interesting, because we always rated Boom a bit lower yeah. over here, <laughs> just based on their performances so far. Um, I, I want to ask about like your in-game, like who talks more on the team? Like, is there a certain person in the game that shot calls a lot more than the others? Uh, probably Ice. <laughs> Fair. That's kind yeah. of I think that's yeah. That's, that's pretty so. straightforward. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I have one last question for you. Do you have any pre-game uh, like rituals or routines that you like to do? Like, how do you get into the mindset when you're going to play Dota? Pre-game rituals. Can you yeah. give me like? Examples like, of I don't know, people. do you listen right, to like... Have, okay, in my generation, every mid player would go into a lobby and fucking play Invoker against some X dummy units and spam 10, 20 <laughs> spells with Refresher up. Uh, that sounds kind of dumb. Like, <laughs> that's, that's what I look like. for. It does, it does. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, I would go like, Debo Hero and practice last hits on okay. some heroes. Uh, yeah. Cool. Well, that's uh, all the questions we have for you today. Congratulations on your win against Talon. Thank Take you. care. Bye bye. Wow, he just called what you said <laughs> dumb, Adam. I mean, it's pretty dumb. It's pretty dumb. It's what everyone did. Yeah, but it's it's a pre-game ritual. It's supposed yeah. to be somewhat dumb. Yeah, I mean, you it's know? just pressing buttons, right? Yeah, just like, get the shakes off. You're getting spells mm -hmm. that you want to spell. What I was think... your pre-game ritual? Did you have one? Yeah, I used to go check my opponent's replays for awards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> smart. That's really yeah, smart. Yeah. I mean, that's what every support player yeah. does. I think yeah. You kind of have to. No, but like, do you yeah, do anything? I don't practice last hitting. I didn't get oh, any yeah, obviously. creeps in my days. <laughs> <laughs> but do you do anything like non-Dota-esque? Like, I don't know, listen to like Eminem and get mm -hmm. hyper. Music, music for sure. Uh -huh. I think music is underrated. 
Like yeah. everyone should yeah. listen to music before games. Yeah. yeah. What good. do you do, John, before you get into a cast? Before I get uh, into a cast? Listen to your no. Hatsune Miku. You know what I do? <laughs> I annoy Mike. Like literally, me and Mike are always together when we're together. I just talk shit to him for like uh-huh. half an hour. <laughs> By the end of it, he's just already mentally checked me out. <laughs> so I'm free to say what I want in the cast. No problems. Mike's not even focusing on me. The investment. <laughs> yeah, that's the tech. <laughs> just level him out. Well, next uh, we have uh, Boom and Execration. I, how do you guys think that's going to go? We'll see if Corrin's right. It's boom is scary as that's, he said it was. Mm. Is it? But you know what else is scary. not scary? This, oh. this, this this one, not scary. This is Poggers. I say Poggers <laughs> a lot, man. It's a bad habit. But check out this ePulse promo code, 7 Days Free Prime for DPC 23 Summer. Use that code or scan the QR. Yes, it's over here. Um, if you do do that, you get 7 Days Free Prime. And what you get with 7 Days Free Prime, you get some special access to different tournaments. And if you use this code, they have a tournament um, throughout the season. $500 you can win. And if you use Prime, $1,000. They also have weekly Arcana giveaways, and also they have this quick match feature that's going on right now. It's uh, just 1v1s, different heroes all the time, and it's good fun. Yeah, you guys totally tried it. It was good Absolutely. fun, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I love Great 1v1s. Fun. Yeah, you love, love 1v1s. bullying kids. Bullying kids? Yeah. Or being a kid again and getting bullied. <laughs> <laughs> it's a win-win for me. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for this series. You just saw Town get destroyed by Fleet. And next up, we have Boom versus Execration. And I have someone special for you back in uh, my seat. So we'll see you in a bit. It's time.
The day will come when you first realize what you have done and you finally get your debt repaid and revenge. Just served on a cold plate, oh yeah. On a cold plate. On a cold plate. On a cold plate.
I leave you guys alone for one week. One week. And the entire DPC is upside down. I entrusted this with you, Winter. Chan lit bin. <laughs> I gave you one thing. What did I say last time I was here? I said, would it be so bad for an SCA team to be consistent for a whole year? And you said, no, that's not such a big deal. And yet here I am, I roll up Monday, Xerxia beats Blacklist 2-0, Bleed beats Talon 2-0. It's like you don't even want a direct invite to TI. Explain yourself, Winter and Aurora. Welcome. I'm kind of more interested how HR approved your one week Absence, you know. It wasn't an absence, it's a <laughs> paid vacation. I know I'm coming from America where we rarely get that much time off, but I, I made it happen. I pulled some strings. But clearly that was a bad idea. Aurora, I leave you alone for one week. What happened? I Everything's upside down now. I, I'm not the one who called them and, you know, asked them to end fast. <laughs> I'm, I'm new here, I'm the junior. Okay, fine. Then you're, you've been giving bad lessons from Winter. Winter, you're supposed to know better. Winter, you're supposed to encourage consistency out of these teams. And, well, on the one hand, I'm kind of happy because that means that SEA is competitive. But this is Tour 3. The clock is ticking. People need points to directly qualify for TI. And all of a sudden, we're in a situation like we were last year where you're not guaranteed anything. Maybe not even talent might not even be guaranteed. I mean, they're, they're like you. They're tired, they're fatigued, they want to get some leave, you know, but DPC doesn't allow them a, a week leave. I mean, I guess they got a week off, you know, previous, uh, previously. But the one week off is pretty not, I would say it's not enough, you know, for a team like Talon. They've been traveling on the road for such a long time. They played Dream League, they played Berlin. And eventually, you just can't keep the consistency up all the time, you know? Yeah, we saw it during the tail end of Dream League, actually, because like you said, they've been going through a chain of events and even during the middle of Dream League, they saw that they were not very happy with their performance and it was still 7.32 for quite a bit of that tournament. Uh, and then they got eliminated before 7.33 even happened. Then they show up to Berlin, you know, it's not a particularly stellar performance. It's not the top three that we expected them from them following Lima. Uh, maybe they beat PSG, LGD, and Bracket, whatever. But they are supposed to be the front runners because Execration is no longer bringing up the SEA region. They have gone 0-2 so far in this region, and now they are going to be going up against Boom Esports for our last matchup of Monday. Which begs the question, Aurora, then how many placements is SEA going to get at TI? Are you confident that even Talon is going to be able to make it to TI directly? Can I be honest? Please, tell me. Well, at this rate, I don't think they deserve any spot. <laughs> okay. I mean, like you said, they haven't been consistent. So I feel only teams that are consistent throughout the season deserve a spot in TI. Yeah, but shouldn't you also be rewarded when you, when you play well at one land? I feel like uh, it's not easy to you know, place that high, like top three at even one of the majors. Like you could always argue that, oh, the earlier majors, everybody is shit, you know, everybody's bad, you know, so the earlier ones, you shouldn't put so much value and emphasis on it, you know. But still, you know, it's not easy to play that well in one of the majors. I mean, I would agree with you until I saw today's matches, so, yeah. You can have a bad day, man. Okay, all right. <laughs> you can't play well every, every, every game, you know. I feel like, yeah, sure, consistency is really important, but at the end of the day, they are humans, you know, they're not robots, you know. They get tired and patch is always changing and... You're always on the road, people go, people see each other all the time. <laughs> you get tired of the people on the team too. <laughs> yeah. But then why is it this region specifically that always has the issue? West, everyone's playing the same DPC. Everyone's playing the same circuit to get to TI. And Western Europe seems to persevere through it. And then uh, I guess the other downfall is that because Southeast Asia is so consistently competitive, then you don't have like the TSM, where TSM is just farming North America. I don't even know, I, I'm pretty sure half of Southeast Asia think White Mon died, but he's still around. It's just that he never gets I mean, anywhere I, past I, the group I would stage. argue even Liquid had like a dip of form after coming back, you know, they, they lost some games as well. So I, I think it's fairly common to see teams, uh, maybe when you can just come back from a long tournament, you don't play as well as before. It's, it's a very normal thing. Um, we'll see what they can do to recover because it is just one loss. The standards are exceptionally high because they went completely undefeated last time, but between Dream League performance, Berlin performance, and 
them getting too owed by Bleed, I'm starting to be a little bit scared for uh, the future of Talon, but it's not about them anymore. Right now, we're looking at Boom and Execration. Execration have been on a bit of a downwards trend recently, which has been a disappointing result for them because having, after having shown up to both majors, same thing, also shown up at Dream League, hasn't been very, very good performances. Boom, meanwhile, they uh, took some time off Aurora. They were chilling in Div 2, gathering their bearings, and where are they now as we start week two? I think they should just, you know, like draft whatever they have been doing for the first two seasons, where they have done well with, like, you know, they are massy with such thing. I mean, even KP brought with such, so why not? You're inclined to agree, Winter, because usually you're very big advocates of these Div 2 promo tees. Uh, Your boys Army Geniuses last time? Yeah, but I, I just feel right now, like, uh, for excretion, they lost their chef, you know? Like, I don't know who's cooking in the kitchen. Their drafts are so weird, and they're just definitely not the same team from before, you know? Who was their chef? I mean, so, Tour 1, it was March. He set a pretty good recipe. Tour 2, they didn't have March. And they still managed to... Oh, there's a... Ding, 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 ding. Sorry, my, uh, it's been a while since I've been back. <laughs> I couldn't hear everything properly. I had all the beach, beach sand in my ear. There's a draft going on. <laughs> Are we at war on this beach? What is going on? <laughs> well, I guess there is a techies. Um, yeah, so you can either tell me about what Boom has been missing out on in terms of... A real carry. A real carry. <laughs> okay. I'm into that. I know I love you roasting enemy ro uh, team rosters. <laughs> Been underwhelmed with Natsumi? As usual. As usual. Yeah. They needed Tsunami. I know, they misspelled it. If they just rearranged the letters, they I mean, could be... If, if they got you, they would have been penalized for being late. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, I do, a good draft penalty is fine. That's what, that's what keeps you on your toes. Mushi probably typically uh, calculated this whole thing. He wants to put his players under pressure. Game number one. So it was the first pick Takis overall for excretion. I don't yeah. think they've they done it too many times, as I recall. Uh, and for Boom, they respond with uh, Doom plus Disruptor. Like Doom is just a no-brainer, you know, this hero is just so strong. I've been like uh, advocating for actually Bad Rider, you know. If, if Bad Rider is not uh, banned, you can also open up with Bad Rider. Because if you're second pick and you want to open up with one of the offlane heroes, uh, and the hero doesn't care about the matchups, I feel Bad Rider can do the same thing as Doom. Because when people talk about Doom, Doom is always like, oh, okay, you can't punish the Doom in the lane. He's always really, really strong in the lane. So no matter the matchup, he can come back with Devour, Midas. But actually for Bad Rider, it's kind of the same right now, because there's always the camps on the side. So you can always use Firefly in a bad matchup, and you can always come back in the game. And what about this Medusa? Is it like the first time Execration picked this hero so early? I feel like they have never really prioritized Medusa at all because of their playstyle, I would say. I'm just very surprised to see them picking this hero up so early. And they have to try to, I, I feel like, drop the right heroes around Dusa because a lot of like the criticism uh, for Dusa when a team picks it is whether you understand what piece of uh, puzzles that you have to piece around this Medusa hero, you know, you need the, the right heroes. In the previous game, you saw how the 18 completely negated the Medusa. In the team fights, she can't really do anything. She sleep all the time, so you, you have to be ready for that, you know, draft a save. I feel like drafting a save with Dusa will become a very normal thing to do. Like a dispel, like a Baden, Oracle, whatever it is, you know. What about the mana battery saves that we would see in Berlin, like the Pugnas, the Coddles? Maybe not necessarily a dispel, but you just make her incredibly tame. Yeah, I mean, I say this spell because of how strong E.T. is as a counter right. against uh, Dusa. And there's not much you can do about it. You have to just rely on your teammates to remove it. And there we go, we see the E.T. once again, you know. So I feel like Excretion should right away right now just pick one of uh, a Dispel hero. Oracle, Abaddon, maybe not Abaddon, I don't know. Like, Oracle seems decent. Shanks played Oracle. pretty good against the Doom, you get to dispel like the Infernal Blade and everything. I, I feel like Oracle is definitely underpicked in our region. Right? This hero is actually so freaking busted. 
Southeast Asia doesn't like playing safe supports. Yeah, dude, dude, when you siege high ground, you put the Fates Edict on the carry and the carry right clicks the tower. How hard can that be, you know? Yeah, and then you win the game. It's so stressful for the support. They have to stand like <gasps> Honestly, two miles back from the high ground to make sure that they don't get caught. I don't even think Oracle is that passive of a support though. Like when he reaches this level three or level five, his burst power is actually amazing. He can do like easily 500 damage within three spells. Yeah, but that's the trap though, because Oracles get very excited to do damage. And then all of a sudden your carry is like, bro, why are you uh. dead? <laughs> You're supposed to be saving me. You're yeah. not supposed to be nuking people. I know what you mean. <laughs> I've been in those games. I'm like, oh, I got two carry away. Yeah. I'm like, oh, three kills. Dude, you After got the purifying flames. Yeah, and you're like, the lane, I'm like feeling like I'm a god. I'm running in. <laughs> and then my carry is like, what the fuck are you yeah, doing, man? He's exactly. looking at me. And that's why your ulti is called false promise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you use it on yourself and you're like, I was just lying, guys. This is the, I see the same thing happen with Willow players oftentimes. Willows will get very, very far ahead and then they'll start blinking and trying to Shadow Realm on people. And I'm like, bro, you're supposed to be terrorizing our team fight. Why are you inside the middle of the team fight? Yeah, she's terrorizing you. Yeah, she's terrorizing the wrong team. <laughs> I also want to talk about clockwork, like whether Execration will pick it up against, you know, this ET. It's just generally very annoying to play against clockwork as an ET. But then again, because they have like Disruptor, I didn't think it was that much of a threat. But I guess they think similarly, because they took this hero out. Yeah, clockwork used to be like a, a fairly huge counter towards uh, ET. But I don't know how, about, how I feel about clockwork right now. I don't feel like the hero is that good. Like yeah. even though like there's a lot of hype on the universal heroes, especially like Void, Magnus, and Pango, those are the three big ones. Because mm -hmm. they have a lot of damage since uh, that's how Universal Hero works and you get to build strength items, you're tanky, you have damage. Kind of feels busted, you know, those heroes. I go for the Venom. Uh Venom pause five. Not really that big of a fan of the hero here. I feel like they just need to allow, when you pick Medusa, you just need to allow that hero to succeed in the game, you know? Like, fuck the other heroes, you know? You don't, you don't care about the other fancy heroes, you just make sure that Medusa gets a game, she gets protected in the team fights, she gets her ancient stacks, and whatever safe hero it is, and you're good to go, you know? I'm really not convinced with this execution draft. I, I feel like the chef has smoked some weed and something <laughs> has gone wrong, you know? <laughs> like, the drafts have been so weird, like, since last week. Yeah, I noticed that. The drafts have been crazy, but, you know. They, they had like a last pick Meepo. They had one game, they had the Huskar. Like, in their this series, it's crazy, man. In their defense, though, whatever they were trying to do in Berlin and Dream League wasn't working either. So you might as well try to mix it up, I guess. Meepo got them a few wins in like, Tour 1. <laughs> but yeah, I'm with you. It does not seem like... Like, this is their first time picking Medusa. Right. And it seems like... Well, actually, no, they, they played it on Tino one time. Uh, but it, st it still seems like they're like, ah, let's just pick it because it's a good hero. But they don't know what makes it a good hero. I mean, it's more about like understanding what the hero needs uh, as teammates, you know, what kind of heroes that you need in a draft for, for the Dusa, you know. Like, uh, I feel like the, the hero is pretty easy to execute if you have the right pieces around it. But if you don't have the right pieces around it, then the Medusa is like running around the map. It's such a heavy hero, slow hero, and there's no purpose in the game, and then that's when the game feels really difficult for you. So they have like Ember, Elder Titan right now. They have a, they have actually two heroes to abuse the aura, the magic aura, Scorch Earth, and Ember Spirit is obviously one of uh, the best. You can set up for the Echo Storm. You use the aura. Maybe this Medusa is an offlane hero. You know, buy boost of bearing, and then. Oh and yeah, that could be that could be that could be true. So you, you pick you pick Medusa early, you don't pick any saves for her, enemy picks counter, you don't care about the pick and you just put her on off lane. But Tino's build last time was a very carry build. He went, he went like Treads, Manta, Butterfly. He did not go Boots of Bearing. Maybe that's why they are team needed. Because in general, I think this hero is more emphasized on the tankiness now, instead of just like having to be the answer all the time. I mean, yes, when you pick Medusa, you want her to be the answer. That's why you kind of want to draft around her, right? But sometimes it's not that simple, it's not that easy, especially with how Boomiswad is preparing for this Medusa. So, like, she's still a very valid hero for tanking, you know? Let her eat all the spells. As soon as she press her, uh, her ulti and then she eats all the spells. Okay, all good. That's why I feel about this hero. Yeah, which may be why they're picking these supports to deal damage themselves mm. as opposed to save. Yeah. So I guess if they're actually going down that route, I guess you probably pick like some other carry which allows you to play really aggressively. Kill heroes, 
uh, I guess you go what is Monkey King available? You go Monkey King and you just run at them. Like it's a good lame matchup against the Doom. And you you buy early game items. You just fight fight with the Dusa and the Void Spirit. How about Alchemist? Natsumi played that earlier. I'm not sure about Elk, but I think it's also possible. Uh, you you're pretty strong in the lane with the Venom. Whenever I see Doom, I just want to punish him in the lane. Very hard, you know. That's why I think of like Monkey King Ursa right away. You need to be able to slow down the hero. I know he, this hero is like, okay, you slow him down, he still can come back in the later in the game with the Devour Go, the Midas Go, whatever item he wants to go for. And now you have the Octarine Rush build, which is so insane on the hero. Yeah. I feel like you slow him down and then you go eat his him. Eat his him and then eat his towers. And then even though he comes out with like the right items at the right time, but his, his entire team is handicapped, you know, and he doesn't have that many resources. Yeah, to that's why Monkey King okay. is a very common answer to him. Like Ursa, you punish him in the lane, and then after after the laning phase, you're going to be pressuring the map uh, around your with your team. You're very mobile on the Monkey King. You jump around and you, you find the Doom in the jungle, you pick him off and you control the map. And meanwhile, your Medusa is like doing Medusa things farming. Well, Boom suspect that this is a safe lane, Medusa, because they ban out two offlaners. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the obvious, obvious thing to think about first, but Excreation has done this offlane Dusa before. Yeah. Do their bans indicate one thing about Phantom Lancer and Terrorblade? Does that look, look more carry? Carry. Yeah. I think Boom might be looking at Art Warden, even Naga. They want. Naga sounds good, Naga. It's very good against all their heroes. The Ensnare is also amazing against Boy Spirit, against Taki. Wait, what? Usp? Who's the carry? Okay, I guess Medusa is the carry, so who's the offlane? Who's the off? Yeah, I guess Earth Spirit Earth offlane? Earth Spirit is the offlane? Oh, or oh, Venom offlane? Surprise! Boy Spirit is the offlane, Earth is the big. <laughs> Which one are you suspecting, Aurora? Who's I mean, from a Boy Spirit point of view, He's not that bad in the off lane. Really? As long as what you need is just for him to not die. Yeah, good luck dealing with the Naga. Then. Yeah, I think yeah. he'll die against the Naga. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's Earth it's Bob Watch Spirit, so it's a mid. Okay, well, offlane Earth Spirit. We've been seeing uh, the uh, what, mid one played mid Earth Spirit, right? Yes. Feels more like a mid hero. It does I. feel like more more like a mid hero. <laughs> it's but just a, it's just like a spirit bro, you know. You get some early levels, you gank. You're really strong in the team fights and you rush your BKB. He needs that level to be relevant at the timing. Otherwise, he's just gonna fall out really fast and every coin is just gonna buy BKB. There's gonna be Pi, there's gonna be Lotus. You're not gonna be able to do anything. And what's his timing? Are we getting a Crimson Guard on this uh, Earth Spirit? Because he does have amazing strength can. But at the same time, then, like, you're an Earth Spirit who's rolling into the team fight and you have the Crimson Guard on your team. You're gonna die if you don't have BKB. You roll in, you get silenced uh, by Disruptor or you get stomped by the Elder Titan, you're just gonna die. You know? So, <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like as much as it's nice to get the Crimson Guard on Earth Spirit, I feel like he needs the BKB. It's very selfish for an offlaner. I mean, what can you do? You pick Earth Spirit offlane. It was their last pick. <laughs> I mean, you can still press your BKB and force the Doom to Doom you and you're still being useful, you know, instead of having your other teammates getting doomed. Yeah. I see it that way. Okay. Because Doom isn't really going to be caring about dooming a Dusa. Really, he only cares about dooming Void Spirit. Yep. And then if Earth Spirit's being annoying, then you'll yeah. be like, get out of my face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but just looking at the heroes, I think it's just pretty straightforward for, for Boom's lineup. It's easy to play. And whereas you look at X creation, it's everywhere, you know, the draft is all over the place. Aurora. Which way are you going? Um, I mean, I'm a Void Spirit enjoyer, but this time I would say Boom has the more normal draft. <laughs> normal never did Execration any favors, though, and I hope that this game won't be any different. Let's see how game number one of Boom Esports versus Execration goes down with Richie and John X Fire. Thank you, Neil. Glad you could uh, join us after lounging on the beach for a week. Yes, Jonathan. What I mean, I kind of agree. It's it's. I've never seen so much team spirit like this one on Execration. You you've got the void. You've got the earth. One of them's an off lane. They both want a lot of levels. They both kind of want a lot of items. Uh, and there's a Dusa in the mix as well. I mean, the lanes are going to be strong out from Execration, but yeah. Is there any backup nice plan? Set. Mm, it doesn't feel like it. I mean, you're kind of all in on just scaling on Palos, but your core-to-core -core matchup against the Nago we've just seen, and in general, it's 
not the prettiest for Dusa unless you have an item advantage, which you won't against a Naga because she just clears out camps, clears out lanes a lot faster. What are you laughing about? Tino says he misses Yopaj. All right. Aww. Old teammates from old Boom before Boom started the DPC, of course, but that was some time ago now. Miss oh, each other. Poi, Poi. I've, I've, heard, I've, seen, I've heard a lot of different nicknames. Yopaj, Japoi, Poi. Yeah, Japoi is his real name. The Filipinos have a tendency to cut off your name, right? So right. Nathan becomes Na Nate, Nat. Um, uh, Japoi becomes Poi. Basically just Poi. What, no is, what does John become? Ja. <laughs> just John. Just John. <laughs> just that John. that can't be cut any That's short. short enough already. I see. I see how it is. Sometimes it just becomes John John. I don't know why. Uh, you double down on yeah, it. They add it. Yeah, like June becomes Jun Jun for some reason. Uh, would yeah. they ever say Poi Poi? I guess his parents could, but I don't think they do. Oh, the interesting. Begins. How much do you know about his parents? I met his parents. <laughs> really? We've hung out. We, I've gone oh. to his home after dinner one time. We just kind of hung out. He was like, hey, my parents actually want to meet you. I'm like, are you real? That's pretty cool. So I did, and his parents are very lovely people. Did they, they watch know? the games. Really? They watched, they the, watched game? the game? That's incredible. I'm always... Uh, I'm always uh, uh, it's always nice when the players' uh, parents watch the games, right? There's always those stories. Mama Moo, Mama yeah. Connor is another yeah. one out from NA, and a lot of the NA. Many ones, so always very PMA. Very yeah. cool stuff. Very, very cool stuff. And what's cool is watching these lanes break out as very well. Very true. Taking Good a peek transition. up top. I'm an expert at this, Richie. I'm stuck with Michael Phoenix. You've got to transition somewhere. <laughs> they are jumping onto Zephyr he's, early, he's Fry Lane. dead. Denied? No. Good effort. FBZ was winding up the auto attack, but even with the double gauntlets of strength, he was never going to really get in there enough. Early enough, and yeah, easy enough, right? I think that's going to be a big strength. These these laners, this this techies, this Veno, I mean, they do a lot of the same things, don't they? Lots of slows, lots of damage, uh, and do a lot to win the early laning stage for their cores. Yeah, they just run down, and that is a good look for X Christian early on, having this angle for the techies to come in. Uh, get that kill, head back bot for Shanks through the gate, and start applying pressure down here as well. Natsumi should still be able to farm fairly well. Uh, X Nova should be able to cover his bases, get the pull toss out every single time, with a D Ward coming out now as well. But you have to respect the control. Yeah, and the yeah, damage. Okay. Blood Grenade does connect onto Natsumi down bottom, but they will not go. Oh, they don't need to go dive in onto tower. Shanks had the kill. The damage, it's immense. The circlet and the three GG branches, that's nearly 60 damage already. Uh, universal hero type. Wow. Yeah, techies in lane, big right click range, big damage on his belt, and just dominates. That's why this hero is a top priority ban. Execration, we talked about the strengths of this draft, Richie. It's in the laning phase, and it's certainly shining here. Every lane feeling like Execration's finding what they want early on. For the side, for the side of Boom, it feels like they're just going to have to take a step back, mitigate some losses, get what they can. Your shining lane really is probably just Yopaj's lane up against Bob. He is in a pretty good lead, and this is sort of to be expected for the Ember. I am keen to see whether or not Zephyr. anyone can play on top of that. Yeah, I mean, certainly not Zephyr. He's going to have a really rough time here uh, on the uh, on the Disruptor. Uh, just casted a game with Winter where we saw a Disruptor take yep. another level one Thunderstrike. He said it was usually in these kinds of lanes that are a little bit too oppressive, where you're not going to realistically be able to use, uh, you know, uh, the Glimpse or Kinetic Field to do much. but. Still seems like he's still being easily out-traded by Carlo as he does throw the blood grenade top. That's a lot of damage here onto this Veno. Shouldn't be enough for the kill, but this is going to force out that last little bit of his regen. Yeah, at least you're getting a little bit of space out for FBZ to farm up. He is a little bit behind in comparison to Palos, and Palos is just not being pressured at all. Like, you're arranged here up against a Doom matchup. You're not going to be run down anytime soon. You just apply free harassment. The Mystic Snake always hurts Doom. So you're, again, you're finding this strong start for execration coming out from the lanes outside of the mid, where Yopanch, again, is just dominating Bob. He's on his comfort ember. Yeah, boom, really clean, by the way, on that three-minute timings. Both lanes pushed out far enough such that both supports are easily able to get the first couple of uh, Lotuses here. So one's in the Naga, and Zephyr is holding on to the other. That actually might keep him alive in the lane here. Ah, well, he's fighting already versus Carlo. This could be... No, it shouldn't be another death. He'll be A-OK. -okay. Right? I'm gonna try and fight through this. Does he win this in duel? He's gonna get his move speed back now. Carlo consumes the mango, has a blood grenade, fairy fire, and two stick charges, three stick That's charges on the healing stuff. lotus. Here they go, off to the races. Who's gonna win? Blood grenade thrown down the second gale, and yeah, it's the Venno. <laughs> That's that's an interesting trade for Sephir to force out, and Carlo has really high right click. Remember, also a universal hero Radiant type on that Venomancer, so the stat padding does do a lot. 
Carlos is going to be able to yeah, just take take the watcher, take yeah. the wake. He's, he's going to try and deny himself, I, I reckon. Yeah, there shouldn't be any problems. I don't think Yopaj is going to move out of the lane to snipe. Nope. He's not interested whatsoever. A lot of attacks there, and it's uh, barely any goals to everyone. Back down bottom, though. I think we still have a boulder smash, don't we? Indeed we do. The slow does hit Natsumi. Another blood grenade here. It's not going to be nearly enough. Actually, it's, I believe, a grenade onto Tino. Whose grenade was that? Who threw that? I believe that should have been X Nova's onto uh. Tino. But maybe falling a little bit flat on the connection. It is, it is a little bit rocky for Boom right now. But Execration, again, understanding the strengths of her lineup, just constantly looking for these pokes and prods, constantly looking to force a response out from the side of Boom. And for Boom, Honestly, it does feel like they can get to press it themselves, but they're not finding angles here. Oh, Rolling Boulder is going to miss out from Tino. Has the Vanguard delivered? Uh, so he's at really no huge threat of dying here, unless, like, the Ember makes a rotation. But right now, Ember is still getting really quite heavily harassed in this mid lane. Uh, always important to do this right before you hit level 6, right? Because then he just has the free bottle home and leaves the remnant, and it just feels like a big old waste of time. Yep, just uh, suppress Yopaj as much as possible. He's had a pretty free time on mid, but... Now, with that kind of movement out, his EXP, it, it's equalized with Bob just having to share that lane for a moment. In fact, a slight lead for Bob into that six timing. About to hit the minute six Radiant rune as well here, standing. speaking of six. First power rune of the game uh, with three spirits in the game. I expect to see a lot of contests here uh, with people, yeah, mid supports make that already starting to rotate over and get into position to, to jostle over here. Just get some contestion out. Should be... I feel like the rotation of boom supports is a little bit stronger. It's a little bit more control, but you have to respect the techies and the Venom's yeah. output. It's a yeah. lot of damage if they connect. Hard to run from these guys. Rune spawns top. It's an invis rune, and you can see Zephyr reliving his laning trauma. As Carlo gets on top of them. They're going to look for this, actually. Double Astral Step committed here, and Zephyr is going to be taken down quite easily here. Nova will rotate back down bottom chasing Shanks, but is not going to be able to set up onto a kill. And it's the first power rune, Invis, for Bob. Yep. What's your favorite power rune here, John, in the game? Oh, it depends, right, at what point in game. Invis can lead to some kills. I feel like Haste is better as a first. Oh, no, no, you can't ride the fence. This is like your horoscope, you know? What? What is your favorite rune? Favorite rune? Uh, well, maybe after X Nova dies. Ah, oh, he's going to die, John. Yeah, right, There's the dead. right clicks. Carlos here as well. They're going to hit the Sticky Bomb. Now, there's no mirror image, but I don't believe these three heroes can go diving even with that Vanguard. All right, now you've had time to think. Which one is it? I, li I like the Shield Rune. Okay. I'll, I'll be... Oh, it's, it's a little bit weird to say. Bit of it's, a zoomer. It's a, it's a weird one because it's defensive and offensive, but I like its scaling. I think okay. it's a... It's fun to have. It's fun to watch the enemy heroes like, why isn't he dying? It's like, because eh, I got a Shield Rune, buddy. It's a good okay. rune. Okay. Shield Rune is your favorite. Not yeah. sure what that says about you as a person. I feel I like that's like uh, some Dota BuzzFeed quiz, you know, some yeah, personality. Yeah. What your favorite power rune tells you tells about, you yourself. about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I certainly don't want to find out, Richie. Mm -hmm. I do not want to know much about myself. Oh, that's why you got the shield rune for that, buddy. Uh, exactly. It protect me from myself as well. <laughs> as Execration, they don't need protecting this game. One to six, 2K start for their advantage, and they're working the map well. Well, Yopaj does have his six up. <laughs> chugging along. We've, we've got to see some aggression come out from Boom with Yopaj. Like, he's already got the Orb Corrosion up. He's going into phase boots. He needs to make some space in the map because you've you've sc you've got a Doom Naga, which, again, it scales pretty nicely. It doesn't feel like Execration has a response for it, or a very clean response at least, but mm. you've got to enable them Radiant's to farm. And so far, Natsumi's had a little bit of a slower lane. We've also seen a little bit of some issues out for FBZ. He's not able to stop Palos at all. Bob's nope. going to try and steal it. He's got a haste rune, right? But he was picked up by the ward. And then he quickly realized this Doom has a vanguard. I don't know if I kill him. It's kind of the thing about these offlane items being so strong early on, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Hey, what are you supposed to do? Damn. Well, if you're Bob, uh, the goal is to not die here. The doom is a bit scary and does not have the point in six, by the way. I see He's got three, three, zero builds here. I, this is the kind of build you go for if you're trying to go greedy. You know, you're just trying to look for farm. You're understanding that you're not the, you're not going to be the key point in these fights. So Boom already has that understanding that again they want to hit this later game timing. They want to just keep farming up as much as they can, and ride momentum elsewhere. Yeah. 
these phase boots from Yopage have to, be, have to be the launching point. Like, you've got to connect somewhere. You've got to make some play. Because right now, you're not even finding network advantage in comparison to the Dusa. Yeah, but we'll get online soon enough. For now, it's SPZ who's going to be able to claim the stack for himself. Well, with his mana boots online. We'll see if that gets him a bit more active. Yopaj chasing down Carlo in the jungle. And still, Palos has something to say about it. Let's find a remnant out to seize Yopaj to safety. There's the haste rune active, though, for Bob. Yopaj a bit lower on the mana. Gets his last remnant out. It's a bit slow. Bob thinking about whether or not he wants to give chase and will decide against it, considering that Yopaj still had a bottle sip or two to keep him healed. Yeah. Just Doom top. On the Palos, a couple TPs coming in now. That's the offlaner as well. With the glimpse not going to be good enough. Great boulder smash onto two is going to connect the slow and spread that magnetize. As now FBZ is going to be caught yet again. Magnetize refreshed. Shanks as well with the initiation. FBZ just going to get a Lotus at least, but is going to fall all the same. Yep. Good punishment out from Execration. That's Doom down. Oh, that's a nice double chains out from Yopash to not even get Yark in, fortunately. Yeah, Bob's going to get it instead. It's uh, activated immediately. He's going to try and fight through this one. Yopaj uh, can hold his own here, maybe even go for the kill. There's no points in Disemulate here. Oh, he's got the shield in a second, and now another Astral Stab, as perhaps now it's Yopaj who's stuck around a bit too long. No, certainly not, right? As I say, he's got a remnant. He's going to pick up the kill, and he's going to get out with Stop. Bob, to jump in. This, is, this seems like a bit too much from him. Remnant oh, oh. just off the mark, and now here comes the punish. The Stomp's going to miss. Zephyr has level two glimpse, just needs the vision, and will find it now. No point to Disemulate still, of course, for Bob, but he Astral Stabs himself back downhill to safety to safety unbelievable yeah, on the edge you do manage to find a nice pick off on yopaj but bob not being punished you're not finding the bigger kill that you'd really want here on any of these cores and I, I i'm not sure if this is really enough space to have you be happy with your naga granted natsumi has managed to catch up to palace palace's farm just a bit more you're getting space out for FBZ to still play that jungle, even without getting like the most aggression out from Yopaj. So there are certain things you should be happy about here on Boom. Overall, it does feel like Execration still in control of the game. Like they've got pretty much all their timings lined up. Like this build up on Tino, it's gonna be really hard to pin down the Earth Spirit, the durability he's bring out for the team. You've got the Yasha already up for Palos, so he doesn't have the HP, but he's got some good right flicks going on. Once the Mantis up, you kind of do cover your bases there with the HP. Full Octarine actually just finished up by Tino with a disassembly play. So he, he is pretty set to just keep rolling. Yeah. So uh, Octarine, no brown boots. I think we've seen this before. Was it mid one that did this from the mid lane, I believe, in the SMG series? I believe so. Yeah, so we've seen how powerful this can be. That's a DD rune in the river. And it's uh, a rune that Carlos going to quickly deny. Quick remnant out before the Aether remnant catches Yopage. It's going to be confusing. Lots of remnants. Yeah. Lots of remnants in I, this game. Each spirit has one except Earth Spirit, but he has his stone. He's got, he's got his remnants. Stone remnants, but he doesn't use the, you know, the remnants don't do the thing, you go into the remnant to do Earth the thing. Spirit player not detected right here. Yeah, I'm not. Here. I'm not. You, you use the heck out of those things. No, I mean, you know, it's not like, it's not the same as like Ember's remnant where you activate into it or Storm's remnant, right? You roll into right. your thing, you All kick scary. your thing. But you, you pull it back. You yeah, use you it, pull you it use back. You use it with magnetize to spread your yeah, debuffs but the, to everyone. The stone itself doesn't do anything if you don't interact with it. Well, Radiance, so that's the same tower. thing with it's all the remnants, attack. Jonathan. No, but they, I'm saying if you, you, you put drop... them up, and if you leave no. them, the remnant on the ground. Yeah, no, but if they do something by themselves. Like you don't need to activate them. You don't if need to interact the with them. If the remnant falls in the woods, does it make a noise? Ah, that's, that's true. It, it, well. Yeah. If a if a if a flame, what are these called? Fire remnant is is just thrown onto the ground. What does it do? It does nothing. It just stands there. He's being chilling. Being chilling. Is. Do you reckon we deserve a frosty spirit brother? Nah, we're fine with Tower. Oh, would that be interesting? I don't think so. I think with Void, we're all out. They'd right. have to they'd have to make another attribute type, don't you think? What would that be? Ice? I think you you put you put Move Made into that category. The new Frost Spirit Lich. What are we AA? Pokemon? We've got some random ass yeah. elements in now as a I mean, attribute. That, that's that'd be a dark future. Call that shit Ghastly. <laughs> Uh, Execration and control pushing on to oh, the, the middle lane now. Oh. All right, they've managed to find actually X Nova. Yopaj is out of this one. He's going to go home and regen up a bit. But Tino, he's just started a second roll on in the glimpse, but they've already kept Zephyr, uh, Zephyr out of position. Pardon me. 
And it's going to end up being two supports dead and likely a mid tower taken here in favor of Execration. Just no fight coming out from Boom. They're just not ready. You're not going to be dragging in Natsumi anytime soon with the song. You're not dragging in FDZ anytime soon without this blink. So you just run down. Again, you've got that early tempo with Execration Strap. They are executing to it as you'd want them to. I like seeing this, yeah. I like seeing as well, uh, Paulos, you know, aggressive and fighting with the team early on, right? Even just him standing there, using the man solutions to tank tower, I think it makes a bit of a difference. And we'll see now, I don't think Gilpaz is ready to fight this many heroes. Stone Gaze, they're holding onto that one as they do sleep Paulos. They also catch the Venomancer as well, but in goes... That is you know, a lot of hate. He's going to be doomed up, but X Nova, yeah, he's going to be killed just as easily. Kinetic Field, Static Storm Combo not doing a whole lot as they cancel the TP of FBZ. As they even catch him with the 8th, the Remnant Song of the Siren here to try and reset the fight. FBZ's ticking down to the poison, but not fast enough. He will oh. make it out alive. What? That's an aggressive roll from behind the tower. Tino trying to punish there. He's got two tower shots after him. Is he going to live? The Pavis keeps Keeps him alive. Yopaj jumps in after him, only finds Shanks and now Carlo. But Execration on a knife's edge here constantly. Yeah, but I have to say, Boom is just not executing in a straightforward manner at all. They drop the Static Storm, they drop the Doom during the Static Storm. They're not able to follow through. It's, it's messy coming up from Boom. I think Execration, they played out a little bit hot and loose as well, but it pays off for them. They waste a lot of spells out from Boom. Execration now have more room to breathe, not to worry about all of this control coming out from Boom. And for Boom, it's still the same story. You set back, you farm up a Natsumi as best you can, you farm up on FBZ, but we're just not seeing any activity from anyone. Not even Yopaj is able to do much here. It's just I mean, passive. It's got to change soon, right? Because here come a couple of really big items for Execration. You just saw those three really big ones. Bob has a, a fresh Echo Saber in the mid lane, which we've just seen. That's Medusa now with a very well-timed Diffusal Blade. Uh, and also a, a Shanks Techies mechanism is not an inconsequential pickup either. Radiance we've seen how tanky uh, this hero can be. And with his damage output, it, it's not really a hero you can afford to ignore very much in these fights either. Yeah, but how do you jump it? I mean, for the most part, Shanks has been staying in the shadows, playing very smartly with his utility, getting the stuns off when need be, but normally just playing the back line when he can. I don't think Boom has the best solutions to jump in outside of Yopaj, who again, he's, he's played a lot slower. To be fair, his network is bottom across all the cores, but... Could this be a game where X Nova has to channel his inner DJ and, and play a little bit more like the, the ET we just saw in our previous series? Could I mean, that be a solution yeah. here? And to be fair, you had a much stronger start coming out there from DJ. Very true. You have that same launching point for X Nova. Very true. So you're not going to be able to ramp up at that point anytime soon here on that ET. Execration. I, I think they've just managed to do a great job of applying this pressure on Boom. It just feels like Boom doesn't know how to respond. And they just default to farming, which again, this lineup does like, but you're giving up so much map space. Like, this is free room for Palos to just push. This is a Dusa who isn't even like at the point where you join in to these fights. Right. You know, this hero isn't safe with just the Yasha, the Manta up with the defusal. Feels like the Nagasaurian should meet that same timing. She should be the one with the Manta defusal, but Natsumi's just not there. Certainly, there's there must be a point here, though. I mean, you have Song into Disruptor ulti. Like, that's a, a, a tale as old as time. You follow it up with an Earth Splitter, you're looking at percentage-based damage yeah. that scales, you know? I'm just... It hasn't come together for Boom. I'm not, I'm not really sure why that could be, but we'll see if that continues to change. You know, you talk about Boom, you talk about Execration, and it's a team, again, perhaps a bit surprisingly on the uh, on the climb and one on the decline here, as X Nova is, I mean, he is minced meat right there. He's not going anywhere. There is tranquility in death. It's, I mean, this is a much sharper look coming out from Execration. It is. I feel like, I feel like this is the Execration I was expecting to see in week one. This which is very clean even for Execration. Yes, I was, right? I mean, I'm impressed by this play, don't get me wrong, but I was also expecting them to, to not be, what are they, 0-2 now, aren't yep. they? Yeah. They, you don't expect them to start that badly. No, but certainly not. I think the same thing goes for my expectations from Boom, right? Like, you know, maybe Radiant's Div 2 opponents are just lower quality top. overall, you know, not in the same level as Div 1 at the same time. 14-0, you know? That's like, these players are all like, big players. They should know what they're doing. They should be able to connect as a team, but it feels like that formula that equation is still out of balance, Rich. And I just, I'm so shocked. I guess it's really credit to Tino because he's been making a lot happen here. Uh, wow, okay.
Okay, I mean, Natsumi just deleted Bob very casually there. Basically just the duration of one mirror image and uh, ensnare. And he was down for the count. That's not even a max ensnare. So maybe there's still a little bit left in this boom lineup that we've yet to really see come together. But I've been impressed with basically how much it, I felt like x creation had been getting away with here. Yep. And I use that word because you're playing a game of Naga Siren and Ember Spirit against a support duo that has, I mean, I, I guess a stun, because Blast Off is a stun, but, you know, compared to, like, Hexes or Disruptions, yeah. it's not really, like, nah. something you really expect to see an Ember struggle this much against. Damn it, Yopaj has been struggling. His mid lane, his mid lane matchup against Bob again Radiant went fairly Oscar. evenly, I think, slightly for Yopaj there until the support started soaking mid, which took away that level 6 timing for Yopaj. But it should be a game where he's just zipping around, finding kills, you know, like classic Yopaj from... Obi Neon from, from Old Moon. Okay, will be BKB. It has not enough mana Use for Doom. Uh, could have used a, a wand to charge if he wanted to, or the Midas as you said. That's a big kill, though. They, they catch Tino down Radiant's bottom. It did take three top. heroes and uh, all of Natsumi's army, but, but that is a serious kill here. Mid lane, Yopaj also, uh, I guess it's Bob really who tries to jump Yopaj. It's an illusion rune. Yopaj will claim that one, unless the Prospector kills it. No, okay. Nice little tick, big kill to find on Tino. So they are doing a great job of boom now to drag attention away. It feels like we're a little bit too focused in on FBZ up top, uh, ignoring Tino down bot, not having any support for him. And that cleanup is a massive gold swing for the side of boom. Equalizes the game quite a fair bit. Um, not enough for them to be in the lead, but it gives some momentum back. And now we're seeing that aggression. Now we're seeing a smoke out from boom. They're on the hunt. 1k gold swing right there, you know, minus uh, 250 for the Air Spirit and 800 plus uh, for Boom. As uh, careful here. Execration find themselves in a little bit of an awkward spot. They want to try to hold this part of the map for the Wisdom Ruins, but Boom are keen as well to make them fight for it. Nice uh, stomp there is at least going to stop Execration from chasing back into the triangle, but Palace has already started up the Tormentor here. And that's going to be at least Bob collecting. Sorry, make that Natsumi on the opposite side of the map collecting a Wisdom Room for themselves. The next creation will be able to secure themselves at least one Tormentor here. Yeah, man, it's a big shard to take as well. Latent Toxicity is mm. pretty damn annoying to play into overall. Uh, I think that's that's probably one of the more busted shards to pick up early on. It's a good one as well, right, versus Naga Siren. Because yeah. it's, I mean, you, you want to use this to spell, but I think as soon as you come out, you're going to be stunned. And that's yeah. going to be one way to identify the real Naga real quick. It's going to make it a lot easier to manage that Naga for sure. The side of Boom. Again, they're, they're not in the worst position in the world. The map does feel a lot smaller, but they equalized. Uh, all sides kind of missing their tier ones now. And this is the point where it's back to stall. If Boom can just stall to hit these item timings on Natsumi, I mean, he's got the heart up. He does, he's big. And now this is where your core to core for Palace feels awkward. Yeah, yes, you've got the butterfly, you've got some right click, but can you really clear out Naga Illusions? When they're running you down, when they're trying to get your mana away, it doesn't feel like it's going to be the easiest job for Deduce. And we've seen that Deuce a struggle against the Illusions before. We have. See, I mean, this is a particularly strong Deuce of Star, but as you say, not soon, quickly catching up in terms of farm and FBZ, that Midas Devour Gold is really starting to stack up. For now, though, it's still Execration making the aggressive oh. move. You know, just misses there on the rolling boulder. On the back lines, though, Exonova does get able to drop that Earth Splitter. I hear a Doom as well. That is going to be for Tino, FBZ, and Yopash now running him down, but Paulus keeping him protected here with the Stone Gaze. They're going to be able to turn this one for now. Not soon, showing up to the fight to fight as well as Bob it is going to be trapped now by the Ensnare. Little host stop there is going to seal the deal. Nice stun onto two out from Shanks, but where's the follow-up damage here? The support's really starting to pump it out. They cannot cancel the TP through the Song of the Siren. So it looks like Boom are getting away scot-free for this one, taking down two cores for their trouble. They're not done. They don't get the Dusa. They will get potentially four of her teammates here. Shanks falling quickly. Yopaj is going to have a BKB after this fight as well. Gets the double kill in style off that nice little slide of fist, and it's a four for nothing. And that's, that's what we're looking for from Boom, you know, the connections, the team fight potential their lineup has. And that wasn't even the cleanest execution from Boom, as they kind of missed the Static Storm. They had to pop Boom, oh, but no, this right? could be a big one. I mean, I guess there are three heroes here, four, actually. 
Patino is respawning. The rest of Execration as well. They're going to buy back here. One of the supports on Sumi's out of mana. Palos is still alive. If Boom get out of here for free, oh, they won't. They do catch Natsumi, who does not have Song. The stuns are starting to really stack up now. Out comes the Magnetize. A oh big boy. stun, but he's going to do a lot of damage as well. And they're not Natsumi. That's a thousand gold right back towards Execration. You talked about not the cleanest. That's yeah, uh, definitely not clean. Oh, Zephyr just out in the nick of time there as Tino trying to cancel the TP with a rolling bolt. You don't always get to TP in front of an Earth Spirit. No, it's a, it's a little bit hard to pull off, but the timing kicks in for Boom. They overextend on that move, you know, like they, do. they don't respect the respawns coming out from Execration. They feel like they can kill this Naga fast enough. While the EHP you are getting from Butterfly is more than enough to survive through from the Naga Illusions. Yeah, Paulus is big. I mean, the, the, the heart's just not enough. No, it's not I, enough. I think the evasion's really what ends up making the difference there, I believe. That and, of course, not having any ultis to fight. Yep. but just didn't have it. How much is it going to cost? Is it going to cost him a Rose jump? It does look like it. They've got the output on the side of Execration uh, to kind of get this done. Not like the snappiest Rosh, but it's very consistent. Not bad with the Solar Crest either. Yeah, you don't have Doom up. You're not in position from Boom to nope. jump in. They did draw lines. Doombosh might scout it out, but Songs you would board. jump in there. I mean, he's got BKB, they've got Earth Splitter and Echo Stone. A lot of really nice things that could make a really nice recipe, but not if you never get to put it together. Good ward as well here out from Boom. Execration are simply attack. going to... Oh, a little cheeky Echo Stomp there, just to annoy them. Why not? Oh, who's this? Oh, it's Yopaj. It's getting a bit aggressive. Still has his own BKP. Oh, Kano's oh. going to miss the roll on out. Yopaj fighting with a ward here. Would really like to avoid popping his BKB and does as he safely gets the remnant away. Backs off in the nick of time, trying to get that play out by himself. Uh, at the least, waste some time on the initial Aegis pickup, so not really able to group up immediately and now boom has the information as to where execration is they get one catch at least yeah not bad it's uh something here the, the denomancer left behind the banana mancer yeah not the biggest kill but a kill you'll be happy about on boom as well and this could be something bad it could be i'm not sure how natsumi ended up here but caught by two heroes looking for the tp out with nothing to cancel it'll get out safe and sound that is no song though for another two minutes not sure how keen Boom are to fight within the next two minutes, to be honest, but uh, not having that safety tool for you. You know, Song is a little bit like that uh, breaking case of uh, emergency. Yeah, it certainly is. And I think what it means is you likely want Natsumi to farm safer. Everyone else can still take this fight, but it is at massive risk. And we have to see stronger connections out from Boom. You know, clip more heroes in your Static Storm. Try to maximize your Doom timing here in FBZ. Stack your stuns properly. Okay. Give that proper spacing. There are in here. Good luck blinking away from this guy. FBZ has BKB and TP if he wants to use it. The stuns are pretty good. The damage is uh, efficient. Uh. And even with that hoof stomp, I don't believe he gets out of here. No, he does not. DD rune, a bit fortuitous maybe for Bob, but he puts it to good use. That's a big waste from FBZ. That's his dude. Uh, that's his uh, dude. Yeah. Now you don't TP away from Tino. The glimpse, not bad. But, uh, I mean, Tino basically has... I mean, he's actually out of remnants, to be honest. Fair enough. Doesn't matter. I mean, there's still all the follow-up that they need. Execration. They don't find too much luck on the bot side of the map, other than killing Roche. But up top, it's good hunting for them. Yeah, they managed to get a couple of uh, softer targets, FBZ. The bigger kill, of course, on that Doom. Popping his BKB, not really able to do much with it. He went to back off on Boom's end. Again, they're still trying to play this greedy Radiant's draft, trying to get farm on pretty much every core, and avoiding really big engagements, especially into the Aegis, which is understandable. Can't really deal with the two lives all too well. It does feel like they're going to commit pretty hard. You know what these Deusa timings kind of remind me of? Yeah. Of, of a really old build on Deusa that was much different than this in a vastly different meta. I think it was even before 7.0 dropped. Yeah. Remember when Deuces would go like third item rapier? And yeah. they would try and end the game with that? Yeah. I feel like the way that Execration is playing this, because they want to avoid this timing where they cannot deal with these Naga illusions, this kind of a build may have behoove from that kind of a meta. Unfortunately, not the case here for Palos, and he's being torn apart by these illusions now. Out of mana, he will die quickly. Any four staffs? Any four staffs? Oh. Nope, definitely not. So, Execration, we'll see how this kind of initiation is going to look like for them as they immediately set up plenty. Three hit by the Earth, put the Doom as well. Onto Palos, preventing the Stone Gaze from coming through. They're going to feed her a Lotus or oh, two, God. but not nearly enough. She goes down. Execration now dropping like flies. That's four supports down. They also find Bob there with the Glimpse. He's keen to fight, though. The Techies Mind's going off one by one. 
But the heroes still all dying on the side of Execration as it's a 4-5 if you include the Aegis for nothing. Trade there, Jonathan. What the heck happened? Uh, they catch Potos a little bit too far forward. He's a bit too confident in how durable he is. He can't clear out the Naga Illusions now with a full butterfly up on Atsumi. And they're just allowed to let it rip. It's like a Radiant bit of a Beyblade Boston. show down there, just right-clicking down on all these heroes. and. You don't have the AOE clear to oh. deal with Naga at this point. Check out these cooldowns, by the way, on Tino. Very nice cooldowns. Oh, he is just everywhere. Yopaj? Oh, no. They just missed each other. That's like when you go through the revolving door, you know? And you're trying to catch the, the person, and, and they go through the revolving door, and you just miss them. Zephyr has vision for the glimpse. In trouble is going to be FBZ. War Stomp use. You know, you can roll out of that. And I think he ended up on the outside. He's, he's just rolling. You can't stop him from rolling unless you just perma stun him. This then you can. A little bit too much. I mean, that is, that's just comical. That is pretty dumb. He gathered a lot of moss there. Yeah, that he did. He, he burned out in that one spot. Could not roll. No, but four seconds cool down the rolling boulder. That's pretty dumb with the arcane. That was like uh, as many burnouts as Dominic Toretto does in Fast X. Now in theaters. We're not sponsored, by the way. What a film. Um, what a film. One of the films of all time, I believe. <laughs> one of the most films. One of the most films of, of all, all time. time. This summer. This summer. Now Absolutely. out. Have you even watched any of the... Dude, Fast Nine Recent is, is ridiculous. I got it. Did you actually you. watch it? I, I watched it. I don't understand half of what happened. It's, Why? Uh, I was also surprised. How can a, <laughs> how can a car do such things? I think like, the, my favorite thing is when like they drive a car off a cliff and then I think Dominic yeah, it, no, that was, like, grabs the cable. Yeah, he impales the cable and it's like, that doesn't it, work. the car and then the car like explodes and does a million rolls and everything in the car is Dumb. ruined. Awesome. Anyone in there would have been turned into yeah, the car much. Bolognese. Yeah. And then they just get out as if nothing. And they're, oh, I'm fine now. I mean, it's just as impossible as uh, you love them. As uh, Boom kind of not hitting their timings now, right? Like they're, they're oh, 5k off. Very good, very good. Yeah, I find ways, I find ways. I mean, Execration can make a comeback here if you get this Deuce level 25. The problem here becomes exactly this, Jonathan. If you keep getting caught out like this with Yopash now on a godlike streak, but not Sumi feeling all but unkillable, this gem of true sight, you know, the map control. Dusa just, she needs access to farm. I think she gets this level 25 talent. There's still a case to be made here for the side of Execration, but it yeah. is certainly going to be dark and gloomy until then. We're a long way away from level 25, so that's that's one issue. Until Execration starts finding finding some kills themselves, then it's a, it's going to be a slow uh -oh. process to hit that 20, 25. Ooh. They are going to look to set up here. Do they have the Earth Splitter in range? They don't, actually. Static Storm. And neither a Stomp. They still have the Static Storm. And the damage is sufficient. Oh. Look at that. The Doom oh. of Melting. Tino unable to get away as well. They continue to block his rolls. That is two heroes dead too quickly. Much like a... I don't know. It's <laughs> gonna try and make another fast too, period. Too, too dead too quickly? Too, too dead too quick. Too fast too furious? Much like how they all of a sudden bring back the guy who died in Tokyo Drift 2 spoilers for Fast 9. Ah, you know, Tokyo Drift is my favorite too, but I feel weird about that one. Carlo, in trouble. Oh, he is just dead. Is this game over? It feels like it. Again, they, Execration had this really early timing that they could have executed on, and then they just play the farming game as well, where Boom also is allowed to play the farming game. They don't manage to pierce high ground. These timing lineups, it's, I mean, if you're going to go high ground, you better have better push than Medusa. Yeah, it was just solo Medusa. That's the issue, right? Like, she had Aegis, but you're in a tight spot. You're up front without any of your team there to back you up. We didn't see any four stabs. There, there are no four stabs yeah, no on hand. no four stabs. No saves either. No saves. Right? They, they can't dispel. Outside of the Pavis, that's not enough. That, that's lineup. not enough. I mean, that's not relevant for Dusa, quite frankly. No. She, she needs something to allow her to get off stone gaze in fights. And if that's not happening, then you're not winning these fights, I think. I don't know. I don't. Even, I think even the Divine Rapier build I was spitballing uh, of, of the Yonder days, uh, years even. I don't even think that works. Going on to Nistino. We'll see what he can find. Finds himself an ex Nova rolling around. But of course, he's got all of the stone remnants to play with. Century Ward up. Ex Nova. Certain, certainly they see him. Okay, they do. Juke again. And, That's uh, everything juke. Well, let's see. He's got another glimmer, but he's kicked back into range of the Century, and they'll pick him up. Yes. High side step there from X Nova. I believe it was for four rolls in a row. I believe that's what they say. Space created. A lot of space created here for the side of Boom. Had that uh, Tino running around him like a like a bull, didn't he? Yeah, definitely did. It reminded me of a it looked like a Fast and Furious car chase. Yeah, that it did. Yeah, that very did. topical. 
there. Are you actually um, going to watch X? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it was kind of fun. I mean, the movies are, they're just so ridiculous. It's, it's been a while since they've made action I mean, movies that are just that self-aware. Yeah, you, you see, like, you can have a really over-the-top action film, but still sell it. Like, I think Mission Impossible is exactly that. And this is the exact opposite, where it's super camp. Look, I, I agree. I love the campiness, though. The, the moment that they're like, yeah, they're they're in saddle, you know, we have to shut down the satellite, man. What are we going to do? Drive a car in space? And then Dominic Toretto looks at the camera and says, yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. I mean, that's just, yeah, that's just comedy right it's, there. It's comedy. It's comedy. How could you not? And and this is definitely not comedic for execration. No, a very no. different story in play here is the director, the script being read. They're getting there. I mean, no, they're not. That's the problem is that Juice has been shut out of, of her XP source. She needs to, like, continue fighting and farming around Tino. Tino as well. I mean, he's picked up now at least this plate mount to try and make him a bit more survivable. There's a Daedalus you now on Bob. I think I know the build. Okay. Go Ags on the Earth Spirit. Have the safer to do so. Pull her back as a stone. Reset, kick her back in, or something? Uh, I think you can... This shard works very strangely. The geomagnetic grip as well, right? Because maybe you don't need Ag. Maybe you can just grip her out of kinetic field. I don't know, if you, I don't know if you can do that, though. Because I used to think you could grip people out of everything back when this used to just be built into the hero. Mm -hmm. When this hero was Omega Bonkers, back when Boulder Smash was the stun. Yeah, yeah. And you could literally stun and silence an entire team. Yeah. Ridiculous hero this guy used Absolutely. to be. Absolutely. But I think um, the amount of things that you can pull out of with Geomagnetic Grip is not as big as I used to think. I used to think no. you could grip out of uh, Lasso. Not the case. No. Cannot grip out of Lasso. So I don't know if Kinetic Field is also going to apply its movement speed slow slash stop shenanigans. Yeah. I have no idea how it works, but Ags could be a choice. The issue is the cast range is kind of pathetic. It is. I think uh, why I want the Ags is really just a, it's a save. It is. To extent, like you, you just put an invulnerability state on I mean, the Deucer for a while. The problem is, Jonathan, like, who's who else is going to do it? Veno? Is your Veno support going to build a save? No. Is your techie support going to no. do it? Like, I get what you're saying. I get it, man. It just doesn't feel the best. Not a lot of moves to make here. For Boom, again, they're just chilling for a while. Uh, the Snaga Siren has picked up a BKB. Sitting on 6k in the bank is not to me. You'll pass as well with a BKB. Ooh. They found a tube. That's just a perfect target. The grip is not going to save him. Even if they do kick him further, guess who's chasing? It's Japoy. In he goes. Ooh, just a little bit more damage needed for the Void Spirit. I think he ticks down to Doom. Indeed, he does. Stone Gaze is utilized with the Echo Stomp actually managing to catch the Juice oh, and refresh, the Refresh. Doom. Oh, Palos, he's in for it now. Shanks can do nothing but watch as he's going to be caught by the Static Storm as well. Fourth limps back into it as Palos. He's starting to do some damage here, but just not nearly enough. Down for 70 seconds is the deuce up. Boom, Esports, double kill there for Natsumi. I mean, if it wasn't clear, he is squarely into control now. Um, he's way ahead, he's doing the damage, and he's got the control. I have to commend how Boom started that fight. FBZ comes in with a really big Doom to start off with, dragging Bob all the way away. And then the chase down from Yopaj is on point, disrupting that entire fight, dancing around, understanding that, again, the Ember has a pretty free game here, especially with the BKB. Yeah. There's nothing to stop the Ember from going around. They just rip the high ground. It's like if they can't kill him in the, or chain stun him between Rolling Boulder, Aether Revenant, and Techie's Blast Off, which is, you know, not the three craziest stuns yeah. in the world, but, but also it sounds a little bit like the start of a Dude Perfect video. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's not happening this no, game. It's, not it's happening. really not happening. Uh, it's like Yopa just winning the quarter mile by <laughs> three seconds. Right. Like, it's like Think you're trying top. to beat Dominic Toretto's what did you have, <laughs> challenger on a unicycle. <laughs> Even if you do have, you know, a 10-second head start, nothing's beaten the power of what's really under that hood. No. It's familia. Yeah, Familia. Familia. La Familia. La Familia. Yes, that's exactly I, I just, I don't see this one. I don't see this one slipping away from Boom, honestly. No. You'd, you'd really need to make some serious mistakes here pushing up high ground now to allow Palo to get 25 to even have a chance. Because again, the lack of save here is really just not making things easy. It's it's not going to get any easier as well. I mean, you've got the full Ags up on X Nova, so AoE, Static Storm, basically oh, yeah. a Doom. That's the good stuff. It's eventually, I'm sure, if the game drags on, although I don't see it dragging on, but you'll also have FBZ Ags up, I'm sure. But probably not even going to reach that point in the game as the second. The Roche is being taken, Execration. Yep. Don't have angles outside. No, I, I mean, they really just have to kind of hope for a high ground is the problem. And, and the problem for them is, I mean, 
you know, the very issue that they're facing now, Nagus Iron and clearing the illusions, is exactly what's going to be the next problem as soon as uh, Boom decide to go high ground, which is going to be very shortly, I assume. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. They, they don't really have the kind of lineup where you can lasso them back into Fountain and kill the Nagus Iron no. that way. She now, by the way, has a Disperser, so she has three, four Dispels, pardon me. I forgot she's got a BKB. Yep. That's a lot of Dispels. You're not going to be able to pin her down. She's going to have the output as well to just deal with the Medusa. We haven't seen any issues in kind of handling Palos here. Double Doom, you've got Cheese, you've got yourself Boots of Baron, you've got a lot of control between this ET and Disruptor. It feels like the support diff right now as well. Yeah, right? In, like, in this kind of like a high ground hold, right? Yeah, right? We, we talked about the Venomancer pickup, just you and I, and when Draft was coming on, and it's like, what oh. attack is it? Just doesn't feel like the best. Well, they've only caught the Dusa, but honestly, do they need it? Oh, okay, okay you rip. can pull right. out of Kinetic Field today, I learned. I wasn't 100% sure. I figured you could get out of that one. I think you can't get out of, um, obviously, Black Hole, because it always just applies the uh, movement. Uh, Lasso works the same, because it also always applies movement. Chrono? Chrono is the same. <laughs> and um, what's the last one? Arena of Mars. Yeah, all right. Although that one's weird, because you can, oh, hold on. Tino? OK, they're, they're eager to go in for it. Now that they know there's no song, they caught Yopash. But again, even if they can catch him, he's got Aegis. Natsumi is caught by. The remnant. Scary. Okay, managed to manta dodge the freaking rolling boulder. Talk about a gamer move. Talk about a dead Palos. You can barely talk about it. He died that quickly. Now they're immediately on to Tino, surrounded and blown up his shanks. Oh, allows Tino to just barely get away. It was a big blast off, but Yo what? For what? Oh, and Yopaj, he's going hunting just off the mark, just off the mark there. I mean, it's a hopeful fight for Execration. I commend them for realizing the dire straits this game is in. They actually nearly get through Natsumi there, but this Dusa just cannot live long enough in these fights. It I just mean, doesn't. She's not finding any space. She's not finding any breathing room at all. Oh, more. Hello. Venom answer. Pulled out of the kinetic field yet again. Tino is a fire, excuse me, he's a firefighter right now on the Earth Spirit. He is, but it's not enough to stop the Meg creeps from coming out. It's a three alarm fire now. And just the eventual push coming out here from Boom. Oh, there's, put, there's damage. There's a buyback off from the Dusa. We need a lot more damage, though. A lot more damage. That's the Permasons. Where the heck is the rest of Boom? I don't know. Oh. But Natsumi is dead. Ex Nova stuck on the high ground, facing the wall like he's in the Blair Witch Project, but is still going to be killed here by the Screaming Witch at the end of this. If not him, certainly Yopash. Tino. No, Tino's Fight actually. Soft? He's fighting. Yopash. Okay, he's one before. He's taken down three. He likes these odds. Continuing now with the BKB still active. He has refreshed on this. Tino giving chase. Actually, managed to catch the stun, but MBZ's in. Ooh. I can do him now onto Tino. He's trapped inside Kinetic Field. There's no way out for him. Paulo's doing a little bit more damage now. As Yopash thought he was going to go back in, but has no mana. Aether Remnant Ooh. just off the mark. He'll be back with full mana and HP. And Jonathan, I don't think they can kill him. Oh, no, and Paulo's. Oh, Ooh, great dodge there on the Manta style. Yeah, but that was a little bit strange coming out from Boom. Yopash on to retreat while Natsumi gets dragged forward, so you don't have the back of backup of the Ember to kind of help you out on the Naga, which stalls out this yep. Tier 4 push. Execration it's hanging on. Stalls out the end of the game by three or four minutes, maybe. Yeah. But ultimately, I, I just still really don't see this I don't coming see back the into the swing. I, maybe if that was a full team wipe and Paulos is, you know, one uh, one uh, Wisdom Rune away, which is about to spawn in, by the way, one Wisdom Rune away from picking up level 25, maybe. maybe. And that's a big maybe. That's a big, big maybe. Oh, goodness, Shanks. Oh, Shanks, get out of there. Ooh, that was close. Uh, I mean, nerves to steal this guy. Didn't even pop the mech or the wand. Uh, knowing that he'd probably get out just on the edge. Oh, FBZ picked up two wisdom. That's how, that's how dominant Boom have been in these last seven minutes. They just kind of let two wisdom oh. stack up. Did I they pick one up before it spawned and pick it up again? Uh, yeah, I think I, I think they both spawned in after. Uh, yeah, because they stack, don't they? they? They'll just stack up like bounces. I don't think they stack up. They just get the EXP that you're not. Oh, picking really? up. Yeah, they, it becomes a mega. Room. So, so they do percolate. Yeah, they percolate. I didn't know that. Exactly it. Boom. They're a sneaky play into the base. They want something bigger than a techies. Yeah, like that, like a Dusa. But she's a little bit more difficult to kill. I mean, oh, can do wow. They have reflected a couple of spells here. They're going to kick her back into the fountain. Just kidding. Bams. She's back. Glimpse 
into just a world of pain and a oh, world where she can do good. absolutely nothing. I mean, just throw in the towel now. Execration, credit where credit's due. They're fighting this one out. There's another Doom as well. That one, I believe, dropped onto Tino. Song of Siren canceled as Yopaj styling on them now, avoiding all the spells here with Tino's slight of fist jumps. Oh, Tino just barely alive, trying to roll back into the fountain, but constantly body blocked here. They left both supports, actually, over on the side of Boom, but how much is really left in the uh, tank to fight with? That piece easy to go down. Tino, oh, can't make it back, but he's got a buyback. Who else, though? What else can Execration, how much longer can they possibly hold? Naga Siren still in this fight, still looking keen to fight, but careful, in trouble is Yopaj, has a remnant down, so can jump away, but Permastar okay. has no chance, did not have a remnant, has buyback, but he's back in the fight, thanks to the shard, refreshes instantly, and they just don't have the HP pool to sustain this, but neither does Natsumi. No, Natsumi's just a bit too strong. Fight through the two of them. That's Tino now, collapsed upon and killed. Throne getting attacked by the Mega Creeps. It's just the Void Spirit and the Techies. Not really the two heroes you'd want to end up in this kind of a game with. But Execration still throwing it there all as the throne does crumble piece by piece. It's Boo, pick up game number one. And they managed to hold on. Like, there was a lack of early aggression coming up from Boone. Execration managed to play around this really aggressive lineup. Like, off lane, Earth Spirit, Venomancer, Techies. They dominated these lanes. They made it feel really awkward for Boom early on to find that farm and that buildup. But I think it's it was just a little bit rough. Like, your court core matchup in the end was Dusa versus Naga. And we've just seen the Dusa struggle against that sort of matchup before. It didn't really go as fast as you'd want for Palos. Like, that high ground push when they had Aegis was the yep. turning point. Like, it, it was only the Deuce moving up. Yeah, we just saw in this talent game as well, right, where they, I think they tried to do the exact same yeah. strat, push up. They even, they even had a Beastmaster, so even their push was a lot better. And this time around, it, it just wasn't enough. I think um, by the time Medusa needed to carry this game, the, that window was just small enough that uh, not even Naga Siren could really fit through that window. I don't know. A tough game here yep. for the side of uh, Execration, who continue their losing streak, but it's not over and out for them yet, as we are going to throw it on over to the panel to break down our first game just a bit more. Well, it only took maybe two months of being terrorized by the hero, but it appears that if we all just read a little bit more our Dota 2, we would know how to deal with these heroes, because it seems like Elder Titan is the solution. Maybe also with the help of a mana-burning illusion carry with Naga Siren. But Elder Titan looking real good today. 2-0 against Medusa. I'm proud of him. I mean, the teams that are picking Medusa, I feel like uh, they really need to do their homework. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're, tell, you're saying Talon needs to do Medusa homework? Yeah, why not? You have to realize what uh, what you have to pick with the they, hero. They even had a dispel that game. Yeah. They had the Legion Commander that game. Yeah, but do you see how the Legion Commander was playing? Like, he wasn't really prioritizing the dispel. He was like, oh, I gotta go in and do this Magnus. Can't win the duel, die. Can't True. dispel Medusa, die. And in this game, Tino on the Earth Spirit did not get the shard to save his Medusa out of the kinetic field static storm combo until way late in the game when it no longer matters yeah, anymore. It's, it's not just that, you know. I feel like when you have a Dusa, you just need like heroes that build all the aura items, the pipe, the crimson, the mech. You just play around the Dusa, you know. You don't really need any other fancy heroes to be a win condition because Dusa is everything. So you just have to enable that pick. So Aurora, how much of it was draft versus itemization for execration this time? I really think DPC is not where you want to test heroes, especially if you are not very secured of your slot to the major yet. True. And this is what I'm feeling from Execution because I've, I've never seen Palos as a Medusa player. And even if he is a Medusa player, he would buy Dagger, he would buy Pike to, you know, like charge in. Instead of just stand there and hit. I feel like he's, it's so out of his. It's not even comfort, so it's totally out of his zone. It's like, it's totally not his play style. But the rest of his team gets to play what they usually play, which is really weird because when you want to do weird things, you do it together. No, like, not one person doing a normal thing and then the others doing totally different thing. I mean, she's more of like talking about like them drafting out of their comfort zone, right? But for me, it's more about like the drafter understanding what do you need with the Medusa? You know, I think that's a, like a very glaring problem here. Like even in the talent series, I feel like both teams they don't really recognize what they have to piece together with this Medusa puzzle. And obviously, the Medusa is not going to end up carrying the game. You know, if you have the wrong pieces. 
the hero is not like OP broken to the point where you can just pick it now and just win the game, you know? You need to understand what to pick it with. Which in your cases primarily comes from the supports. Yeah. You want safe support and safe uh, aura buying off later. Not a ID, not an octarine core, what Kai. Shiva's guard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I mean, did. honestly, he could still buy the Crimson, but not like he needed it this game. I, I feel like the Earth Spirit pick at the very end was a pivot. I feel like for the majority of it, they were in their mind that this is going to be an offlane Medusa. Because I'm with you, Aurora. I've been watching Palos week one. He was playing Magnus and heroes that go in. And Medusa does not go in. Medusa goes out. It would be a very different story if this Medusa was a phylactery pipe hero. You know? Right. Because I don't think the Disruptor could ever walk out and survive the fights at all. And hence, you know, do his combo with the Naga. So I feel a lot of that, like, it ties down to the early game. They didn't really secure enough yet. But would you feel like if they just draft, like, a, a, a scenario where they just put back Palos on the normal, his kind of heroes, the going heroes, and then you put, like, an off, off lane greedier hero? Like, you yeah, put the farming hero on, like, Timber or like, off lane? Yeah, I feel like Palos needs to be on the hero that, you know, uh, have insurance, but he's not the insurance. The insurance is Tino. Yeah. Or Bob. Yeah, usually be, I, I feel like their best way of uh, drafting was like when they always put the, uh, the off laner as their win condition. So I feel like maybe they can go back to that or they have to figure out a way, you know, if they put powers on this kind of important win condition hero, what do they need to draft around it? Back to Universal Heroes with you, Palos. You tried to get creative, but then I came back to the DPC and Natsumi did my letters proud and got the MVP for game number one. Let's see if he will be able to replicate that performance for game number two. Imagine, imagine if you could, boom, perhaps 2 0 Execration and putting Execration in the danger zone for perhaps looking down the barrel of Div 2, which for the longest time is where Execration was. I think for most of like the 2019 to 2021, Execration was like a pretty consistent Div 2 kind of team. And then they had an ascent at the beginning of this year and it seemed like it was short-lived because Tour 3 seems to be their 
cap. I mean, Winter said these teams deserve a break, so maybe Execution can go back to their home with Cindy. <laughs> And boom, you know, like enjoy their break so <laughs> they, they can come back and try hard. Yeah? <laughs> Absence makes the heart grow fonder. They they missed out on tour one last uh, tour, and credit to them, they did not disband. Unlike Fnatic, who just went to Div Two and was like, "I'm out. I'm not dealing with this Div Two. They just blew, exploded in a fiery blaze of glory. But Boom stuck it out. They played out their entire thing with their same roster, and they're back now. And they're doing pretty good. They were able to get the win against Xerxia uh, on Friday of last week. They lost against Blacklist at the beginning of the uh, tour. Uh, that was the first day of tour one. And so middle of the pack, but if they're able to beat Execration, then at least they shouldn't have to worry about relegation back to Div 2 again. Yeah, Execration has to worry about that. They have to worry about it big time. And I thought that their solution was pretty good during week one. I liked putting it at Palace, like all the heroes that he's been playing were go-in heroes. It was Magnus, Marcy, Meepo, Phantom Lancer. And then all of a sudden he just randomly threw in this Medusa for some reason, which does not really seem like a recipe for success with his playstyle. I mean, it's also just the rest of the pieces as well. Like if you look at the other games, like the Meepo games, like the... Uh, Phantom Lancer. Uh, the Phantom Lancer games, uh, I feel like the, the other heroes that they pick in the draft, like the sequence, the hero pick sequence, they were like not the most ideal heroes, you know, given the, the circumstances, given the options, you know. So I feel like it's not the same team, you know. Sure, they can have like certain specific stress, like they have Visage plus Marcy, but right now I feel like they don't really understand who they are, you know. They're just picking everything. It's not a good sign when you look at a team, they're losing and they're picking 10 different heroes. Some of it is in their style though, like, well, Tino is known to do weird stuff, and so offlane Earth Spirit is kind of in the weird wheelhouse. It's not as weird and good as his visage, but it's still creative. And if it worked out, we'd be like, oh my god, offlane Earth Spirit, what a genius. Why did no one think of this before? I still feel like the only weird thing for me was really Power Sun Modusa. Yeah. It's just so not in element. He was. I can feel like he feels very uncomfortable playing the hero, you know? And even during high ground, it's like. It's like there's no communication. He was just left there to die. Obviously, the song is going to come in. Yep. Like, you ran out of mana, you have Aegis. And there's, there's no force out. I don't even know if Steam has force out or not, but like, there's no communication. He was just standing there and eating all the damage and then just die. The only save would have come out of Earth Spirit. No one else, like, Venno's not going to do anything. Techie's not. Techie's will put a reactive taser on you and then we'll be like, oh, why is Medusa not dying? And then she dies like two seconds later whenever the taser times out. Yeah, heroes are all like playing for themselves, you know. Yeah. They're not heroes that are linked together and coming together as a strategy as a whole. You know? That's why I feel like the drafts have been a really big issue. The person that's driving a lot of the ideas behind the draft, they have to try to put something together, you know. It feels like the person that's picking the hero right now, he's getting one idea from person A. Then person B says something, then he tries to put those two things together, then person C gives another opinion, then he tries to cook something out, out, out of everything, you know. I feel like filtering it out and choosing what works and what doesn't work and mashing whatever you think can work best together, it's not an easy job, you know. And right now I feel like they have to try to weed out everything, all the impurities and try to make something work. Yeah, instead of a wave they can ride on, they brought back Tsunami. So. But Natsumi did so good. Last pick, Naga Siren. Although you were wary about some of his teamfight initiation, it was not as straightforward as, oh, I sleep and then the Disruptor does his thing. It was a, a little bit shaky, but towards the end of the game, he was using the sleep properly to initiate. And now we'll see what he will get his hands on in game number two, where we have a Techie's first pick yet again for Execration. They really like this hero. And this hero is just like, uh, I feel like, I would say he's probably the best boss for right now. Really? Re really, really strong. Yeah, he's very strong in the lane. He contributes so much damage in the team fight. He can build your aura items. I mean, generally you see him build uh, the Greaves. I, I feel like if you give me a choice right now, if I have every single hero and I'm choosing a pos pos four right away, I'm choosing Techies. Why do a pos four instead of the Doom though? Like, because the, the question isn't who's the most broke pause for. Oh, ah, yeah, I'm it's talking who's about the most broke okay, hero. Who is the most broke hero? Yeah. The most broke hero. Probably do. Dude so isn't many. a broke hero, it's Switch as fuck. It's true, he's not. He <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, there's also Pogna in that discussion, you know, I feel like Pogna. Really? You Pog put Pogna that high? Pogna up? is also so imba. Okay. Okay, Techies, I would put Techies ahead of Pogna. Yeah, Sam. Yeah. 
Maybe they are regarding Tino as a much more prioritized player. That's why they don't want to just show his hero. Yeah. But they have been doing that before, though. We, uh, I guess uh, he has a lot more priority right now. And I feel like he's always uh, the person that you look at, you know, when you're looking at the games that they're winning, he's doing the most. He's really uh, helping the team, putting the team in a position where they can take the map. So delaying his pick can be a good idea. Or just pick him Doom, which they have not done this yeah, far. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing. You know? Like, Doom, Doom is like just... Autopilot? Autopilot hero. He's so strong in the lane. You don't have to worry about him. It's funny when you say he's the player they should look at. That's why they lost the last game, because he wasn't on the Medusa. When you want to win as a Medusa, you want everyone to look at you. <laughs> but then Natsumi go, I don't care. I sleep. I yeah, their off laner is like the carry of this team, yeah. Like, strange to say. The carry is the decoy. I mean, he's terrible at this game. Let's see if he works out for... Doesn't stop him from being the decoy. He'd be like, Ha, Tino, I stunned you, let's go. This is yet again not another Palos kind of hero. At least TV... TV is much kind easier. Kind of. Yeah, it's much easier, much more straightforward. Yeah. That man doesn't go in. You he stand and fight, in. you kill everybody. He can buy a dagger and then like have agony and Everyone then Everyone can in. buy a dagger. <laughs> yeah, but like at least he can do something and not just being on Medusa and dagger and then Medusa, what? you're more reliant on your team to do True. a lot of things, you know. Ter Terabit, you, you have Sunder so you can protect yourself in the team fights. You, you get to pressure the map a lot with your illusions and whatnot. So yeah. I would say you're more independent compared to Medusa. Medusa, you need your team to do a lot more stuff for you. Yeah, but, he, but all the heroes that we mentioned prior, Magnus, Marcy, Meepo, Phantom Lancer, these are people who almost start fights. Yep. Terrorblade does not start fights. He can operate independently. I'm with you there. And so in terms of like team fight orientation, yes, he's not the same as a Medusa, but he still doesn't start fights. But that's why he should buy the dagger okay. and Agonim and Daedalus, you know, jump in and then treat the Dagger and Terror Wave. I, I believe I've only, I've only seen Terabate do that against the old Outwarden bubble. Yeah. You have to blink into the magnetic field to hit him. But now he's playing against a Bugna. It's pretty annoying because he can remove your illusions with the shot. The crab is fairly annoying. I like the Oracle ban. If they already wanted to pick a Pugna, that was a really, really good ban. And Excretion, the second phase band, they've chosen to just ban out the carry to carry matchups. That's really good against TB. Mm -hmm. Void, Naga, PL. So, yeah, those are the three best heroes, I would say. But we weren't respected though, with such. Like, they just took it out because their supports can't do it anyway. Yeah, but they have Underlord. Underlord is, uh, I feel like, uh, probably for me, if you don't want Doom, Underlord is like my second off laner that I will go to. Agree. Yep. The Vanguard abusers and then into aura bias. Mm -hmm. I mean, people always talk about all the auras, you know, but the ulti is Imba mm -hmm. on this hero. Like, in a, I guess in a pub environment, you probably don't feel the spell as much, but in a professional team environment, if you coordinate your team really well around it, it can do so many things. You, know, you can set up a gang, run away, you outmaneuver the map to control the, the Roshan, you take the Tormentor. There's so many things you can do with the, the spell, you know. Yeah, it's literally your VIP helicopter. Helicopter, helicopter. Used to be called Uber Lord for a reason. But yeah, now it's helicopter. The map is bigger. You just <laughs> fly. Yeah, and Uber is going to take like 40 minutes to get to one side of the map to the other. <laughs> this man is airdropping you straight to the Wisdom Rune. Yeah. So right now, uh, what support are they taking off? They're still Enchantress though. Enchantress is wow. So they have all their cores right away. So they're going to last pick uh, support. Go for the Ember. Ember's also one of uh, the heroes that can deal with the Pogna. You can go behind the enemy lines and kill. I, I feel like I like Void Spirit to do that more, actually. Like the one thing I would say that Ember can do better than Void is like setting up for a team with the chains. But apart from that, I feel like Void Spirit does everything better than Ember. I agree, because you can dodge the glimpse and you can kind of one-shot the Pogna if you found him. As an Ember, you kind of need to yeah, take would, a bit of time. Would you feel it's strange that they actually opted to go for the Ember over the Void here. I think they were just worried that if they take the Void here, then Boom can just react with the Ember and then you're a Void Spirit against Ember plus Doom. You kind Why of don't you feel... just buy Manta for that matchup and you'll be fine? Is yeah, that, how that do you get there? Of, yeah, is that really that big of a problem that would... that would tell... your mid player would tell the captain or the drafter that, oh no, I want to be the Ember instead of the Void. 
I didn't think about that, but I feel when I look at the team that drafts like this, you know, they don't necessarily save their call for their last pick and they pick like this. It seems that they're sending a message, you know, like, okay, we're not giving you the Amber. Yeah, they really want the Amber. Yeah, I think they just, maybe they are just very afraid of your punch having the Amber and then destroying them again. I mean, as a TB, I would feel more comfortable playing against a White Spirit if I have to pick compared to an Ember. Because it's just very, very annoying. Yeah, for our, right now, Excursion, they need to pick like a, another support. I'm still thinking like a Dispel support like Enchantress, you know, every time I'm playing against Pugna, those are the heroes that I, I think about right away. And someone can also hit the ward. Ooh, whoops. Sorry, my pockets are <laughs> looser. <laughs> no, 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 uh, I, I dropped my phone. We're good. Okay. Sounds like an explosion where explosion enjoys here. <laughs> All of us, even execration. Boom is what's, you know, boom, boom. Yopaj still has a lot of choices to go up against the Ember Spirit. Batrider is still in the pool. Pango still in the pool. It's really funny that they oh, wait, no, banned no, out of Venom. Banned. Maybe just for the Monkey King. Yeah, probably just for that. Oh my god, I don't like what I'm thinking. I feel like a Wind Ranger might come out, I don't know why. Or who for excretion? I suppose for? For Boom? Yeah. Against Underlord? I don't like it, but yeah, I don't like I it against anyway. Underlord. A lot of teams, they see Underlord like the natural Vanguard bias, and then there's still Ember in the pool, there's still Pug in the pool, and they still pick Wind Ranger. It's very weird. I hope they don't do that. I, I feel like when that. I look at their draft, they need like some concrete initiating hero, you know, because they don't really have very a lot of like very reliable ways to set up. Like they have the Balance Strike, they have the Gleams, but those spells are generally spells that you use to follow up onto something, like a concrete initiation, like a Puck Coil or something, and they start the fight and then you follow up. That's what I feel like they are lacking right now. So Excretion goes with uh, Post for Mirana, so they have the chains into arrow setup, very, very deadly in the laning phase. I think it was more of a Kalo hero. Kalo, Kalo. Yeah, he really Sprana. likes. He really likes this hero. I would have personally preferred like a dispel against the uh, decrep. So for boom right now, they are probably going to need like a initiating hero, mid hero, against. The lane is going to be against Amber, so I guess not that much of a problem. Uh, for the laning phase, it's more about like what do you feel like your draft is going to need. Pango, a yeah, Pango is like the general, like one of the most I would say like a uh, broken mid heroes for a long time. And it's pretty good against TB who, yeah. There we go. Like if he can always use Diffusal effect on his Swashbuckle, the hero is always going to be there. And all of Corrosion. Like. And he makes this TB's illusion like useless in the team fight because they can't hit anything. Yeah, I don't know how the, I don't know how Palace is going to do damage. Your Conjure image is going to get glimpsed and, and probably life drained with the shard from Pugna and disarmed. And you're gonna have to deal yeah. damage into a Wukong's command. I mean, it's very similar to the previous game. They have this carry that pick that feels so left out with the whole draft. You look at the other four heroes: they have Techies, Underlord, Ember, Mirana. They have like some fighting carry, some Ursa, some Monkey King, some anything that can fight with the team going. You know, then the draft looks okay. You know, it looks great. You know, but right now the draft, everything looks okay but the carry hero because Terabit he needs protection from the team. He needs people to be around him, allow him to uh, survive in the team fights. But right now, apart from the Underlord, the other heroes are. Again, you know, really independent heroes, especially the supports, the Techies and the Mirana. I think he can kind of get away with it because of how TB is played in this meta. Like, you can send your illusions, you can still farm. Instead of like a Munusa, you have to walk in front and do everything. But yeah, I think it's not as bad as last game, but definitely TB looking kind of weird here. And we're probably not going to see him build Dagger and initiate fights, I'm assuming. I would. I mean, you're going to get Doom anyway. You're going to get true. Doom anyway. Just embrace it. You know what's going to happen. Just you take the offensive. Look at me. Doom me. I'm right here. <laughs> and then probably lose. We'll see. It's time for game number two with Seek and Strike and Jonix Fire. Thanks, Tsunami and panel. And yeah, sometimes the best way to get right into action is just blink right in there. Face the Doom head on. Get right into the front of your objective and waste no time and attack it full frontal, you know? Yeah. That's how it gets done. Yeah, sometimes the best defense is just a really good offense. Just a Zerg just rush. Yeah, just rush in. And I'm wondering whether or not that's something Execration can do successfully. I feel like 
this draft is a little bit better. You know, it's it's not as rough as, say, Dusa up against a Naga with equal or less farm. It has a little bit more siege. You've got a lot more activity out from the supports, although, to be fair, you did have good activity last time around as well. But I feel like it's a lot more balanced from Execration. Boom, though, I mean, they've got pretty good court core matchups. Pangolier versus Ember should be pretty all right for the Pango. Although I feel like I've seen some members win that lane. Overall, it shouldn't yeah. be a wash. Uh, I think, uh, can... this, this lane can be difficult, but I don't think it's as bad as like Storm Pango. So yeah, Pango's no. like impossible. Yeah, that shouldn't be. It shouldn't be as abysmal as that. You should have a pretty decent lane for Natsumi as well. I feel like un into an Underlord. This is one of the lanes that Underlord doesn't feel amazing in. Like you're not too scared about the control. You're not too scared about Firestorm. You can right. just rush up, play with your Jingu stacks, and start to run down. So you have a lot good of point. good solutions here good on Boom to play a lot quicker and just have some tempo. For Execration, this game does feel like it hinges on Bob more than anything else. Like he's the main guy you want to connect to. He's the main guy you're gonna want to play around with. They're giving him the Ember Spirit. Yeah. A hero that he's traditionally had a lot of success on. Yeah, and I, I like that at the same time. I mean, you know, Ryopaj hasn't had the best few seasons, but he should know every single matchup up against that Ember, because he plays a mean Ember himself. So he should be able to, you know, kind of figure out what to do early on and manage that lane as much as possible. He's lost out a little bit here on the block as Yopaj. We'll see how big of a difference that really ends up making. But I think Bob's, yeah, going to end up with creep on his high ground. So already a decent start enough for the Ember as we do get a quick little pause early. Something wrong. Oh, oh, very quick thing. Probably a, a hotkey or something or another there for the monkey. And we're right back into it. Bob nails the first auto, uh, sorry, last hit, as if nothing ever happened. Yep, just keeps farming. Again, this shouldn't, this shouldn't be too rough for you, Opaj, although if you do go for the Flame Guard build, I think that's where the Pangolier really can't do too much. That's where, that's where it gets painful. You can't clear out the Flame Guard as a Pango. When the Swash just doesn't really do anything, physical damage spell. So you should have a pretty smooth time for Bob if he does go all in on that one. Natsumi, like you said, uh, he's got this Jingu Mastery right to play off of, which means he can t trade pretty decently, at least sustain, into that kind of difficult top lane. But uh, early on, when you just don't have enough bonus lifesteal, that doesn't become too easy for you. Arrow collecting the creep there. Down bottom as well, the magic damage, and, and just overall, the overwhelming right click that FBZ has can become a little bit troublesome here. There's a lot of magic damage, especially with the Scorched Earth dot, you know, can really end up uh, being a bit tricky in this lane for Palos. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit rough for him, especially once Decrep is up. I think that's where it gets scary because you just run down with Scorched Earth. You maybe get an Infernal Blade or, you know, just maybe get a good Devour Creep to apply a little bit more damage as well. And then it becomes a little bit untenable for Palos to just stand there. He, he still has his Metamorphosis timing to play around and he does pick that up now. That's a lot of damage, Shanks. Stop lane, does not have Leap, went arrow level one, and he's gonna die. First blood. Nice little bit of aggression I'm there. X Nova using this level one Thunderstrike again. Morana, one of these heroes that is really difficult to trade into. Yeah, you can't really play with your Glimpse all too well here, so might as well get some damage set up, soften up these targets for Natsumi to run down and just feed off of a strong start for Boom already very early on. Although, to be fair, in terms of CS, Execration's doing a great job of just farming up. They might not be finding the kills, but they are working the lanes a little bit better. Uh, it's down to Boom to try to minim minimize that gap. FBZ is a little tanky here, uh, especially because he has picked up himself the, uh, what is this? Good old heal creep. Yeah. The troll priest. The troll priest, thank you. Yes, no? in the in the hill troll camp. Uh, pretty big heal on this thing. Casual 100 HP, it's uh, not bad for 60 mana. Of course, it is 60 mana, so a bit problematic for FBZ. Can't really be looking to spam the thing, but it should hold him over at least until he can get his Ring of Health on. It should be around 115 because of the heal amp that you do have. Yeah, 115. A good, a good chunk of HP. Not bad, it's like uh, 2 HP per mana. Yeah, not, not the worst thing in the world in terms of conversion, so should be able to maintain that lane. Uh, for Execration so far, I mean, this is still a pretty free lane for Palos overall in terms of actually farming up. So even with all that laning pressure, even all, with all these combinations on hand, it is a little bit harder for Boom to just outright shove Palos away from the lane. You have to re still respect, you're playing into techies as well. Blast Radiant off will kind of ruin you, so you don't want to go too hard. I think the lane that's probably going a lot harder than you want is Yopaj's lane. Again, yeah. this build up from Bob to go 1-1-2. Just have the Flame Guard constantly harass Yopaj, make it awkward for the Pangolier to trade hits. 
it sets a good tone. This should mean Bob has control of the lane, has control into level six a little bit faster, and shouldn't be under any threat. And could start to pressure lanes as well if he gets that early corrosion timing with the phase boots here. Yeah, we'll see like when these rotations start coming on through, whether or not uh, Yopaj feels like he's in a position uh, where he can try and counter rotate. That, that can be a bit difficult this, these days with how much further you have to run to these side lanes, given the map's expansion. This will help a bit though. TP canceled there. I think that was a pug now that was TP. So Zephyr without a TP scroll now, I think that, I'm not sure if that would have been scouted actually. I don't know if Bob had vision up on the high ground there. Not sure how much that exactly changed. Ports are rotating mid. Arrow's going to be avoided there. Radiance nice little hit on the killed. shield crash. Shanks Did you see that? running away from this, I think, is in trouble. Glimpse will come through, blood a grenade, and Swashbuckle will secure it. Nice little kill for Yopage to find. Good game sense out for Nova to just keep track of that Marana. And you're out of mana here for Bob as well. So Yopage can get a few extra hits off in this lane. Just manage it a little bit better. A strong start once more for Boom in terms of kills, 0-2. to two. In terms of working the lane, still a little bit behind. I am concerned about how much Palos is allowed to get. Again, this uh, is... Oh. Yeah, nice. Uh, oh, actually, no. Pardon me, that's a miss. And, of course, this level 1 glimpse range is pitiful. Tino in some trouble still and does not get away from this one. Nice body block out from Max Nova. Gives a uh, Natsumi. That kill that he's been long searching for. Yeah, just piling on again, getting this Monkey King lane going. Very strong start for Boom up there. Palo's still pretty much free farming on that Terrorblade. Yeah, I mean, he's got a meta as, as well available, right? So they can even maybe look to get a bit aggressive. Afizi does feel like a bit of a hard kill, though. He's gonna get this Vanguard up soon. I mean, that doesn't mean he can just run, you know, TB on a lane, but uh, you're probably going to need a third hero to join. But uh, certainly kills onto Zephyr, you know, one, one step out of position for the little skeleton boy, and he's in trouble. Uh, another Jingu mastery up top lane, nice stun, we'll find the two of them, and the glimpse is going to secure this, well, certainly, right, for Natsumi. You're going to lose X-Nova, but at least he gets a little bit of experience for his trouble. Carlos Wells is uh, taking the quick trip on over, he's TP'd actually to the tower. Mid lane, that leaves Zephyr trying to gank Bob. He's actually throwing the blood grenade at him. Bob, he's still slight of fist to dodge auto attacks if he needs, but they can't dive him underneath his tier one tower. Yeah, they can't quite fully commit. This would have been the time to really lock in that kill on the Ember. At level six just about to come out for Bob. Regen rune up for Yopaj. If he manages to swipe, Radiance nah. Then they get the remnant out. Yeah. Yopaj not able to get a roll in time, so it resets out for Bob. Good effort, though. Looking to apply that pressure. Yeah, that's exactly what you want. They're still lining up mid. You do have really strong push coming out here from Bob. Glimpsed back, but has a remnant down at least. And he, I think he's hit the slight of fist as well. Maybe compromises him a bit. Yopaj almost even fooled me on that one going for the Rolling Thunder. Mm -hmm. Top lane three heroes are trying to give the boot to Natsumi. So long as you can stop the monkey from, you know, collecting the Jingu stacks, for the most part, this is a, a bit of an oppressive lane. Uh, situation for uh, Natsumi, but he now has a well, at least one support coming his way. Zephyr's off in the triangle making some stacks. Yeah, trying to get the economy game going down the line. This is a Battle Fury game for Natsumi. Mm. Understanding he's going to be the major win condition. So just wants to keep that farm game going. And that uh, Yopaj and FBZ will probably take some early activity. Although, to be fair, FBZ is playing a Doom. Probably just go back to the usual build Octarine Midas down the line. Uh, with the Vanguard up. BKB, Blink, Refractor. Yeah, there. just yeah, take your time, farm up. We've seen what this guy does. Even if you stomp him in lane, you just delay his uh, refresher time by maybe yeah. three minutes. Yeah. Which Matters. is, you know, kind of a big deal. It but. is a big deal. At the same time, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like a movie franchise that you've seen a million times. Right, uh, right. You just know the script. No matter how many times the car crashes, you just know they're always going to be okay. Yeah, they're always going to be okay. Never, it's never really a moment of tension in those things. Yeah, you know they're going to win. You're, they're going to win the race. They're going to catch the bad guy. You hear the news how they're contractually obligated to never lose fights. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard that. That's pretty funny. That is funny. Uh, like, can you imagine if we had that in Dota? Oh, I can't lose. Well, you've got to lose. Well, someone's got to lose. There's always losers in Dota. One right now casting it. It's me, John, not you. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the blast off a short one. Uh, Zephyr is actually going to keep himself alive a bit longer thanks to the Decrepify, but Bob still is going to find him. Swipes him down there on the slide of Ooh. Fist. Nova has glimpsed. I don't believe there's a way out of this one for Bob. That was a nice little one glimpse. He went far. 
And is going to go Wait, even what? further, wants to kill onto Yopaj. Yopaj goes back uphill. He's going to miss as well. There's only a shield crash. The Sticky Bomb does not find its mark. Bob as well, dying to Thunderstrike, is going to go down. Yopaj trying Yopaj? to go for the creeps, but he clears them too damn fast. So Shanks is going to get the kill. x is now the only one left alive on the river. Gets shot in the bum with an arrow, and that's Shanks picking up the kill. Shanks, is, he, he wins the Battle Royale. Yeah, if Zephyr had six, this might have been a little bit more interesting with his TP back in, but... Not going to be able to trade any further. A really interesting back and forth, a tree for tree. In the end, probably better for Broom. You're around to soak that EXP on Yopaj. He's the one to get the kills. It accelerates his defusal timing. Bob playing on the edge does get punished a little bit. It was pretty flashy for him to dance around. That's pretty cool. I think that's something a bit more unique to this kind of a meta, isn't it? Where none of the sideliners, you know, they all looked over and went, ah, that's boring. I'm going to farm. Yeah. Radiance all four sideliners. That was supports and mid laners only. Yep. That's pretty cool. It is cool, but it's also a little bit strange, right? Like, it, that does feel like the side lanes are where your emphasis is at, so you want to push into those. But instead, in this matchup, both teams are looking at mid, rotating yeah. on mid uh, instead of rotating on the side. I think it's because they're looking for rune control here, right? They, Probably. they know that could be a big opportunity. Like, a, a, I think a haste is still in the pool right now for Ember. Oh. I think we, we've seen, what, regen and, and, and what, illusion, I think? I believe, I believe so. Shield. We've seen uh, regen and, and shield. So, uh, still lots of you know power runes in play. DD rune, arcane rune. Let's see what this one's going to be. Is it does spawn top? It's arcane, so the least you know action heavy. So DD and haste is still upcoming. I mean, this is still a big room. Part of me for Bob. Execution are going to smoke on this, and they will look top lane. I love the skirmishes for mid though. I think that's really cool. Because I think I've heard a lot of complaints from mid players early saying that it feels really difficult to gank from the mid lane given how big the map is. Well, if the supports come and contest the runes every two minutes with you, it gives you a little bit more something to, to fight around, you know? Radiance it does. He scout out Natsumi, but he does leap away in the nick of time. Oh, gate's done. Oh, they right. cut the tree. Yeah, somehow everything. I don't know where that arrow went, but Strike Nova went to go find it because he's killed off. And Natsumi, though, he's going to be able to get away just in time. Two heroes instead go down bottom. FPC might be looking for a doom here, but is happy just with the tower. It's not carrying detection in any uh, in any case. Yep, not going to fully commit. You get some room to shove out a little bit. You don't lose Natsumi on that rotation. You don't mind too much. Not the biggest loss in the world for a boom to sacrifice X Nova here. Again, you're working the map pretty well. You're getting that farm build up if you'd want. All the cores of Womb fairly farmed up. But the space that you are getting out here for Palace is a bit concerning. Like the Terrorblade can work the maps really, the camps really well. FPC has the right idea to keep track, but no one's there to help him catch out. And right. He does have that end snare, but he's not able to really gap close. And this is, I mean, there's no uh, no Vanguard here, actually, so it's, it's not that hard, especially with the fresh Lincolns that Yopaj had just smoked on alongside X Nova. This is going to cut into Execration's own smoke timing. As they had also smoked up, they're going to go ahead and redirect themselves back towards the bottom lane. Arrow's currently pointed in the direction of FBZ. Let's see if he can get out in time. Unless Shanks connects on an arrow here, I do Damn. believe he's away safely. We'll see. Any TPs? Any TP enjoyers? There's the Doom onto the Ember Spirit. He'll just leave. Carlo's going to go ahead and join the fight. Uh, okay, that seemed weird from Boom. Uh, committing the Doom, and then no one else comes in. Yeah, I'd expect a TP in. I'd expect some punishment coming out from Boom. All of their TPs were ready. They yeah. just don't make it in time. It's like Aurora said, you know, get in his face, force yeah. the Doom, and then just walk away. Yeah. What is he going to do? No doom you again? Dyer's bottom tower. thundered up. I don't know. Uh, Boom have lost their Observer Ward just now, so they'd be fighting not a whole ton of vision. They've lost Dyer's their bottom, bottom tower, tower now that Palos is set to work on that thing. Yeah, they've, they've lost a lot. Good movement out from Execration. Understanding what Boom is doing. Oh. Again, playing a little bit more passive is that, here. Is that Battle Fury on his way? Do yeah. we finally have Cornucopia for the Monkey King? Yeah, it's flying out. It's huh? fully done. So he's set to farm up now, not to me. Keep playing this game. Ramp up in the good, build up. Good timing. Honestly. Very good timing. Good timing considering a full boost. It's not a full orb of corrosion, but Radiant's the orb of venom and the casual slippers, you know? It's a little bit of extra. It's part of it, a little bit of extra money purchased as Carlo's going to be uh, killed rather quickly here. Boom seemed keen to hold the triangle. Um, there's not a lot in here for them. Yeah, there's not too much farm. Again, Palos has had a great read in this game, just playing in the bot lane and the expanded side of that lane. 
where FBZ just hasn't been able to really catch anyone out. And so that's Invis. Sorry, I'm just looking at runes. You know, next rune's going to be big. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Illusion, DD, or Haste. In fact, I know it's one of those three. Yeah, it's one of those three. So pretty big runes. I think even an Illusion rune this game could be pretty meaningful, honestly. Considering yeah. like you've got a stun that you can dodge, you've got Pit of Malice to uh, dispel, maybe even avoid an arrow if you get a bit lucky, you know, for one side. I yeah, trust everyone big. was out of Seconds till it spawns in. What do you think, top or bottom? Ooh, top. All right. I want to say top. I'll go bottom. Watch it, be, watch it go bottom. Let's go with bottom. It's, it's top. It's top. What is it? Illusion. Uh, okay, so, I mean, the next tier runes you know are going to be pretty big now. So 16 yeah. and 18 minutes in. So not in inconsequential things to keep track of. Oh, they are just going to make the jump onto Bob. Illusion room picked up by Shanks in the meantime. That's a, is that a pick pull? Why did he pick pull? Zephyr just pick pulled into the fight. Okay, trying to get in there a bit too quickly, but of course didn't have any spells to cast. Now Bob's looking for the way back in. They've missed the stun onto Yopage, who immediately is going to vault away. All right, that's Dota 2, the video game right there. Yeah, that was quite a nothing burger in the end, but you do waste a rolling thunder here. It's a good bait out from the point. Execration, but not the longest cooldown in the world. Just about a minute to reset. Everyone kind of just farming, though. The mid laners and the supports a bit more eager to skirmish. The TB, obviously, much more keen to fight. Well, maybe now around meta. Look to continue pushing mid. That would be the last tier one tower. Are Boom ready to mount a defense without rolling thunder, without static storm? I don't think so, Jonathan. So it's a bit rough. They do have Wukong's play. They're here. trying. That's a two-man stun. They found Bob the Ember Spirit, but he does have himself a pit of mouse to try and get himself away. It's not going to make a difference. Palos is going to have to leave the illusions behind. So it seems like Boom from the trees get the better of Execration. Yeah, just a good rotation out from Natsumi. Getting a good read as they are trying to force that out. Um, that does cost them Doom, so maybe to follow through onto something like Palos isn't going to be there. No, yeah. And they can still shove in with Metamorphosis, to be fair. Like, they know these spells are down. Just a couple more twacks, that tower is set to fall. You've got the siege creep up as well. So you will find the objective, at the least. I think they're gonna try and go for this deny. Yeah, a bit difficult. Oh. The auto attack's coming in. Oh, he did it, he got it. Wow, he went my pardon me. Yo, Paj, taking everything away. I mean, it's still map control coming out here for Execration, but quite frankly, I don't feel like mid is as important as the side lanes. Yeah, and that's Execration, you know, picking up on a mistake from, um, from Boom. Uh, you know, like they used two ultimates. They, they did not get anything out from it. We can make a, uh, a push here. Good call from whoever made it. Uh, and nice moves from Paulus, who also joins the fight. You know, a lot of carries, they'd rather just stay in the triangle, pick up a DD rune here as Bob Wilson for the last turn in the rotation before they reset is going to be a haste. This is still a big moment for Execration. Uh, and that's another thing, right, to pay attention to. Because as a result, boom, they, don't, they just don't feel as confident Contestant for these runes, and now there's a DD and the bottle of Bob. That could be big. Let's see if Bob activates it now. Holding on to it. Holding on to it. There's the life trip, but that's a full vessel already up for the bottom. Oh, and nothing Yopaj can do as he is going to fall. DD rune active now. Should be a trivial kill here onto Zephyr. That vessel, a hard counter for him. Nothing he can really do but die. Do just that. Yeah, great movement. Execration. Just hit this timing, start dancing around, or even hunting Natsumi to an extent, but not going to be able to pin down. That FBZ. pesky monkey king. Does not have doom. Oh, take the portal, FBZ. Take the portal. <laughs> I mean, maybe he should have taken the portal, honestly. Oh, glimpse. All right, that's a good glimpse. That will send back at least one. But now Bob's here still with the last couple of seconds waning from this DD rune. Good damage here. Apollo and as well as Shanks looks to get some control in. They've got a blast off if they need it. Oh, nice yeah, static storm. They have managed to catch now Apollo's TB, but the stun is even better. Oh, but Natsumi fights through it, has a bit of life shield, but it can't be put to use thanks to the vessel charge. Yopaj has rolling thunder, needs to get outside of the pit of malice to use it, however. Uh, nice uh, swashbuckle as well there. On to at least Carlo. Shanks throws an arrow, picks up the kill onto X Nova. Yopaj. Nope. Splashing around in the Lotus Pool is eventually freed by the vaults. That's a three for two. Not the best move from Boom, unfortunately, with the death of the Monkey King. Yeah, not not the best trade at all. You do at least get the Terrible before the Monkey King does die, so you kind of get more on your Monkey King in comparison. At least in terms of EXP, you are fairly ahead. Yeah, and he's on Atsumi. still out farming him by a, a fair pace, right? A good Battle march. Theory going into that, but the Hex Scepter is nearly online now for the Monkey King. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to help in these fights for sure. You're going to have more output, a little bit more durability on hand. 
I feel like I would have really, I really want to see the Scotty come out. I think that's the turning point for Natsumi and kind of trying to pin down, get that control in one of these fights. Uh -oh. So that's uh, that's a dead tug nut. Yeah, I'm going to go down. Can I get anything returned? Likely not, because Bob is flexing the 18 minute haste rune. So now the next rune could be anything. Ooh. Oh, but be damned, you haste rune, says FBZ. Yopaj uh, jumps in as well, caught by the pit of mouse. I also catches Natsumi. He leapt into that one quite literally. And look at two heroes. The double leap in. It's like a circus, and it is a circus because it's the C region, Jonathan. And somehow Execration, no, they're winning the fight. Bob tanking through the tomb. So far, it's just Tino kind of being unkillable, honestly. In comes Palos with an illusion. That'll take down Exnova. Bob still eager to fight. Seer and Chains aren't going to do a darn thing. Yopaj bouncing around to the fight, but he just doesn't have damage. Did you see the double leap in? A thing of beauty from those execration supports. Yeah, that looked really funny to that's, see the leaps and the blast off. <laughs> that's that's a real, you know, ride together, die together duo yeah, right there. Yeah, that's a ride or die right there. <laughs> it doesn't quite pay off the way they'd want to. I mean, they do manage to take care of a core for two support lives. In the end, you're pretty damn happy on the side of execration. They come out ahead. You're starting to punish Natsumi quite a fair bit for Don't all this early aggression down. coming out from him. And good patience on Tino, right? He kind of pump faked the Pit of Mouse and yeah. ended up making a pretty big difference against the Monkey King, yeah. unable to get off the Wukongs even. A really good choke point coming out there. I think for Boom, we need to see FBZ. Oh my goodness, they're going on top. You need to see FBZ out of oh. here and just barely he'll get Ooh. out. It's okay, if you leave in two and a half seconds, it's like the five second rule, you never missed on the kill attempt. A good effort though. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting attempt. Arrow, oh, oh, Aaron Chain, a classic combo. Bob is gonna be pulled back. There's gonna be the life drain, but nice. wait, not enough. Well, that, that heal's just doing nothing up against that spirit vessel. It's uh, quite the item still these days, even if they have nerfed it a bit. You, you definitely need a dispel on hand here from Boom. You've got to be able to take that off. Because right now, it's just ruining your combinations. Yopaj can't sustain the front line. Yeah, and, and how much is this? Deal. Oh, this is going to be Manta. OK, yeah, Manta will do. Pardon me. I thought that was a, a Lincoln's. And I went, wait a second. There's no Bloodseeker in this game. <laughs> yeah, that, it's going to be nice as we can take a look at that replay. That choke point coming out here was pretty big. They didn't even manage to find that kill on Bob. No, they didn't, right? And, and look, that's the pump fake. Natsumi is just right in there as well, into the arrow. <laughs> Get him, boys! Sick him! So when he's setting the supports in, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they did die, but oh. it was impressive. <laughs> it was impressive. <laughs> that's actually pretty funny. Uh, I don't know if I've seen that before, honestly. Like, such a syncopated uh, uh, just jump in right there. And now here we go, Execration again, speaking of syncing up. For rat behind the tier two tower, a lot of an easier, a much easier move to make given how big the map's uh, increased in size here. Boom, however, are going to go the opposite way. The old Boreolus effects of smoke ganks, I like to call it. The toilet bowl of smoke when you guys just yeah. rotate around the map, swap positions. Yeah, yeah. Just spin down. It seems to be flying around in the bowl. You know, in SA, they gank the other way around. Ah, uh, it's the opposite spin. Yes. Is it because they're in the. Uh, Southern Hemisphere. That's, that's correct. Interesting. They're on the southern flat part of the Earth. I see, I see. The flat end. Yes, the flat end. It's like Australia. So you're telling me it's uh, not real. That, that one's not real. Yeah. And both of them are not real if in that case. That's true. Yeah. It's the reality of things. Actually, we've kind of found themselves in a nice position here, haven't they? They've mm. got the tier one down. They've got a ward up now uh, in the opponent's jungle. They just don't have really the same amount of tier two tower pressure that Execration have, though. So. Not really able to flex on the Centino, by the way. He, I mean, good luck fighting into this if he gets everything off. Full crew, yeah. full pipe of insight. You've got the flame guard up as well. You have Sunder to fight through all of that. Pretty decent counter initiation with a Pavis and now a Glimmer Cape. I mean, it's all about talk about damage mitigation. Talk about healing mitigation as well on the vessel. You got a mechanism up on Shanks. Their, I mean, their team fight isn't like super uh, picturesque as it was last game, you know, when you yep. had like Song of the Siren, Disruptor, or Splitter. Radio but it makes sense, scanning. right? It's a, it's a bit flexible. You, you could, it's like a bunch of Legos. You can, you can pick a bunch of things out from this kind of a team fight. For sure, for sure. Like you've got more options here. You can definitely tank through the output of Boom. For Boom's part, we, we still need to wait when you, FBZ is really comfy to join these fights. It feels like the Doom hasn't been a massive factor in these engagements no, just yet. certainly not. The Octarine is coming out next for that's, FBZ. That's, that's kind of crazy though, right? Because he's, I don't know about crazy is the right word, but he's gone for BKB and Blink Dagger. 
Yeah, to me, that's like, I guess I got to fight. Like, what else? Are you... Oh, Alos? Alos just took the game through. Yeah, he, he did. All alone. Uh, he's, he's, he's pretty early here as well. Moonlight Shadow's pretty darn good. Oh, okay, they're going to catch him just with the tip of that uh, boundless strike. FBZ, though, in trouble. Forced to BKB. Alrighty, and this is going to be yet another fight where someone gets doomed and continues running them down. That was really awkward. He walked through the gate. They had vision on the gate. They doom him up, but there's no follow through from the rest of Boom, and they just back off. They're going to surrender to Roche. That, that's a pretty objective to just give out here from Boom, maybe realizing, all right, no Doom up, we have to give that objective, but you've got Roll on Yopaj, you've got the Wukons. You could surely put up a fight, but I guess they just, without that one control, they fear Palos, they show that respect. I like that, you have the Wukong. I know it's the Wukong's command, obviously, but it's just, you have the Wukong's. The Wukong's. It sounds like a gag. Yeah, exactly. Like you have Wukongs on your side. You gotta bring them all in. The Wukongs. Oh, that's an immediate Fiends Gate. They're gonna look to... This is a oh. sneaky move now. Do you think they can take the Fiends Gate out? Oh, definitely they can take the Fiends Gate out. Uh, finish it up, guys. What the hell? All right, there you go. Finish your food. Yeah. There are supports in pubs that can't finish, that don't get shards. Yeah, there are. It's, uh, it's very sad. It's me. No supports in those I'm games. supports in pubs. Your supports in pubs. Yeah. It's very sad to hear. Richard. He never takes the tormentor, and I'm forced to buy it. See, that's the real torment of the tormentor. If no one takes it, it's also. I mean, honestly, the real tormenting part is that they look at you and they go, "Nah, we don't need to do tormentor. It's not worth it." So then you buy it, and then as soon as you buy it, they're like, "Okay, let's do tormentor." Yeah, it's like, all right, one less here to worry about. You always gotta, you know, they gotta. There's gotta be something in it for them. These core players. It's always the mentality. So, so the greedy. Always greedy. And you know what? Boom's greediness and their draft results are starting to pay off. Is it? That's. I was about to ask you. Right. The Ocarina's up. There it is. On FBZ. I think the Battle Fury has seen not so many good position. If only he can live long enough to actually cast a Wukong. He has a BKB flying out. That's Jonathan, the pause. That's what I was gonna say. That could be the turning point. That should be. The turning point. Uh, what I do find curious is with this slower style from Boom, I have to wonder why FBZ just didn't get the Octarine first, right? Just to be more efficient, because that leads to more Midas usage, more Devour usage, rather than the Blink BKB. I, I get why, but it ended up not paying off for Boom, so just back into the farming game. We've even seen less activity from Yopaj, who's going back for the Ags now. It doesn't feel too far off, maybe about 1,500 gold away. Then you've got that up and running, more utility coming out from the Pango. I do have to say, going into the late game, it's not a straightforward game for Boom. I do think that the Terrorblade tends to have a bit of a better time. It's down to how you initiate. There's a lot of pressure on FBZ to get that Blink Doom off, and he has landed it, but sometimes his team isn't ready to follow through. Yeah, it feels like he needs to blink and initiate rather than Doom someone and try and counter it. Because every time they try to counter and initiate, it just hasn't worked out. Like, there's been, like, a doom to catch an Ember Spirit, but then there's been no kinetic field to hold them in place and Wukongs to follow up. Where there's been a doom to find the TB, and then there's literally no one else in the entire neighborhood, you know? If you doom a TB in the woods, does it make a sound? No, it's doomed. Yes. It's silenced. Exactly. Very yeah. true. See, you your question, you pass. Yeah. We'll oh. see if they can pass. All now. right. There's a better jump. Can the Wukongs come out? You bet your bottom dollar it will. But Palos, can they take him down? They're really starting to get through him. Here's all this damage mitigation we've been talking about, but it's a just simply too much. With the Aegis on Ember Spirit, that's a dead TV for 50 seconds. Is the fight lost, though? Seems like maybe for round oh. two, they can look to turn. His execration pops the BKB on the Ember Spirit. Bob goes in, takes down one, takes down two. There's three dead. They're looking for four. You upon Pops the illusion room. He's trying to illusion bait here. Uh, Bob is just not interested in playing these kinds of games, but Shanks has the one leap charge, and I think he's going to be able to make it out. Nope, he has been caught by the glimpse, disarmed, and killed off. Certainly, yes, killed off. A three for three. Not the cleanest from Boom, but if you manage to get that big Terror Blade kill, it still comes at the cost of their monkey. Still not durable enough on Atsumi to sustain through these fights, and we see how long it takes to rip through the Terror Blade with all these barriers. Oh. But, but Jonathan... Yes. But Jonathan, Bye. they've they've stopped the tier two tower, but surely even though you Dyer's lose the monkey tower. carry, that's Thunder gotta be worth something, right? Tier it, two tower still up. It's worth something, but it's not like you can build off on any of these kills from Boom. Like their lanes are still somewhat shoved in, they're not gonna be able to make their own way to tier twos. So it's really just stall. Yeah. And as this game scales on, it's just 
again, a matter of can you really handle it terribly? Because it feels like you're going to have to throw the Doom out. You're going to have to throw Static Storm as well. The, and the Wukongs. Everything on top just for this one Euro. And leave all these openings for Execration to play with. Yeah, where's the damage going to come from? Where is the damage? It's only Natsumi. Where are they going to... How are they going to get it? How are they going to get the stun? Honestly, Tino is... What is he going to build with this Helm of the Iron Will? What is what is that for? Hmm, uh, that nullifier? Is an one. I mean, it's not a bad Nullifier game. It would be weird to see it on this hero, I, I, I suppose. What's coming from his secret shop? Nothing. Just a what is he, casual what Helm? What are you building? It is Nullifier. Yeah. There's a Sacred Relic. Okay. I don't mind that too much. You need one solution to the decrep at least. Yeah. So that, that hasn't is really one been way. too big an issue here, but you never know if it... Now, it'd be stinging if that ends up being... They cover their bases. They Bob? cover their bases. Okay, X Nova's going to see him. This and Bob is going to get out in time. That's the uh, Ags, by the way, for Yopaj. He's got that ready to go. And a shield rune. It's a lot of extra HP for him to fight. Is it enough to take down a TB, though? No, that's a, it's a tall ask. It's a tall order. It's a very tall Radiant's ask. And for it's Boom... <laughs> They, they want this. Get this. Force of BKB. Oh, right, yeah, that's worth something. With, with the Aegis gone as well, Bob did get spooked into at least using the BKB. That's an uh, eight-second BKB now burned. And maybe a tier two tower going your way. Yep. They've got the push lined up. Not going to lose too much there. Their top is constantly shoved in by the terrible illusions, though. Eventually, someone's going to have to respond to the high ground pressure coming out here. From the Aegis is some serious push. I always forget about that. Yeah. Under attack. Just a ton those soldiers can do. And we have ourselves a pretty even game. Dyer's 1k lead, attack. boom. Uh, win probability is always slightly an execration side despite Boom taking huh. these leads. Well, to do it applause. something that certainly gives me a little bit more confidence in the execration lineup is that uh, Paulo's. Well, he's, he's finished his eye. Scotty, he's had that for a while, but now the BKB's Radiant on its way. Tower. If he can manage to BKB before Doom hits him, I don't believe they have the damage required to kill him. No. It feels think, really wrong. I think his armor is going to be a bit too high, even if Monkey does get off the Wukong. So long as he can walk away. Yeah. I guess that's what BKB sports allow him to do. That's that's, that's my thinking, anyway. He should be able to just bail out when that debuff unit is up and running. For Boom's part, I mean, Natsumi is just going all in on damage. Daedalus is set to come. He has got the recipe, just Dyer's waiting for that Demon Edge. And 400 attack. gold. So they're trying to cover some damage issues. My biggest issue still for Natsumi is that it doesn't feel like he has enough HP. Right, like yeah. even even in the Wukongs, we've seen him melt to the magical output. He sees Paulos. Paulos sees him. I think he's out. I mean, he's just way too mobile, to be honest. Look at him go. Ooh. Yeah, they. I mean, they're they're far too late. He's they're they're not catching him. That's because he has zero cooldown. Primal Spring, Jonathan. Yeah, can just dance around, no problem here. Heavy on the mana, but hey, if it gets you out alive, that's well worth it. Yeah, more than worth it here for Natsumi. Mm -hmm. Jumping across the map, back to the fountain, and execration. I mean, what's the next step for them? There's still a lot of room to grow here on Bob. I think that that's the one thing to watch out for. Maybe not so much in Tino, but your scaling in Bob and Palos is huge. Yeah. Like for Boom, sure, you've got the Doom. The Pangolier, it feels like Plateau is a little bit more now, and the Monkey King is still strong, but it doesn't feel like you have the best lineup to enable him. Like, yeah, you have to get a really good Static Storm and Kinetic Field, and we haven't seen that many traps from Boom to get more than one hero in those situations. We're going to make a play for it now. The new Roche is going to be respawning as soon as in 15 seconds, and he's going to have to be bottom for at least another three minutes. They've captured a Watcher, so Execration on... Oh, sorry, that was a neutral one. It was not an Execration Watcher. Execration, though, will smoke up, and we'll see what happens when two freight trains end up beating each other here. For now, Tino is one hell of a locomotive. No one wants to fight him. FBZ not sure if he wants to go back in either. As Yopash thinking about popping the Rolling Thunder, FBZ really eager there on the BKB. And perhaps that'll be the biggest difference maker here as they actually oh. have managed to find X. No, but he's just dead. Doesn't have buyback. On to two. Natsumi's out. There's the Doom as well. They are trying to kill them off here as Bob is forced to at least jump out of this fight. But everyone just walks out of Natsumi's. Wukong's command, thanks to the BKB from Palos. Will it make a difference? He's muted up. He has Sundered, but he's still doomed. He can't even fight here. Ah, but the auto attacks on the Yopage. It's good enough here. An execration. I think they've just punched their ticket into game three here, potentially, Jonathan. A four for nothing fight. Ah, no punishment coming out from Boom. They get clumped up. They lose X Nova early. You can't afford to drop your Disruptor. He does manage to get the Static Storm off, but it's not in the ideal position. It's not 
kind of setting up here. Monkey King to get this Wukong yeah. control. Like, you have to work as a unit here on Boom. Your lineup is, it's harder and harder to coordinate in comparison to Execration. The execution for Execration is a lot more straightforward. You have this Terrorblade that sits forward, you pile a shit ton of auras onto him, and you call it a day. Yeah, and now that's it. Like I said, he BKB, so he just has no problems leaving the Wukong's command. And then your damage is gone, honestly. Yeah, Nat it's... Natsumi just kind of left empty-handed there. If you can't stun him pre-BKB, it needs to be stunned into Doom. Yeah, it has to be. And this is where I take issue again with the support duo. I'm like, I get why Pugna's really popular. I get why Disruptor's really popular in the four, but it doesn't feel like these two Radiant's supports synergize with each other all too well. Mm. Like, it, you... You don't really set up for your team. Maybe you get a good glimpse back onto one, but at this point, it feels like anyone you catch out, that's a core you're going to have to Static Storm for, and that's just not always worthwhile. Your Pugna is down to just healing people and breaking illusions with a shard, which is still, again, a little bit useful, but your playmaking has to come out from Yopaj and FBZ, and it feels like, for the most oh, part, for this. I, I feel like FBZ's let us down a little bit. His dooms have yeah. not been great. And the auras have been... I mean, exactly Only what they the needed wind. to be. Honestly, whoa! Oh. Natsumi didn't like what he saw there. He's getting chased now by a monkey reflection. A monkey reflection. Yeah. Monkey reflection. Monkey see, monkey hit. And solve. Monkey, yeah, monkey see, monkey hit. That's exactly right. We're just going to go top lane here in just 40 seconds, and it seems like Execration... I'm not sure, actually, because he's up now. I'm not sure if Execration are aware of that or if they purposely are doing this because they don't want to fight down here anymore. Boom, getting a pretty nice wrap around. It's not saying he does jump in one of the trees. He's a tree on a tree now. But it's Boom who are still looking for the right initiation, and there they go in. They're gonna actually drop the Doom here onto Tino. They'll be able to blow him up rather quickly. He has a buyback, however, and will use it immediately, coming back into the outpost so he can give his auras to the rest of his team. Boom. Seem like now having committed two ultimates, they're gonna try and back away from this fight. They don't like their odds anymore. Yopaj bolt TP, but nothing here to cancel it, I believe. So he's off and away. X Nova not as lucky, will die. Not so he is forced to BKB now as he is being pursued by three enemy heroes. Looking to now turn the damage oh onto the supports. You jump in, I jump you. Not so however, in trouble. They have the damage for him, and my goodness, Tino just beats him to a pulp. Did you see the damage there? That's a lot of damage coming in wow. to Natsumi right there. And that should give them the room now to finish up Roshan once they head up top. Palos under no pressure in the world. He still has Metamorphosis, still has this BKB. He should be able to just find the objectives they want. No pressure again. Boom. It felt like a decent fight. Having to doom the Underlord is never a fantastic feeling, but... It made sense. It makes sense. You he have was, to take out the Auras. He was so problematic. Yeah. You just have to take the Auras out. It's down to FBZ to get that done. They do commit a little bit too much for that. Again, not having counterplay now for the Roche happening up top. Boom's going to have to try to hold a high ground against that. Execration rallying well in this game, too, though. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is a, a crucial moment for them, right? The last kind of five minutes for them taking control of this bottom area, defending the wards, committing the buybacks, getting their auras off the BKBs. It's looked good for them. It's looked really good for them here. And, well, they're going to be rewarded now with second Roche Aegis and Cheese to their inventories, making the next high ground siege that much scarier for Boom, who at the very least didn't have to really commit buybacks for that kind of a fight. So Natsumi uh, still holds on to his. It's FBZ and Yopaj currently without buyback by a fair margin as well. A thousand gold needed for both of them so that they're comfortable, uh, you know, dying first in these fights, looking for some sort of an engagement. I mean, items as well, they're not going to stop coming. I mean, Talos, he certainly hasn't really had damage problems before, but with a Daedalus soon to be completed for him. Oh, he's going to have getting so scary. The control onto Bob exacerbated now with the Acceptor purchase. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard game for Boom. Like, it feels like you have so many heroes you have to doom up. You have to take care of the Ember to pin him down. You have to take care of the Underlord to take away the Auras. You have to take care of the Terrorblade because it's the Terrorblade. I, at this point, I'd actually really want um, the Refresh is a good idea from FBZ. Honestly, the Ags. Just play with the Ags. You've got Kinetic Field Static Storm anyway. Trap them in, doom them all up with a Static Storm on top and the Wukongs on top. And that's your play. Granted, it does require Execration to make a massive mistake in that you're clumping up into all these AoE. But it feels like the biggest, the the biggest play you can get from Boom now to real control back into this game. Flames will spread thrice. 
I'm just trying to remember now, because I know one of these two is dispellable. The guard active, I think, is dispellable from Crimson Guard, which is pretty big, honestly. Um, I'm trying to double check that, though. But I believe Crimson Guard buff Don't is actually dispellable. I believe all barriers are dispellable, aren't they? Well, they might have changed that with the shield update, haven't they? Because I know Pipe is a shield now. Mm. What is this? Not too sure. Yeah, you can dispel this, I believe. Any dispel will get rid of it. That's fair. Which is uh, pretty good uh, on the AoE Doom, because I believe every time you get Doomed, you apply dispel, dispel, right? I believe so. So basically, believe so. you're going to lose that, because, I mean, your, your damage is physical, right? I mean, yeah. the pipe is, is good at, at neglecting a lot of the Pugna and, and the Disruptor chip, for sure, but it's mostly not zooming. So yeah. if you get rid of that pipe and make his job even that much easier, I mean, that's that's not a bad play whatsoever. There's t crep there. It's ever going to make life as annoying as possible. So I've got plenty of disarms here, at the very least, for the Terra Blade. Off Dream Core online for the Pangolier, so he's really starting to spam out these spells as well. In he goes on the Rolling Thunder, the Blink on in, Natsumi on his mark as well. This time, though, the, the uh, Aegis is on Paulo, so he's going to respawn. Did not have a Sunder target there. Bob diving in after the support, but they set up the Wukong's Commander. That's a big ol' ring. He's level 25 already. The Doom is waiting for him, but he does at least get the BKB and now a four staff out from his allies. Yopaj continuing to chase, but doesn't have a Basher. Natsumi not caught there by the Pit of Malice and finds oh, his huge. man. A huge hold from Broom Esports. Tino is not even going to be able to make it out alive either as Xnova had the glimpse for him. Boom, hold the high ground execration, run up there with a cheese and Aegis, and are still rebuked. That is that is massive from Boom. Really good openings found there by Yoposh to jump in with that roll and to blink forward. And the follow through this time works around for Natsumi. He's got that. That was him with a fresh MKB. So he takes care of that evasion, takes a huge chunk Radiant's of the EHP on Natsumi away. And they just clean up. No buyback on the Underlord. Whoa. That is still his dieback duration out there. Death on Natsumi. There's no BKB here on Ember Spear, but he's got a Remnant. But now he's all the way back top lane without a TP. Uh, how much structure damage are we looking at here? A this fair bit. Funky. He pushes fast, especially when he avoids those arrows. TP back up in 18 seconds, but doesn't have meta for further 30 after that. No one minds here. Boom playing it really safe, though. They feel like they've gained a foothold back in this game game, pardon me, and are keen not to throw away what they fought so dearly to hold on to. Now they're go they're gonna have a hard time in a follow through fight, although Doom is back up from FBZ. Yeah, it's got like another Doom. Been too scared of That's what I mean. I mean, there. there's no meta for still 20 more. It, it, I wouldn't, you know, pools closed, don't go diving is what I would yeah. say for Boom, yeah. but let's say stick around, get yourself those yeah, have a wobble, right? I mean, I guess, yeah, there's a fortify up. I, it's fine, it's a safe move. They feel like, again, they've got a foothold back in this game. You don't need to punch that into a whole, you know. A whole new world, no need. Yeah, no that. need, no need this early on. You've got the refresh up now as well for FBZ, so a simplified process in taking these fights. There's no Lincoln, so the double yeah. doom will always feel useful onto And a shield rune, your favorite rune, John. My favorite rune, just scales nicely. 1,600 shield, I mean, it's nice. Techies has his shard now. What's this one again? It's the, oh yes, reactive taser on yeah. allies. Is that a big deal? Eh. It can be annoying for a Monkey King, to be That's fair. That's true. Especially now that BKB is down to six seconds, you're always going to have a way to disarm this guy for a very long time if you're not careful. Damage as well, six second buff duration. Let's see how this ends up They're looking for high ground now. They're giving it a go. Execration. They're going to smoke out. Ooh, they're going to hit him with a Fright Train, but the Blink out in time. They still managed to find a dupe once again here on Tutino. Let's get a couple of his buffs off, but he's still going to be killed so easily. Bob, though, onto the back lines, nuking through both supports before they finally turn on. Oh, There's going to be the second dupe. They've caught Bob and they've has killed him. Buyback. He has buyback. A three for two trade. Shanks bought back extremely quickly here. It's a lot of gold, by the way. I'm going to kill up easy. 800 gold into his coffers, but a further 700 into the funds for Boobie. Esports as they've turned what used to be Jonathan a well only a 4k net worth lead has all of a sudden uh, transpired into an 8k net worth lead for them so they've that's a swing of 12 Ah, it's a swing of 12. It's a huge one. Very quick math Very from quick NA. Very quick math on NA representing the, the NA maths. NA's fastest mental math. NA maths in Southeast Asia now. Hell yeah. That is what we're here for. This is 
it's a Thanks. it's a good bounce back from Boom. I mean, they've got the butterfly out in Natsumi. He's looking like a very scary carry now. Oh, just not realizing that rhyme. It's a pretty nice uh, oh, big pentameter right there as well. Carlo in trouble. Oh, he's gonna actually turn to fight this. This is a three versus five oh, fight, boy, and I think Carlos he realizes he is out of his depth. Boom Esports, they're taking their sweet time, though. Looking for the techies first. They've dealt with him. Paulos as well. Now Invis gets the Glimmer Cave. Now the BKB active. There's a Doom in 10 more seconds. Paulos still keen to fight. They're not wanting to give him a Sunder target as Tino has now just respawned. But Yopaj is in underneath the Tier 2 tower. That's good damage. Not somebody decides to join him. The water's warm. Come on in, he says. Tino pulled back in into the Pit of Malice. Dying to two heroes. There's the Life Trade on him as well. Still alive. Gets the four staff out. 30 HP before he falls. Has buyback. May have to use it. Natsumi is not going to go that crazy on in. But I cannot believe how quickly things have spiraled into the Boomba camp this game, Jonathan. Yeah, it's, they see this opportunity all coming in from that fight up top, and they seize that on opportunity. They play it safe in the, on the high ground push. They get a couple of diebacks. Bit of a scary spot for Natsuki, but he does get four staffed away. The, Oh, oh, okay. Force him in. Scary. He gets off the Wukong command, but he's just gonna die. He's just dead. But uh, does it really what? matter? They've got the Doom off onto the TV. Can they take him down? Becomes the question. Could SPZ? He's just not doing enough damage with the rolling thunder. Oh, oh Yopaj has got him. Bob, though, eager for revenge. Yopaj out of mana, simply running for his life. Will leave a gem in his wake. As Boom Esports do end up getting cut out just a little bit here, John. How much more will they lose as supports now? A, a time to tell as old as time. Bob chasing down the supports. He's not going to find him. That is very unfortunate for the side of Boom. Again, that Spirit Vessel still does wonders up against that Monkey King. Just dies. Yeah, and he only has the Black King bar to protect himself. It's on cooldown. Doesn't have anything else to play with. No dispels on hand from any of his teammates. He's just so reliant on getting off the Jinko Master. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. What? Well, well, well. Stop the presses. Yes. He doesn't have buyback. Yeah, he doesn't have buyback. He, I'm not sure no, no, no. what you, you got. We didn't know the we didn't know the take of that. He doesn't have buyback. Go ahead. He doesn't have buyback. Oh, there it is. He doesn't have buyback. <laughs> this is big. It is for sin, but are they aware that he doesn't have buyback? It might be Bob's going to be able to BKB off the static storm. Is forced back though. The Rolling Thunder a bit too spooky. Carlo stuck on the high ground, but forces himself into the low ground now. Shanks going on in as well, but it's still 10 seconds until the TV is back. Up to a portal. So let me in this fight a bit faster oh, than perhaps we were ready for this. Buyback now all of a sudden, by the way, for the Monkey King. But there isn't one for Yopaj. Down he goes. A Doom again reserved for Tino. He can actually try and get through his portal, but he's glimpsed on back into the kinetic field now. Held down his Zephyr. Self past the Recuperify. There's a Sunder to save him. A heal for Paulos as the push, the siege is sustained stand so far for Execration. They're eager to go for more. Bob, 40 gold shy, bye bye, Natsumi, he's in! Pops the BKB early on, but they know there's no buyback. They pop back on the Pangolier. He's just died back. So they're just gonna wait out the BKB, John. They're gonna go back in. This is ugly. Boom. Just a couple of small mistakes being punished hard by Execration. They still got those Wukongs. No Doom. There is a refresh for FPZ, but Doom on cooldown for 40. You want the double cast. The big life drain. Not going to do enough. Not big enough. 70 seconds until Pango is respawned. Four versus five until then, John. Bottom lane is going to be last for Execration, but certainly with a whole nother minute to go and no further fortifies. I mean, this is this is at least Megas. This and is going what used to be, what, a, almost a uh, NA's fastest map. A 12k and a word lead here for Boom Esports has just swung back up 5k for Execration right now, and we're not done. We're not off of Execration's wild ride yet. No, we aren't. Still ready to go to Wukong. Whoa, to FPZ, play. he's in. Now they missed the stun as well. What did they no, do? What they happening? Do? Oh, they do the illusion. Oh, Jonathan. Oh. Oh, boom. Oh, it's a disaster. Oh, th this is... Oh, they, they, missed, they missed everything. They can't. They missed everything. They, they can't it's do It's as this. if they were trying to miss everything on purpose. They executed perfectly on that. They executed perfect on the miss. They've got the refresh Doom ready at the very least here, but no Wukongs for quite oh, a while. Oh, that Sunder on the Zephyr just puts all of his work to waste now as they lay waste to the building. This will be Megas. They do have at least 
The Pango up is five more seconds. They're in yet again. The refresh on the Doom Hoop. They fought once again. It's Tino. Natsumi fighting versus Palos. Palos. Oh, he got the cheese off, though. The cheese put the defender's game. Oh, he Locks can't run through that. He can't run through he it. Can. Oh, and down he goes. They still haven't got Megas either. Bob, he's too busy killing the supports. Refreshers, he throws two remnants out of that boy. He's off the high ground. No, he's going back in. He's unpredictable. Bob takes down X Nova. He's got no buyback. Maybe looking for the Megas. They found yet another kill. There's tier fours that are going down as well, but there's also execration heroes that are dying. FPC has no doom. They need damage to cancel his TP, and they don't have enough of it. Dyer's Holy moly. This game is off the rails. Uh, execration, they are still in a good spot. <laughs> Mega Creep's being held onto here by one range racks down oh, bot. 200 HP. That thing is not going to HP. That's the difference right oh, now. For up. At the end. Not soon just goes for it. He can do this. Put his monkeys. With his, uh, with the Wukongs, the gang, all around him. What the heck? Can we, can we just very quickly open the net worth grab? But wait, oh, what? I got. Oh yeah, I got very confused for a moment. Yeah, so did I. Don't worry. I was like, huh? Yeah. Uh, can we, can we open the net, the, 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 the graph real quick there, over there? Can we open that, that graph? Let's see, let's see this win rate if we could. Oh, are we, are we fighting? I just kind no. of pointed at the pit. No, not fighting. Shanks is just trying to be obnoxious. Certainly, we. They've got here this fast. But this, this graph. It's something. It's something. It is quite the ride. This is a, a ride straight up for, for Giant Times Square. Uh, it really is. That's a spooky <laughs> ride right there. Very spooky Sp ride. Allegedly. The Dizzy Izzy. Allegedly. That uh, Neil and Sophie has had good memories of. That good old Dizzy Izzy. The only ride we <laughs> felt like we'd die on. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly felt like we died. Alleg no, we, we really did feel like we died. Yeah, that yes, ride. that yes. was not a safe ride. <laughs> allegedly, it wasn't a safe. <laughs> allegedly, it wasn't a safe. My uh, my in your opinion. My opinions were allegedly. <laughs> there it is. Okay, yeah. just need to cover ourselves from. <laughs> that's a big building, Brajaya Times Square. Okay, that is a big one. <laughs> the, the road cruiser is nice. To be fair, I will I will defend. There it is. There it is. See. Positive reviews. Positive reviews. Overall. And this this game, you know, positive reviews for me. Thirty-two I, to thirty, but I mean, I would, my I would goodness. Not know about that. Whoa, whoa, hold on, Paulus and and Yo, nope. uh, that's Yopage on a bit of a spooky. collision course. It's a bit spooky. Not too. Spooky. What's not to like about this game? Back and forths, big team fights. I think if you're a fan of either imperfection team, on spell cast, exactly keeps, keeps the it. fight interesting. It is interesting for a neutral party. If you're a fan of either team, if you're one of your managers, That's, like if you're, I imagine, yeah. if you're Lane or if you're Jovi right now, you are not happy. Right. Not you're, only do you not have your suitcase, it's been no. lost again. Yes, exactly. But well, the boys aren't making your life any exactly. easier, you know? You've they're only like, got one pair of underpants that can't make you brown yeah, them now. Yeah, they're, they're, they're browned up. <laughs> you know how fun? Who's watching out there? Probably not feeling great. Jovi, I think Jovi's actually a little bit more laid back. He's probably okay. just relaxing. There it is. Up. But That's I mean, fine. if you're a fan of Dota, John. If you're a fan of Dota, this, this is like... just everything you love about C, isn't it? Yeah. Bit of back and forth. Have, yes. we, have we shown them the graph yet? Because we need to I show them know. the graph. Oh, like oh, 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 no way. This is straight out of TI? I don't believe this. I don't, oh, they are doing it. Uh, they All are. right, Mega uh, Creeps uh, are up. Wait, will will are they? they? Will they? The armor? Is it? It's no, too much. it's not. They've had to bail. No Mega Creeps. All right, well, that was your one opportunity to really, truly sneak it, and they failed there. That's interesting. Oh, oh this but it may not matter. There's a Scythe of Ice on this pot. She is farmed. Very farmed. Not able to capitalize on it, but still it's smoked up. Uh, Yopaj would be big if they caught him out here. <laughs> it would be. Shanks is, sorry, I think that Palos has uh, cleared the wave top. Bottom barracks are under attack. Oh. Natsumi finds a techie. He's is going to be disarmed. Four What's steps away. Doing? The Scythe of Vice is going to be looking to turn this out. So he gets off the beginning doing? just in the nick of time, but he's still going down. Gets off the Wukong's command. In What's goes Wukong as well. They found Bob. Bob is dead. They caught him with a dude. He's got to find that. But Natsumi, Natsumi, he's still alive. This tree, they can't be taken down. Shanks throws the arrow and he can find him. What? He, the triple arrow. He Kobe'd him. Thrice oh. the chance to stay. He is immediately punished for that. Bob's back in this fight as well. They catch the kill on the Paulus in the meantime, by the way. Paulus is not buying back. He's holding on to it because he does not have another metamorphosis. What in the world? What are we looking at now? Jonathan, what are we looking at? I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I, I am not sure how... How did Paulus even die? He just melted. Natsumi was so close to dying himself. Man, just 
died to 14 Wukong command hits. Yeah, it's just all the right clicks and the monkeys around, the Wukongs, the gang. You know, it's uh, I was talking earlier, I think, to Winter, you just have to hit him 50 times. It's pretty easy when you have like 40 monkeys, even if you were disarmed by the taser. He's about to hit his level 30 talent. Bob, a pretty fancy juke there on the slide of 50. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, I, believe, I can't believe, I cannot believe what I've just seen. My man took a oh, thousand damage from Techie's I, I cannot believe that. This can't be real. This Jonathan. game is not real. Oh, he, he, got not a, real. he got assassinated. Ah, that, that even did out. The greatest sacrifice. They're going to build statues of Shanks. <laughs> you know that. He holds off. Nick. Just one lane of Rax is all that Boom's finds. That was Carlo. The Megas. That was Carlo with the Mega. Carlo feeling himself. Yo, Carlo's always got a big, fanciful smile on oh, his wall. My lord. Oh, I'm sure he's grinning ear to ear right now. If only we could see him. If only. Oh, 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 there they, they go. Oh, they, got they got the Megas. Can oh, they punish oh, them, oh, though? Oh, oh the Palos is out. Uh, Tino is going to be left behind, still trying to take the portal, but I believe the stuns. No, the stuns. Is it not no enough? Limbs. He's just out of there. Is it not? Oh. It's not enough. Oh I, no! They have gotten out of their execration with the tips, and that's now Megas going the way towards execution. What's your graph saying about that? Fifty-three uh, percent. All right. Look, I mean, look, it's it's spiking back up though. I mean, uh, the twists and turns on this ride, boom! They're looking to barrel it right back down mid. Techies did have to make the greatest sacrifice of them all there. Doesn't that have buyback? But how much is it going to matter here? I mean, I, I, I actually cannot believe I saw that. I do not. I cannot. By Fat. the way, in case you're wondering how he dies so quickly, each consecutive mine that you get hit reduces your match resist by 25%. And they yeah. fully, I don't know additively, but they do stack. They do stack. As in, like, it doesn't just refresh that yeah. five second yeah. debuff. It they, stacks up. You, it stack oh, well, it how stacks do you, up. How do you just find a dupe? How huh? are you just farming 54 minutes what into the game is... here? He, he finished farming them. Huh? <laughs> he finished farming at least the ancient. So, you know, mission accomplished. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. We got him. <laughs> it's not, that's not exactly what you want to get. He's just farming there. No, he, it's, it's 54 minutes in the game. He's fully slotted up. All he wants is a swift blink, but is that worth your life? Uh, Definitely not. Well, buyback's still ready. Buyback is ready. Bob doesn't have a buyback, though. There's four buybacks left for Boomy Sports, who are facing down the Megas. They're hoping for the game, too. Go to fans, maybe open for a game three. I don't know what I'm hoping for right now. I hope I can just understand this next fight. Fortify's already out. A little leap in. Force Staff is going to avoid somehow all three arrows not connecting onto anything. Mega is about to start filtering in as well through the bottom and top lanes here. So, boom, a bit on a timer here, but they'd be happy maybe with just the buyback out from Palos. What can they get, though? Rolling Thunder charged up. Yo, Pasha sides. This is the one. In he goes. He's going to have to go pretty deep to find anyone. Finds two stuns. Monkey King going in from behind, at least trying to get a little bit of something here. Has Refresher Shard for himself, by the way. Has PKB and Wukongs only for the mid lane of Barracks. They're still bottom, though. So we're not on Megas on Megas action quite yet. FBZ, he's gone back down bottom as well to push out the waves. And with 10 seconds left until Palos respawns, boom, are going to call it quits on this push. I mean, uh, for Execration's sake, you save the buyback and your Terror Blade once more. You force out the early refresh from FBZ so he doesn't have that for a minute 20. Now you have to deal with the techie sags as well. Yeah. And Carlo is actually pretty damn scary if you can keep All right, getting these crazy plays off. Dota Plus gives us a an 8% edge uh, right now for execution. Uh, uh. What do you believe about that? What do you think? 8% lead for execration. Do you still give Boom around a 40% chance to win this game? I think you do. I, I think it's fair to give that. I think your chances skyrocket once FBZ has Ags up and into the Blessing. So the Ags AoE Doom twice over is probably your end game scenario here. And it doesn't feel like execration should have counterplay for that. And that 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 is the big one, and we need to watch oh. out for. Is anyone stacking up any lotuses? By the way, I see one great I lotus. I not see it. I don't see any big ones though. We're and not getting a a, block cheese. There's a couple. Of, there's two. Wait, hold on. There's a great lotus stacked up already inside Execration Space. I mean, oh. look. If, if this keeps going, that is enough for one. They still need a whole nother. What is it? The tree greater yeah. healing, right? The tree of yeah, I think you need plus the block cheese, plus the cheese plus the itself, cheese, and then you get the shield. I mean, that'd be huge for Tino. That would be. Where does why but... does Bob have this much HP? Where is this coming from? Why does Bob have this much HP? Three point seven. 
He's got uh, That is a good question. That is a lot. Probably just all the stats from Gleipnir. 2.6 per Kaisan. level. Kaya Sanj plus 6. Ags. Gleipnir's a lot. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of stats. It's a lot of stats. And what else is a lot of? Tier 5 neutrals Ooh. are a lot of stuff as well in three minutes. You know what's not a lot of, though? Changes to them. I think they're mostly yeah, no, the, same the same as what we've seen. Right, even a 733. Oh, Shanks, oh, hello. Oh, yeah. Nova finds the glimpse. There's no BKB on the top. A bad kitty off the counter. Away you go. No buyback. That's a pretty big take. And no Roche either for Execration. It's a long one. Two minutes. Mm, that could be a bit rough for either side. So oh, no. oh, FBZ. He's just into the pit. Oh, he's blowing oh, up the mines what? himself. Playing a bit of hey, mines. Sweeper. Here they go. What? Oh, they found Paul. What? They just doomed him. Oh, he's dead. He doesn't have no buyback. Oh, no, he's got buyback at three goals. Uh, okay, he's got okay, buyback. Okay. A second doom, though. The refresh that cancels Tino's TP. Bob, he might feel spurred into action. And he does. He's killing support. That's what he got. That's a lot of damage. Doomy. Oh, he goes down. Carlo blows him to Kingdom Come. Come, not Where's so many half buyback. They get a TP out in time. Palos also buys back. But now it's Yopash rolling around in these fights. Tino barely alive now. He's going to summon the Fiend's Gate and he's going on home. It's going to allow his teammates as well. The event of Palos is here as well. Yopash is going down. He's going down fast. He gets out. He took the damn twin gate. He's out of here. What oh, they're, they're chasing after him. <laughs> <laughs> this is. You forced the buyback out from Palos. That is huge. It is. And you forced the, the metamorphosis as well. Yeah. And Roche is not going to be up for another this is minute. Bad. This is very bad. They're going to have to fight Roche down bottom. They, they're going to have to chase down. They're going to have to wait it out. They, they have to force Natsumi's buyback right now. They have to get something. You bought back on Palos. They can't take that risk, though. Stop farming the camps. I mean, what can they do? Metamorphosis is about to fall down. They don't have a refresh. No ags up uh -huh. on Palos. So oy, oy, oy. you can't just rush in. They're held back. Now, to be fair, you don't have Doom up on Boom's end for quite a fair bit of time. FBZ wants the Ags, doesn't but he, have but enough he, buyback for the Ags and buyback. Busting. Yeah, he needs buyback. His buyback is real expensive as well. It is. We're 30, late 3,200, so he's a lot more money here. Roche is up in 14 seconds. Now, do you believe a TB without meta can clear a Roche in 30 seconds? 30 seconds. I mean, it doesn't look like it because, I mean, it's not going to be 30 seconds because he's running away from the pit. No. Radiant but I think scanning. with Demon Zeal, you can actually clear it, clear it reasonably fast on Terra Blade. It's not too bad. Oh, he's running. He's, he's zooming. Running I mean, it's going to be like 10 seconds in that pit. You might as well take the gate bottom, I believe. Yeah. But yeah, okay. you're back up on Atsumi. All right. So you're able to chase. They're going to contest this. So does Roche change to an Ag's Blessing when he runs bottom, or does it depend where he spawns? I think it... Where is he? That's, that's something I always forget. I feel like when Oh, yeah, it does. Spots. 60 minutes. He's yeah. just got Ag's Blessing now. Okay. That's a big one. All right. Do right. Boom need to contest this? Is it, el yes. is it absolutely necessary? If they want to win, then yeah. If you kill Palos here before the right, Roche Vaults, that's the win. Look at the vision here. Well, the techies oh. mines, the ward setting everything off. Execration know exactly where they are. Boomer's just standing on a ward. Oh, they got the D ward, though. Clutch move by Xnova, but an arrow onto, onto Natsumi. No one making the jump. Fake hype. No one making the jump quite yet. And check out, dude, look at, Carlo must be having a wonderful time. He's just pinging his minefield sign. He's like, let them come. Yeah, that, that's just, it just chokes you out. He's just playing the, the techies equivalent of 300, you know? Yeah. Come and take them. Come and take this Roche. That's the pass right there. Can't get through it. Can't get through it. To be Paulus, fair. Still farming the jungle. To be fair, he's looking for tier five tokens. They found two. Yeah, Boone needs a couple of them. What's, what's well he now. gonna pick up? What's he gonna? He's got a he's got a token in his inventory, which by oh, the way, no X Machina has a mana cost now, three fifty mana. So it's big though. Refreshes oh, oh, all of his oh. items. They're going in. That's a static storm. That's a techies. Maybe even dead for the count. Down he goes. He's got a buyback now. They need a little bit more though. They need a little bit more for Boom, and they can't leave the base for too long. Yopaj has bots too, so he's able to clear the waves pretty quickly. As the smoke is going to at least conceal the movements of Boom, not scouted by the arrow. Commitment. Big commitment, but they have AoE Doom. They, they just refresh. refresh. Who did they refresh on? Is that not Sumi? He just used so, the refresher yeah. card, right? Yeah. Okay, low on mana now, but they're into the Roche Pit. They're not committing on the Metamorphosis quite yet either. 
Oh. No, is in. There's going to be the Doom. They found a Doom. They once again Doom the Techies. They really hate this Techies, man. Oh, but they're on the not. Somebody hexed up, needs to fight back, and he is. Damage, and the Jiggy Last Tree, they heals. Is it going to be enough? The Rolling Thunder what? from Yo Punch is not big. It's not as big as it needed to be. Palos gets the BKB off, standing his ground and fighting. He's going to find himself Doom, and kills off. Does not have no fight back. Shot back. He is down for the count, and not Sumi. Oh, he is man. jumping his way back into this fight. Big stun's there, but Shanks isn't going to make it out, because not Sumi's back from beyond the grave to punish you. Two for two. So far, anyway, as Bob is just running from his life, I cannot believe the state of this game. Oh, oh no, no, oh, no, 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 I mean, like. the Megas, right? The lanes are all pushed in, so it'll take a while it is, longer. It is awkward. But this is Boom's moment. This is their chance to just put an end to this nonsense once and for all. Axe busting down there as well. I believe FBZ's Axe was sniped in the courier. What? Oh, it looks if like I, it. Uh, who cares? Right. Just eat it. Just and eat just it now. You got a free one. Yeah, just sell the other one. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, I know. Well, actually, I don't think you need to sell the other one, right? Because I think it refunds you the money if you pick it up from Roche. Really? Yeah. That's it. I think so. I did not know that. All right. We'll see. Fair enough. We'll see. I mean, at this point, I mean, they've got so much money. They need to make a move. This respawn's coming out. No. Really no. You oh. don't just get caught like that. God. You don't just get caught like that. The game yes, sense. Yes, back. The war that is going to expire you now. Boom Esports. They're punished. They're cataclysmically in top. position Some to make the right moves this game, to make the Megas come back, the first Megas come back of this SCA DPC Tour. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, a, it's a long road there, but they are in position. They just need one. Well, they, look at this bot just, lane, though. They just need to knock look it four staffed into mines. Yeah, that's, that uh, is the, that's a big ask. I this, mean, this is a nightmare. Like, look at mid. I mean, it's no, just not so much. Oh, okay, not soon. Stay still. Is it active? It's not active, is it? It's not active. Not active. Not active. Yeah, it only gets forced in. No, 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 okay. no, no, no. Opsu Wukong Subat fighting through this one. Forced out, still. getting out. Natsumi taking a lot of damage, though. Oh, my goodness, the damage is that for keeping him topped up. Natsumi, no. Okay, he's got a little bit of a life drain now. And he's going to be healed back up. The Doom as well. They managed to find one of this because Paulo is trying to end the freaking game. As is Tino. The fight's breaking down. They're going oh, to no. kill the monkey once with a throw and expose. Half HP. It's not good enough. Paulo, he's failed on his mission. Mission, mission Impossible taken down. Monkey King killed off with the same hand, though. So how much does it really matter? x nothing he can do here, as that's Tino trying to end the game oh with a fruitless effort, God. as he is going to be the second to fall. Oh. And once again, Jonathan, we're at a this stalemate. Is, they can't end the game. This is purgatory. This is amazing. I didn't even know. I heard the Doom. Shout out to the Observer, who caught the whole damn thing. But Palos went in for the killing blow. And merely manages to what? Get tier fours? Ah, uh, yeah. Looks like it. The last tier four gone. Uh, Boom still has no neutrals. That's a big difference maker right now. They need some neutrals up. Get those tier fives going, boys. We are in a Dota purgatory. Hell yeah. This is this is this is damnation. All right. Over under 50% win rate for Boom right now, according to Dota Plus. What do we got? Uh, win rate for Doom? Oh. We're... No, no. For for Dota Plus. For Dota Plus. For Boom. Boom, I would say, you can see, I'm kind of taking a guess. Yeah, I can see. For He's got boom, his eyes closed, by the way, Jets. 40%. Well, you think, you think 40%, wow. Uh, uh, let's, what was it? 60% for Exit? It is a 75% now for Execration after the dieback. Oh, okay, that's big. Lanes are getting pushed out, though. FBZ, FBZ, you madman, under the cover of the ninja gear. If, if, that's so scary. Well, just, just devour an ancient. You get a, you get a guaranteed tier five from that. Get your bloody tier fives out. Get what devour an ancient. You what literally, it's guaranteed. Oh, it's not guaranteed because it's not Midas, but yeah, it's so higher cool. chances. Higher chances. Get it done. Boom! They're not taking tier five. They're fives. not getting it done. This is, this is an embarrassment. It's like um. Our one would be very. You know, you know how you got like the Mennonites who like don't you know they live as simply as possible. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. It's like that for boom. You know they're on a they're on a diet. Even Techies has his tier five neutralized. Ah, uh, please, please, boom. Do you wanna win? Get your tier fives. Clear some camps. They refuse. They, they refuse to absolutely win. refuse. And this game, 
Jonathan. Is, uh, We're going to take another roll I... into Chaos Island. Let's, let's take a look at net worth just real quick, just to see how know. much this Doom is really <sighs> scaling. 51k net worth. Yo, Posh, 46k. It's a 30k net worth lead here for Boom. That's ridiculous. But they have no objectives. They can't take high And look at, the look at the support diff. Shanks is more farmed than Tino now. Zephyr and X Nova combined barely start scratching the net worth of Shanks. That's wild. They've got to find a way to make this work. Look at the plant. They're smoking in. They're smoking in. They're smoking this in, Jonathan. Scary. This could be it. They see FBZ. That's Demon Zeal activated another Doom. Oh They're gonna my try God. and follows. Man has one objective in mind. Tino as well. Yes, Look back. at it. They've gone for the back door. They've tried to, to crap pincer it, but Palos is just instantly deleted, and the rest of the team is gonna fall in his wake. What? What are they doing? They're just throwing Hail Marys at the damn thing. Yeah, they're, they're done with this game. They want it over with. They know they're stuck in Dota Purgatory. No one wants to I be in Dota believe... Purgatory. What are you, you got like two auto attacks off on the thing. That's it. And now no buyback in techies. You have buyback they, in Terribly. You don't want need, to pop that. They need a better game plan than that. They just need they do. a better game plan. They are in control. They've got the Megas, no tier force. They just need to be patient, or not patient, but coordinate a fight here. Because Boom scared. can't even go out and take their tier fives for some damn reason. Oh we're, my god. Three they, minutes in. They still don't have still tier five. Zero out you know, of five. I respect it, though. Maybe their coaches like never hit creeps past 45 minutes ah, unless you need buyback. That, that could be the Mushi way. I don't believe it is, but it could be. Uh, uh, Mush coach, I, uh, Mush, I thought you said. Maybe he whips their hands if they farm too much. That's right. That's right. I mean, hey, it's gotten Paulus killed a couple times. He not. Now, he has buyback, doesn't have bots, so he's going to be dependent on actually using that Fiend's Gate in. So the threat of the rat is only active with they, Fiend's Gate. They need to be able they, to respond to it. But they buffed Ancients a while ago, didn't they? It's got a ton of armor now. Oh my god, Natsumi. Oh my, oh my what god, what are you god. doing? Natsumi. What the fuck Natsumi. are you doing? Natsumi! When will you, when will you learn? When Why? Will you learn? Oh my god. Have you... Monk. He's he's counterplayed this this before. He just stood still. Stay still. Monkey see, monkey do, monkey die, monkey go boom. Monkey go boom. That's it. He just can't stop. It's in the name. Monkey go boom. Oh, I can't believe. At I, least farm your neutral. I just I get a point. tier five. Get a bloody tier five for God's sake. Oh my! Sixty nine minutes into the game, Jonathan. It's not nice that they don't have a single tier five neutral. Have they not noticed? Why? Have they not noticed? Why did he just not? Just get him on the damn phone and just say, guys, right here, the tier fives. You, you kill him instantly. This is, yeah, please, please, just farm a camp. Please, uh, someone, uh, please. I've never been so excited to see a core farm a camp right now, but. It's not even I happening. I mean, okay, no monkey for 35. Is this a window? Is this is this, this how is the game the ends? There's no way this is how the game ends, right? Nothing. Surely. It's, it's Jonathan. Good. Oh, FBZ. Oh, FBZ. He's missed on the war stop. Now he's going to be hexed up. Oh, it's on as well. He's outside of the static storm. Out of the two backliners here, trying to get them to blow up rather quickly. But Paulo Satino, they're out onto the ancient. They're focusing down on the throat. They need to stop these guys right now. The doom, it's not going to be good enough. The monkey king no. blew up to the mines. The fortify doing anything they can to try and drag this out. But execute. They want to gain three. Monkey's up in Palos? eight seconds. It's Paulo. Palos? Palos is down. He needs to be no, It doesn't my matter. God. It doesn't matter. GG is called. Boom Esports. They cannot believe it. They can't believe it. The damage is just too high. As soon as back door's broken, they're in. Fortify or not, be damned. And the Monkey King dies to the mines for twice that game. And they, it just it loses it for them. They, 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 they lost it for them, John. He died twice. That's traumatic. That's. Why are they even going for the Megas anyway? Why don't you just get End the, the tier game. fours? I don't, I don't know. Boom are going to get their fingers whipped. Mushi is not going to be happy about that. Execration, they hold out really well. They played out really well. I, I don't know if they played it well or Boom just, I don't know. Both sides had an up and down game. That is a kind way to say it. I'm sure Winter will have some more to say. He's going to have some uh, more, I'm sure. He's going to have a lot one. to say. I just, I need to know for the life of me. Did they end the game with a, t a single tier five? They did not. They, they literally, did not. they literally, they literally, literally did not. They literally didn't end they the game with a single tier five neutral. I, I don't know how to explain that. I have no words for that end of that game, but I know someone. He's going to have a lot of words. He's great. And yeah. having a lot of words. A lot of words. It's Tsunami and the panel. Let's go throw it back over to them to try and break down this game. <laughs>
To think that I voluntarily took a week off from this. Why would I do such a thing? This was such a beautiful way to come back to the Southeast Asian DPC. Boom really treating me to a hell of a series, a hell of a game. Winter, you don't look as enthralled as I was. You seem less excited about the situation. Ah, uh, just another day at the office. Just another day. <laughs> you punch in, you walk into a few minefield signs, you punch out. Dude, he's from Boom Esports. He enjoys the boom, yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. The more explode, he gets paid per explosion. And on top of that, his name means summer, man. He's like the opposite of winter. He's doing this to spite winter. <laughs> now, now, now you guys understand why sometimes I give him a hard time, you know? Like, I see the small little things that he does. That was in, not a small little I, thing. I know, right? I'm not even talking about that, you know? I'm talking about the other small little things, and then he does that. A big, it, it big immediately thing. validates everything that I, says, I said about him. Like, it just doesn't make sense, you know? Like, you've been playing against the techies the whole game. Like, why would you actually think that there's like, no mines there? You just run up without your BKB and you just decide to, okay, let's go. I want to play an extra game. This is how I'm going to do it, man. <laughs> and then your teammates look at you. I mean, they don't even want to look at you after you do that. Look at me. I am the bomb, you know? And you can, you can talk about the early game, right? You, you, <laughs> what early you, game? You don't even want, you don't even want to okay. understand why he's buying a battle for it, is he? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, like, why a lot of Monkey King players, you can dominate the early game, but you're going for Fury, in which, especially in a game where you're not going to outscale the enemy team, like, they have Underlord, they have Ember, they have TB. Even Mirana with items in the late game is pretty darn annoying. So, what about to cleave down illusions? I mean, it was already amazing that the they... TB was nothing. The TB was nothing. That's and true. if he was something, the Doom would just doom him and then like call it a day, man. You just need to kill the Ember and the Underlord. That's it. Like the only reason the game lasted that long is because of all the mistakes. Like earlier when the Terrible was supposed to end the game with his timing, they they kind of when they were pushing high ground, he died a couple of times in a row, and the game just dragged on so long, you know. And even then, I feel like he still had a chance, you know, like for the Monkey King item build. He needed that Abyssal really, really badly. He was dying in fights because he was busy chasing this TB out of his team's formation, and then he dies as well. Like, you, you can't trade your life for the TB, you know. Either you ignore the TB, obviously you can't because you chose the better Fury Path, or you kill him fast enough that you don't have to trade your life for it. Yeah, th th that's how I feel about this Monkey King. I mean, the countless stuns that he missed and the yeah. countless mines that he stabbed on, those are not even like the important things. I mean, they're kind of important, but it feels like he doesn't really understand when you look at the Dire lineup, the Boom's lineup, like what, what do you need to do against the uh, Excretion lineup? You, you should have a very clear idea on how you should itemize, when you should try to look to end the game with your hero, and when his hero is going to be stronger than you, you know? I just, I just feel like he's playing without even considering those factors, you know? He's just playing, oh, Hero shows up, I'm gonna jump on him, I'm gonna stun him, I'm gonna... Like, there's no, not much, like, strategy, you know? Like, he's just reacting and pressing his buttons. Like, look, oh, tss, please, no, man. <laughs> what? Right yeah. on top of the minefield sign. Why? <laughs> you, it, it's like a 150 unit activation to trigger the minefield. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, even, jumped right I mean, and even before that, right, there were a lot of high ground pushes where he could have just ran up. Uh, he ran up the high ground. He does, and then he it, gets uh, four-staffed. Pop his ulti. Hit the Rex! Hit the fucking Rex! Carlo single-handedly oh, dismantling no. that No man. way single-handedly, man. What are you talking about? All those four steps were all Carlo. Yeah, he had, a, he had a lot of help from the monkey. The true monkey. <laughs> I, I mean, they didn't... The production didn't need to change the MVP. I feel like you just need to change the hero portrait. That's all. <laughs> I feel the MVP this game definitely was Natsumi. I mean, that you, you can tell like, that there are a lot of like problems within this team. That's the same problems from like uh, Tour two, one. Two, two tours ago. Yeah, yep. like they didn't really like change a lot. Uh, in Tour 1, they were picking him a lot of like uh, Arc Warden, and they were picking him a lot of Morphling. And those two heroes, I would say that it allows you to be in a different world in Dora because you're playing a different game, you know? When you put Natsumi on a more conventional, more traditional hero, you see a lot of like weaknesses that he needs to fix, you know? And he hasn't really fixed anything. There is some work to be done. Uh, also, perhaps g explore getting tier 5 neutrals when the game goes that late.
Natsumi giveth and Natsumi taketh away. Our MVP for game number one. It all went to his head a little bit too soon. He got too much of an ego boost out of that. We needed to bring him back down to earth by exploding him on the high ground and making him miss boundless strikes and all sorts of other things. Welcome back everyone to game number three of Boom. Of Boom. <laughs> versus Execration. I didn't think we were gonna get a game number three. I thought for quite a few moments in game number two, I was pretty convinced that the Terrorblade would not be able to carry. I mean, we were planning our after party. We were. It was pizza time. <laughs> and it may still be pizza time for these two teams, who knows, <laughs> after a performance like that. But these are showmen. They are here to entertain, and by golly was I entertained in that game number two. Not from the high quality. Are you sure you were entertained? I was entertained. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying I learned anything, but I definitely had a great time watching it. I mean, I was only entertained because of Winter's reaction towards the game, so... Yeah. <laughs> you guys are missing out. The, the green room experience, you think Winter's savage on panel. You should see him off camera. He's unchained. He's like, man, I love all these players. They're so good at Dota. Yeah, they're amazing, man. <laughs> I can't wait to relieve that B BO2 and again and again and again every two months. Therapy's gonna be expensive. <laughs> there should be Dota therapists. They say there should be, like, sports psychologists, they should be someone that you, like, lie down on the couch and you're like, so tell me how... What did I do wrong? What did, what did you do wrong? <laughs> tell me how this experience made you feel. No, no, no. Let's just forget what happened and play the next game. Please. No, but then you bottle up your emotions and it's going to come out eventually. Yeah, I got to let it go. You have to let it go. After the, seri after the series ends. Okay. But what if there are things that you could fix in the middle of the series? Like, imagine getting some tier 5 neutral items. That's something you can talk about. <laughs> yeah, sure, you know. Guys, just remember to pick up the neutral <laughs> items, hit some See? neutral creeps. There you go. And we, we're healing. Me. And press BKB. I'm pretty sure that was the least of their problems, you know. But what was the most of their problems? For me, I think they shouldn't play until that late of the game. Like, I know you have a Doom, but still the four of your heroes, do they're I so soft, they can't even get near to the Ember or TV. You know? Do any of these teams ever plan to go late? I feel like I there have been very I'm few sure situations that I've seen a Southeast Asian lineup, and I'm like, oh yes, this team they want to play for late game. I'm sure Execration does. Mm, Monkey King into TB. Doesn't, doesn't sound like a good idea going late game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, Execration prefers late game because then the TB will be much stronger. Yeah, so the strategy is just pick TB, you know. <laughs> is that the strategy? Because there's, there's nothing right now in the previous patches. Uh, boom, they would just go for Art Warden or Morphling. Yeah. But right now, those heroes, I feel like Morphling probably there's more potential still. There's Dusa still. Uh, 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 Lusa against TV. I'd rather be the TV. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Or just pick mid game carries. You know, where's the Ursa's at? Yeah, I mean, they pick Monkey King. Monkey King's a mid game carry, but he decides <laughs> to go better for it to go late game. Like, what can you do, you know? I, <laughs> if I'm the drafter, I just keep things simple. We draft strong lanes, we win the lanes, we try to go with uh, our off laner, which builds all the pipe, mag, Crimson Guard, we group together, we end the game. I don't even want to go anywhere near 45 minutes. I just try to play a 30 minute game and try to end it. And tell my players, no battle fury. No, no battle fury. <laughs> Build other pushing. I, I mean, I don't really know, you know, because every time I watch uh, this team, I feel like uh, there's a very huge disconnect, especially Boom, you know, like excretion in previous iterations, in previous tours, they, they look a lot better because they have much better drafts, they understood. Uh, everybody's role, like who's supposed to do what, you're supposed to buy this item, all right, Palace is supposed to do this. And right now, I feel like they're lost because of, uh, maybe because of the patch or because of other reasons, I'm not sure. But Boom has always been like this, you know. Like, they have this problem from Tour 1. Yeah, which is why I was hoping after Tour 2 that they would have learned things, but maybe they just all their players are good enough that they don't have to learn anything. I, I would say sometimes you know the problem, but solving the problem is another thing, you know. It's difficult. Some problems are very difficult to solve and... They've had uh, like nine weeks to solve. I, I, I know, I know. <laughs> you know, 
But sometimes when your your player feels like I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that, then what the coach can do is you have to put the draft and the win condition in a specific manner so that it minimizes the player's weakness. It doesn't show him, you know, so that you, the team can continue to move forward. Because if you can't change your players and you can't fix the problem, you have to find a way, right? You have to try to use the draft to mask the, mask problem. the problem. But when you don't get the heroes that you need to get, then the problems all appear. It's true. And Which when the patch drops, you have to re-strategize, you have to change a lot of things, so it becomes very difficult to draft as well. Which is why for Boom, I'm okay with how they're drafting to let, like they're picking first pick Doom, let FBZ be a bit more of a win condition. Yopaj is getting his pick of the litter for mid lane matchups because they picked the Ember on Execration and the end of second phase. And Yopaj had whatever he wanted. He got his hands on the Pango. So they are letting other people be the win condition, but ultimately your Monkey King is going to need to carry because that's his role. Yeah. Not, not be better for you. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, terribly. you're only as strong as your weakest like, do, do you think actually. they should just pick terribly mm. in that way? Like, like if he wants to farm the whole time, then yeah. why not just pick terribly? Maybe they'll do that in game number three. Or maybe we'll just see the same techies. Yep. Oh, but they banned out Doom this time. Okay. Now Boom need a different first phase. I kind of like maybe Bat Rider for them. Bat Rider nope, plus banned out. Oh, no Bad Rider as well. Oh, oh. Oracle. Okay, finally. Ooh. Oracle, Monkey King. So the Monkey King can hit your Rex and be not afraid to, <laughs> yeah, be not afraid to die. And Oracle is very good against uh, techies. It's true, actually. Th throughout the, the game. The spell or magic damage immunity. Yeah, it's very good in the lane. It's very good in the game. It's good in everything against the uh, techies. And Monkey King is already good against techies in the lane because you can dodge the blast off with your mischief. But it's still a false promise, though. Wait, if you put on the monkey can, the monkey can feel like, oh, I'm a god, and then he rushes in. I mean, we try our best, you know. If our <laughs> monkey king still can't carry the game, we try our best, man. There's nothing more we can do. At least he has a saving support behind him. Yeah, because some players, I've, I've met some players, you know, you give him the same hero, right? But because the team, you have a save, and when he's playing with a save and without a save, the, he totally becomes a different person. I've, I've come across this True. type of players. So I don't know if he will change uh, a lot when there's a save, but uh, I feel like, there's a chance maybe with this Oracle, he'll play much better or play, he'll do what he's supposed to do in the game. How did you feel about uh, Zephyr's Pugna in game number two? Was he playing him how he should be playing him? Because I saw him get quite aggressive on many situations, trying to put down the Nether Ward and then suck the Conjure Images. Would and you have die. preferred? <laughs> yeah, and then, then die, exactly. <laughs> so I'm saying like, should he have been sticking back? Because he forced the Underlord to build a Nullifier. I don't know why the hell else the Underlord would build another fire other when other than just Decrepify. I mean, that very situation that make you feel it was questionable was because the Monkey King is not yes, in front. Yes, that's I mean, true. Yeah. I mean, don't even start on that, you know. But all that problem started from the draft. When you pick the first four hero with the Terrorblade, and then you see the Pugna already, and their last pick was Mirana instead of something else that could throw some spell or Desert Enchantress in the game where you can dispel the decrep, you know, that they didn't choose to go for that. And These are they... critiques for a team that would have lost, but they won Winter, yeah, sure. okay, which fine. validates all of their fine. decisions. <laughs> yeah, results matter the most. <laughs> I don't learn anything whenever I win. I only learn when I lose. Yeah, I mean, when you, whenever you look at uh, the games that are like this, you know, like somehow you feel like the drafts are not as important, but it's more important like how you set up uh, a certain player, you know, like it's, the whole draft doesn't really matter as much as making sure that, that one player that can win you the game, he feels really comfortable in that game and you have the draft set up for that person. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why Execution banned on the TB here though. Isn't TB like great with uh, Beastmaster and then it's already great against Monkey King. Although that's an Oracle, but the Oracle also can't really approach a TB in any way. I mean, Palos kind of has uh, some of the problems that Nasumi has as well. Like when he plays certain carries, like he feels like, yeah, I feel like he gets too aggressive. Like. He dies a lot uh, in situations where I think the easiest example is when he's pushing the high ground, when he's sieging the high ground. Maybe he has something to do with their lineup, not having the appropriate heroes to save him because they have a Mirana plus five. But at the end of the day, I feel like uh, sieging high ground requires a lot of uh, understanding, uh, discipline, understanding about your draft, who's supposed like when, who's supposed to do what, and what do you need when you're sieging high ground. It all starts from the draft itself, you know. When you're drafting, you need to think about, okay, when we're going high ground with this lineup, this carry, this particular carry, what does he need? Yeah. And the draft gets built from that. Coordination. Because if you try to figure out everything in the game <laughs> and not in a draft, then you'll find that, oh, we have this problem. All right, we didn't really think this through, we didn't think that through. 
and the game is hard. Which for this game, at least, there are good foundation building blocks for sieging high ground. On Boom, you let probably the carry Monkey King, although Execration are considering that it may be uh, mid or four position, I don't know, because they banned out the TB, but you let him go high ground, Oracle stays a million miles back, he protects. On Execration, you've got Inner Beast attack speed aura, and probably, I don't know, are we drums of slomming these days? Uh, you, you, you pair with like a, a carry that can go for like some timings. You end, you try, yeah, isn't bad. Yeah, you're trying to end the game early and then you have uh, techies to buy some of the team items, the aura items, you get the grease. So you're tr you're, I would say that you're trying to build the draft on a timing because you're first pick side. You don't have the overall last pick, so I, I would say that usually the team that has first pick, you try to play a draft where you're trying to hit a specific timing because you're picking Beastmaster. If your 8th pick is a Terrorblade, then it's a different case. You know, If you're trying to play a long game, then you put Terrorblade 8th pick. But if you're going for Beastmaster, generally you're trying to plan the draft around like a timing push. And Boom has to try to answer that, you know, like try to maybe get some heroes that can really fight well in, uh, I mean, in 5v5 clashes and you try to mitigate the early push. But they're going for Mirana, which means that they're going to try to play very aggressive early. Oracle Mirana, some forgotten combo in the early game. Pretty darn scary. The thing is also they want to get rid of the Hawk from the Beastmaster, the Mirana. Can be quite annoying for the Monkey King. So against uh, against Oracle Mirana back in the day, you would always like go pick like all this life stealer junk, right? But all those heroes are pretty bad right now. True. So then you have to think about like either Slark, or if you don't care about like dealing with the single target stuns, then you are just trying to like push and win your lane. I honestly think Jug isn't too bad with the Techies and BM because you can lane with the Techies and have a strong lane, and the BM can later complement you as well as you complement the BM. And Monkey King is kind of not very comfortable playing into what you're gonna okay. Oh, that's nice. Thanks. That's actually something that yeah, we've been seeing a lot in Western Europe. This hero is particularly, I feel like, broken on post 4 especially. The hero just does too much damage early game. He wins the lane and then he, just he hit solo all kills. The heroes that he's, kill yeah, he you. solo kills a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not that hot on the phylactery build, but I think. Boxy and most other people have been getting like second item nullifier. They go like Solar Crest nullifier. And stuff I, I, like that. I like that a bit more. Yeah. Kanka comes out for boom. It's a very classic draft, you know. Oracle, Kanka, Mirana, you got X Mark to set up the arrow. I would much prefer a Lash though. If you want to use the Oracle to make the mid hero strong, I would say. I think the idea here is like they see a very very aggressive lineup. They're gonna push very early, so you need like I said, you need heroes to be able to come stall. and defend. The, yeah, stall, defend the tower, and have team fight presence. And Kanka definitely does that. But this hero is like not very popular right now because he's not as good as the other mid heroes. I think they definitely have damage early to. Hey, or or could he be game. like an off laner for them? Because FBZ used to play this hero. Probably. But like, I feel Boom is also really lacking damage later on. I mean, their lineup is also very dependent on getting a good start in the lane. You know? If they are, they are heroes, especially Oracle, Mirana, you don't get a good start, they're going to struggle and you're going to feel like you can't do anything in the game against this Beastmaster group up and push, you know. So this is going to be like a very important thing to note for them. They need to make sure that they they're going to be able to do well in the side lanes or maybe the last pick, you, you, you need to, if Conker's off lane, they have to pick like a hero that can help the side lanes. Like any Spirit, bro Spirit Brothers would be good, anything that can help them secure the side lanes. And the good news is they have the overall last pick, so they'll be able to figure out that. And for Excretion, their primary concern right now is how do they tie the whole draft together with a carry that can play around the Beastmaster timings. Is there any chance that the Klinx is a uh, one position? Probably not. Okay. Too slow to pair with the Beastmaster, I feel. Hmm. And what do you like? Do you like Ursa? Oh no, there's no Ursa. Bando. I'm thinking of a hero, but he's gonna get kited by Boomy Sauce. But then again, he gets fast. Like, he, he's strong, really strong early. It's Sven. I feel having Sven in the lanes 
And then later on, just farming really fast with the stacks and all, and then moving with the Beastmaster. I don't think Boomy Swords will be able to tank that pressure, especially because Swen can also pressure the Roche, you know. At this point, Boomy Swords only have Monkey King, only have Kunkka, which don't really kill the Swen fast enough before the Swen wakes up and turn. That's how I feel. Clock's ticking, Execration. Muerta? Uh -huh. Eh? I mean, she's against the Oracle. I mean, I guess Boom Esports don't really have catch, so... It's Palos Hero. I mean, it's a time, very timing-based carry, though. So he really fits the Beastmaster kind of like timing lineup. I thought that she's too late for a Beastmaster lineup. I mean, you can, you can be really... I think she's really strong also early. I feel like she can be really strong late, but she's also very useful early game. Like, she does a lot with her spells. And the silence, I, I feel like uh, all her spells, like she comes to an early game fight, you're pushing your mid tier one, she comes, she shows up, she does a lot in the team fight. I think in a way she's good because if you talk about 1v1, she's definitely better than Monkey King. Like the Monkey King could not touch her. But yeah. if you charge the Oracle, is it like, uh, what's that first spell again? Sorry, I don't feel like Gunslinger. No, 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 the Oracle's first spell. Fortune's end. Uh, Fortune's end, you charge onto the Monkey King and he jumps on the meta, then you can kill her. I guess. Yeah, she seems very vulnerable to this Oracle yeah. plus Mirana duo, the, the root into arrow. That's why you have to play around your team a lot. You need to rely on the Beastmaster with the vision to protect you. Night Stalker, pick it here right now. Boomy Swords, do it. Show me. Beastmaster counter, Murita counter. Basically, you get on top of any hero and they're dead, I feel. Because you have Monkey King, you have Kunkka, you have Mirana. Definitely, he definitely can deal with those heroes. But the only concern is like the lane itself. Like, Night Stalker could be very weak in the lane. Alright, Tide. So they have Tide, Kunk. They have this tricore which is all about team fight. But all these heroes are very vulnerable if they don't do well in the lanes. And Tide against Moita, I feel like... I mean, this matchup could... I'm not sure though, I feel like it's not an easy lane for, for Tide because the Moita can actually definitely kill the Tide in the lane. Yeah, I feel like they have no answers for Muerta all game long. I mean, they have Oracle for later, that's about it. They're probably thinking to just sneak up on the Oracle with the Clings and a Hawk, but I'm not sure they can burst the Oracle fast enough. Because you definitely want the lineup to play around Muerta as well. Like, if they jump on your Muerta and you jump on their Oracle, like, it's obvious, right, that trade is not worth it. How about as far as... Palos going in heroes. Where does Muerta fall on the going in spectrum? She's actually really very slow. Mm. So you have to bring the fight to her. She's like a budget Medusa, I would say. But okay. she becomes stronger with like just a Maelstorm, Dragonlance. It's enough for her to do damage. But like she will definitely need BKB to play this game. So it's a very slow timing. Compared to what you wanted for the Beastmaster, she actually don't really fit well. But I can see it because like on Boomy Swords, they are very high armor and not necessarily high HP, so Mueta is kind of good with that. Winter? I believe in the Mueta. You believe in the Mueta? Yeah, because that looks more like a 7.33 draft and the left draft looks more like an old school draft. Left draft looked like a 6.85 draft. I don't know. <laughs> Kanka, well, aside from the Monkey King, Monkey King is a new hero, new, but Kanka. Tidehunter is course. I can't wait to see how it works out. Game number three, my friends. Get ready with Richie and John Expire. Thank you guys very, very much. Uh, you know, I, I baited you. I'm sorry, Jonathan. I was going to ask you about Muerta, but instead I have a different question All for right. you. Because, of course, Boomer is still going up against the techies. Do you believe that they've maybe, in one of the browsers that they've opened Learned, in between games, do you, think you think they've looked at what that Techies Eggs does? I'm not sure. I mean, we've saw, we've seen Cap and SVG struggle right. to Google bad juju. So that's right. And that's Cap and SVG. That's right. There's there's some top tier intelligence right there. I I want to believe. That's right. So I hope they have done their research. You know what? I'm hoping Coach Wushu gave them a bit of a uh, talking down to. And honestly, I I think the the talk down to is, is as easy as it needs to be. Is guys, the game didn't need to go that late. It didn't we need to, we go need that to worry about Techies Eggs if it doesn't go that late. Look at Techies. He breaks a five man smoke. They're none the wiser, Jonathan. Yeah. Five pence, none the wiser. That's a ban, right? Am I misremembering things? Ooh, I think so. Uh, speaking of bans, you, do you think one of these uh, 
There's the more calling? to smelling. The calling. The calling. What kind of what kind what genre is the calling? I believe they were alt rock. And I'm trying to remember if they were Filipino or American. Ah. I always confuse that one. Yeah, I'm very very easy dumb. to confuse the two, aren't they? Yeah. The Philippines, yeah. America. Yeah, I mean, you look at me, people think I'm American. That's right. Every single time. People actually, funny enough, given my last name is Garcia, sometimes think I'm Filipino. Yeah, and there you go. And then they're like, you're tall. Yeah. <laughs> they, they just think, uh, uh, we just assume, you know. But speaking of the calling and Muerta, the hero, you believe in this hero as a carry, no. specifically for Palos? No. No. I do not like Muerta. I know I was casting Dream League and, you know, we were fresh in a patch. I, I believe Ricky, or our cryptic, mm. was a big fan of Muerta. I have to say, I, I, I do not find Muerta convincing. I think this hero is very strange with its timings. Although... Nova, a little self dispel. He's got blood grenade. I don't know if they catch him here. There's another sticky bomb. Axe the stacks. Yeah, they got him dead to rights. Blood grenade just in case. Axe is in three seconds, but it's Shanks to draw first blood. Yeah, you actually don't mind that, giving the Clinks an early kill. This hero is basically just, it's the support for people who don't really want to play support. Yep. It is basically it, and it is socially acceptable to play this support, so that is what they go for nowadays. Still taking a look at the lanes, breaking out. Yo, Paj on his Kunkka, this is something he's been known for. Granted, Kunkka has not been in the best of spots, but the matchup against Bob should be fairly good. Just... Tide bringer him down, X mark him when he tries to squash away. You've got some good combinations down the line if your supports can leave. And with a Tide off lane, Sephir should be able to get that room out. So that's something we need to see changed off. Uh, well, not changed off, it is something that happened last game. But Boom needs to capitalize on all of these combinations they have with the Kunkka, play with the durability they have down the line as well. Yeah. Down bottom, X Nova on this Oracle. It's uh, a fun hero of mine. I think uh, inspired heavily off of how good Insania and Panda have been on the heroes. Two phenomenal fives. If you want to line up play Oracle, I highly recommend you watch those replays. I think he's going to struggle in this kind of a lane, though, against the, the Clink's damage, uh, against Axes, and again, eventually the Boars when they come out. Um, so I'm eager to see how he's going to look to play this and, and lane this, especially. And uh, see if he's going to want to dip a point early into that Fate's Edict, given it's a 3.5 second disarm. Biggest penalty with that is uh, the cast range is real bad at level 1, increases with, with each level of Fate's Edict. So there's a point for you to put more points into that, but then you don't have your damage dealing ability. So I think this hero is kind of an interesting place. I, I think there's... there's room for this hero to be developed a little bit more in the meta, and we haven't seen it a whole lot in C. Yeah. It's been missing, and we've seen a few games where it feels like it could have come out. I think other regions have been picking this up more. As you mentioned, even NA has kind of shown us a little bit of that Oracle coming out. Oh, in the lane is, you know, it's going all right, and you're firing him up decently in Atsumi. Not the best, but not the worst, considering what you're going up against with all the physical output right now on Execration. See how he ramps up. I'm wondering what about what kind of item build we can expect from Natsumi, whether or not he'd want the Battle Fury. Kind of try to drag the game longer, because I do feel like Muerta is a little bit more tempo as a core in comparison. Like, Palos should be getting some early activity out. Uh, mm. Just work on it's the really Maelstrom, fun. then you you kind of join in early on. You do a lot of damage. That's where the Muerta shines. Like, it peaks a little bit. Uh, at say 15 minutes, by 25 you kind of need to go back farm and get some levels up, and then it spikes back is, up. Is anything magic immune anymore? By the way, more to attack a theory. No, units, but deals she no damage can, with damage. She can still hit true, right? Like right. Uh, you do get damage true BKB now. It's maybe, reduced. 50 percent. Yeah, yeah, it's reduced. But it doesn't just completely stop the wear. Okay, she I was, was just... really dead last time because of that. Yeah, so I'm wondering how they're going to look to make that work. Because I'm thinking, right, if you want to go for physical damage and. I, Maybe somewhat tempting for me this game, if I were a Monkey King, would be to try and burst this kind of a hero with like a, a stun from the, the trees into a Ravage, into jumping in with Deso, perhaps. Oh. You can see the damage now. Wow, on More. Shanks. Uh, that's a support clinks for sure, but down he goes. As Execration are going to also lose Zephyr. Sorry, make that Carlo up top. Looks like to the arrow of Zephyr. They're finding everything they want now, and the levels are up. We've got the output coming out uh, here. Tino's going to give another... Is Tino Dead? Dare I say the word? No, he's okay. Good. He's got boots. Early, uh, early level advantage for him. Yep. Does get to run off. Gets a little bit of a healing out as well. No fortunes and to dispel that off. So is going to be feeling pretty fine. They are collapsing onto Yopash. Sticky mine slow. Sticky bomb slow. It's going to know Yopash, but ultimately he'll be able to walk off the damage. And a couple of more supports rotating in around as Zephyr leaps. 
to deny Carlo the water rune. Bob seems to be set to collect the bottom one, however, uh, given that Exnova is staying down bottom. So uh, it's going to be a bottle rune, bottle refill denied for Yopash. But uh, so far, he's playing this one okay, you know, as, as you tend to see Kunkas. Uh, given the fact that they get a bunch of AOE harass for free every yeah. seven seconds. You don't mind too much. You've always got the X reset if you want to go for it for Yopage. So nothing too worrisome coming out from the mid. A very even start overall, though. Uh, time for Clinks. Oh. This time, I believe they got the damage fairly easily enough as well. Clinks range hero, very little HP, 676 max HP right now. Pitiful 23 strength there, John. And, uh, of course, doesn't have the damage block either, so that physical damage tears right through him. Yeah, and that is something you have to watch out for. Clink's laning phase is pretty much its weakest point. Like, again, you can kind of slow stack. You can try to burst down softer heroes, but all down mid. Nice X. Yeah, arrow into X. They need a bit more damage, and they have it, actually. Nicely done. X Nova TPing in just to make sure they can actually nuke down the Pangolier. That's why I like this lineup actually pretty early on into this execration lineup, because their burst is incredible, honestly. They've got some really long duration stun, some good setup for Arrow, which is still a very long duration stun, which funnily enough did not get nerfed the same way all other stuns oh, in the game. Was it got not nerfed. affected? No, I, don't, I mean, it's not. I it doesn't look it. like it. It's still for five sure. seconds, right? Yeah. I thought maybe we'd see the maximum stun time, you know, get uh, kind of uh, refined. Push down, yeah. yeah, push down, something like that. But no, it's still as long as it's ever been. Arrow that time is going to miss, though. Bob's A OK. I think otherwise he actually would have died. He's it's OK mid. It's a little bit close for death as Shanks is going to have to take another death. That's his third already. Not to me off to a phenomenal start then. I mean, boom, so far on all three lanes. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jonathan. Going swimmingly for them. Yeah, they found everything they want. They're still applying harassment on the Baba last off. No, oh, that's not bad. That'll condemn Yopaj, in fact. So that's something, finally, to equalize a bit of the pressure that they were otherwise seen in oh, the middle lane. Tracing Tino. And it rune spawn bottom. Now Tino's even getting run out of this lane, and there's X Nova coming oh. to connect. Oh. So Tino, I mean, he's going to look to waste as much time as he can. With the boar poison out now, you can really look to force that. X Nova. Deals with the boar. He's going to allow Natsumi to jump and collect the kill. So, you know, patience is a virtue, and this one pays with 282 gold. Not bad. Yeah, took a little bit of a chase, but gets himself a solo kill for the most part. Did get the dispel off from Ex Nova. Has a free lane for himself to farm up. Again, all of this movement from the supports being tied into the fact that you can leave FBZ alone. Palos can't really have a kill threat over a tide. You've got some damage there. Deadshot is always annoying, but... Well, does take level six. Thinking about a go mid. Can dispel that uh, shield crash, but did not get the root out in time. So out comes the Rolling Thunder. Bob as well <laughs> benefiting from the heal, but nice placement there as they avoid being stuck in a little bit of a pinball zone up in the mid lane. Lots of pressure onto this Pango. Lots of pressure on the Pango. They're trying to make a move on FBZ, but it takes a lot of damage. Six is up, so the damage is there, but... Does he mind? Probably not. Just barely getting them. That bonus magic damage really making a difference. Does take a death. Yep. All in doing a, a, a bit of work there. I'm not going to fully commit on Natsumi. Down bot here onto Tino. Uh, you find a nice tide kill. You relieve some pressure. You get some early use from that pierced veil, which is something you do want to do. Again, the tempo of this work is a little bit faster. In comparison to our Monkey King, depending on what Natsumi wants to build, still leaving his item build open. Yeah, for now. Is there anything you'd like to see him go into? You never... You I'd never... like to see something more active. I wouldn't mind, like, an Echo Saber, maybe even a Maelstrom for himself if he really wants to go that route, if he wants to farm a little bit more. Okay. But nothing like too slow. I like the Maelstrom. Kind of keeps the, keeps the door open for you, right? Yeah. If you end up uh, just needing to join your team early on, you can be that... Uh, extra bit of uh, force to kind of end the game early, yep. or if you need to scale a bit more, still an item that does let you farm up uh, as well. We'll yeah. see. Radiant I mean, would you be Oscar. upset if he went for the Ag Scepter again? I would, battle Fury, sorry. I would be upset with the Battle Fury. I think this is a strong start for him. He's found a lot of kills in lane, but he's went for smaller items. Yeah. Like, he has power crits, that's fine. Full Orb of Corrosion and Wraith Band. It kind of stalls out your Battle Fury time quite a fair bit. That's at least, what, 1,300 gold invested into items that you're just leaving for the slot. So I think that throws off your BF timing a bit too much. Just go for something a little bit quicker with his build, play with your stats, connect with the team fight you have, like Wukong's Ravage Boat is pretty damn big. You have this early tempo that can just rush into execution quite nicely, and you just kind of need to play around that. All right. 
Makes sense to me, especially with the Ravage Boat kind of combination that they can be looking to play into. For now, Boom just kind of getting a little bit of aggressive farming in. They do steal a little bit of a stack, but of course can't stick around to take the Megas, uh, sorry, the Ancients that are stacked there. Shanks has had a horrendous start, but at the very least, given how hard this bottom lane has been, he's allowed to soak a little bit of experience. And of course, at the risk of dying, Ooh. he is blown up over action in the mid lane where Zephyr has already thrown the arrow and they lack the burst, although nearly oh. picking up there on the Tidebringer. Like barely lacking the burst to be able to pick up the kill. And yeah, would have been big to just keep suppressing Bob here. He's not had a the best times in this mid matchup, which is again to be expected up against a hasn't, side hunter. It hasn't really hampered his net worth that much though. Oh. Okay, a little roar down bottom. Uh, he's gonna get up the ultimate here. Shanks is not gonna be able to fight through this. Yeah, he has a lot of armor. He can't melt him through with a clink. No, he doesn't. Bob even is, uh, oh, nearly gonna that die. Does is... not force him out of the ultimate. Bob, uh -huh. oh my goodness, he goes down. Natsumi cannot be killed fast enough, like you said, just too much armor. As they do catch Carlo as well in the mid lane. That was a boat combo used to kill the techies and Wukong's command to trade for Bob. I think that's a trade well worth it, especially because Bob has no TP right on cooldowns. So he's gonna have to run back to a lane. Yeah, you get room to get that push going here for Boom. Execration, I get why they fully invest there. And they, they just want to pin down this Monkey King with a massive streak. It does pay off. It, it's it a big so, kill. It feels so punishing, John, that whenever you're a mid laner and you're a little bit behind. You know, like a, a play mid mm -hmm. doesn't really seem very possible for Bob. So you decide to make an aggressive teleport to another lane and it doesn't work out for you. It just feels so punishing, doesn't it? It, it is what, quite punishing. Why do you think he, he decided it was worth the risk to make that move? Because they've already committed the door. They know they've got a lot, a big kill streak okay. on Atsumi. I think they were banking on knocking Whoa. him out there. Yeah, well, they should be able to knock out Exnova. Yeah, that dead shot really ring in his ear. Plenty of damage there, uh, but a nice job on the Fate Edict. He did manage to avoid a lot of the damage there. I believe, it's, uh, sorry, uh, Pierce the not used, but lots of magic damage on this hero, so that could potentially be a very powerful tool on uh, this game for Boom. Yeah, that's Yopage. I don't know if they quite saw him. Arrow does actually just barely catch Bob. He does have himself no rolling thunder, though, for two more seconds. So Boom getting out of here with good timing as they barely managed to keep Zephyr alive. Is he holding on to the Ravage? I don't believe we've seen one yet. Shanks wants a snipe, not going to be able to find it. Yeah, we haven't seen the big Ravage come out just yet. That team fight Wombo combo not quite kicking into gear for the side of Boom. All right, I'm upset. Natsumi is going back for the battle fury. I mean, the yeah, timing's well. still all right. Yeah. All things considered, it's still up there. Going for the BKB next. I I guess it works out. All it's well that ends well. well. We'll see how it continues to play out as that is a torrent that does not catch Bob. He picks up the DD rune. Will he pay with this for his life? Because he didn't get that much damage block here. And the boat, yeah, it's going to kill all of him. There he goes. You'll always be my At least the uh, DD still bottled up, so he's going to have a little bit of a play down the line. Yeah. Not worth your life, but... Sorry, I was not really. laughing at Bob there. I'm laughing because... Uh, Tanner was trying to meteor hammer the tower, in, only to be interrupted by a little dead shot there. Yeah, that's always annoying. You can kind of play it at, <coughs> play it safely pretty far away. Excuse me on that one. Oh, good. Is this going to be a kill? They need a little bit more damage, and from range, they have it. Okay. Carlo having a much more difficult game. You, you're not going to get away with a, as good as a techies game as <laughs> he got away with last time, that's for sure. <laughs> that is an early halberd as well. Will allow them to fight very well into the Marta. Uh, question is, how well can they fight now into Bob as X Nova is forced to ulti himself? I believe with the heals oh, he has now, dodges. he'll be okay. He'll oh, come out X. basically full HP. X into arrow, into as well the fortunes and torrent as well. Leaves him below half HP, but Bob still has a little bit of damage that he can deal in. Carlos now respawned. So we have the opportunity for a blast off, but in comes FBZ now. You're going to show up to the fights. No way. Is this the combo now? Oh, they catch him. He does come oh. buckle out in time. Zephyr stunned up. However, in the same stroke by the blast off as Carlos sacrifices himself so that Bob may live another day. Now, Bob does get away, but you can see all that aggression coming out from Boom. Sumi, oh. thinking about a move bottom? Is he really? He's going to have to get the ultimate. Okay, and the X mark is here. The roar likely not going to save the Beastmaster. In comes Palos, though. There's the calling. Plenty of magic damage, and they have the kill. Couple of Maelstrom procs through Pierce the Veil. Down he goes, and Yopaj 
Uh, you got to be careful oh, here as well. No mana cost to cast the uh, the Heaven's Halberd. So he's trying to run up to high ground. Not sure how Fear sent him that way, but he went that way, and that'll kill him. And big kill. It's divine from Execration, showing off the power of that Muerta with that Maelstrom and Dragon Lance, right? We talked about the Muerta peaking early. And this is the point where her out damage output with level two Pierce the Veil is higher. Her durability oh, yeah. is pretty decent. It's hard to burst her down. You don't really have magical yeah, damage to kind of melt her through to Pierce the Veil. And I mean, that's a Kunkka, right? This is not yep. a hero that's like easy to kill by no. any means. It's 2100 HP with a freaking Halberd. And she kind of just rolls up and puts him into the dirt. Yeah, just uh, lacking the mana. If you did have the like, Heaven Salibrate, I think you could have had some counterplay come in. You didn't have some TPs from your teammates. A little bit late on the movement from Boom to help punish. And Execration find themselves uh, equal standing in this game. 13 to 7, net worth lead from Boom isn't that high. They need yeah. to maximize this battle fury now, although they might punish Shanks here. Pretty close hero for hero. FBZ is a bit further behind than his counterpart, but a kill onto Shanks should see that relatively uh, even. He's a fast little piggy, though, and X Nova keeps healing, healing up a lot. Him. Yeah, he's got a couple uh, stacks uh, now on the full promise up. Uh, and he's just out of there, okay. Uh -huh, he's just fully healed. Yep. Unfortunate. That's pretty good. X Nova exchanging mana for some tickles onto him. Not what you really want to see, but I guess not the biggest kill in the world to miss out on still. Yeah, it's tough. Um, we don't see a lot of full and uh, full fortunes and uh, channels on X Nova. He's not really prioritizing that too much. Yeah. He, he's, he's playing a little bit more for, for really fast and, and zippy uh, fortunes and it's kind of just using it to dispel the purifying flames and then do a little bit more damage. It's a pretty nice combo, but the last time I really saw lots of oracles, they were kind of just full channeling that blade, yeah. especially in lane yeah. and abusing the auto attack range. So pretty much. I'm wondering if, if he doesn't think that's as, as viable anymore. There could have been maybe some changes if Clinks is just a bit too evasive given that he's got Skeleton Walk now. So. No, but either way, uh, not connecting quite there on the kill. Yeah, and br pretty big timings for Execration to meet now as well. Bob does have the full Fusil Blade up. So even though he's the bottom network core, he's hit his item timing. It's a big one. It's a lot of damage. Starts playing around. There's a lot of control that can come out from Execration with a Roar, with the Inhibit and the Rolling Thunder, the Calling, which is, again, it, it always gets me giggling, Richie. I keep thinking of the band. They are an American band, I do believe. Uh, I, I have no idea. I don't know a lot of Do you not that. know the song? Uh, well, I have to Google it. I always forget. I believe it's called Wherever You Will Go. Nope. That's a very generic alt-rock song from the early 2000s. Can't say that I do. It had the most generic sound. It could sound like any band. Like Nickelback? Yeah, somewhat. Somewhat very Nickelback. I got gotcha. you. That BZ, he's going to show up now, much like Nickelback when we least expect them. <laughs> It, it, this is not an unwanted presence from SBZ. Well, it's unwanted for Execration, so I suppose, so I suppose, I suppose yeah. it is like Nickelback. Much, much like that U2 album in our, all of our iTunes library in oh, 2013 or whenever. That is true. That whenever. one was a bit weird. That was so... Could you imagine if that became the norm? Oh, thank goodness. If you woke up one day and then you just had like 17 pairs of Seafarer shoes in your Dota inventory. <laughs> What do you do with him? Oh, oh not too much. Oh, they've stunned him up as well. Nice stun. Does catch two. Prevents Carlo from getting the mines out, but they just have to commit one more ultimate. I believe Bob actually <laughs> jumped to the monkey there. <laughs> yeah. Didn't hit him with the rolling thunder, but no. didn't matter because Boom were smoked up on the other Radiant's side of the map, looking to do the same to a Muerta. That's a big take. And just kind of, again, slowing down onto me a fair bit, preventing the snowball Radiant's from the Battle Fury yeah. Monkey King. And it's a big time in it, because we're snowballing in the other direction, aren't we, right? Tino's yep. got this Helm of the Overlord finished up, another 2k gold in the bank, this Confusal Blade, this Morito, who's just strong early, right? Nearly at her BKB. Yep. Is this going to be good enough Radiant's for an early kind of a push? Didn't we see this in game one from Execration, if I'm not mistaken? Go for yeah. the Dusa push. We did, but this is a lot faster. Again, with Beastmaster, with a Clinks, this is a much safer process to go onto the high ground if you do see that opportunity line up. I'm very curious about this build from FBZ. He, like, he goes Meteor Hammer into Blink instead of Aura Play. So he will have that forward presence with a Ravage. At the same time, you don't have that durability kicking in. Like a pipe would be massive here. A Crimson Guard would be massive, but neither one in their repertoire. All right, Carlo gets down the wards nice and early. They do dust up Shanks, but the Blink Dagger in from FBZ. He's gonna stop this rush attempt in its tracks. It's a lot of magic damage onto FBZ. Saved a bit there by X Nova as Bob just not only done it for 15 seconds. There's the call in. Nice silence there onto Yopa. Just pierced the veil. Still holding onto that one now. Right now, it's just a bunch of chip and harass. Natsumi holding on to his Wukong's command as well. Knows that they're under vision from a hawk. 
but they don't want a lot of Execration to take this Roche for free. It's a bit hard as well for Execration. As soon as you use that Pierce the Veil, boom, Esports, they're going to want to go right on in and try and punish the lack of that spell. Short duration on that long downtime, pardon me. So just kind of FBZ chilling in the area, threatening for a Ravage, you know. It's going to make this difficult enough. Oh, this is, yeah, this is awkward. We can pretend we didn't see that. You know, we can pretend that we just listened to some of the calling and their greatest hits wherever you yep. will go. That's right. That's what we heard. Wherever you will go. Yeah, it's so funny because I feel like the that song gate. wasn't that big in America. I'm the bat. I'm the wrong person to. I think it's big home. in the Philippines specifically. Like we have a few songs in the Philippines that aren't popular anywhere else. They're from foreign bands, but they're a big hit in my country. It just doesn't make sense. Bob, oh, he's gonna go for this. And boat incoming after him. A good disarm onto the clinks. He missed himself. Oh no, he caught himself on the Captain Coco's Rumba. He's a okay. Roche is gonna now make his way down bottom. So we'll see if Execration are ready to try and take this one now. Good ward up on Boom though, generally next to the outpost. Means that they might be able to make a play for this, but without a Ravage, Sean? It's dicey. Yeah. No Ravage, no Boat. This thing still got a hell of a cooldown, doesn't it? It does. That it does. And not the best circumstances for FZ. Again, this is where I go back to just this Blink item pickup. I'm not going to go you... back to the calling. No, I'm not going back to the calling. <laughs> Very tired. Uh, but, you know, the Blink pickup over, like, the pipe, over, like, maybe even this earlier Heaven's Halberd that he's coming up now, over the Crimson Guard. Like, if you had your ability, you could just keep forcing these fights. You don't quite. Roche falls very fast to the Clinks and the Muerta is here as well, with Tino around with the Aura. Oh, yeah. He got himself the Alpha Wolf as well for a little bit more damage. Very nice. nice. And now we have two lives up on Palos. It is a little bit strange. I've mirrored more. It's just a weird one with the Aegis Carrier because it does feel like, you know, it's like a Terror Blade. Right. Where you have this transformation that you have to wait for. If you die in that transformation, well, the Aegis doesn't really help you all too much. So. You can see how much they can get out of that one. Boom, just going to take their Tormentor now. While the side of Execration are allowed to just run the map. Really, really good map control coming up from XM. Maximizing their Hawks, maximizing their push potential early oh, on. I don't know if they can take this guy down, actually. Huh. Zephyr, he'll be fine. It was pretty close. So I was going to throw him in a heal, but it's a little bit dicey for them. Oh, yeah, and this is really where the strength, by the way, of the Clinks comes in. You give strafe to your tar to your skellies, and your skellies tank towers. Yeah, that's so been really well. I forgot how well uh, this guy pushes, actually. I always want to remember, because I'm always really impressed when I see him push up until, you know. Up until you aren't? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's, it is strong. And, I will, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the phylactery. I think I agree with the panel there. But, you know, it is what it is. He doesn't opt for the full upgrade on the medallion into the Solar Crest, which is the more typical build-up. We'll see how that pays along. 14 to 8, 1k lead coming up for Execration. It does feel like Boom still wants to play the farm game. I mean, you want to build up a Natsumi for sure. BKB up into a Casual Crystallis. Has a lot of ways to go with that. Maybe the full Daedalus early on just for output. I think um, Yopan going for the AC is a good solution. Again, your concern now is with Muerta, and your concern with Muerta is her damage in Pierce the Veil, which you still don't have anything to block magic right. damage for. No, it, it's really okay. just the seven this Talbots, arms, but... There's a BKB now, at the very least, eh. on Yopaj, and they've got damage mitigation on Boat. You know, the Oracle as well to uh, block the Fate's Edict, right? I uh, suppose. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be difficult, and boom, Radiant wrapping around. Need to get this one right. It'll be difficult, though, as you can see, Carlo. I mean, no minefield attack. sign, at least for yet, but <laughs> it is really starting to get comfortable up here. It's going to be scouted now. Lots of heroes making the jump. That's a nice calling on to two. An even better stun, however, and a disarm is going to Force Palos out of this fight, has BKB, has Aegis, and has Pierce the Veil still. This is just his regular damage now. Good damage as well onto Oracle as Xnova forced out of this fight. Ravage does manage to catch three heroes, and that's now going to be Tino dead. Zexnova still underneath the ward, can find no comfort, but can find a disarm Ooh. at the very least onto the Morita. She's still holding on to the BKB, holding on to the Pierce the Veil. Now will finally let loose. And BKB disarm. ready to go, but the disarm found her. She did not use the BKB on the first life. Might not matter too much as Natsumi is going to be chewed through very quickly there. Bob with the tips onto Palos is now FBZ. Full tips onto Palos as well. 
as he's going to be able to avoid the arrow, sidesteps past that one. FBZ, no ravage to his name, is going to be left as the Meteor Hammer the Wave. Two for two, is it? Yeah, uh, three for two in the end. They did manage to clear out Carlo earlier on. Good point. And does respawn quickly. A bit of a, a, a nice win for Boom. A bit of a big loss for Execration, losing your two cores. Granted, you did find the Monkey King. Oh, a lot. I don't think Palace can get a kill here. Maybe if he's... Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I underestimate the amount of damage this hero has. But against a Tide Hunter, yeah, it is no. a bit difficult. A bit deep now. I'm not sure. What, what were those? Were those tips on Palos? Just because like. Well, hold on. We'll have to think about that. Oh my God! Meteor Hammer into Bo. What a combo! Shanks as well on the stun did not catch Yopas, but did catch Zephyr at least. Another disarm here onto Palos. Relevant as he does have Pierce. He's activated. He's going back on in, and the damage on Axe Nova it's immense, but not nearly enough, especially as he's stunned up by Natsumi. Okay, he's back out of the fight. Pierce the Veil, disactive, inactive, Ooh. and he, he cops an arrow. No follow up. No follow up. Unfortunate would have been big kill if you can pin down Palos two times in a row, but does manage to escape there. The tips out onto Palos, probably just because he caught out Natsumi. Okay. It makes that entire yeah. engagement pretty worthwhile for expiration. Not the biggest losses when you can manage to pin down that Monkey King. Boom. I mean, we're seeing some signs of life, right? The team fights are coming out. This is where they shine. They've got. The Halberd, they've got the Fates Edict to disarm. I think X Nova has to, he really has to get this four staff up. Yeah. He needs to be able to bail out of really rough situations because we need to see some big false promises. Like if he had it on Natsumi, that fight would have ended up very differently, I feel. And still, they are holding on. Like they're fighting into the Aegis and Execration aren't outright winning. This is a good yeah, sign right. for them. Yeah, and we're about to get even more damage now online for Natsumi. I think going for. More damage heavy, right? No Axe Scepter here, but immediately into the Daedalus as he does hope to be able to try and, I assume, burst Muerta before she can get off the Pierce the Veil and become immune to that physical damage. For now, boom, once again, still fighting eager, at least, uh, to fight into Aegis. It did just get reclaimed, however. So that's no longer a tool available for Execration in this next kind of a fight. I assume they may want to wait for Daedalus, though. A couple other big items coming out here. Is that a Vanguard I see being queued on this Marana? She's going to Crimson? I guess she is. The aura character? She only has 1.7 strength per level. I guess That's she is, because you look at what that FBZ is building up, and I mean, I like the Halberd. I love it, don't get me wrong. Picked up a gem into the Shiva's Guard. I suppose. Wow. That's, uh, that's a support hero, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you prioritize Crimson over the pipe. I suppose the Crimson does help a lot, especially against Clinks. That might be your biggest issue right now. Right. Gold Silver Edge up for Palos, so that's where things can get a little oh. bit scary in the output. That's a Thunder Hat. That's a lot of gold. That's the second one I've seen him leave behind. It's be a uh, painful when you lose those Radiant's things, but they'll, they'll find another one, I'm sure. Eventually, you will. Yeah, Tino's the Crimson Guard carrier for the side of Execration, which, which you know, naturally makes a lot of sense to me. Careful here, by the way. They're trying to wrap around or, or just kind of cut the map and find themselves a Monkey King farming here. Nothing. It's kind of difficult because you, you have to go above this Tier 2 tower and take this path into the trees. Matsumi, always chilling for now. And has the cover of Moonlight Shadow. Sees a couple of enemies, wants to go in. I think they can burst Tino, but he did get off that Crimson Guard before he went down into the boat. Now Meteor Hammer on top. It still manages to get out the roar. Not a ton of follow-up, but there they go. Shanks from the side. It's, it's a little scary, but not nearly enough. FBZ holding on to the Ravage. Still holding, as is Palos here on Pierce the Veil and the BKB. The Rolling Thunder as well is still available for the Bangalier on top of his brand new Ag Scepter. That's some damage though. Guardian Greaves does manage to keep him alive. Oh. There's the Ravage, does catch on to two heroes and Natsumi immediately onto Shanks, able to blow him up. The Rolling Thunder though, still pretty decent. Palos. BKB available for Palos and a Pierce the Veil sent up. And now in comes the BKB, the damage onto FBZ. Oh yeah, there you go. Two heroes dead, just like that. Gem of True Sight on the deck. And that is going to be, I think, a team fight that Execration are going to be fairly pleased with, considering the exchange of the gem and the, the weights of the ultimates. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of force out from Boom. Like, they are down a lot of spells. They managed to get this patience from Palos paying off pretty big. Just managing to, again, find a pretty late angle in with Pierce the Veil. The Ravage not really clipping Bob before the roll. Already mid-roll, getting control out in the middle of fights, kiting around, not zooming just a little bit more and makes it awkward for Boom on the re-engage. So, big win for Execration. Their lead is still up there at 3k right now. And I, this is the point where the Muerta does shine. It's that mid-game point where you feel pretty good. 
it does feel like it can taper off after a while, but then again, you skyrocket back in with, say, a moon shard down the line with even more damage, some durability kicking in for this hero. Yeah. It's got to be patient. I mean, I, I admire Paulus' patience here, though. This is why I can't play yeah. carry. I'm, I just want to cast all my spells and get in there. But you've got to wait for the right moment to strike, you know? Yeah. It's all about timing. It's been quite precise as he uh, is able to cut through these fights relatively easily up to a 4k network lead now is execration we're hoping for a fast roche timer they'll leave a, a mine in the pit and be alerted when he's home i feel like we've had long roche timers today gen generally john this one's uh, going to follow that pattern Radiant's two minutes yeah about 90 seconds till he's back up Radiant's that looks like gabe and just wants us to have a bit of a longer time here the ice frog watching sea doors is like i want the circus to stay up longer is that a that's another, by the way, uh, Ancient Creep killed off. That's three I've now counted. We witnessed a lot of that. Sweet. That's, I mean, that's a lot of, oh, that's 500 alone from Monkey. I mean, he's got Daedalus now fully completed. As we saw, he's getting a little scary here, and now we'll decide to requeue that Ag Scepter back up. So, you know, not not the most important item, I would say, for getting on top and killing a Muerta, but does, like, really uh, create yourself, uh, and for your team, a zone that they just won't be able to really fight into as easily. Yeah. Makes your push as well substantially faster. I think your push is a little lacking compared to what Execration have. But, uh, you know, contrasting from game one, I would say something that's impressed me about game one is, is that um, the patience from Execration. Not just Palos on his uh, abilities and his cooldowns, but more so on their decisions to push. They haven't really forced it. Yeah, they've, they've played it a lot more controlled, not too over, not overly aggressive, Boom, though. Might test that patience here with a smoke out. Yeah, that they will. Good wards in the lane here for Execration. Hawks, Skeletons. They're going to have to go the long way around here for Boom. Moonlight Shadow essentially extending the duration. Oh, that's a fat Lotus pool. There's four Lotuses in that board. boy, Ex Nova. They're gonna know he's here. Ward's on the low ground here for Execration as they manage to find their way into the pit. Shanks catches an arrow here. They need a bit more damage and finally have it courtesy of Ex Nova's Purifying Flames. Bob rolling around on the edge of the fight as Zephyr tries to jump off the map. They do control FBZ, but he still is holding on to the ultimate. And Ex Nova still is holding on to the False Promise as well. So if we still have a Ravage in this fight, Palos, he might be in some trouble. Pops the BKB, pops Pierce the Bell, but he's running. There's a little bit of damage now back on the Natsumi. The Fear as well, extending the effective lockdown, but Ex Nova's here to save the day. Natsumi now with a bit more life steal. Another 250 gold on over to the coffers of Boom Esports as they fight their way back towards their own high ground, back into a literal minefield, however, is something that they are going to reconsider, especially as they see Roshan rejoin the pits. And they only find the support clinks for all of that expenditure. <laughs> At the very least, they still have Ravage, but they don't have the mana to sustain this oh, fight. Oh, they don't. I gotta get out. This is Roshan that could go to oh, for Expiration. World's longest TP, but they're not gonna actually see him. He gets out in time, even as Carlo does dive in after him. But I think, I think they just have to give it up. They're gonna try to re-engage, though. No, surely, surely they don't make Long. it in time, right? Nah, it falls way too fast. Not gonna be able to contest. Secondary life coming out here on four, the side of Execration once more. Cheese onto Bob. Everything you could ask for now, lining up for Execration. A 5k lead, 21 to 12. Boom has been finding the better trades, but are starting to lag behind and farm. But how important is it, this this Aegis? Is this the Aegis to, to go high ground and end the game for Execration or, or maintain or establish the mm -hmm. chokehold, so to speak? If they what? find a good fight, this could end the game. Again, you have to respect the push power of Execration here. It's pretty damn high. You've got the Null Fire up on Shanks. You've got all the output right now with your Beastmaster and with your Muerta, full Moon Shard up, which is what we were talking about with yeah. the Muerta. This is she's, when she's, she's insane. There. Like, you leave the calling at level one, because quite frankly, you don't really need it. Ouch. And go yeah. stats. A 20% Gunslinger chance as well, effectively giving you a target. Your soft Dusa. Yeah. So, somewhat. 70% chance. I, I mean, those are good odds. Those are very good odds. Oh, we'll see. FBZ did not get caught there by the, the dead shot. Natsumi initiating this fight, looking to blow her up. Nice stun from Long Range, reducing the <laughs> oh, armor right. as well with the gush. And they have the kill. That's Aegis neutralized. Natsumi setting up the Wukong's command. Cannot nuke through Bob in that same amount of time. As they've clipped FBZ, he's bonked up to the high ground. Blink Dagger being kept That's pretty good muted. This is very troublesome oh, now. Okay, now. Natsumi is dead, killed by the roar. As FBZ dies on the high ground, All five right. feet of Above ground, Ex Nova forced to ulti himself, trying to TP away as the fear catches Zephyr. I honestly don't know if Ex Nova lives here in the fountain. He took a ton of damage. Oh, barely, barely, barely lives through there as Zephyr. They throw the tar bomb after him, and he's dead footsteps outside of his tier four. Bob gets the cheese off. That's pretty clutch there. 
What in the world happened to that fight? Boom Bay did not respect the strength of that Morta. No, they did not. They took the first life. They couldn't get the Ravage off. FDZ is stuck in a very awkward position. He doesn't see the opportunity to Ravage. He gets punished. The Wukongs just doesn't feel impactful enough. It feels like level 25 is when you really get that AoE control coming out from the Monkey King. And all of a sudden, Execration are just going to be two Raxes up. They push way too fast. Uh, the fact that Plinks and his skeletons attack faster in buildings when they're covered in tar does not make sense to me. But I guess it's tar in buildings, and that's okay. Maybe now it makes sense. Yeah. I, I suppose. Guess, I guess so. Look at that. Look at that push. And strafe as well. I mean, this is this is fast. Now, there is a Blink Ravager available. Bob as well. Rolling Thunder ready to go. They've neutralized on Aegis. This is... It's just Megas. That's just Megas. It's just that easy. And good luck chasing. Carlos once again set up for another highlight reel clip here. Bob in trouble. He actually hit and killed by the Meteor Hammer. Nice disarm before the BKB is activated there on Paulos. Just kind of waste to pierce the veil. So it seems like Execration fairly happy with what they've gotten so far. They'd be even happy if they first not took me with the Ravage in time. Once again, Paulus not activated the BKB. Finally gets it off, but he's at Sarm, so he's running for this duration. As they counter initiate on Natsumi, there's x -Nobo with the false promise from the side, as they will at least be able to condemn Carlo to death. Everyone else, though, well, basically just two others still on the run. Paulus is caught here, Arrow. Not sure if they gave him the vision. Four staff on out, and I think he's just clear home. I mean, and this is Megas. Stop Not the first that. time Boom have been up against Megas, but uh Stop doing that. Uh, <laughs> this is it gives it makes me scared, Richie, that this game could go long. Like heck, Boom can't hold. This is not the end of the world. And it does feel like execration does have an endpoint, but how far it is worth yeah, a scale, yeah, so honestly. So they want Butterfly here on this Monkey King, by the way. So they've foregone the Ag Scepter, and that seems to be now committed, given the uh, Eagle Song in the core yeah, here. I like that. I think uh, it makes sense. I thought we might have seen Ags to try and help the push, but honestly, Yopal's not having too difficult a time with it, given he has AC. Yeah. And there's a shard on Oracle, the Reigns of Destiny. The Reign of Destiny. And this thing has one of the coolest activation noises, in my opinion, in all of Dota. I always forget how it sounds like. It sounds like a bit like a, a theremin. You know what a theremin is? What is a theremin? It's, it's that a... instrument that, that they use in ghost movies. They go, ooh. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Those things. Is that the one with... Yeah, you like, you like one? Yeah, move yeah, it yeah. with your yeah. Yeah, the very strange one. Yeah, yeah, it's a weird instrument. That's oh, very funky. Maybe the Collings used one before. Maybe if they did, you would have. <laughs> I known don't it. think they did. Uh, <laughs> may, may, perhaps. I'm not the biggest the Collings. Nah, I got it. I just heard it a lot in my childhood in taxi rides right? and jeep rides. I do not know why. <laughs> like, did you know there's a song called 90, 9, 9, 2, 90, 6, 2, 8? Nine, that sound, what is it? Is that your number station that you listen to to become an actor? No, that's actually a song by, God, who's the song? By you? was it by Europe? A band Europe? I forget. It's a very niche song. Jonathan, that's pop, a pop continent. Pop it is a continent, but it's also the band name, I believe. There's also a band called Asia. That was very, now these band yeah. names were very popular in the, in the 80s. <laughs> You know, back in my day, I wasn't even John, born. Back. Jonathan, how old are you? That's not to say. <laughs> I wasn't even born. It's just my dad's musical taste, you know? Yeah, like, fair enough. Something in the Philippines. We just oh, listen to really old music. It's a creation. Oh, this is showing pretty, pretty far. I mean, he's got the rest of his team right behind him, but this one feels like it's all but uh, just a formality now for the oh. side of Execration. I mean, what, what are the moves that Boom have left in here? Uh... Still this massive team fight, they can no, get it no, off. Apollos, why this camp? Uh -huh. Why is it always uh -huh. this camp? I mean, he's just dead. All right. Oh, 90 seconds, no buyback. Why is it always that camp? I just... Oh, they're, they're going to fight on this. In goes Bob. Now FPZ, of course, uh, using that Kraken shell, finds himself dispelled. Has Exnova waiting in the wings and a monkey in the tree. Back home, fending off against the Megas, uh, is going to be a Yopage. He's dealing with the Megas just fine. This is really... a long one. This is going to be a long one. Uh, you did just check your watch. I, I checked my watch. Oh, not Sumi. Oh, no, not Sumi. The flashback. <laughs> Do just, it! You just had Vietnam flashbacks for sure. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's The eggs is enough. Yeah. That's, the eggs, the eggs, eggs is enough. Is it being built? Uh, not, not yet. Not quite. Not quite yet. But, but Carlo, I want it. You can Carlo turn that staff stuff. of wizardry into an just, egg. Just go for the eggs. You know you know, you have. It's good you know not Sumi's going to walk. Zephyr? Oh, that's an Indus rune up from Bob. Gets a lot of intel here. No sentry available for Boom, so they won't be able to get a pickoff here. And once again, Boom, I mean, I don't know, man. They just, they're they're holding. They're holding. They're holding. Uh, 
uh, again, we're, we start to approach the point where Muerta just doesn't carry as hard as perhaps a monkey can. You know, like, here is a bit squishy, it's Whoa. a heavy glass cannon. Okay, oh. we're about to get this Ag Scepter up as well, so the AoE Gush really helps deal with the Megas. The Minus Armor as well goes a long way. We are stuck here helping for quite a birth. bit of fun. <laughs> we are going to be stuck here. Look, man, again, as a fan of Dota, you simply cannot great. love this. I Don't look at my screen, Jonathan. What do you give uh, the side of Boom? Have you looked? No, no, I didn't see any value. All right, what do you think? A percent chance for Boom to win. Over under. Give me the over under. Over under. I believe for Boom it is a 20% chance. Wow. Is it? No, 9% is what Dota Plus says. See, Dota Plus is confusing. Ever since the patch, it's been a, lo a little less violent. Because it used to go <laughs> just 99%. Violent? Right? It's like, oh, 99%. You're not yeah, I guess, I guess right? I see what you mean. Yeah. So now it's like 7%, you know, 7% chance. Look, eh, John, a it's doubt. a big map. There's a lot of room for comebacks. I suppose. I suppose there is room for a comeback. Right. There it is. There I mean, it's a 7% chance for to win for Boom, but we know it's going to drag on for 30 minutes here. Uh, look, I really would be surprised if this went longer. Surely. <laughs> This game. I mean, at some point, surely just smoke up as five, rush in, use the clinks to melt literally every <laughs> tower in the ancient, this and just take care of it. This only gets worse, I think, for execution the longer it goes. I just don't see him where to. I mean, she's going to have to get an Aeondis, quite frankly. She's going to have to eat the Moon Shard and get an Aeondis. And I think that's the only way she out carries a monkey. Yeah. Even then, it's like. Hopefully, they don't throw more stuns at you, or if, God forbid, you're X marked, then you're like, I don't even know. Yeah. This is also a way that Boom can lose the game, though. They're just walking out of the base. They just don't have enough sentries. They don't have a gem. Like, the Hawks are just scouting them. Yeah, they do have a gem up on FPZ at least. Oh, they do. So they've got some information but, on him. Oh, this, is, this is just... It's just stressful, Jonathan. It's just stressful. I mean, Dota Plus still, you know, if anything, it's giving them one percentage less now. That's, that's surprising. Hold on. They're going in. They found themselves a couple of heroes, but Natsumi is eager to get out of this one, at least until the nullifier is off of him. Okay, for now, I, I, it's shocking how comfortable, how far Boom are able to push off of the high ground. I mean, they don't even have a tier three tower. Nope. This is normal creeps against Megas. I mean, these guys, they don't stand a chance. They're just pushing out. They've got some room. The side of Execration playing it safe. Roshan is up if they want to go back for it, so, and they will. Third Roche as well on the Radiant side, so he comes with a nice blessing. That is big. Probably not for Palos. Granted, I've never seen parking shot before in an actual game of Dota 2. I've demoed it. Precisely shoots a hero in their soul. In their soul, Richie. Separating it from their physical body, knocking it 150 units away. The soul is untargetable, muted, disarmed, and invulnerable. The body is stunned. After the effect ends, the hero's soul is forcefully returned, applying a strong dispel. The soul is survive until the end of the effect if the hero is killed. What in it the is world? a funny thing. I I do not what know what the in utility the is. It feels like a save. More than anything else, a very weird save. Um, I know it was initially bugged. You could get two supernovas off if you supernovaed. Wild. The soul, it would not, and it died. Phoenix would not die. Well, who so that's who ended up crap. taking it here? That's a good question. I think we have drums of slam. Okay. Bosh, going in. Well, actually, it's Bob going in, but didn't really find a role he was looking for. Nice stun at the very least, but they're just going to clear these waves. These tier 4 towers are still mostly immaculate now. Nice bounce shot up there. Oh, come good water park. Pulling back Bob, potentially into his death. He's oh. going to hit the Ravage. Down he goes. Has buyback. Will commit it instantly, but he's going to TP back all the way from that top outpost. So it's still a 5v4 for some time. Paulo, that's just his normal attack speed. That's not even Pierce the Veil. Takes down a tier 4 tower. FBZ dreaming that he's going to lean to line a Meteor Hammer 42 minutes into the game. It's going to be a torrent now on to Palos. They're closing the gap, trying to burst him from range. Out comes the Bronx man. He is disarmed, though. Oh, the torrent storm doing some good work. That's the first life now from the Muerta. But the Ancient is exposed. So Boom Esports once again trying to defend for their lives. Pierce the Veil utilized. However, he did not BKP. Oh, but the damage. Oh, the damage is immense. And they find a bash oh, now on him. Not Sui, but he's going to go back on in. They finally activate the BKP for Palos, but doesn't that Pierce the Veil? The damage isn't good enough. The life steal is immense. Ancient has been fortified but it's going down here slowly but surely the techies minds as well off like fireworks like cannons as two go down now from boom there's no buyback from bob or gg and that's it oh my goodness execration they have to fight long and hard i mean they really have to fight for this one but they've earned it yeah they've earned it they've shown us that they've managed to bounce back in
Boom had some shining moments throughout. I think game two was a very close affair, a lot closer than this game, and that was where they really shined. I think that was, again, maybe the game goes a little bit too long and you get blue screened in the brain just a little bit. This time around, it doesn't drag on long enough. Your timings and where to were met. Palos did manage to carry through and he itemized very well to take advantage of this. I feel like Boom were just a little bit scared. They go for the Aura build on Zephyr instead of FVZ. FVZ goes for the Blink, which works out a couple of times, but with a tight Blink, it just feels like because of that cooldown, if you don't manage to get that aggression going, then you don't find the kills. It falls flat. Like, that's your investment. 2,250 gold on yeah. an item you're not finding kills on and you can't farm with. I mean, very well played to execution yep. though, right? Patience here, they hit their timings, they secure the Megas, they, you know, lose a lot of heroes in the meantime in the retreat, but they stick it out, they wait for Roche, they don't really lose anything too heavily, and they go back and end the game in style. Uh, where does it, where do we go from here for Boom? This, this should be a learning experience. They had some pretty good moments. Again, uh, game one looked solid, very solid. Game two looked like it could have come around in a very tough, situation so i think they've got some promise like they shouldn't be this weighted there's a lot of work to put in right i think what winter says stands you know the, the performance from the carry perhaps just not meeting expectations especially from natsumi's old highs on polaris right so they've got to learn because game two they shouldn't have lost that yeah i mean to be fair they shouldn't have won it either <laughs> but then they, it became to the point where yeah. they shouldn't have lost it as well yeah, that's true. Well, we'll see where it goes from here for both Boom and Execration, two teams that, you know, I think their future is very much up in the air. But we've got a very grounded and based panel uh, to go ahead and break down the series and end our day over to Tsunami. Based off the performances here, it may be the potential relegation that we're seeing between these two teams because neither Boom nor Execration have been hitting the highs that we've seen from them throughout the entirety of the year. Boom obviously coming up from Div 2, they had some growing pains from Tour number 2, but Execration uh, had quite the downwards trajectory over the course of this year and they lost against Bleed, they lost against Blacklist, but they got this win, and this is an important confidence builder for them. They did it with giving Palos not Palos stuff. Yeah, I mean, when you make a player learn a different play style, right, and they still win the games, it's very empowering. Mm -hmm. Like, he will feel very encouraged to keep doing it, and especially when he has been playing the same few heroes for the past, I would say, seasons. Yep. Then doing it in this DPC is kind of... It can be very punishing, you know, if you don't win your games. Like, you get demotivated, you get demoralized. And it's like a slot to major as well. So, yeah, really, I, I really think Pass just did his best and he's getting rewarded. This was the shot that they needed. I mean, Medusa, Terrorblade, Muerta. These are not heroes that I would typically associate Palos with, but they end up getting the series. A much needed win after, like I said, two other series losses earlier in the tour against Blacklist and Bleed. I mean, your, your game's not going well, right? Uh, I, I feel like all this ultra late game carries kind of makes the game a little bit easier for you to play. Mm -hmm. Gives you a lot more security, so the team doesn't have to like play towards a specific timing compared to a draft where if you draft specifically to end the game, like maybe 30 minutes game, then it's obviously you have a lot less room to make mistakes, you know. That's why you see maybe Excretion trying to play a slower game and give them a lot more leeway to make some mistakes in the game because they know that they are not in the best of shapes. So it might work for them, like, for this season. In general, though, we said it at the end of the draft, this whole boom lineup for game number three specifically just feels a bit outdated. The heroes that they were picking None of it feels 7.33. Mirana and Oracle as like your support duo. I guess Oracle may be a little bit uh, matching the patch, but Mirana has not been that popular. And it did well for them, I guess, in game number two when paired with the Ember Spirit. Actually, no, that was on Execration. I don't know. Boom's lineup just felt out of sorts. Boomer lineup. Boomer, definitely. <laughs> this was like a straight 1960s lineup. <laughs> Honestly, I just want to say, even though their heroes are pretty outdated, but they still played quite okay. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I stand by the point where I said it before. It's just not just about like the draft, you know, the, the team has a lot of like 
fundamental problems. I've been saying this so many times since tour one, you know, mm-hmm. but nothing much has, has changed, you know. They, if you can't fix the fundamental problems, the drafts can only help you so much to mask the problems. And if you don't get the specific heroes, then you're going to see a lot of problems. I think this is the first time I've seen this portrait on the SCA DPC broadcast because she wasn't added until Captain's Mode until before Berlin. And I, has Morta been picked at all uh, that much during week one? Was she picked at all during week one? I don't think I've seen Yeah, I don't zero. recall. So, first Morta, very hype. And Palos gets a well-deserved MVP off of that. Boom were able to fix their problems against uh, Xerxia. They got a 2-0 against them, so it's not all doom and gloom for Boom. But against, I don't know, more capable opponents, it seems that much of the flaws that we have noticed during Tour 1 are still very much present. I mean, you say much, much capable, but like Excursion, they're not in a very good shape, but they still lost like in a very yeah. bad manner. But it was because they were doing new things, and something that maybe Natsumi wasn't familiar with was how Carlo's minefield sign works. What? You can't do a 2-1. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, you can do a 2-1. No, 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 that was not a 2-0, that was a 2-1. <laughs> Although, he was almost a 2-0 for Boom, Carlo. Uh, how'd you feel playing no. techies in that 70-minute game? Uh, kind of tiring, but it was fun, especially when I got the solo kills. <laughs> was that even you doing it though, or was it the enemies just walking into you? Uh, I was just uh, thinking one step ahead, just in case the mm. enemy tries to... I mean, if he lost the clash, I have plan B, which is the bottom mines. <laughs> and it worked, it worked so yeah, well. Worked. That should be your plan A next time. Uh, how do you like <laughs> Techies as a hero? Because you guys, did you play Techies every game this series? Uh, I think the, I think yes, we played. Uh, the uh, We played Techies every game, yeah. But I, I think Techies in general is a really good hero. Like it is really good this patch, yeah. Do you like playing him, or are you just playing him because he's good? Uh, before, uh, two weeks ago, I was not convinced playing him, but uh, recently, uh, I'm really happy I'm playing it. Like It's really fun. Okay. It matches your style very well, I think. Winter, you got any questions for Carlo? Yeah, hello, BDZ. So, hello. Uh, <laughs> you, you guys obviously are not having a very good start this season. Can you tell us a little bit more about like what are the problems and what are the issues that you guys have been facing, and why you guys are... Uh, doing to try to fix the problems and yeah, anything you want to say about what's the state of the team right now? Uh, I would say uh, like the first two loss was uh, we it's kind of like going to the DPC we're kind of we're kind of in, in good shape but like the loss uh, it made us uh, think more that we have uh, problems like especially on our laning that's why we're trying to uh, fix it. It was the first thing we tried fixing. Like since the since we lost to uh, to the two series, then uh, also our mid game as well. Like uh, how we wanna approach the mid game. It was kind. Uh, we were kind of lost, especially when we uh, lost the two series. Like we were questioning already, like what to do. Like uh, then also our draft. I think one of the factors that, that we kept losing because of the draft, like we still uh, trying to figure it out what's our uh, best lineup and our identity. And uh, I think uh, this uh, series, uh, I think we finally uh, have uh, thought about what we really want to play. Yeah, that's very good to know. Like, hope you guys can continue on this trajectory. Hey, Carlo. Uh, we Hello. noticed that your carry player has been playing more traditional plus one heroes recently. And he has been playing like different heroes for the past few seasons, a lot of series. But recently, he's just been playing like the TV, the Mudusa, the Mueta. Do you as a teammate and most of the time his lane partner feel this is the right way for him to, like you guys said, figure something out? Uh, I feel like uh, when we're picking, when it's uh, we're picking Palosiro, we usually just go what he feels like the most. So, uh, yeah, 
Okay. Besides that, do you have any team in this season that you are looking forward to play against? Uh, I think uh, Talon, because uh, if hopefully we keep winning, and uh, the last match will be Talon, uh, that win will be uh, that win is really is really need if we're gonna qualify for the for the major. The final boss fight. Yeah, the one, the highest stakes. I, I, before I let you go, I am curious uh, your Berlin major experience because you said that coming into this tour number three, you guys felt good. Uh, so what did you guys do after Berlin to, I guess, adjust since your Berlin performance wasn't that great? Uh, at first, we just uh, tried to pick new heroes and like uh, moving on. We're trying to experiment. That's why at the first, uh, the first series and the second, we we pick Haskar and something like that, like yeah. unusual years for Palos, like even the Mipo. So it's kind of learning. It's, it's kind of uh, like a learning for us that we can just stick to the normal ones or like uh, what we, we what we really feel that that ha that has the highest win rate for the team. Yeah, your team has definitely thrived on comfort heroes, and it seems that this game, you guys figured something out. I hope you enjoyed uh, three games of Techies. I think people are going to be banning it against you from now on. But for this series, it was fantastic. Carlo, congratulations on the win, and we'll speak to you again soon. Thank you. He was uh, skeptical on Techies as a hero up until two weeks ago, and now it appears that we have converted one. Yeah, you have to be very open, like to Dora, when you have all these huge patches. You need to have an open heart, okay, open mind. Anything is possible, you just have to try it and feel it, and just not to, just not try not to be too close, you know, and just think that, oh, I'm gonna like to only play this couple of heroes, and I'm gonna just stick to that. It's not a good approach for a new patch. Are you talking about a specific team? No. <laughs> Trying to get me in trouble all the time. I, I think the whole region is like that. I wouldn't say any one specific team. Every <laughs> single player in any region, you know, you want to stick to the hero that you've played 500 times. It feels so cozy every single time you get, you know the last hit animation, you know your power spikes, but sometimes you got to learn new things. You got to step outside of your comfort zone. And at least Palos seems to be doing that. I'm surprised that you asked the question and it seems that Palos himself is asking for these heroes. It's not like the captain being like, you're playing Morta, you're playing Terrible. He's like, this may be a good Morta game. Yeah, I feel Palos has showed that, you know, it's a new game, just unlearn and relearn everything. Mm -hmm. It's fine, yeah. Empty He's, the cup. Empty the cup. <laughs> He's not an old dog. He can learn new tricks. Let's take a look at what our results were for uh, the end of Monday and the beginning of week number two here in the Southeast Asian Summer Tour. We had Blacklist Rivalry getting 2 0 but uh, how are we pronouncing this team's name? Is it Xerxia? Xerxia? Xerxia, I pronounce Xerxia. Sounds like the 300. Oh, Xerxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the Persian the king. The Persian king. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever they were, they bossed all over Blacklist rivalry, getting a 2-0. I was watching week one and I was like, oh, Blacklist, you know, they got KP in the mix. They got Cuckoo on support. Seems like Blacklist might finally be able to make it to a major. And then they get 2 0 by these guys. Minor hiccup. Minor? Yeah, it's a bad draft day, you know, it happens. Okay, fun. <laughs> <laughs> How do you explain Talon versus Bleed then, Aurora? Another underdog, I would consider, getting a win against a favorite. I think most of it is just like Winter said, they've been traveling a lot, playing a lot of competitions, and then they don't really get uh, adequate rest. Uh, I think that really affects their performance. But I also think from the camera, they look like they just woke up for this series, you know, without coffee, without anything, just go <laughs> into the series and then not, not really playing the game. Everyone is doing their own thing, not on the same pitch, which is not what we usually see from Talon. Yeah, they are perhaps feeling the rigors of showing up to literally everything, the Dream Leagues, the tournaments, the majors, the DPCs, but it's just one serious loss. It might be about time that another uh, team gets to show up to a major. And then our final series we just saw was a Boom versus Execration, in which Execration got a 2-1. So where does that leave us in the grand scheme of the Southeast Asian DPC for the summer tour. 
Well, Bleed are looking pretty damn fantastic after getting a win against SMG, a win against Execration, and now a win against Talon. They are 3-0 and right now, hoping to add to that DPC point total. Talon, meanwhile, only one loss against Bleed. They were still able to beat SMG and Blacklist. And yo, yo what's up with your boys' army geniuses? Winter, you've been advocating for them. We didn't get to see them today, but they lost against SMG last week and they beat Xerxia. Where are they at right now? You think they're major contenders? Uh, uncertain. I think they have uh, not shown that they are a lot better improved compared to last season. But I still have high hopes uh, for them, for sure. And hopefully we'll get to see more good games from them, you know, because I, I feel right now it's way too early. They're going to be going up against Execration on Wednesday as we can take a look at our schedule when we return here to uh, the Southeast Asian DPC for our summer tour. The first series is going to be Mansion Army Geni Geniuses going up against Execration, which now it seems like Execration have gotten a little bit of their mojo back after having a very, very shaky week number one. And our second series is going to be Talon versus Xertia. Sounds really scary, honestly. I don't know why. <laughs> that's unpredictable. <laughs> if you had asked me 48 hours ago, I would have said that's the freest matchup in this entire DPC. Now I don't know. <laughs> Talon are maybe tired. Xerxia are feeling themselves. We will see. Third and final series of the day is going to be Bleed going up against Boom, which after seeing today, that one I might have a favorite for now. Hey, you never know, you know. <laughs> You just never know. Normally, you would just easily say bleed, but you just never know. Sometimes when you put a team on its back, they can't really lose anymore. They come up with some all-in strat. I don't know. I can see them maybe winning one game. Yeah, but bleed's hungry right now. They finally put together all uh, their pieces. There's still some weaknesses in the team. Like what? I don't want to go there. <laughs> Are they already... Name the weaknesses. <laughs> they already pulled the miracle, right? They defeated Talon. Which yeah. I think neither of the teams in DBC have done that for at yes. least the past season. Okay, fine. So on that note, they're definitely the favorites, but I wouldn't say that it would surprise me if they lose like at least one game, you know? Mm -hmm. That's fair. I, I don't think that there are any free matchups at all during Tour 3. I think during earlier tours, I would have been like, oh, this team is guaranteed to get 2 0 I can't confidently say that about any teams this tour. Mostly because of the patch. Like, everybody's learning at a different rate. Everybody has their own ideas on what's good, what's bad, and you have to <laughs> try and lose some official games to know, oh, we can't actually do that. You know, it yeah. just doesn't work against the, the better teams, you know? Because maybe in Scream, you scream someone weaker and then it works, it gives you a good feeling. Oh, sounds like a good idea, you know? And then you, you play against the better teams. Oh, wait, <laughs> that is not a good idea. <laughs> a terrible idea, actually. <laughs> And I feel like there's not as much information that teams were able to get from the Berlin Major. Yeah. I feel like after Lima, Talon had like a really good grip on the game because they were like seeing what Gaiman was doing and seeing what Liquid was doing and then they brought that back to Southeast Asia. This time, all these teams are coming back from Berlin and they all seem equally confused. Everyone's yeah. just... So weird, you know, the game, like the timings are so different, the map's bigger. Like sometimes you feel like, I'm supposed to be strong now, but why am I feeding? Yeah. Why? Even net worth numbers feel weird to me. I'll see like a 5k net worth advantage at like 10 minutes and I'm like, yeah, don't worry about it. It's, it's just 5k at 10 minutes. Whereas like two months ago, I've been like, this team is lost already. Yeah, and sometimes you feel like, why am I feeding away so much gold when I die? Like, the enemy gets so much <laughs> yeah, money. Yeah, the they... support's being so Dude, fat. I see those numbers in the bottom left. I'm like, was that man on like a 10x kill streak? Yeah, or why, why, why do I get 1k gold from killing one hero all of a sudden, you know? <laughs> We are all calibrating as we figure things out, as we look forward to uh, the Bali Major. But for right now, we're just wrapping up the first day of week number two here. I uh, hope you've all enjoyed the show. I've been very, very pleased to be back here, and I'll be joining you for the rest of this broadcast. We'll see you on Wednesday for more of the Southeast Asian DPC.